What if I tell you that there's a deep learning course that teaches you deep learning from very scratch to a core level. So what do I really mean by scratch is teaching you the core and the crux of the mathematics which is required for deep learning like linear algebra, single variable calculus and much more. And not only this, we give you detailed lecture notes along with the practical assignments on data wars for absolutely free so that you can follow through this course and become the master. Hi, this is Ayush. I'm co-founder of Second Brain Labs and in the past, I've worked as a lead data scientist at Replate, a UK-based esteemed organization working on large-scale careers economy product, as well as I've worked as an MLOps engineer in a core XenML team in order to streamline MLOps frameworks. And furthermore, I've worked in several US-based companies as a contractual roles as a data scientist. And not only this, I love teaching. My courses has got millions and millions of views throughout the internet and I've helped several thousands of students in order to get their first paycheck or their first job. But why you should consider learning deep learning? And what is the core problem which is coming into the deep learning content throughout the internet? Now it is all of the companies are asking for a deep learning skill set into a particular candidate. And to be honest, people think deep learning is extremely hard and pretty hard to understand. And it's my personal opinion. I feel that because of the instructors on YouTube, it's becoming a little bit hard to understand. It's not because it is very complex. I agree that the whatever things are a little bit difficult or hard to interpret, but if taught in the right way, deep learning is the most, I think, easiest subject as compared to even core machine learning. I will teach you deep learning in a very core way, from very scratch. We will mathematically do every iteration by our mathematics so that you understand, okay, this is how the flow is going and this is how each step is helping your model to learn or become better. By the way, if you're new to all this AI space, data science space, or still you're a beginner at it, or you're transitioning, I'm going to host a webinar. The webinar where we help you to understand what those 99% of the people which are doing and still not able to get a job and how you can be the top 1% and escape whatever the job matrix into the data science space. So if you're someone interested, you can join the webinar. It's absolutely at no cost. And also if you're interested in getting guides, resume templates for absolutely free. And I've created a WhatsApp community and the community link is in the description on box below. All the course updates of this free course and other things which are, which are going to come will be given there. I hope this makes sense. Now let's get started with our course. Hey everyone, welcome to this first lecture on linear algebra. So today we are going to talk about uh, vectors and we'll be exploring vectors a bit. Okay, so uh, first we'll start off with what is linear algebra? Why do we even bother to study this? As uh, some of you already are familiar with algebra, you, you just want to uh, just re refresh your memory of your algebra or you wanted to uh, you're from very scratch and then so so that's why let's let's start with the definition of linear algebra so i've written one definition of linear algebra is it's the mathematics of the data yeah you heard me correct i saw this definition online and i found this a very basic definition to tell you uh, rather than taking too much of uh, mathematical terms is Algebra, linear algebra is the mathematics of data and why I'm saying it's mathematics for data because uh, linear algebra contains of matrices and vectors so so these uh, these these two are the la language of the data so whatever you are going to study you will, which you will see in your machine learning or deep learning journey whatever you are going to study so that's why uh, we, we we just say that says it's the mathematics of the data because in machine learning data is so much of a basic component or, or, or a mandatory component the same way the UV we use algebra or linear algebra to work with the data mathematically okay so this is a simple definition of linear algebra over here so let's get started with the first uh, first uh, component which is first thing which we'll study in this video is vectors okay so so we'll start with the vectors so we'll starting with vectors 
So if you if you, if you have any definition of a vectors, please 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 stop stop this video, pause this video, and then go down in the comment and please tell me what are vectors. So the, the we will start with very scratch. Uh, you can assume a vectors as an arrows as an arrows we we have an arrow so these these are the geometric intuition of a vectors so the definition of a vector can be it's it's an arrays of a numbers okay so vectors are arrays of a number or a tuple of a numbers okay or 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 you can you can take it as an arrays okay so you can consider a vectors vectors can be arrays of a numbers arrays of numbers or you can consider this vectors uh, as an as an arrow you can consider vectors as an arrows as an arrows or you can consider a vector as a tuple of a numbers you can consider a vec vec vector as a tuple of numbers okay so these are you you can just imagine this is uh, an an array is maybe an array can be one two three this is called this is this is called the row vector which you'll study you can safely ignore this so this is this is also a vector which is a special type of vector which is called the row vector this can be tuple of a numbers or it can be arrows okay so 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 the way i like to represent uh, vectors or to make you very very much comfortable with it is to to make you familiar with an arrows so this is uh, the geometric intuition of a uh, two-dimensional vector so let's see how the vector looks numerically okay uh, in, in terms of mathematical so let's see uh, let's let's see how the vector look so let's name the vector as u okay so let's let's name the vector as u equals so let's store two and four so u is a vector where you have the elements so the the numbers inside the vector you you enclose into a, a square bracket so here you here is two and here is four okay so why i'm saying we have this is this this is like a, an arrow so the first element is called the x component and the first element is called the x component and a uh, second element is called a y component it's called a y component so let's uh, let's see how this looks on on a graph paper or uh, or a uh, two or an x and y plane so let me plot let me plot that so one two three four five one two three four and five okay so this is my y plane and this is my x-axis okay so let's plot this vector onto this uh, x and y plane so so x component is 2 and y component is 4 okay so x component is 2 and y component is 4 so here's the point and it passes through the origin so this is your vector u okay so this is your vector u where you have 2 by 4 where 2 indicates the x component and 4 indicates the y component okay so this makes sense i hope so okay so and uh, vectors are arrays of a numbers or you can say the the tuple of a numbers which 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 consists of numbers where it is it has only it is here it here our vector is two dimensional okay but but uh, here you can have m number of rows here you can have in vectors you can have m number of rows you can have m number of rows but and you can and in vectors you have only one number you have only one column okay so 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 you can have any number of you can have a m number of rows for 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 example for example let let me show you a vector u can be a b all the way down to the n okay so it can be n dimensional vector so here our this vector is two dimensional vector this vector is 2d vector okay and geometrically i showed you by plotting on this x and y plane that this is the the two two dimensional plot means first of all an x we we we, we go through x axis the four the two units on the x axis and the four units on the y axis and then we and then we uh, taken the from the origin and that point 
okay so so this is this is a graph for you but let's take an example a so this is our vector a where you can store n dimensional vector uh, it's not key that you should only have two two dimensional vector you can have n dimensional vector okay so so but but showing you geometrically you can show three three dimensional vector geometrically so you can just draw a, a straight line over here and this is your z okay so you can plot a three-dimensional vector so 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 you can plot it you know, for example you take in k as a vector and you can plot two three two on this three-dimensional plane or the three three-dimensional graph but you can you but, but you can can't plot your full you cannot plot your four-dimensional or, or five-dimensional vector over here. So for geometrically understanding, I have just, just showed you how this vector looks like, but it's not a matter that you can only have a two-dimensional vector or, or, or only three-dimensional vector. You can have n-dimensional vector because scientists or researchers most care about your uh, or n-dimensional, uh, your numerically rather than uh, most of them. Well, of course, they care about geometrical as well, but, uh, but I just showed you it's not possible for me to draw a four, four dimensional and show you how this how this how we, how we are going to plot but but geometric intuition of a vectors are, are we can plot it like this and for example for example you 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 have a two four three so here your k here your k is three by one so first is what are the number of columns which you usually denote as three number of columns and you have only one row of course in vectors you can only have one row okay uh, okay, so 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 here you have x component here you have x component here you have y component and Here three is your z component which is in three-dimensional and so on. Okay, so this is how you represent vectors so the whole <laughs> So the whole intuition about vectors. So I hope that you understood what I'm trying to convey you over here. Okay. So 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 let's so let's see so let's see uh, so let's let's go further into understanding uh, some more intuitively one last examples of a vectors to to get us what is trying to convey and 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 it's it's it's, it's much better for you for for us to understand. Okay. So I'm going to just 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 draw an x and y plane over here. So I'm just just going to draw an x and y. Uh, x and y plane like this x and y and I'm gonna take one I'm gonna take two three four five and six one two three four five okay so this is our x and y plane now now what, I, what I'm gonna to do is make you for for example you can you want to plot the vector one two okay so how so here you go one unit or x is unit or one unit under the x because this this is your x component this is your x component this is your x component so you go on x unit over here so we'll we'll go till here okay and then two units above so this is your this is your final vector v okay this is a final vector v and and to for denoting the your always the name of the vector should be in lower case with one arrow above so this this indicates that it's it's, it's a vector okay so this is this is how you can you have to practice so just try to plot a vector u with x component to be four by four okay and a vector can be n-dimensional it can be six seven eight nine it can be any dimensional so this is this is how you this is what the vectors are okay so vectors are a two polar array of numbers which we which we just shown shown you today okay so now let's see how we can take out the length of a vector so for example you just draw this vector so the v v vector so how do you how can you take out the length of this vector it's it's a good 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 way to think about this okay so what i'm going to do now what i'm going to do now is to just remove this and show you uh, so take another another example so i'm i'm talking about how do you take out so let's take one example that you have a vector u 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 where your x component is 4 and 4 by 4 and 4 okay so here we have here you have a two dimensional vector two dimensional vector so you, all, you can you can also write y w with a member of r2 okay so uh, so this is the this is the, the w u is the member of two dimensional real numbers okay so this is this is this this is your example so what what do you want to do is 
plot the or you just let's plot the vector on this okay so 4 by 4 I should see over here so x unit of 4 over here and 4 units above okay and then let's touch this point I think it's wrong bit but no problem this is you so how do how are you going to take out the length of this vector this is a good good question to ask to you so for taking out the length of this vector okay so what you can do here you can see here you can see here you can see that this is also four units this this is also four units and this is also four units so I'm just just going to change the this this is also four units this is also four units okay and you can see this forms a right triangle right triangle at a 90 degree okay so this forms a right triangle so you know this this is you so you know this so you which is four units you know this which is four units and you know the this excess which is which is here the base four units so here height is four units and here base is four units can't you take out the hypotenuse okay or the vector length by using Pythagorean theorem of course you can take out so you can use the Pythagorean theorem you can use the Pyth Pythagorean theorem Pythagorean theorem to take out the hypotenuse so for taking out the hypotenuse so you, the, the u square plus equals to b square plus h square okay so you don't know u square you know b square which is 4 you know the h square which is 4 okay so u square equals to 16 plus 16 which is equals to 32 and then u square equals to 32 now you want to u equals to square root of 32 that is actually 5.65 and, and, and nearest 100 okay so this is your length of the vector this is the length 5.65 is the length of the vector so so the norm you use usually say the norm okay so in in linear algebra terms so the norm of the vector which is equivalent to length of vector is equals to 5.65 which is your and uh, which is the length of the vector okay so I hope that you understood what I'm trying to convey with geometric intuition over here okay so what if if we have n dimensional vector okay so what if we have n dimensional vector so let we will, we will see what if we have n dimensional vector but we, but let's see let's let's go further let's understand a bit more intuition about um, the the how many number of elements what are what are the terminologies and then we'll see how do we take out the length of an n dimensional vector okay so uh, just as a notation or terminology or to, or to remember so that everything is clear everything is clear uh, the elements in a vectors are the dimension of the vectors I'm not saying that uh, elements it's the, the number of elements in the vector is equivalent to the dimensions of your vector okay so the number so the number of elements elements here is numbers okay so elements are usually the numbers like 4 is an element 4 is an element okay are the dimension are the dimension dimension of the vector of the vector okay so this is the first terminology so here here you can see that you have a vector u which has a and b so here it has two two elements so this so so here is two elements so here it the u the vector u is a 2d vector is so i i am forgetting is a 2d vector is a 2d vector two dimensional vector so you can plot it if it is three two dimensional you have you you'll be having a bit difficulty in plotting in a true three dimensional plane but you can plot it if it is four dimensional you cannot plot it on on over here okay so this is a number of elements are the the other dimensions of your vector okay the next terminology vectors can be n dimensional as i stated the vectors can be vectors can be can be n dimensional vector n dimension n dimensional so you can have the u vector as a b all the way around to the n okay so here it can be n dimensional vector so as i stated that it should not be only 2d vector you can have a n dimensional vector okay so so as as i left you hey hey how you are going to take out so you take out the length of this vector u by just uh, by just using the pythagorean theorem but how you how you are going to take out the length of vector u which is an n dimensional so how do you take out the length so the norm of u so i'm talking about this u the norm of u is the square root of u1 square plus u2 
square plus u3 square all the way around to the u n square okay so it's, it's just equal to that not nothing much deeper which which we have talked or i u i square okay so this is the this 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 is what i want to convey over here this is what i'm going to convey okay so you can actually actually th uh, think think about it and in, in, in that way that uh, you want to take for taking the length you just square u and square plus u to square all the way around to the whatever the number of elements in your okay so over here what we were doing we can simply do like this we can simply do over here if you if you want to take out you can simply use this uh, it's, it's, it's of course you are it's just related to some pythagorean theorem okay so you over here you can just add a square root of your b square plus h square which is b square is u1 h square is u2 okay means uh, um, this one 4 and 4 okay and then you take out so it's just equivalent whatever whatever we had seen over here okay so so the same way we take out the the dimension or the length of our vector uh, u okay which is an n dimensional vector i hope that i understood till now whatever i taught okay so uh, so 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 let's so let's see so let's see a uh, bit more so we have studied the how what are the vectors how do we take out the length how do we represent the vector Vect vectors can be n-dimensional so now let's see some of the learn let's do some of the operations on our vector okay so so we will start doing the operations on our vector so i'm just going just going to give a headline uh, doing operations doing operations on vector okay on vector so it's a it's a very great it's it will just not too much hard it's very very easy so so the first operation which you want to do is addition of a vector so how are how are we going to do the addition of a vector so the first component is addition so you are given you are given so let me state the problem you are given the vector the vector a which is 2 by 2 and you're given the vector b which is 4 by 4 got it you want to what you want to do you want to calculate you want to calculate you want to calculate vector c by adding a plus b means you want to calculate the vector c by taking out the the, the uh, adding by by summing this two vector okay so how are we going to sum sum this 2 by 2 and 4 by 4 means so what you can do you can do the element wise you can do the element wise. so so you can what you can do c is, c is, will will be equals to 2 plus 4 and 2 plus 4 2 plus 4 2 plus 4 and then also 2 plus 4 okay so two uh, element wise addition so it will be nothing but equals to 6 by 6 okay where you add the one you, you when, when, when when you add a, uh, the vector you, you, 2 by 2 by 1 plus 2 by 1 2 times 1 which is uh, the the dimension of the resulting vector will be also 2 by 1 okay so what do you what do you do you you 2 by 1 uh, which is the dimension of your a vector and then to 2 by 2 times 1 where the there is two elements and the one 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 column so that is also b and then the re resulting vector is 2 times 1 okay so it is the 6 by 6 so you get you calculate c to be 6 6 where your x component is 6 and y component is 6 so the 6 6 is your resulting vector so your resulting vector c is a two-dimensional vector okay some of the things which i want to highlight is your dimensions of your both the vector which is a and b should match okay if for example for example if your a vector a vector a vector is 2 by 2 and your v vector is 4 4 6 then you try to add it the resulting vector will be undefined will be undefined okay so your dimensions of the addition of a vector should match okay otherwise it is undefined operation okay so so this this is this is what i want to convey over here so let's see how you add the vectors how you add the vectors 
uh, uh, how you add the vectors geometrically so we see in the numerically how we add the vectors so let's see how you how you add the vectors geometrically okay so let's let's do something let's do something is uh, we will do now some geometric because people tend to understand more geometrically rather than numerically okay so we'll understand geometrically so here I'm drawing I'm going to draw one x and y plane like this okay x and y plane okay so so let's see so let's see that your that your vector a that this is this 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 is this is your vector a so let's 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 keep uh, let's make it total okay so this is so this 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 is your vector a and this is your vector b this is your vector b okay this this is your vector v and this this is your vector a you want to add this two vector geometrically speaking you want to add add this vector a plus vector b okay you want to add this so when you do this geometrically okay so what what you want to do you're going to take this vector a so i'm just 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 going to say you take this vector a take this vector a and put the tail of this vector the tail of this vector onto the onto the top of the vector b okay you put the tail of this vector onto the top of the vector b okay and then you put this uh, this this one onto the head of this okay what what you want to do is uh, take this vector whatever whatever the length okay whatever may be the length you just uh, put it like this I'm, I'm not drawing correct but no problem in that so the length of the length of this should be should be same as whatever you are doing you're just taking this a vector and putting it over here okay you just um, you're just taking this vector a and putting this tail onto the head and and then you are and then you are putting it over here and then what what you do you take this vector b you take this vector b and put the tail onto the top of a and put the and and just match this uh, with this okay so you take a vector b and then you just put it like this i think it's not correct too much but this is how you are going to do your first you take the vector a put it on the uh, the, the, the tail of that under the head of b and then you whatever the length you just uh, you just uh, put put that over here and then you take this and that and then put put, put this tail onto the head of this and then you match the heads okay and then and then and then the head the the, the resulting vector so the resulting vector so the resulting vector I'm just going just just going to take this so so you just take you just this is this will be this will be this will be your resulting vector where blue one indicates a plus b a vector plus b vector okay so this is this 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 is how you add the vector geometrically and, I, and then it makes sense as well okay if it isn't don't worry let's see one more example to make more clarity okay so over here which you let's plot so this is how you just take this and then you draw and then you are done with this and then you attach the the here's the tail on the origin okay and then you attach and then you draw a straight line on like that okay so this this is called the parallelogram method okay so this is called the parallelogram this this is called the parallelogram method for showing the geometrically for showing the geometrically let's see triangle method that that will make more even sense okay so that will make more even sense so here is your vector a here is your vector a and here is your vector v here is your vector v okay here is your vector v you want to add this up so what do you do you simply you simply what you what you don't do anything extra you simply attach this to make a triangle to make a triangle like this and then this is resulting vector is your addition of the two vectors okay so this the resulting vector which is which i'm going to highlight with this is your resulting vector and this is this is the uh, this 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 is how you do the addition geometrically speaking okay so this this is called the triangle method this is called the triangle method for addition of two vectors okay try to play with it a much much more better way so that it could make sense to you as well okay so try 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 to play with it uh, try to draw some diagrams of it and then show and then uh, try 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 to uh, let a little bit juggle with it and then then and then you will better and better understanding uh, rather than uh, just seeing okay so you can you will be getting some assignments on this as well so you can approach the assignments uh, in geometrically speaking okay so so let's see one more operations which is 
द वेक्टर सब्ट्रैक्शन वेक्टर सब्ट्रैक्शन ओके जस्ट जस्ट गोइंग टू शो यू वेक्टर सब्ट्रैक्शन सब्ट्रैक्शन सो वॉट दिस वैक्टर सब्ट्रैक्शन विल डू सो लेट्स से यू वॉन्ट टू सब्ट्रैक्ट वैक्टर यू माइनस माइनस वैक्टर वी ओके सो डैट विल बी सिंपली वी कैन फ्रेम इट एज एन एडिशन ऑफ अ वैक्टर यू प्लस माइनस बी ओके सो देन इट विल बी मच इजियर टू शो इट जोमेट्रिकली स्पीकिंग ओके गॉट इट सो वॉट आई एम गोट टू से ओवर ह्योर is you have a vector so you can simply do like this for showing it geometrically now it will be very easy to show it geometrically like this by adding of the vector okay so you what 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 you do you just uh, make this and then just uh, for for showing it geometrically speaking okay so for example you have a vector u which is 2 by 3 and you have a vector and you and you have vector v which is 1 by 1 subtracted so resulting vector the resulting vector will be 2 minus 1 and 3 minus 1 that will be nothing but equals to 2 okay it's it's 1 2 okay so x comma and y comma so this is your resulting vector okay so let's let's see how it looks like uh, so it it would make more sense to you as well okay so let's assume 1 2 3 okay 1 One okay, so let's plot the u vector. So I'm just just going to plot the u vector, which is two three. Okay, so okay, it's two now. So it's two three. So okay, I think I done wrong. It's two three. So just going to okay. So this is your vector u. So this is your vector u. This 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 is your vector u, and you're to plot the vector v v. So this is your vector v. This this is your vector v. Okay. This is your vector v, and the resulting vector is one by two. Okay. So this is your resulting vector, which is your after subtracting. Okay. So after you subtract uh, uh, this from this, the vector v from u. Okay. So that will be your resulting vector. That makes sense geometrically speaking as well. Okay. So this is how you do the vector subtraction geometrically. If you don't understand geometrically, it's no worries, but it's not more than tough, which which um, which is which is very very easy, not more than tough. Okay. So this is your vector addition and vector subtraction. So let's see the last concept which you which I want to make you familiar with is 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 vector scalar multiplication. Vector scalar multiplication. Vector scalar multiplication. So I'm just but but first of all, what is in scalar? What is an scalar? So scalars are given. Uh, scalars are just constant or a uh, numbers. For 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 example, four is a scalar, two is a scalar, one is a scalar, or 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 anything. Okay. So this is scalars are just constant. Okay. So it is it's a number, but in algebra or linear algebra term we call it as a scalar. Okay. So it plays an important role when we study about linear linear combinations or linear transformations. So it plays a very important role. So 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 this is so. What if 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 you multiply a scalar? For example, you know, you have you want to multiply a scalar a times the vector u. You want to times the vector u. So let's let's take the you you take the scalar a to be two and the vector u as a two by two. Okay. So you multiply two times two by two. So it two by two. So it do the element wise product. Two times two four by four. That will be equals to. Two times one. Okay, so the so dimensions will be two times one. That that is simply the uh, vector scalar multiplication. So what it actually does, in geometrically speaking, it stretches the vector. So it doubles the vector. So for example, you have this vector two by two. Okay, and then you multiply it with two, then it will be doubled. Then it then it will be stretched. Okay, then then it will be stretched. Means transformed the vector. Okay, or stretched the vector. By by following the linear structure, you stretch the vector like like this. So this 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 was your initial vector. So after applying the a times the vector u, that is stretch, which is your final vector. After applying your uh, the scalar and vector multiplication. Okay. So this is your stretch vector. Stretch the vector. So please 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 ensure that it's stretched. So uh, before applying it was u, and after applying this doubled. Okay. So this is this is this is the vector scalar multiplication. And the reason why we are studying these because it helps. To build a very good foundation, the stretching, the geometrical speaking, this helps a very good foundation when when we talk about transformations, 
con combination combinations uh, eigen values eigen vectors these these plays an important role in that so so this was uh, so 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 we have seen a bit about vector and scalar multiplication the last concept the last two concept which i want to introduce to you is the unit vectors is the unit vectors is the unit vectors and the zero vector okay so the unit vector so unit vector is any vector with a length one so so the definition states the unit vector the unit vector is any vector is any vector for for example any vector okay any vector with length one whose length is whose length is one whose length is one that's a unit vector okay what is a zeros vector zeros vector is whose length is zero whose length is whose length is whose length is zero whose length is zero okay so that is the zero vector you use usual denote the zero zeros vector in very bold way okay that is the zero vector and that is the unit vector vector and vector okay so these are the two basic basic very very basic term terminology which you need to know about okay so so we have seen a lot about the vectors in this video so i hope that you understood every everything whatever we had to have 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 a talk on this so just 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 to make sure that everyone understood this so what 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 you actually do so let me show you one one more example of that so so for example you have this okay so you have this vector a and you have this vector and you have this vector b okay so what do you do for addition of these two vectors you can just you can what you can do you can just uh, make this uh, make this a triangle okay but let's approach within using a, a parallelogram method okay so what do you do you put you take this you take this vector and put on the this tail out of the head and then you just draw a parallel to this and you take take this and then you take this and then you join the and this, this this a plus b is a resulting vector okay so this is how you go further into approaching these stuffs and i hope and maybe you can solve it using a triangle method to show you how it works geometrically speaking okay so i hope that you understood whatever i'm trying to convey you over here okay so i hope that you understood geometric intuition the triangle method what are the unit what are zeros what are scalars what are what are what are vectors and etc 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 okay so i think that we are done with this lecture um on its 30 minutes so i hope that you understood vectors what are vectors uh, so you can you can find the notes of this the lecture notes maybe all of these in the description on box below uh, the the and or in LMS and the assignments will will be also related to this will will be released at the end of this week and I hope and I really 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 hope that you understood this and if if not please feel free to ask the question in the description down box below or in our Discord server we are we will be very happy to answer your questions the next announcement is you can simply uh, the next the next lecture will will be based on matrices okay so we'll talk about a bit about matrices okay and then and then we'll talk about after after completing a bit of matrices we'll talk about linear combinations then trans linear transformations okay so we will we'll be studying these things so don't worry we'll go at very slow pace and very easy way okay so thanks for seeing this video i'll be catching up to you in the next video till then bye bye and have a good day Hey everyone, in this lecture we'll be talking about matrices. In our pre previous lecture we talked about vectors and I really 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 hope that you have to understood about vectors. I know this these are very very easy concepts for you but, but uh, let me tell you these sets of foundation when we study about combinations or transformations and other, other stuff. So, so that's how we are only focusing on this. So from this video, we'll be starting stepping up a bit difficult mode from matrices, and then we'll talking about some some matrices operations, and then we'll talking about some properties of matrices uh, multiplication, and then I will just uh, end up with this video with matrix vector products, and then we will show you the wide results at the end of the video that the linear combination of the column vector. Okay. So we'll be talking about the I'll be just introducing a notion of a linear combination so that in the next video is totally based upon your linear combination. So that's why I will just give you a taste of linear combination at the end of the video. 
So let's get started with matrices. So today we'll be talking about matrices. So let's let's recall a bit about vectors. So so vectors are a uh, n-dimensional where where it can have n and where where it can have n number of rows but only one column. Okay. So we were having this. So it can have one, two, all the way around to the n. And here this is n times one. So the shape of this vector v, the shape of this vector v is n times one. And it can have n number of rows and one number of a column. And this is a vector. Specifically, we can call this as a column vector. Okay. So 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 we specifically call this as a column vector. Okay. So so it is given a new name. And when we when I will introduce you a notion of a matrices, then then we'll use it extensively in the in the later videos. But but this is also called a column vector. And, and for example, your vector can be in this one, two, three, all the way down to the end. Okay, so this is called the row vector. This is called the row vector. Okay, okay, so this is called the row vector. So this, this, these are the two, two things which I want to introduce to you. So we'll be covering this again just after we complete the matrices. Okay, so let's start with what are matrices. So matrices are a, are a set of numbers. Or, or a multi-dimensional ladder, okay, where it can have n number of rows, or n number of rows and m number of columns. It can have a multiple columns and multiple rows, okay. So in vectors, we we in vectors, in vectors, we were having only we were having only n col n rows and one column, which is the example of the example will be one, two, three, okay. So this 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 is an example of a vector v. Okay, so the matrices, so the matrices can have can have n number of rows as usual, but n number of columns, but can have m number of columns. So as an example, we can make that matrix A equals to one, two, three. So one column, two, three, four, second column, three, four, six, third column. So it can have m number of m number of a row, m number of a, uh, columns. And, and and n number of her rows and n number of her rows. Okay, so here the shape of this A is three by three, uh, where three is number of a rows, number of a rows, and this one is number of a columns, number of columns. Okay, so so over here the, this this first first indicates the three by three matrix. So this is the example is three by three matrix. So the formal definition of a matrix is is matrices are a set of numbers okay matrices are a set of numbers arranged in a rows and a columns which is n rows and n columns so to form a rectangular array okay so here here it form the rectangular array in other words matrices can have n number of columns and m number of rows okay so let let me write a formal definition of matrices over here so and the definition which is the, just let me write the, a good definition of this so that everyone can can define what a matrix is so matrix so here's the definition of a matrix is where it, it it is arranged in a rows and a column so i'm going to give the name of a rows we want to give the name of a rows to n and a columns to m so to form a rectangular array so for 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 example we can have a matrix here it can have a b c d e f g h i okay so it can have any here we have this is this this is an example of three by three matrix where we already have one two three rows and one two three columns okay or we can say in other words it can have n number of rows and n number of columns m number of columns okay so i'm again i'm saying n is for number of rows number of rows and m is for number of columns number of a columns all those are in small small letters okay so this is your form formal definition of a matrices and the lecture notes is in description in the box below please go there and assess your lecture notes for you to better to, to just revise in your meantime okay so 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 just let's write a formal notation of how the matrix matrices are so that so that it it, it is uh, easily Inter, inter, interpretable. So I'm going to make a matrix A. I'm going to make a matrix A. 
where I'm going to make a matrix A, where it I'm going to make this A11. So the how do we assess the, the first element? So here it is in first row and first column. So this A is in first row and first column. So that's why I've written I and Z. Okay, so uh, A, I and Z indicates I, the, what is the row number, and G, Z, what is the column number. So for example, for assessing the elements, so over here you have this, you have this matrix, we have this matrix A, and what you're going to do is assess three. So how are you going to assess? So the, the you the formal the formal assessing things is A I J or or oh yeah so A I J where I indicates the row number and J indicates the column number so, okay so over here you can see the three is on is on we start with one two three okay not from zero so two two A two means A A two means the row number is two and the column number is also two column number is two that is nothing but equals to three. Okay, so here's how you assess. So first of all, you write the row number, then you write the column number. So I indicates the row number and J indicates the column number. Okay, so I hope that you understood what I'm trying to say. So it is telling, go and this is the first element here is first row and first column. Then it is second row, first row and second column. Then uh, all the way down to the first row and nth column. Okay, or M column. Okay. And over here, it can have A, 2, 1, okay, so second row, first column, second row, second column, all the way down to the A, 2, M, and a second row, M column, okay? Uh, so, uh, this can be A, 3, 1, A, 3, 2, A, 3, M, okay? All the way down to the A, N, 1, so N is number of rows, or A, N, 2, all the way down to the all the way down to the a and m okay so here it is the formal notation or, or, or a definition which we can write over here which is the formal notation for writing uh, so so this is a matrix okay so here's how I develop this so it can have n number for m number of a call a rows n number of a rows so one two three four all the way down to the n which is n number of rows and it can have only it can have only m number of columns okay it can have only m number of columns so this is your formal 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 definition which we have which i have given to you for uh, matrices okay so i hope that you understood now what i'm going to talk about is i introduce a notion of a row vector or a column vector is it so i introduce you so can you just go and just type me uh, what is a row vector and what is a column vector so let's take one example. So let's take one example. Is you have a you have a matrix, but just 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 one thing that the vectors are a subset of matrices. Okay. So the 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 vectors are a n times one matrix or n times one matrices. Okay. So the vectors are a subset of matrices. Okay. So if you if you extract this extract this extract this row, so this is just a vector. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is. Uh, is going to just to make a vector, make a matrix A, make a matrix A, which contains, just to not relate, I'm just taking examples, I'm just taking examples. You have a, a, a vector A, I'm going to store 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay, so this is my, this is my 2 by 3 matrix, okay, so, so, you, what you do, you take the first row, okay, and then store it in another, uh, so C, okay, that is 1, 2, Okay, so what is C over here? C is called the the the, the 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 matrix with one row. Okay, the matrix with one row is called the row vector. This is called the row vector. This is called the row vector. The matrix which has only one row is called row vector, and the matrix with only one column, which is nothing but called the column vector. Okay, so. So, so if we if we take this one by four, okay, in D, that is one by four, it has only one column that is nothing but equals to column vector, which is nothing but is column vector, okay. Uh, I I hope that you are understanding whatever I'm trying trying to tell over here. So, so, so these are the size of a matrix. So over your size of a matrix, where we have a row vector, and what is row vector? Row vector are nothing but the matrix with one row with one row 
is called the row vector and the matrices with one column is called the column vector okay so if you take one example so just 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 assume that this is your this is so this is your first of all row vector sorry column column vector because you have uh, you have so so you have I'm sorry column vector so this 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 one is a column vector which is v1 so v v1 over here is a column vector okay so if we take this one if we take this one so here you have only one row so that is v2 which is your row vector okay so this is this is what the notation of the notion of a row row vector and column vector means and I really really hope that you understood about this. Okay, so if not, please please feel free to ask to ask your question below. Where you're stuck, please 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 use Discord server or whatever that the doubt support which is provided to you, so that you can get most out of out of this course. And if you need any guidance for absolutely free, please feel free to reach out to me via email, Discord, comment. We can get on a meet to help you solve the doubts. It's it's for okay, cool. So let's. Uh, so we have we we have seen what some matrices are. So I'm just just want to recapitulate everything. So matrices are a set of numbers arranged in a number of rows and number of columns to form a rectangular array where it can have an m n number of rows and m for a mango number of columns. <laughs> okay. So so the notation for uh, for uh, the definition of geometrically over here is the a. So I have I have made this as an example to show showcase you. And we have oh, we have seen some of the matrix size. Where you where the, the the terminology which is where the matrix has only one row that's the row vector and where the matrix has only one column that is a column vector. Okay, so I hope that you understood what I'm trying to convey over here. Cool. So now let's talk about. So now let's talk about. So now let's talk about some of the operations because in pre previous video we talked about vectors and then operations. So the same day I'm going to talk about operations on uh, matrices. Okay, so operations on matrices. Just, 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 just going to show you, show it to you. Operations, operations. I think my handwriting is not good too much. No problem. Operations, operations uh, on matrices. Okay, so you're going to do the operations on matrices. So the first operation which you are going to do is matrix and a scalar multiplication. Okay. So what I'm going to do is matrix, matrix, scalar, multiplication. Okay, not a not a big deal. It's very very easy to understand. Okay, so assume that you have a matrix A. You have a matrix A. You have a matrix A 10, 6, 4, 3, which is your nothing but a 2 by 2 matrix. Okay, two rows and two columns. Okay, and you have a scalar. We have a scalar A, which is nothing but two. Okay, so you're given these two. Now, what are you going to do? Is uh, you want to multiply uh, A, A. Okay, so you're going to multiply a scalar with a matrix, which is not nothing but two times 10, 6, 4, 3. Okay, that is. So, what will be the result? Please, anyone, please, please feel free to, to, to pause this video. So, what you are going to do is multiplying a scalar with a two by two matrix. So, what will be the result? Anyone, please, 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 in the comment. Okay, how, how do you tell? Okay, no problem. But uh, please, please, feel free to ask. Uh, say in the comment box. I will be very happy to see that if you're till here. So, the answer of this is first of all, what do you do? You use you simply do the element wise product with the scalar. Okay. So 2 times 10 which is nothing but 20, which is nothing but 20, 2 times 6 which is nothing but 12, 2 times 4, what it is, 9, <laughs> no it's 8, okay, 2 times 3 which is nothing but 6, okay, so the resulting, the resulting matrix is 2 times 2 matrix, so what do you do, you transform or, or, or not a transform, I would say you just you know, multiply a scalar with a, with a matrix, and you and then you get a two by two matrix, which is the same size of your A. Okay, so two times two equals to two times two, which result when you multiply with any scalar. Okay, so what it does is simply do the element wise product. Product. Okay, so the so the formal notation for this is you you multiply C with A. Okay, and A have I and J row. Okay, so what it will do? It will simply do the element wise a 
C times A I J. That is nothing but what it will do. First of all, it will uh, so in in more more not 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 rational terms. It will just for a for a for example, you have a vector. Uh, you have a, a scalar A, and you multiply with C D E F. Okay. So what do you do? You simply uh, A times C, A times D, A times E, and A times F. Okay, so this this will be the form. This is this this will be thing, and then you will be getting some values two by two. Okay, which will be your values. Okay, so the same. This is this is what it is doing. So this is your formal definition. Formal definition of your matrix vector multi multiplication. Sorry, uh, scalar matrix uh, multiplication. And I really really hope that you understood this. Let's go on to the next operation, which we're going to see. Let's go on to the next operation, which we're going to see is addition of a matrices. Okay, so the next operation which we are going to cover is addition, addition of matrices. Okay, additions of a matrices. So let's assume. So we are you, you are you are given a matrix A. You are given a matrix A, which is one three one uh, one zero zero. Okay, and you have and then you are given matrix B. Okay, and matrices are always written in a capital letters. Make sure, and the vectors are always in small letters. Okay, with one over here, uh, and the scalars are also in like this. Yeah, so that's B is zero zero five seven five zero. Okay, so what you want to do? You want to add these two matrices A plus B. You want to add these two matrices. So this is the operations which you want to do. This is the operation which you want to do perform. So how how are you going to perform this operation? How are you going to perform this operation? So for performing this operation, so for for performing this operation, you will just what you what you will do? You want to just we have this one three one one zero zero plus zero zero five seven five zero. What you what you will do? You will nothing but. Uh, One plus zero, add element by sum. Okay, I mean the scalar you are doing, so you will do the same. One plus zero, three plus zero, one plus five. Okay, element by sum. Okay, one plus seven, zero plus five, zero plus zero. Okay, so this is this this is what you do, and then you will be getting your answer, which is one three six, and then you will be getting eight. Five zero. That is the resulting uh, matrix. Okay, which is also three by three matrix. Okay, so what do you do? You simply do do this, and you are getting a three by three matrix. Okay, so so when you what you do, you you just add it a three by three matrix, three by three matrix, and then and then you and the resulting matrix is also three by three. Okay, so so this is how you do the addition of a matrix, and the formal definition for this I which 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 I can state. So, because definition is very very important for fundamentals for for making your fundamentals strong. Okay, so so the definition is you are given a matrix A, which can have A, uh, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, that is nothing, and your B is also some some kind of K, G, I, H, O, P. Okay, so to add these two, so you what what you will do? A plus K, B plus G, C plus I, D plus D plus H, E plus O, E plus O, and F plus P. That will be nothing but equals to three by three matrix. Okay, so I have just taken this example. Your your matrix can have n dimensional. Your 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 matrix can have any number of rows and any number of columns. But there are some constraints which you need to. There are some properties uh, like dimension property which you have to take care while adding the matrices. Okay, so it can have it can have uh, A B C. You can it can it can have a ten by ten matrix. The size of the matrix and then you are adding the ten by ten matrix with another ten by ten matrix and that is resulting in another ten by ten matrix. Okay, so that is the that is the thing. Uh, so some of the property which I want to highlight, which you all had to focus on. So. Some of the properties of a very 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 uh, simple sim simple property that commutative property commutative property so addition of a matrix is commutative commutative 
and all of this is written in your notes please 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 feel free to write, uh, see from there if you if you want to just 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 revise it up okay uh, in in future but i would highly highly recommend to complete this video b plus a so you so you have a way to say you have a way to you, know, you, you can do b plus a okay uh, the next thing is associated property or your 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 addition of a matrices are associated associative as well okay so associative so associative property associative property i'm not writing a lot of properties over here but the one who are important i'm writing over here a plus b plus c which is nothing but equals to a plus b plus c and all of these can be proved very very easy the proof is very very easy not a hard please feel free to search on internet about the proof it is very very easy associative commutative it's it's the proof are available on internet okay so so the last thing what i'm which i'm the first property is commutative the second is associative the last one is dimension property the dimensions are be shame the dimensions the dimensions the dimensions of the dimensions of your of your uh, uh, the the two 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 matrix should be same. The the, uh, the matrix the matrices should be same. The matrices should be same. Okay, the dimensions. Okay, if it is not, then then it will be undefined. Your operation will be undefined. Okay, cool. So so now we have we have we have talked about one of one of the operation which is addition of a matrix, and I really really hope that you understood addition. You you understood a scalar, but one thing that which I'm going to spend some some two minutes talking about is you may be thinking, yeah, you do we really really need to know about these stuffs? Uh, so I would say, yeah, you need to know about. Although you don't need to just worry about how I'm going to code it. You can actually develop it from very very scratch. Not a big deal. But there are some libraries like NumPy, which which, which would be in this course we'll be using in this course, or or PyTorch. That will be you doing using uh, uh, their, their li library for scientific computation, for addition of a matrix, for multiplication of a matrix, which they handle, uh, which are they, are they, they are very efficient, okay? Because in real world, your matrices are not three by three matrix. They are, they are, uh, they are billions. The size, size is millions, okay? Millions by millions. So, so they are, they are very, very large. So, so, so matrix, matrix mul multiplication with your own for loops are very, very. It will time taken, okay? So that's that's that that's a big deal, okay? So your your time complexity will increase as your input size increases, okay? So that's a big deal. So you are, we are learning this to understand the inner workings of our of our functions so that we can we can know how how our algorithm is doing and how everything is working behind so that it becomes very easy to debug something or to get some error or 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 to to have very good or decent knowledge of what your code is performing, okay? Cool. So addition of a matrix is also done. Now let's you can do you can do the same with sub subtraction of a matrices. Please try it out by your own. The next thing which which I'm gonna do is spend some time talking about is matrix multiplication. Okay. Bit bit moon. I'll spend some time talking on this. Okay. So the first the so next next thing which I'm gonna to talk about is matrix uh, matrix matrix multiplication matrix matrix multiplication okay so this is your uh, next operation which is which is one of the most important important uh, important what do you say uh, the operations which you which you need to learn okay so you are given a matrix a you're given a matrix a i'm going to take very easy example one seven two four okay and you are given a matrix b given a matrix b which is three five three Two, okay. Now you need to cal. Now what do you need to do? You want to multiply matrix A with matrix B. Okay. So how do you do? You may be thinking, here yeah, you sh here is two by two. Here is two by two. Here is two by two. One times three, seven times three, two times five. That's 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 not a how you do. Okay. So the matrix multiplication, the way you do, is like this. You take the first row of that A matrix, you take the first row, I'm going to change my pen, you take the first row of that A matrix and multiply with the with, multiply with the first column of the B, B matrix, multiply with the first column of the B matrix, okay, so, so here's here's how you do, so resulting matrix, resulting matrix C will be 1 times 3, okay, plus, I'm taking the dot product of your 
of your row vector times the column vector. So what you what you are actually doing is taking out the dot product dot product which you'll see in our later videos. Don't don't worry about that dot product of this this is your because if if you see this is your it it, it this it it has only one row. Okay, so of a vector of a vector of a of a vector of a row vector of a row row vector and column vector column vector so this this is a column vector where it has only one column so he, specifically you are taking out a dot product of a row vector and a column vector what is dot product so dot product is element wise see what what you do you simply multiply and add it up but element wise adding and add it up okay so over here what what you what are you going to do you 1 times 3 and 7 times 5 1 times 3 7 times 5 and then you will add it okay now you take this uh, uh, again this row again this row with this row row vector and multiply with this column vector multiply with this column vector so that is that will be nothing but equals to 1 times 3 plus 7 times 2 okay now what do you do now what do you do you you now you have this this taking of the dot product of row row vector and the second column vector which is v2 okay now what do you do you do go 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 further into this the second row vector which is 2 by 4 and then you do the same 2 times 3 dot product of the 2 4 which is called row vector with the column vector okay 4 times 5 okay and then 2 times 3 4 times 5 2 times 3 2 times 2 okay so 2 times 3 plus 4 times 2 okay that will be nothing but equals to c which is nothing but equals to uh, 1 times 3 which which will be how much 1 1 times 3 it should be 3 plus 5, 35, okay, 1 times 3, 3 plus 14, 2 times 3, 6 plus uh, 20, which is 26, 2 times 3, 6 plus 8, which is nothing but 14, okay, cool, so this is your resulting and then what do you do, just simply, Make your uh, 38, 17, 26, 14 will be your resulting vector, which is 2 by 2 matrix, which is the 2 by 2 matrix. Okay, so when you multiply with this, you will be getting uh, your favorite. Uh, the after after multiplication of a matrix, this this is your answer of this of your particular question. Got it? And I really really hope that you are that you are under, understanding what I'm what what whatever I'm trying to say. But you it, it may you you can use you it can have any any dimensional but some properties are there okay so let's let's visit the property i'm just going to constrain that dimension property is very important in this so what dimension should match to be so that the matrix multiplication is not undefined okay so so the properties of a matrix multi multiplication so the first property which i'm going to talk about property the first property is for a, for example you are given a matrix a b and c so these are three matrix which are n by n matrix which are n by n matrix where you have n n by n matrix okay so where you have n rows and n columns okay so the, the first thing which holds is commutative property of multiplication of this multiplication does does not hold okay so matrix multiplication is not commutative is not commutative is not is not okay so when you multiply a b a, b a which is which will be totally wrong it can be proved it can prove uh, it, can, it can prove very easily and then the next property associative property of a matrix multiplication is 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 there okay so associative property associative associative property is there okay so a b plus c which is nothing but uh a okay so i think it's i have written for this dis, dis, distributive i have written for a b c which is nothing but equals to a b c okay it can prove rigorously and of course you're multiplying it over here okay it can it can prove very very easily it is distributive property distributive property this, this it is also dis, dis, distributive property so what are you going to do a b plus c that that will be a b plus a c and you can prove these, you can prove this 
uh, very very easily which which can be found on internet the next thing is the most important dimension property dimension property dimension property so the dimension property is you can have m number of a rows you can have m number of a rows you can have any number of a rows but and n number of a columns okay this is for the dimension of a matrix a your dimension of a matrix b should be your 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 number of a rows should be same as uh, number of a columns in that matrix a okay times k n number of a okay so your resulting will be m times k okay so so it makes sense as well if you have you, you can have m number of a uh, rows and the a, a matrix but you can and n number of a columns okay but with here you can have only n number of a columns n number of a n number of a row sorry n number of a rows okay so here you have a 2 2 by 2 so here it has 2 and the resulting will be the resulting will be 2 by 2 vector sorry matrix okay so that the is the, the resulting size will be this okay so this is your dimension property of your matrix multiplication cool so we have talked a lot about matrix and 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 you and you are seeing that you are going and then you, and you are seeing that that we are going bit up bit bit little bit little bit up so the last thing which i will end this video which i promised you is is talking about matrix vector product is a matrix vector multiplication okay so what i'm going to talk about is matrix vector multiplication okay so let's 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 do that then so let's do that so you have a matrix a you have a matrix a which is nothing but which is nothing but so i'm just just going to define rigorous a uh, very, very very definition of matrix vector product so i'm just 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 going to write it very very fast a11 a12 all the way around to the a1n and a12 a22 a2n uh a m1 which is which is n1 okay you can n2 okay the a n m okay so this is your matrix this this is your matrix so it is having m number of our columns and n number of our rows okay this is your matrix a and you want to multiply with to multiply with a uh, a vector a column a row row a column vector okay x2 x m x n okay so to do the multiplication of it so how do we do it how you how you how you will you will will you do it so you want to multiply a matrix which is a which is m times n matrix times the vector a scalar uh, sorry vector a column 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 vector x which will be the definition will be so so what if what if we the answer of this so how will you perform the operations so for performing the operations it is nothing but equals to a11 x1 so what you are actually doing you can take this a11 okay and you multiply this with this multiply this with this okay so what you are actually doing what you what you are actually doing you are multiplying you are multiplying the the column vector the column sorry row vector so the row vector to the column vector okay element wise and adding it up okay so the dot product between your row vector and a column vector and adding it up okay so a11 plus we are adding plus over here see a12 x2 plus a13 x3 all the way down to the a1 m a1 m times x m x m okay then you do the same a12 x1 plus a uh, plus a 2 uh, all the way around to the a 2 uh, n okay so you're multiplying with x whatever x so what what you are actually doing you're multiply you're taking this column vector taking this column vector so a row vector and multiplying with it so you are taking on the dot product between taking on the dot product taking on the dot prop taking on the dot product and giving your answer that's it okay taking taking on the dot product of between the row vector and the column vector so let's see with one of one of the example 
so it 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 it, it would make more sense so here you have minus 3 0 3 2 1 7 minus 1 9 okay and you have a, a um, vector column vector 2 minus 3 4 1 okay so what what will be the output so the answer will be uh, mi minus 3 times so so we are taking this you are taking this and multiplying with this okay minus 3 times 2 plus 0 times 3 okay minus 3 is minus plus 3 times 4 plus 2 times 1 it's yeah it's 1 okay now you go for the 1 times 2 1 times 2 plus 7 times minus 3 plus minus 1 times 4 plus 9 times 1 that will be nothing but equals to After after you added everything, after calculating, okay, after calculating that will be a and b, which is two by two, two by two, sorry, two by one vector. So which is a column vector, which is two by one. So after 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 doing the matrix vector, you transform you what what you do, you have this R four, R four where is four dimensional vector. You transform it to D after doing the after. You're using this vector, using this matrix, say you transform it into a na a and b, which is the two by one, okay? Which is from R four to R two, okay? So here you transform using this matrix A. So 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 we'll see in our four videos that matrix multiplication are a linear transformation, okay? So so we'll see in our later videos. But but now as of now, I I hope that you understood the matrix vector product. Okay, so in the next video, which what I'll be showing you a wired thing over here, or not a wired thing, a very useful thing over here, is the linear combination using the help of matrix vector product. So I will take an example of matrix vector product as a linear combination of uh, of so that it would make more sense, and then we'll complete the linear combination in our, in, in our next video, and then and then we'll end up uh, this. Uh, uh, so we'll be completing, and then we're talking about the. linear transformation and really really hope that that you understood this i'll be catching up you in the next video till then bye bye have a great day and and please please and one more thing the attendance is you have to mark your attendance so please please feel free to do so bye bye have have a great day Okay, so welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we'll we'll be discussing about linear combination of a vector. So, in the this is this is one of the most important concept. As you will go further and will understand. Okay, so it sets up a very strong fundamentals to mathematically understand or to see the deep learning or machine learning into a, a linear algebra point of view. So, it, this is one of the most important concept which we'll focus on. So, in this video, we'll talk about that specifically. So uh, as so I in this video I'll just give you I'll be giving you some definition of linear combination and then I will giving you some some examples and then we're talking about a matrix vector product as a lin linear combination because in previous video at last we talked about matrix vector product so that's why we are in this video we'll be talking about the as an example taking that as an example for linear combination of our matrix vector product okay. So, so the definition states. So, the definition of a linear combination states. Uh, so, let's let's do something. Let's start with an example. Let's start with an example. An example states. An an example states. Key that you have. So, the first example that I want to take is you have a scalar. You have a scalar, and you multiply with the sum vector u. Okay, and then you have and then uh, plus two with sum vector v. Okay. and that will be some resulting vector that will be some resulting vector which is just a, a scale version of u and v which is nothing but uh, for example d okay so that is the resulting vector of our uh, after applying of first of all we we added it up uh, sorry mul mul multiplied and added the vector okay so that that will be the resulting vector so the resulting vector is a linear combination of a vector u And a v, k. 
Okay, so ag again, listen to me. That what you we we have taken this example, and and this in this example we have one scalar three, and then we multiply with a vector u. So for example, we can have a vector u to to be two by two. So when when you multiply three times, okay, that would be nothing but three to six six. That would be the six. Okay, six six. Okay, plus you have some some vector b. It is nothing but four four. Okay, so two times four. So when you multiply or do the scalar scalar vector multiplication, that will be simply element wise product. So two times four, which is eight, and two times four, which is eight. Okay, so when you uh, now you add eight by eight. Okay, so that will be eight by eight. That will be nothing but eight by eight. Okay, so the resulting vector will be fourteen by fourteen. Okay, so that the the resulting vector will be fourteen by fourteen, which is your d, which is your vector d. So this the vector d is a linear combination of your vector u, of your vector u, and of your vector v. Okay, so the the is the resulting vector is a linear combination of these two vector, which is u and v. So I hope that you that that you are understanding what I what what I am trying to tell. And this fourteen is just uh, the the six plus eight, which is okay. So this is the d is a result resulting vector uh, after after you do. So what you specifically done is multiplied. There is some scalar. So there is some scalar. So you are given any number of a vector. So the I am writing the definition. So what you specifically done? You are given you are given any number any number of any number. Of vectors, so you're given any number of vectors, and the linear combination, the linear combination, linear combination of the vector of the vectors. So you are given any number of vector, but the linear combination of this vector means these vectors are simply the result of, are simply the result when we multiply, when we, when we multiply. When we multiply each vector, each vector by a scalar, scalar, and add the vectors. So, so how you get the linear combination is you are given any number of vectors. Okay, so you are given any numbers of vectors, and the linear combination of those vectors, the given vectors, is simply the result. Is this in this case the result? Of when the the result when you multiply when you multiply each vector which is you are you are given u and v over here so when you multiply each vector by a given scalar which in 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 this case is three and two okay and add them up that the resulting vector is a linear combination of those vectors okay so the formal notation which I can write is you are given a vector a. You are given. You are. You are given a vector b. You are given a vector c. You are. You are given a vector d. Okay. So you need to find out the linear combination of these vectors. So, so the linear combination of these vectors will be simply uh, when you multiply with some scalar. Okay. With some scalar. So I'm just going to write it uh, uh, a. Okay. So this. No, so let me write a different name of this. So I will just. So your given given vectors given vectors are are I think uh, v, u, g. Okay. So this these these three are your uh, given vector. Okay. Uh, now what you do? Uh, you simply multiply with some scalar t. Okay. So so what what will be the? So we want to ask what will be the linear combination linear combination. Linear combination of these vectors. So, what is linear combinations? So, the definition states that the linear combination is the result when you multiply the given vectors by some scalar and add the vector. Okay, so that is the resulting vector. So, what do you do? Simply multiply a scalar with a vector plus b uh, with the u vector plus c with the z vector. The resulting vector d, which will be nothing but your linear combination of V, U, and G. 
okay so that will be the resulting that will be the linear combination so let's see more of the example to get comfortable with this so that you could get a you could get a good feeling okay this is the linear combination okay so another, another example can be you can have a vector u you can have a vector u and you can have a vector v you can have a vector v so so what do you do you it can be like this where any number minus one times u vector which is a scalar plus zero v the answer whatever the resulting vector will be will be the linear combination of these two vectors which, which are the given vectors okay so it can be fraction as well your uh, it for the, the the scalars can be fraction and fraction as well 5 1 7 by 11 it can multiply with some 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 vector u and 1 9 5 by 2 with some vector v the resulting vector the resulting vector the resulting vector will be your linear combination of these two vectors which is u and which is v okay so whatever the resulting vector is will be the linear combination of u and v vector okay so let's take one formal example so that we, we could understand it's much much better okay so one formal example of linear combination say you are given a u uh, say you are given a vector u say you are given a vector u u which is which is uh, which is two two dimensional vector which is a two by one vector or we can say it's a column vector minus five by zero because column vector is what what the, the vector the, the matrices with only one column and over here this is we have only one column so so so, so that's why it's called a column vector so that's what we are telling it to the column vector please see the previous video to help us understand to help you understand much more better way okay uh, and you have a vector and you have a vector v which is zero to okay so you so, so you are given a vector u and v okay this is also a column vector this this is also a column vector so what you want to do is to take out the linear combination of these two vector and 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 the linear combination can be uh, we can multiply this 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 is uh, this uh, u vector so what we can do we can multiply any scalar with this u vector plus any scalar with this v vector we will we'll be getting the linear combination of these two vectors so let's take an example so let's let's take one example you multiply one with minus five zero okay minus five zero plus uh, you multiply you 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 have a scalar one which is in place of v and you have 0 by 0 2 okay that is your vv and the resulting vector which will be nothing but minus 5 by 2 okay and this is the linear combination of these two vectors and you can you can you can go ahead you can try it at different different scalars and the, and the same will be so you try first you can try different different scalar with 2 with the a minus 5 0 plus 2 it, it can be any number 0 2 that will be nothing but when you do this to which is minus 10 and then minus 10 0 plus 0 4 that will be nothing but equals to minus 10 4 so this is minus 10 4 is a linear combination of these two vector yeah you heard me correct this is the linear combination of these two vector as well as this is the linear combination of these two vectors you heard me correct it can be you can multiply with some scalar 4 okay with minus 5 0 plus I think okay you can do with 1 uh, 0 2 the resulting vector whatever the resulting vector after doing this a b will be the linear combination of these two vectors you heard me correct yeah exactly so the linear combination will be is it, it, it can be it, 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 it can be anything okay after the whatever means you, you take any scalar multiply with a given vector uh, you will and add it up you will be getting your linear combination so linear combination cannot be over uh, uh, s some some finite over here okay except some exceptions which are there okay so over here linear combinations are said to be a vector if there exists a scalar a b okay and then whatever the resulting vector will be will be the linear combination of those two vectors okay do not think that linear combinations can be one one is uh, linear can, can combination of any two vector can be only one no it can be anything it, it can be any number of a linear combination 
of that two vector. What you need to do is simply multiply the vector with some scalar a or b, whatever, and add it up. The resulting vector will be your linear combination of those two vectors. So again, I'm writing one formal, formal definition. So we have already written one formal definition, but let's write one definition which will give you a more idea about what we have seen so far. So the, so the definition states, so the definition states, a vector r, okay, so a vector r, a vector, a vector r, a vector r is said to be the linear combination, is said to be a linear combination, a linear combination, a linear combination, a linear combination of A, B, C, okay. Uh, a, a vector is said to be a linear combination of a vector A, B, and C, etc. Okay, so a, 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 a vector R is said to be the linear combination of these given vectors A, B, C, which in this case this was U and V, in this case this, this was U and V, these are the given, these are the vectors, okay, these are the given vectors. So the same way A, B, C, D, A, these are the, the given vectors. Okay, if there exists, if, if there exists, if there exists scalars, if there exists scalars, x, y, z, etc., whatever the means, whatever, how, whatever the number of your vector is, such that, such that your resulting vector is equal to x, a, plus y, b, z, c, all the way around to the n. So, so a vector R is said to be the linear combination of these vectors, of these vectors, if you multiply the scalar with a given vector respectively, respectively, and the res it then, then the R is said to be the linear combination of these two vectors, of these all the vectors. So again, I'm repeating what's a linear combination means. It simply means that it simply means that the the vector r is 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 if we, if we can call it as a linear combination okay how we can call we, we are given a vector we are given these vectors we are given these vectors and if there exists exists some scalar and such that in such a way that your the, the resulting vector is equals to the multi the the, the r is the is the multi when you multiply a scalar with a vector and add add the add the vector the resulting vector will be your linear combination of that uh, given vectors okay so let's take one example one simple simple example is uh, is let's uh, you want to you want to say is 1 by 4 so you are you are you are given a vector u so i'm just going to take take one example so that everything is uh, make you understandable. So your 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 example is you are given a vector u. You are given a vector u, which is minus five zero, which is a two two dimensional a vector. And you are given a vector v. You are given a vector v. You are given given a vector v, which is zero two, which is zero two. So you want to show you want to show is is your one by four, which is your r, the vector r. Is the is also a linear combination? Is also the linear combination, combination of vector u and vector v. So you want to show is this vector is the linear combination of these two vector? Okay, you want to show this. You want to show this. This is a problem. So you want to show this. Is this the resulting which is r one by one four? Is the linear combination of these two u and v vector? Is you want to show it? So how you are going to show it? So for showing it, we, 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 we will see the systems of equations, solving the systems of equations later on. But we can, I will just give you a tool. So, so 1 by 4, so this will be the resulting vector. So if there exists some scalar, which is 1 by 5, so this is, this, this is my scalar, times your vector, minus 5, 0, plus there exists a second scalar, times the 0, 2. So your resulting vector is 1 by 4, and hence, and hence, this 1 by 4 is the linear combination of this u and of this v vector, okay? So I hope that you, that, that you are able to understand what I'm talking about, the linear combination of these vectors. I hope so, okay? For a linear combination 
of a vector u and a vector v and I have given you also the formal definition of a linear combination so so let's let's see one terminology the terminology states terminology states terminology states that terminology states that the constants or the scalars which is here 1 1 5 and this is 2 so these these are called the weights of the given vector so in we we, we don't call it as a scalar we, we call it as a weights rather than calling the scalar so if you have seen your if you, if you have seen your uh, your hypothesis function so you have a theta so that's so 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 that says so that is the weights weights of your vector so the same way over here we don't call it as a scalar we call it as a weight of that u and v vector okay so i hope so that you are getting a point uh, towards linear algebra and viewing machine learning or deep learning into the view of linear algebra okay so i hope that you have your understanding so let's take one example to understand the weights so for example for example for example one by minus five is your linear combination of vector one four plus one one when we multiply with the some weight this is called the weight so three that will be the this is the linear combination of these two vectors these two vectors okay and over here over here that one four one four which is a vector any vector and one one with weights with weights which is minus two and three okay so my one by minus five is the linear combination of a vector u one one four and one one with weights minus two and three. We, we don't don't we, we don't call it as a scalar. We even call it as a weights of that thing. Okay. So I hope so that you are understanding whatever I'm trying to say you over here. So I'm just going to talk about one last thing. If I have a time, yeah, I do have a ten minutes time. So uh, what I what what I can talk about today is is the next concept which is the span of a vector so okay so i'm just 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 going to just make you familiar this is this is this is just very easy so the way we'll be talking about a span of a vector i'll be just giving a, a small introduction to span and in the next video if possible i can show you some 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 geometric intuition of a span okay so what is a span so let me let me write it span of okay so what is span Span is a set of all the possible linear combination of a given group of vectors. So for example, we showed you over here, we showed you you can have a multiple linear combination of a given vector u and v. You can have a multiple linear combination. Are you getting me? So you can you can you can, you can have a multiple linear linear combination of that given vector u and v or u and v. So the same so the group of all the or the set of all the linear combination of a given group of vector in this case u and v is the span of those vectors i hope so that you're getting me okay so let me show you with any help of example or or before that i'm going to give you a formal formal definition of this span because i think i i, I trust some definitions also so span, definitions gives you a clear way of thinking this so i'm going to just give you a definition this, this definition of a span, the definition of a span, the definition of a span is the set of all the possible, the set of, the set of all the possible, all the possible linear combinations. I'm just going, just going to write linear combinations, linear combinations, linear combinations of given of given group of vectors okay so group of vectors what do i mean with this that uh, how do the, the the like in in this example for example you have a vector u yeah, and you have a vector v so you want to take out the linear combination so these are the group of vector to for for which you want to take out the linear combination okay so the given group of vectors is called the span is called the span of those vectors, the span of those vectors, which is a group of vectors, span of those vectors. So we'll see see one example to help us understand understand is much better way. So let's take one example of that. The, the example which I'm going to take is this is not a very hard example. I'm just I'm just going to take a some simple example. You're given a vector u, two two, and then you have a, and you're given a vector v, 
which is one one. Okay, so this is the two vectors, which is the, and 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 your and your and you can take out the linear combination. You can take out the linear combination when when you have a two three four nine ten. Where you another vector is also the same stage, same size. Okay. So, but should be the same dimension. So you can take a linear combination of this. Just you need to multiply with a scalar and then add it up, and then you will be getting your linear combination. So, so over here, so over here, so over here. If you so first of all, let's take out some set of linear combinations. So what I can do is we can multiply this u vector with some weight. I'm not talking. I'm not taking the name of scalar just for practice, a good practice. So we can multiply with some weight too. Uh, two two which is and here I can multiply with I think one 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 and you can add it up that that will be nothing but four four and add it up I'm just being transparent so that everyone follows the same is uh, because I think a trans being transparent uh, just for a sake of it's it's very very important so that the conceptual clarity uh, will be very very easy for you all. Okay, so this is the the first the first for like for this is the let's take an example. This is your win win linear combination. So uh, your win linear combination is this for for example we written v. Okay, no not v. We have already already win. So th this is your first linear combination. Let's take out a second or third. Let's take out a second. We can multiply three two two plus. I'm just taking an example two one one, which will be nothing but three to six six. Plus two, two, that will nothing but eight, eight. Okay, so this is your H, which is your second uh, linear combination. Let's go on taking the third. So which is the last one for us? Four, two, two, three, one, one, which is four, eight, eight, plus three, three, which will nothing but eleven, eleven. Okay, so this is your i, which is your another vector. Okay, not i. Let's 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 give it as a, okay, not j as well. Let's give it as a k. Okay, let's give it as k vector. Okay, so these three are uh, just to, yeah, you can take out any. You can you can take out lot more linear combination. You can just go ahead, just multiplying with some scalar and then multiplying with some vector and then adding it up. You'll be getting your linear combination of that two vectors. So I'm not I'm not arguing you with that. So I've just taken three linear combination. So these three, the five by five eight five five. This is our G. I'm just taking Z, Z, H, and K. Is the span? Is the span? Is the span of vector u and v? Instead of saying lot of linear combination, so you can just say okay that this these are the span of those two vectors. So span, span if you if you see geometrically speaking, if you see over the it just your your linear combination span whole two D space. Okay, so please see some for some visualizations to. To from three three blue one brown they give a but I have given you a geometric intuition that all the possible linear combination is called the uh, is called the span of those vectors. So the notation for writing this is just a span of the vectors v one v two v three is written as a span of v one v two v three. Okay, just I've shown you over. Here. Okay, please see the notes. The notes are also given to you just for your own good. Okay, so this is this this is what I talked about a bit about span and I hope that you really really understood this. Let's go on. A last topic of this video is matrix vector product. Okay, so matrix vector product. So what I'm going to do is uh, I have already talked about matrix vector product, but just the last thing which I'm going to just talk about. So I do have time. So let's talk about matrix vector product. Matrix vector product. So uh, so let's say you're given a vector a. You're given a vector a. Yeah, where you have some a b c d e f g h i okay so this is your uh, matrix a and then you have a scale uh, then you have a vector x then you have vector x which is x uh, for example 1 x1 one, x2 and x3 okay so you want to take out the matrix vector product so how do you take out so it's, it will be simply what you do so what you do you will simply uh, I will simply this is your a x which is simply nothing but 
you, you take this, you take this column, you take this column, you take, you take this column, which is the column vector, and you take this. Uh, sorry, your row vector, you take this row vector and you take this column vector, you just multiply it up. Or you can say, you can take, we'll talk about the dot product, just don't worry. So what we can say, we take out the dot product of a row vector, of a row vector and a column vector, and a column vector, okay? So what you are, what you are specifically doing is taking out the dot product between between two between a row vector and a column vector. So what does dot product mean? Means it is just element wise product and sum it all up. Okay. So that will be nothing but uh, that that will be a times x one plus b times x two plus c times x three. Okay. And then when when you add it, so let me write the resulting vector as well. Okay, so that will be a D. Okay, so after you multiply and add it, so that is just a dot product of, big, of, of, of two vectors, of two of, of a row vector and a column vector, which is this. We'll talk about the we'll talk in detail about the dot product and a transpose later on. Okay, so and then you do the same D times x1 plus E times x2 plus F times x3, and then do the same G times x3 plus h times x2 plus okay this one uh, i times x3 okay so you'll be getting e f so whatever the answer is and this is your final uh, matrix vector product product okay so which we have seen in, in our previous video but i'm going to relate as a linear combination so i'm just just going to do what, what, what i'm going to do just see over here so you have a vector a you have a vector a you have a vector a where i'm going to what i'm going to do a B C D E F G H I J K L. Okay, and I'm I'm gonna multiply this this matrix with a vector with a vector x1 x2 x3 and x4. Okay, so if you have this a vector and x uh, uh, sorry a matrix a and a vector x. Okay, so what you are gonna do you are just just gonna do, do the same thing you're gonna multiply a x. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how you can do how I, how I'm gonna represent this. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is to categorize this matrix into column vector, different set of different set of column vector. Okay, so we can take this, we can take this the first first column, the first column, and say this. Okay, okay, this is the so you take it a V1. Okay, take the second column, you'd say this V2. Take the third column, you'll say this V3. You take the fourth column, you'll say this V4. Okay, so 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 specifically, you, you you are not taking as a as a as a as a as a dot product or or the or the element wise product of row and column vector. Here, what you will do here, what you do, you categorize your matrix A into a different uh, in, into a, into a set of uh, column vector, which is V1, V2, V3, and V4. Okay, and then when you multiply, when you multiply AX, AX, which is nothing but what you will do, what you will do, you will simply do uh, X1 times V1, X1 times V1, okay, X1 times V1, you multiply all X1 with this A, okay, X1 times V1, okay, and this is your scalar, this is of course your scalar, so let me write in small, X1 times v1 okay so v1 v1 plus x2 times v2 plus x3 times v3 v3 plus x4 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 times v4 okay so that whatever will so this is whatever the result will be for example r will be your linear combination so just listen what i'm trying what i'm trying to say you can borrow this now what do you do you take the you take this x1 and multiply x1 times x1 times x1 times c and the x2 times x2 times x2 times x3 times x3 times x3 times and x4 times so what do you do you given a weight of these column vectors so the resulting vector will be the linear combination of the column vector a so this this r will be the linear linear combination linear combination of vector 
a okay of a vector uh, of 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 a matrix of a column vector a okay of a column vector a so 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 these these are the results resulting vector will be the linear combination of the column vector a of the column vector i just 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 have read column vector column vector which is v v1 v2 v3 all the v4 so you have seen me how i done this as is to show, to showcase you in the, in the form of linear combination so i hope that you understood a lot from this video and i really really hope that you will uh, try to try to do the uh, try to mark your attendance as well because it is an lms so try to mark it your notes are in the description box below please feel free to assess the notes uh, it is very very important to uh, to to work from there uh, uh, and and also and and the next video we'll be talking about uh, the the tra linear transformation where we'll be introducing the notion of a transformation when we, when we multiply a two matrix so that the, the that that is thus a transforming one matrix into uh, from one dimensional space to another 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 dimensional space that is a transformation which we'll talking about in the next video and then and then i hope so that uh, we'll be able to complete the uh, chapter number 1 in some days and then i hope uh, it is it is much clear to you as well uh, the next then the, the, the one of the announcement that i want to give is please 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 share the video and and mark your attendance in your in your quizzes okay uh, uh, by by going to the assignment tab in your lms if if you are in lms so please go there and please 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 try to try to search for some some for some problem sets so try to search for some resources although you don't need i have talked a lot about uh, more than enough okay for for your journey so so uh, thanks for seeing this video I, I hope i hope that you enjoyed this and you have taken your own notes please feel free to assess the notes on the description i'll be catching up your next video till then bye bye and have a great day Okay, everyone. Welcome to this lecture on linear transformation. So, in this video, we'll be specifically talking about linear transformation. In the pre previous video, we talked about matrix vector product or 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 in or a linear combination, which which was the very fundamental concept. And we also talked about span of a vectors. Now, in this video, we'll be talking about linear transformation, one of the most amazing concept or the beauty of algebra or linear algebra, which you will ever see. And also, this this sets a very uh, uh, foundation of your of your algebra skills or you have to study as of now. Okay, and it's and it is used extensively in the field of uh, deep learning uh, when when you read research papers or or when when you are studying some algorithm. So if you want to understand the by the point of view of linear algebra, then then I think uh, linear transformation is one of the best thing. Uh, to study and I, and this is a compulsory topic to study as the most co most most concept is related to this but you may think hey you which is transformation so can you just define what a transformation is i just want to you to search on google what's a transformation means and then put that in a comment box please give the timestamp so that i could i could know okay you are you are here okay so please go on youtube try to search about transformation and then come back Okay, so transformation like like just transform something or or do something to that a uh, function or or if if you know about function so linear transformation can be thought of as a functions okay as the new name given when when we deal with in linear algebra okay so linear transformation is nothing or can be just thought of as a functions can be thought of thought of thought of as a functions. Can be thought of as a functions. Why I'm telling this? In in functions, what you do? You give some input value. You give some input input value, and you want your f, and you want your f to map this input value to the output value y. Okay. So this is this is this is what the linear transformation is doing. Linear transformation uh, takes some 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 vector as an input, maybe two two dimensional vector, which is two dimensional vector. It wants a function. It wants a function t that maps from n dimensional to m dimensional vector. Okay, this is the definition of linear transformation. Again, let's say we will see see some of the definitions to help us more clear what actually linear transformation means. But in but in but in but in big picture, uh, linear transformation can be thought of as a functions like it takes some 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 sort of vectors or vectors and transforms from one dimension to or n dimensional vector to another dimensional vector or a different space into that 
uh, plane. Okay, so this is the this is the basic thing which you need to study about. So uh, linear transformation can be thought of as a function that takes some uh, some 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 vectors or or just transforms that just transforms this vector from n-dimensional space to n-dimensional space and that can only be possible with a t which is a function t so the functions are the one which we take some value and maps input and input values to output values but in transformation we take we transforms x n means n-dimensional vector to n-dimensional vector okay so that's a linear transformation which you the definition so let's 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 start with an example so that we could understand it's much 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 more better way okay so just i'm going to write a definition and what in what we do in a case of functions and what we do in a case of uh, linear transformation so in functions we take some values we take some values we take some values input values and we map our input values and we map our input values input values to output values okay so to make a function f it takes some value and output the square effect which is parabola if you plot it out okay then that in, in case of linear transformation we what we do we make a function t 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 that takes the transforms the transforms from from one vector space transform the vector the transform the vector uh, from from Rn from Rn and this is the Rn from one from n dimensional to into a vector into a vector to Rm okay so it just transforms one 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 vector from one one vector space to another another vector space okay so this is the basic thing which you need to uh, which which will which we'll see I will just prove prove you out this equation so why it why it seems to be legit so let's start with an with an example so that i could just prove you that whatever whatever i'm telling is correct okay so let's let's take one example let's take one example say you have a you you if for example if you multiply example if we example will be say you multiply your m by n matrix so you have an m by n matrix you have your m by n matrix this this is your favorite matrix you have your m m by n matrix and what you want to do is simply multiply with a column vector which is n times 1 which is a column vector which is n times 1 so we'll just just multiply this this, this matrix with a column vector n times 1 so let's let's multiply it out with the column the column vector n times 1 okay so here it has only one column and the resulting vector of what we are specifically doing we are we are taking we are multiplying our matrix with a vector okay and then that that will be nothing but your n by one column vector m by m times one column vector okay m m times one column vector which is your which is resulting vector resulting vector that that will be the resulting column vector resulting column vector okay so so what so what it does so what it does it take it 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 took your it took your uh, it just it took took your or or in other words we see over here that an n m times n matrix that an m n m times n matrix transforms an n times one vector into an m times one resulting vector which is a another space okay so using this matrix we transform this vector into different vector space like this okay so for example let's see some sound example to make sense here we are taking the taking the the, the, the the matrix vector product which we have already seen in our previous videos so let's consider uh, consider this matrix a let's consider this matrix a as we as a three by three matrix so one two zero and two one zero which is a nothing but three by three matrix okay now I wanted to show you want to show show you want to show that the, by matrix multiplication by matrix vector matrix matrix vector multiplication or that matrix multiplication matrix by matrix multiplication by matrix multiplication you want to show by matrix multiplication a transforms this this matrix a transforms 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 vector in r3 vector in R3, which is which is a which is a column vector, which is which is three three dimensional vector like this, a vector which is a three dimensional x y z, which is from R3 from from in from R3 
टू आर टू और टू आर टू ओके इन टू ए इन टू इन टू इन टू अ वैक्टर इन टू वैक्टर इन आर टू आर टू सो जस्ट यूजिंग ए यू नू ट्रांसफॉर्म दिस वैक्टर एक्स यू नू ट्रांसफॉर्म द वैक्टर एक्स एंड देन दैट विल इन टू इन टू एन आर टू विच इज नथिंग बट योर x and y on the two two dimensional rather than being a three dimensional that's that's when we call a linear transformation of a matrix okay so let's see so with, with, with an example you have a you have a vector so uh, so r3 so over here r3 r3 are a vector of a size is a vector of a size 3 by 1 which is a which is a 3 by 1 third three, three dimensional vector while vector r2 r2 which you want to transform you know you want to show is 2 by 3 Two times three, which is the two. Sorry, uh, two times it's 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 two times one. It's two-dimensional vector. So it's transform. It's using the a. Or you want to transform your 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 vector means you using a or or a transform. You just show that a transforms the vector of from, means uh, from R three in R three into a vector R two. Okay, which you want to show. Okay, so when you do this. When you do this, so this 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 is of size two by one, which is which is your uh, which is your row vector. I I think it's column vector, column vector, and then you if you if you multiply a, which is your two by three matrix, which is a two two okay, it's two by three okay, it's two by three matrix by a three by one vector by a three by one vector by a three by one vector, the resulting vector which will be enough nothing but two by one. So you just showed using the what you do using a you multiply this a with uh, which you want to show means r three and then the resulting vector which you can see that you showed okay using a you transforms the vector in r three which is r uh, three which is this one into a vector r two which is two 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 okay or 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 a b which is a two dimensional vector. Okay, so that that is what it is telling. So let's see one of one of one of one of the example just to num numerically show you. So one two zero two one zero, and and what you and and you have this a matrix A, and you want a uh, uh, um and you and 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 you have a three dimensional vector x y z, and you and this is an A and this is a vector x, and you want to show you so you that uh, A transforms. Uh, in a trans a means uh, what do you say? The a transforms an an a, a matrix which is from R three into an R two. Okay, using a you want to transform R uh, from R three R three into R R two. So that would be nothing but x plus two y and zero. Of course, we we don't write it out. And and of and and two x plus y. Okay, and that and then it it will be after after you add it up, add it up, it will be either A and B, which is your R two. Okay, so that is the following. That the, what you done, you simply transform your fund one 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 vector space to another vector space using a function A or or using A, which is your matrix. Okay, so let's uh, let's let's define it out. So what you done, what you done, you made a function T to transform fun. And and from from n dimensional to m dimensional means a function t transform the vector m transform the vector r n into a function a function t is transformed from r n to r m which is another dimensional space. Got it? The linear transformation should satisfy your two constraints. The two constraints are the first constraint. The transformation t uh, x plus y it would be it would be is equals to the t x plus t y transformation of x plus trans transformation of y and then your trans transformation and then uh, you, this this is scalar a and this is a vector x and it, then it should be and then then it should be a uh, a and transformation of x so this these are the two conditions which you need to satisfy okay. Uh, these are the two basic conditions which you will ever see. Okay, but but the more form formally which I which I could state over here is linear transformation is the is the, the function that transforms your vector from one dimensional space from R n to R n. Okay, that is your linear transformation of your vectors or a matrix or, or of, of 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 a vector. Okay, so I uh, one one theorem is there. One theorem is there. The theorem states. Uh, Your let t be our let let t be a function or transformation that transforms from one vector's R n to R m, 
um, which is the transformation of your transformation of x which transforms r n to r m okay so i'm just 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 going to write the theorem which i'm not going to prove rigorously but you can prove it you can prove it t equals to r you know make a function t you know make a function t the transform r m to r r m okay uh, be a transformation defined by the trans transformation is defined by t of x okay to transfer you you give a uh, you give one vector which is of n dimensional and just what it will do using a which is a matrix just transform that vector means means the matrix vector product so i just showed you that a matrix vector product is a linear transformation okay so what do you do is if even you multiply to uh a, a, a vector with a matrix that 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 will just give you the linear transformation just it should satisfy the conditions which are listed over here the geometric understanding is also so not it is very very easy you can you can consider watching three blue one one brown videos for this i hope that will make more sense there okay so that was a short video on linear transformation about 15 minutes and i really really hope that, that you like this video uh, in the next video, we'll be talking about transpose of a matrix and uh, and 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 and, and uh, uh, dot product, which which you, which which is one of the most important concept. So let's get on to the next video. Okay, everyone. So today we'll be talking about transpose and a dot product of a matrix or a vector so we'll, we'll we'll be talking about that because in the video of linear combination i have taken one example of matrix vector product and i showed you how you can represent that matrix vector product as a dot product between the column vector and a row vector so we'll be talk, talking about what does it exactly means uh what is a dot product product and a transpose of a matrix so these are again two most important concepts which you will ever see in your journey of linear algebra again it's just one of the basic concepts which is very very easy to understand but still it's just very very uh, good to know about these things which gives you an extra tools to work efficiently uh, and and your deep deep learning problem or machine learning problem or, or, or other stuff okay so let's get started so so the so what is the transpose of a matrix? So I'm going to start with the transpose of a matrix. So what is a transpose of a matrix? So the transpose of a matrix is a kind of operator which flips over the diagonal, which flips over the diagonal, okay? Or make all the rows, or make all the rows. Uh, for example, if I could show you the, the the visualization. So for example, you have uh, we're going to take you have a column vector or row vector like this one two. So it's if the uh, diagonal is this one, the diagonal is this one, so it simply flips it, okay? So it simply flips it, then it would be, if you take out the transpose of this, so it will be one, two. So what it does, it flips over the diagonal. For example, let's let's take one, one more. Let's take one more. Let's take one more. You have one, two, three, four, which is a two by two matrix. Now, if you take out the transpose of this matrix, so what do you do? You have this diagonal, you have this diagonal, you have this diagonal. So if you flip over this diagonal, if you flip this over the diagonal, if you flip this over the diagonal, it will be nothing but one. If you flip this over the diagonal, if you slip, flip it, it's one, three, and two, four, okay? And two, four. So what you done, you simply flip it, and then above gone down, and down gone above. So that is what it is trying to tell. Or, or in other words, what you can interpret is, you make every row or sorry every column as a row and you make every column as a row okay so that you can that you can expect it so for example you have another so so if you have another matrix let's let's take an example that is six four three two and you apply the transpose onto this matrix so what will be the output so the output will be what you do you take this uh, you take this um, or you say the row, sorry, the column or the column vector and make it a row vector like this. Make it a row of row vectors, six and three. And you take this another, you make this four and two. Or in other words, what you can interpret is you flip over the diagonal, you flip over the diagonal, you make this three above and you make this four down, okay? So what you were specifically doing is to flipping over the diagonal like this, okay? So you will get the same result as you are doing. 
so it's just not a big deal to understand these things it's very very easy to understand okay so i hope that you that that you are able to understand what's the transpose of a matrix is so let's try a formal definition let's try a formal definition of your transpose of a matrix so the transpose of a matrix the transpose the transpose transpose of a matrix transpose of a matrix is an is a type of operator or a operator is is a operator operator which flips which flips over the diagonal over the diagonal over the diagonal okay so this is the transpose of a matrix so what it does is that the definition states that it is it just flip over the diagonal or to the main diagonal to obtain the tra a transpose so for example you are so for example you are given a vector a so what you do what you do you reflect a you reflect a you reflect a over its main diagonal to obtain the a transpose or in, it is just a te technical word to flip or reflect but specifically what is doing making the column vector as a row vector or and and a row vector as a column vector that's it okay you vice versa it can be anything so making a column vector to a row vector that's it okay so that is what it is telling and a row vector to a column vector whatever whatever seems good to you so a transpose just exactly doing the that okay so for example for for example you want to take you have your matrix a okay you want to take out a transpose you want to take out a transpose where it i represents your row and j represents your column so now if you, after this after applying the transpose at this matrix now your will be a j i now your column represents your rows and uh, rows represents your column again and again this is this is very easy to interpret so you have this 2 2 2 2 and you have this a matrix what you what what you do you apply the transpose on this matrix after applying the transpose of a matrix here you are having a transpose okay and you have i which is 2 or i and j okay you have i and j when you do that when you when you do ap apply the operator this will be nothing but or i could say zero zero let's take this zero zero okay so when you when you sorry we should not take this this zero zero let's take it as a Let's take it, take it as a one. Let's take it as a six. Okay, uh, just for understanding. Okay, so what if you, if you have the transpose over here, after applying the transpose of a matrix over here, your call your your row becomes your column, and column and column becomes your row. Or yeah, so your row becomes your column. So your row is the first row becomes your column. So after flipping over the diagonal, so uh, when you, when you apply, so it is two. Two and then your second second column becomes your second row. Okay, one and six. Okay, so what you specifically done? You flipped over or, or reflected the main diagonal or flipped the over the diagonal and then you obtain your transpose of a matrix. So that is what it is telling. So you can do in high dimensional spaces as well. For for example, we have a matrix where we have six, four, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay, so if you want to apply the transpose on this matrix, that will be nothing. You take this. Take this and put it over there. Six, four, nine, and then you take this. Ten, eleven, twelve, and you take this. The like thirteen, fourteen, I think fifteen. Okay. So this is this this is what you are doing is flipping over the main diagonal. Flipping over the main diagonal. Okay. To to, to or reflect it or reflect it over the main diagonal to obtain your transpose of a matrix. So we have we have done a lots of examples. So we'll see one or two more and more examples to make you more sense. So let's make one or more example. So I just hope that you are able to make sense what actually the transpose of. Uh, so that is the transpose of a matrix. So it is just what it is doing, it reflecting A over its main diagonal to obtain the A transpose that set what the transpose is doing. So if, if you take one more example, so you have a one, two. Okay, if you have one, two, if this is a A. Uh, or a okay here it's a column uh row vector if you transpose this a transpose that will be nothing but one two okay uh just flipping over or 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 making the row as a column vector okay the next thing can be for example you have a i want you to solve this i want you to solve this one two three four apply the transpose on this and say me what the result would be in the comment box comment box uh, write this answer in the comment box it will be very very easy to understand uh, so i could say i could see whether you're watching or not 
okay so that is the that is the transpose of a matrix so just just i'm going to going to write out some of the points some of the points please please pause this video and write your answer of a transpose of a matrix so just i i want you to write it out okay so let's see the the some some of the properties some of the properties properties of the transpose okay so you have to take out a transpose and then you have to take out the transpose now so tell me what it will be tell me what it will be tell me it would be nothing but a it would be nothing but equals to a you you first of all transpose it okay and then you take out the transpose of that so for example you have a, a which is 1 by 2 okay you have 1 by 2 okay so what do you do what do you do you take out the transpose of this which which will be 1 2 and then you take the transpose of this which will be 1 2 so these are e e equals to or not these are equals to so that's why we are telling that is the one of the property of a transpose of a matrix another property of a transpose of a matrix another property of a transpose of a matrix is a plus b ka transpose which will be nothing but a plus b ka transpose which is nothing but a transpose plus b transpose Okay, so that will be equal. So you have a a one two three four. Okay, and you have a b and and you have a b uh, one two three four. You want to add it by taking or now you want to take out the transpose of these three. So what you can do, you can take out the transpose of this. You can take take out the transpose of this, and that will be your answer. Okay, so let's do this. We're going to take out the transpose of this. That will be nothing but one three and two four. Okay, plus uh, one three. And two four, okay, which will be nothing but one plus one two three plus three six two plus two four four plus four eight, okay. That will be your final answer, which is two by two matrix. And this is this is what this property states. You can even what you can do, you can prove it. You can prove it extensively. You can prove it. You have a. You take out the transpose, and then you and then what you do? First of all, let's do the same thing. You first of all add it up. So when you add it up. One two three four plus one two three four. Okay, when you add it up, so one plus one one, two plus two four, three plus three six, four plus four eight. This is two four six eight. Okay, that that will be your answer of this particular. And then what you do? You take out the transpose of this because you added it up. Now you take when you when you when you take out the transpose, it will be nothing but two six four eight. and this is your answer so these both are equal so these both are equal so you can you can you can do x you can do separately transpose and then add and uh, yeah or yeah or you can or or you can do just first of all add and then take out the transpose both are equi equivalent your answer will be equivalent okay so let's see another uh, let's call it another page let's make another page How do we add one other page? Yeah, let's add one, 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 one more page. So another property is another property is A B transpose, A B transpose, which will be nothing but equals to B transpose and A transpose. Okay, so you have a, a, a you, let's say let's let, for the sake of an example, let's take a vector one two one two, and then you take a and you take a B B vector B vector you take a B vector which is two two. Okay, and then what you want to do? You want to take out the transpose of this. Okay, so let's first of all do this. So one, so that will be one times two, one one times two, which is which will be nothing but two, two times two, which is four. Okay, and then what you do? You take out the transpose of this. So when you when you take out the transpose of this, that that will be two four. That will be two four, which is a column vector. Okay, so that will be your first. Understand? This is your first. Now the let's let's check for equal equivalent for this. So we have B. So which is B, two two. If you if you take out the transpose of this, which will be nothing but two two, okay. And then you and and then what do you do? You first of all do this one two, okay. Which is after taking the transpose of this, that that will be one two. And then when you multiply it out, that will be nothing but two four, two four, which will which is both equivalent. So so we have proved this. We have proved this. Which are we we have proved this. Let's fourth. Let's score on fourth property. The fourth property is you have a scalar C and you have a matrix A. When you take out the transpose of it, that will be nothing but C A transpose. Okay. What you can do? You can first of all, rather than after multiplying and then taking out the transpose, you can first take out the transpose and then multiply by the C. Both will be same. Okay. 
uh, fifth the fifth you can you can actually verify this you can actually verify this is not a big deal okay just the way i'm doing okay so you need to take out the uh, de determinant of a transpose that will be nothing but determinant of a and if you if you if you don't know about this please ig ig ignore will which we which we will be studying this extensively in our later videos okay you can ignore this the determinant is is just the area of the parallelogram so you can e easily ignore this as of now okay sixth one the sixth one is the last one which i'm talking about a transpose minus one okay uh to the power of minus one a minus one transpose so these are equivalent okay so you take out the transpose and then and then inverse it first of all you inverse it and then take out a transpose both will be equivalent okay so these are some of the some of the most uh used properties in your transpose and i hope that you that you are able to understand this it's not a big deal to understand okay these are the transpose which we have talked about let's go on to the dot product to understand much better so let's 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 talk about a bit about dot product so what is dot product dot product what is the what it do what it do it do element element wise product element wise product and sum it all up that's it that's what the dot product is doing is to do element wise product and add a sum it all up that's what the dot product is doing so for an example so for example the dot product dot product so the so for example let's 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 take for a sake of an example you have a vector a where you which is your which is your row vector so a1 a2 all the way down to the an all the all the way down to the an and you have a b vector b row row vector which is b1 b2 all the way down to the bn okay so this is your two two vectors now what you need to do you know, if you if you want to take out the dot product between these two vector if you want to take out the dot product between these two vectors so how do you take out so what you if you simply add a summation so you have to take out the a dot you write dot b which is nothing but equals to i equals to 1 all the way around to the m a i b i so what it will do first of all a a a1 times b1 plus a2 times b2 plus a3 times b3 plus all the way around to the a n times b n and your final output will be one scalar c which is your dot product between these two row vector okay so that is the particular uh, the the algebraic definition so this is the algebraic definition of your dot product and or 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 in other words what you can tell is the dot pro dot product between two vectors is nothing but a b transpose the dot product the, the product between a and b transpose that that is your algebraic definition or this is your formal definition of your dot product wise product so for example for example you have this and you have another another vector like this your output will be a b c d e f your output when you when you take out the dot product between these two a plus d a times d plus b times e plus c times f and your output will be a scalar okay so if you have seen our matrix vector product matrix vector so we have we were having we were having so let's let's see uh, which we have seen already in our previous videos so let's say let's say let's say for a, for the sake of an example you have a b c d e f g h i okay and you have a vector which is x1 x2 and x3 you want to take out the product between these two so what you do you categorize this into a different categorize this into a different what do you say uh, the 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 column vector or sorry row vector yeah column vector v1 v2 v3 then what you do you take out the dot product you take out the dot product between v1 and a vector x so when you take out the dot product between a column vector with a uh, with a column vector so when you take out the dot product between these two that will be your answer which you have already seen in in our previous videos okay so i i don't think that we should uh, that we should care about this so i hope that uh, you are able to make sense of these things and please feel free to review the previous video on linear combination which i talked in detail about these things okay so this is this is what the dot product is so simply so you simply take out take take out the element wise product and sum it all up okay and that will be your simple scalar 
okay so that is what the dot product means and if you, if you have seen our videos on on, on hypothesis function which if, if you know about hypothesis function of linear regression if we talked about hypothesis function so in hypothesis function what we were doing we were and uh, we were taking out the dot product between our x and w we are taking out the x or a theta we are take, taking out the dot product product between x and w that that was res resulting in our prediction y hat okay so x was also maybe a matrix or a vector so you have a matrix or a vector so a vector of x can be uh, uh, other metric for example it's 2 4 6 7 and your w can be also 2 4 6 7 whatever I'm, I'm these are the weights of these feature and what you do you take out you take a sorry it's not a matrix it's a vector it's a vector dot product so you simply multiply it up you simply multiply it up and then what do you do you simply add it up and that will be one scalar which is your answer for a, for example 2 times 2 plus 4 times 4 plus 6 times 6 plus 7 times 7 and then after doing plus all those stuff then you will be getting your answer c which is an answer of this particular question okay i hope that you are able to make sense out of it so we have seen our algebraic definition of our dot product now it's time for seeing the geometric definition to help you more make more sense of your dot product of two vectors okay so let's see let's see of that so let's see uh the dot product the, the, let's uh, see uh let's take it let's take an example you know take out the dot product take out the dot product between two vectors between two vectors which is vector a and vector b which is geometrically speaking i'm going to i'm going to talk about geometrically now i'm going to talk about geometrically so for the sake of an example understand let's take an example that you have uh, a vector like this so sorry it's bad you have like this and you have this okay so this is your vector a this is actually vector a and this is actually vector b and just one thing if you're a calcul student there is a small fun quiz is it continuous is it continuous function we have a function <laughs> let's take an example that is a function okay is it a continuous function um if is it differentiable if it is continuous function if it is it differentiable that is your question okay so please feel free to put in comment just for the just for those who are a calculus student just tell me just uh, ignore this a and b just say uh, just say this this is a function and then just tell me it is a continuous and if it, it if it is then if it is differentiable or not okay this is this is your question to ask and an answer but the one who is studying learn your algebra please feel free to stick me up with this okay kindly ignore the question which i have told you cool so the angle between these two vector the angle between these two vector is nothing but the angle between is 59.5 degree okay so that is the angle between these two vector okay so this is the angle between these two vector so you want to take out the dot product between vector a and vector b so taking out the dot product between ang uh, 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 vector a and vector b which which will be nothing but it should be nothing but i would say uh, it should be nothing but norm of a norm of a times the norm of b the norm of b times cosine of theta cosine of theta so theta theta the angle between them is theta so the norm of a so for example let's assume the the length of a is uh, 10 okay length of a is 10 and uh, your length of b is 30 so here your vector a is nothing but 6 8 and when you take out the length is 10 using the pythagoras theorem pythagoras theorem and then uh, the vector b is 5 and 12 when you take out using the pythagoras theorem that will be or the or the or the norm of a vector when you take out the norm of a vector that will be 13 okay so the the the, the length of these i have already told you okay so that is 10 and 13 and when you multiply with a cosine of 59.5 okay so then you'll be getting then what you then what you will get 10 times 13 times 0 0.5075 and then when you multiply that will 65.98 whatever and then it will approximately 66 if you want to uh, what do you say take out uh, now if now is we got 66 now if you want to take out the algebraic the algebraic definition states 6 8 and 5 12 when you do this 6 plus 5 11 8 plus 12 20 
8 plus 12, 20. When you add this, so sorry. Uh, we are actually taking we are actually taking all the okay that six six times five it should be six times five why i'm doing six six times minus five sorry it's five yeah six minus six times it's minus six it's not six it's minus six okay so when you do this six uh, minus six times five and plus eight times twelve minus six times five plus eight times twelve and we, you will get minus thirty plus ninety six which will be 66 and these this is equivalent to this and you can also do with this 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 one with the higher dimensional spaces okay so i hope that that you that you are able to make sense out of it and i also hope that uh, you are you are able to understand a little bit about this okay so that is the dot product between these two vector a just you need to understand the numeric understanding of dot product that element wise product and add it all up that's it okay so i hope that you are able to make sense out of it and i, I also hope that that you are able to understand everything this was the dot pro, dot product between these two vectors and a transpose of vectors on a matrices and i also hope that uh, that till now you're you're able to understand most of it out of it and I also hope that uh, you will utilize this resource and share this resource to everyone that motivates me to work on this content. And so in the next video, we'll be talking about some of the types of matrices and then, and then we'll talk about rank, trace operators, determinant, eigenvalues, eigenvectors and solving the systems of equations and then our linear algebra will be done. So I hope that you like this video. I'll be catching up your next video. Till then, bye-bye. Hey everyone, welcome to this next lecture on linear algebra and M002 and I really really hope that you are enjoying this course. First of all, I want to thanks, thanks you and congratulate you as well that you had first, you had completed your first week and I'm, I'm very much happy to see so much of enthusiastic students who are watching these lectures without any kind of problems and they're able to understand and leaving their great feedback in the comment box and I'm seeing the watching hours increased so I would like to thank it's giving me a lot more motivation to make these such videos for free as well as um, I would just salute you for your consistency and I would also salute for you met you utilizing these kind of materials uh, who are who are for free and one thing which I wanted to say that we recently in, in yesterday we uh, we, 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 we released our first homework assignment of the previous week which is the uh, the homework assignment consists of the questions from the five lectures previous five lecture lecture one to five and that is your first week lectures so basically in that we included the homework homework assignments all the questions from the topics which are already taught okay so if you go and see and I would, I would, and I would like to thank Vinayak Vishnu who has contributed 70% of preparation of these questions who is one of the te teaching assistants of our uh, of our CS uh, ML002 so I would like to thank you thank him and I would also like you to thank him on the discord server or whenever in the comment box thanks Vinayak Vishnu so it it would motivate him as well he's doing the community work for free so so let's so here is the pro programming assignment to you sorry not programming assignments homework assignment where you are getting around 32 questions and these questions are covering from very basics to a conceptual understanding of the particular subject having in mind to have a good practice of yourself of the topics which are already taught so you may think hey are you you're doing this stuff the reason why I'm, I'm making you practice this stuff is the reason only is mainly when you go in deep learning to have a conceptual understanding of what are vectors and how it is performing computations and what are the resulting vector size and etc 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 so it will help you to, you know, to 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 practice a lot and it will also help you to understand a conceptual understanding or or the very depth understanding of these vectors and 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 we have we also seen some matrices and then we are performing something and then uh, i also taught you about linear combinations x x and three contains of linear combination where we are talking about various stops over here and these these, these are the questions which are very 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 uh, nice questions which are prepared by vinayak vishnu and as well as i had also added some questions over here which are also re related to your deep deep learning context and then you finally have a transformation and this 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 is also great amazing amazing uh 
uh, the questions which are there and it will help you in deep deep learning journey that how actually the linear transformation works and behind that and then the, we, we, we talked about transpose and the dot product of two matrices or vectors okay so that is the specific thing and then we, we ask you to verify this property so i would definitely ask you to visit these things it will be it solve this homework assignment upload it in your lms learning management system if you have enrolled into that it's absolutely free for everyone please please see the student handbook in the description box below and go over there and into the uh, lms and, and submit your homework assignment and then you'll be getting the detailed feedback on what questions you've done wrong and what question you haven't done wrong okay so let's get started with this video so the title of the video you might have already imagined is the types of a matrices types of matrices so what are the types of matrices that 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 we will study and 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 some of the types of a matrices are maybe not come in your journey of deep deep learning but i would say key whenever you're studying the something let's study full of that okay so do not let's 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 not study the partial stuff so let's study full but most of the thing which i'm going to teach is is being used frequently not too much frequently but it's being used sometimes means when, when you when you talk with some great uh, mathematicians or a deep learning engineer so to, to take these kinds of words so it so it should not might confuse you so that's a way i asked about so the types of matrices so the top first types of matrices which you already know about in other words like row vector which is something called as row matrices okay or a row matrix a row so let me add one thing over here row row matrix row matrix okay so what is row matrix so can you define what is what is a row vector can you just define it so the row vector is the is the is, is the matrix which have only one row so the same way row matrix are the one which has only one row so it uh, you, you you can say just a row vector uh, yeah so the matrices which have only which have only one one row is called the row matrix so for example for example the example can be 1 2 3 okay so this is the first this is your row matrix okay so because it has because it it only have only one row so we can mathematically we can we can write key that a is equal to this a, a is a matrix where a i j where we have a m times n matrix where m denotes the number of rows and n denotes the number of columns and this you have uh, m equals to one you have m equals to one then it is called as a row matrix so what is a row matrix row matrix is the one which has only one row let's let's talk about second sec, second kind of matrix which is column matrix column column matrix so sorry for in in, in on the eve of diwali many of the people are just uh, busting up the crackers in india so yeah don't no no problem in that so what is a column matrix so column matrix which have only one column so uh, and you have you have heard about column vector so the same way we have column matrix which only have only one column and these are these are used so very frequently in the in the era of deep learning and, and and it is very precise to use these names in deep learning to have to, to follow the mathematical conventions rather, rather than saying it is a it is a uh, it, it it is a uh, call uh, this get the shape uh, either the shape you can just say that okay it's a row matrix or it is a column matrix or it is a row vector or it is a column vector okay so here you have a matrix a where you have a matrix a where you are uh, where you have m times n which is a size and where the m can be anything you can be any number of rows but you have only one column okay so here here and n should be equals to one so you should remove this and write one to be considered this as a column matrix okay the next kind of matrix we will talk about is zero or null matrix so as you have already uh, imagined about this zero or null matrix and these are very very easy kind of remembering it's not a i'm not teaching, teaching any rocket science it's very very easy to understand so so if in all the matrices are uh, all all the elements into that matrices are zero okay so all the all the elements all the elements in the matrices in the matrices are zeros then that matrix is called zero matrix okay so for example you have a where you have zero 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 here is zero 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 here you have a three by three matrix and this is called a 
zero matrix or sometimes you call it as a three by three null matrix okay so when someone tell you hey can you can you can you just tell what types of matrix this is okay this is a zero matrix okay when someone asks you hey you're given a null matrix what what happened when you multiply this null matrix with another matrix where the matrix satisfy all the major multiplication properties or dimension property so you you will say okay uh, you will say okay what is a null matrix so null matrix are nothing but a zero matrix okay so that is just a zero matrix which you, which is given another name which is called null matrix then the in, in that you have all the elements to be zero okay the next is the next is your favorite singleton matrix okay so in in, in java one of my friend was uh, taking a singleton double turn so in the same way we have singleton matrices okay so single singleton matrices so so in singleton matrices your all the matrices are are or or, or or you say you have only one element into that matrix okay not all the matrices you have total of one element in that matrix okay so that's why we call it as a only one element only one element in the matrix in the matrix and so sorry i'm not too much of creative i don't follow the rules of changing the color and then writing it out i should develop that uh, thing so let's so let's use different different color then so the fifth one is the fifth one is horizontal matrix so let's give some examples of this because I I, I, I haven't given an example of this so which is two then it can be one then it can be three these are the for example a is a matrix where we have this is a single turn matrices matrix and etc 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 et so these are called the single ton matrix you may have stressed singleton in, in your sets or discrete mathematics if you have if you have take, take, taken the course on discrete mathematics so i would ask you to do not take the course but yeah remember remember the singleton either it is not used too much but yeah you, you should know the you should know what are singleton because when someone asks you you should be able to answer it horizontal matrix horizontal matrix that is a that is a good deal so horizontal matrix who, who can define if anyone has taken the linear algebra class please feel free to go down in the description down box below please sorry, no description it's comment okay so please feel free to go in comment box please write what is the horizontal matrix and and it's very very easy it's again very very easy so for example so for example uh for example here you have one two three four okay and then you have uh and then you have your favorite and then you have uh, six nine eight two so i'm going to consider this matrix as a horizontal horizontal matrix you may ask why you should consider this as a horizontal horizontal matrix so just tell me the size size of the matrix is the size size of the matrix is what uh, two by four two uh, rows and four columns and here the columns is greater than rows so that's why we get that that is a horizontal matrix so whoever matrix where the number of a columns is greater than the number of a rows then that's called the horizontal matrix got it so that is the horizontal matrix where your number of a rows a uh, search not rows number of a, number of a columns is greater than the number of a rows so that 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 is one of the example of a horizontal matrix now let's see some more examples uh, some more uh, some more matrix types which is something called as vertical matrix so can you tell me what is vertical matrix just define me what is a vertical matrix so let's make a matrix let's make a matrix let's 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 make a matrix where you have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve okay so this is your this is i'm going to consider this as a vertical matrix now tell me why this is a vertical matrix the reason why it is a vertical matrix so let's let's count the size so we have a total of four by three matrix and here your number of rows is great greater than the num number of columns so that's why this is a vertical matrix in horizontal your number of columns should be greater than uh, greater than number of rows to be called as a horizontal matrix but in vertical matrix is totally opposite of that here your number of rows should be greater than your number of uh, columns okay to be called as to be said as a vertical matrix 
or in formal definition which is taught in a school is a, a matrix is said to be a vertical matrix if and only if its number of rows is greater than the number of columns. It's, it's, it started in my school legends. I, was, I, just, I just want to thank my school to teach me these definitions. No, not exactly the definitions of vertical matrix, but yeah, the definition format or template to tell is that uh, this is said to be this because this, okay? So I say follow the template of my school. So thanks to my school. Uh, shout out to Sun Sun Cadence. Okay, cool. The square matrix. So what is a square matrix? I would say pay attention to this. Square matrix is used extensively, whatever we'll study in the like a diagonal matrix or, or whatever, okay? Like a, a determinant or, or eigenvectors and eigenvalues, we are gonna take this square matrix. So what are square matrix? So just tell me what are square matrix? The matrix which looks like square, <laughs> is that it? Yeah, so, so the matrix where you're, in, or just wait. Now here's, here's your matrix, here's your matrix. One, two, two, four, and here the here's your A matrix, and here's your B matrix, which is one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. Or let's consider this as a let's consider let's let's cons consider this as a okay. So here you have a total of two by two matrix, and this is a total of uh, what do you say a three by three matrix. So here your number of rows matches with the number of columns so the square matrix are the one where the number of rows matches with the number of columns okay so the square matrix is which where your number of rows where your num number of rows is equals to the number of columns okay so the, the square matrix is they is in which your number of rows is equal to the number of columns then it is said to be a square matrix. So the, again, my school's formal definition, a matrix is said to be a square matrix if and only if it's, it's, it's a row number of rows should be exactly equal to the number of a columns in your matrix. Okay, so that is your square matrix. So again, shout out to Sun Theorens. Uh, just, just for your information, uh, <laughs> this, these are the things which are not taught my school till now. I'm in class nine, so till now they haven't taught this. But yeah, I know the form. I know I, don't, I know their te definition template because I in, in in my school I used to study a lot more definitions. So I know the definition of this. They the definition is to starts with this the same way. Uh, uh, this is said to be this because this and that. So that's why we got it this. So the same way I frame a square matrix is said to be a square matrix. A uh, matrix is said to be a square matrix if and only if your number of rows is matched with the number of columns. And so thus, if it is follows, then it's a square matrix. So so we, we know about the square matrix now. So let's go further into understanding the, the, the diagonal matrix. So, so what is diagonal matrix? What is diagonal matrix? What is diagonal matrix? Can anyone tell me what a diagonal matrix is? Anyone try it out? So all the elements except the principal diagonal are, or let's start with, let's start. I would just want to scold that guy who is bursting the crackers. I don't want to see him. I'm making my video. Why is bursting his crackers outside? Oh my gosh. No, no problem in that as well. <laughs> Okay, cool. So let's make a matrix. One, two, three, zero, 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 zero. Okay. So this is called the diagonal matrix because your 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 all the elements in your diagonal matrix except the principal diagonal. This is the principal diagonal. And this is the principal diagonal. So all the elements into that matrix except the principal diagonal of a square matrix so diagonal matrix should be a square matrix because it is a three by three matrix so it is a square matrix r0 so all the elements into that diagonal matrix of a square matrix r0 then that is called as a diagonal matrix so let's see some more so for example you have uh, 0 1 2 oh my gosh 0 i think i i i, I, I done wrong so one zero 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 two zero then zero zero three so this is oh I, I i made the same thing again no problem in that oh this is left 
Okay, so that is the all the principal diagonal is your is your uh, what do you say the the, the non-zero and every every element so except that is your not zero then that's called a diagonal matrix. So I hope that you are ab able to make sense out of it. So the diagonal matrix should be a square matrix and a square matrix is nothing a matrix which said to be a square matrix if and only if your number of rows match with the number of columns and thus it is called the square matrix because it looks like square but what is rectangular matrix so one thing which i'm going to mention rectangular rectangular matrix so what is a rectangular matrix here where your number of rows does not matches with number of columns oh my gosh this is a contradiction so that is nothing but called the regular matrix so, oh my gosh it's a rectangular matrix so let let me define this from my school board so thanks 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 my school sit down sit down yeah so uh what is rectangular matrix a matrix is said to be a rectangular matrix if and only if it's, it's number of rows does not match with the number of columns so that's the rectangular matrix. So, so the follow, follow, following example is a rectangular matrix. So maybe you may have two, one, three, four, two, one, three, four. That is your number of rows is two by four, where two is not equal to four. So that is the rectangular matrix that looks like rectangle. So that's why we have written the rectangular matrix. Cool. So let's go further into learning about scalar matrix. <laughs> so what is scalar? So first of all, define a scalar and then try to identify what is scalar matrix. Please go ahead and write your answer. Let's give you give the guess, guys. Uh, I'm just here to have a fun with you all. So give a guess. What do you mean by scalar matrix? Because when I started first, I gave a very good guess, and that was totally wrong because this this is like scalar matrix. So I was. A little, little bit okay a scalar is just a number and scalar and this matrix are are the are the arrays of a numbers so how i can consider a scalar as arrays of a numbers that is the best assumption that i made at that point but no problem the scalar matrix here's the here's your scalar matrix in, in in front of you here's the scalar matrix in front of you so you have minus seven zero 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 minus seven zero 0, 0, minus 7. 0, 0, minus 7. So listen, so this is called the scalar matrix. This is called the scalar matrix. This is called the scalar matrix. But now you will say, hey, you, just now you taught the diagonal matrix. In the diagonal matrix, you all the elements except the principal diagonal are equal or, or zero, then it is a diagonal matrix. So here also, you all the elements, all the elements except your principal diagonal are zero. So why not be calling it as diagonal matrix? So I would ask you to have a closer look at this and tell me what you see over here. So if you if you if you if you zoom in further or if you, or if you or, or if you wear your sunglasses not sunglass you, if you wear your goggles with minus two point five power you will see that your diagonal matrix uh, diagonal diagonals um, principal diagonals scalars are all equal okay so that's what make it as a, a scalar matrices okay so what is scalar matrix a scalar matrix is said sorry not a scalar a matrix is said to be a scalar matrix if and only if if it is principled if all the elements in the principal diagonal are non are, are zero and the principal diagonal elements are should be equals to each other okay so that that is called a scalar matrices so if all the elements in the diagonal matrix Okay, so all the elements in the diagonal matrix and what are diagonal matrix? Diagonal matrices are the matrices where the elements except the main diagonal are zero. So if all the elements in the diagonal matrix are uh, x in uh, all the all the matrices in the diagonal matrices uh, are uh, of the of the, of the is is equal means the in principal 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 diagonal is equal then that is called the scalar matrix. So that is the scalar matrix. So Please see the notes in the description for the for the definitions, whatever I'm telling. So you could not write it out. Please see the description for the notes of whatever I'm telling. 
okay so 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 one of the so this is your first example so let's say second example second example root 5 0 0 0 root 5 0 0 0 root 5 what is this this is a scalar matrix now now what 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 do i tell to you is to multiply with some multiply it with the with, with the sum matrix okay so multi multiply with the same matrix multiply with the same matrix mul multiply some the matrix and then you will getting some other result some other result but i want to tell is to have a matrix like this uh where your all the diagonals are one all the diagonals are one that is your so now multiply with any matrix just to just to make sure that is a matrix multi multi multiplication is defined multiply with any matrix or a vector any matrix or a, or, or, or a vector you will be getting you will be getting your or your your matrix so you, this is this is this is this, this is your scalar matrix so let's say s as 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 of now and this is your any matrix or vector v so when you multiply s times v answer will be v means exact so it is it is by multiplying by one you will get exactly so please see please do and see the experiment so when you it is this when you multiply this matrix with some other matrix or a vector you will be getting it is just like multiplying this vector this is this is one so whenever you multiply s times v means this these types of matrix where your principal principal diagonal is one all are one then you multiply with some matrix or vector then that the, then that will yield or, or result to this vector original vector to which you multiply the scalar matrix to okay so that is so so researchers so, so, so scientists have seen this y result and named this as a identity matrix name this as identity matrix or a unit matrix or a unit matrix okay so when you when you multiply this identity matrix with any matrix that is simply by multiplying one and you will be getting a result which is v okay so you'll be getting the same result so you have you may consider this matrix with one and if you multiply any even 10 you will be getting your 10 as output so it is same as that identity matrix oh my gosh that the, that the one who's is just flying the car of pollution i am really not liking that no problem again so here over here your identity matrix are just like a multi multiplication by one so please prefix to this is a wired property which we have given a new name is the matrix or the scalar matrix here in your principal diagonals are all one then that's uh, nothing but uh, identity matrix okay let's let's go on the next page the next page so let's talk about some last uh, matrices with something called a triangular matrix triangular triangular matrix so the triangular matrix are of two types so a square matrix I'm just trying to matrix so a square matrix is said to be a triangular matrix if the elements if the elements if the elements above oh my gosh my handwriting above or below the principal diagonal below the principal diagonal principal diagonal are zero okay so for example uh, you have the diagonal three four six one two three and zero 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 okay okay so this is your oh my gosh what do i need over here three one two zero four three zero zero six okay so it is telling the triangular this this is a triangular matrix because all the elements if the elements above means above this is this this is your principal diagonal this is your principal diagonal okay so whatever above if either above or below either above or below yeah but all, yeah here is your or okay so either of or above or below either above or below either above or below um, to the main principal diagonal are zero then that's called a triangular matrix so here above is non zeros but below is zero so that's how we call it as a triangular matrix because it forms a triangle so that's why it's called a triangular matrix and this is called the upper triangular and here it here it forms the triangle so yeah, here, here it forms a triangular part 
okay so that is the upper triangle or so this this where your zeros are below the main di principal diagonal so that is called the upper upper triangular matrix upper triangular matrix and for example you have one zero zero two three zero four five two and over here this is your main diagonal okay and of above you have zero and below so that that is the uh, that is the uh, lower triangular matrix that is a lower triangle because it forms the triangle or triangle low and uh, below below of the main diagonal okay so that is the lower lower triangular matrix and upper triangular matrix cool so i hope that you understood so just just re recapitulate the triangular matrix is said to be a triangular matrix if the elements above the principal diagonal or below the principal diagonal are zeros the 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 the, the elements uh, the or or the what do you say if the zeros are below the principal diagonal of the triangular matrix then that is called the upper triangular matrix because it forms the triangle upper of the principal diagonal and if the in in the in the triangular matrix to the of your principal diagonal of if your zeros are above your principal diagonal then that's nothing called as a triangle a, a lower triangular matrix that is of two types cool the last thing which i'm to discuss is about symmetric matrix okay so it is about symmetric matrix it's about what do you say repeat me with, with me symmetric matrix symmetric who knows so you have this so you have a and when you do this so it should be foldable so that is symmetric so this this paper is symmetric okay so the same way the the, the matrices can be symmetric as well the matrices can be symmetric as well so what is symmetric matrix so so the definition of a symmetric matrix definition of a symmetric matrix if your a transpose is equals to the a a is if your a transpose is equals to the a so that's where we call that as a as a as a triangle or or, or, or a symmetric matrix okay so it's, it's 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 called a symmetric matrix if your a transpose is equals to a itself okay so so for example so for example you t i'm just going to take you you can think of an, any example this is your task but i'm just just going to take a small example of uh two four six nine okay so two four six nine so when you add the transpose so this is your two by two matrix and then if you do the transpose you'll be nothing two six four nine two by two two by two okay so that is the two by two so over here here you follow the equality of a matrix so of the you if you remember the equality of a matrix if you remember the quality of a matrix of, of the matrices so if if a matrix a is only equals to matrix b if it's corresponding elements if it's corresponding elements this to this this to this this to this this to this are equal and they are of same order and they are of same size okay so they are of same size but this is equals to this okay four is not equal to six so here this is not a symmetric matrix okay so this is not a symmetric matrix so your all symmetric matrix should be should be square matrix to be symmetric okay but not every square matrix can be symmetric but but you for for being symmetric your your matrix should be square matrix for for being symmetric but it is but it's not guaranteed that your every square matrix will be symmetric but for being symmetric it is you have to have a square matrix for example you have two 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 apply the transpose on this what it will be two 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 by two two by two yeah, this is this is correct this is correct uh, correspondings are also correct the size is also correct that is the symmetric matrix that is the symmetric matrix and i hope that you understood about the concept behind symmetric matrix so this is all so that was we had a talk on this stuff so i hope that you like this video and i also talked a lot and sorry for the crackers please find that guy and beat him as much as you can who's fooling up the crackers outside so sorry I, I i i included hindi but no problem okay please feel free to scold that guy not beat him because diwali is a festival of <laughs> uh, having fun but yeah please scold that because they disturb you in studying no problem uh, so let's so I, I i hope that you understood and please feel free to do your home homework assignments so here is the homework assignment uh, the discussion for the solutions of the program programming assignment 
or sorry homework assignment is being released soon in the form of video so you can assess that but i will wait for two two or three days and then i will release one video on uh, solving these homework assignments please feel free to do this and please feel free and i'm not giving these notes because these notes are already available in the description down box below in the form of some uh, good good hand handwriting in the description down box below please feel free to assess thanks for seeing this video i'll be catching up in the next video tell them bye bye have a great day bye bye Hey everyone so let's get started with a new lecture on lecture number seven which is on determinant and this is one of the one of the again i would say important concept to study because in principal common analysis or whether you uh it it, it it comes a lot in your machine learning journey as well as well as in deep learning journey because it tells you how to solve or solving the linear equations or or or, or if, I, if i talk about in terms of linear transformation it just tells you how the how the how the change in area or a volume occurs okay and and determinant is nothing when you it's nothing but you just try you just give some matrix and then you get one number so we'll be talking about that in detail in this session uh, I, I think you'll you'll get a lot from this session and and you, you, you can make your own notes or the notes is in description and box below either it would be updated soon but yeah uh, I it is it is already being made It's just sent for processing and then it will be in your description if you like this video please be sure to subscribe to this channel as well as like this video and comment because YouTube algorithm knows okay this is a good video to recommend because many many other people say uh, your channel is underrated so i want to i want this channel to be a rated channel because i work a lot on this channel okay cool so let's get started with solving uh, what is determinant so uh, we'll, we'll we'll get on to the geometric meaning soon but uh, in, in, in the determinant what you do if you know about a square matrix if you know about a square matrix which we, which we talked about and and I have told that is very important. The square matrix is very important. It's used extensively in linear algebra to use this term terminology. So square matrix is nothing where your where your number of a rows is equals to the number of a columns. For example, uh, your matrix A is is maybe it can be two 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 two. Okay, so this is a two by two where n equals to two and m equals to two. So n times n matrix where your square matrix is equals to where your number of rows is equals to the number of columns okay so that is the so this is so what you do you take your square matrix and determinant takes one square matrix where the number of rows is equals to the number of columns you write determinant of uh, an a and a a should be the square matrix a should be the square matrix and then you get one scalar uh, or, or, or a number as an output when you apply the determinant function or, or or when you take out the determinant of that matrix okay so now how this is useful uh, we'll see how do we take out the scalar a just in a second numerically but but uh, but when you um, how how the determinant is useful this is this is one of the most important concept to know so the determinant is useful in in solving in solving linear equation in linear equation it's used very very extensively solving linear equation or maybe it can be useful in 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 knowing okay in knowing how linear transformation in knowing how linear how linear transformation transformation change their area or the volume okay change their area transformation change their area change their area over volume or volume okay not over it's or volume and it is also and it is also useful uh, in other stops like uh, when solving some or uh, some computationally it it, it 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 does reduces some computer not exactly means uh, doing efficiently not exactly i would say efficiently i would say very precisely so solving the particular linear quick equ equ equation and is used a lot in that so that's why we take out the determinant of a matrix and that when you take out the determinant of a matrix you simply give a square matrix to, to that determinant and that the after uh, when you take out the determinant you will get one scalar okay so this is what the this is this is this is what we use and and if you if you talk about um, a machine machine learning use case so in machine learning if you, if you know about machine learning 
in machine learning you have something called as dimensionality reduction method and in and in that you take out the determinant of that covariance matrix so covariance matrix okay so when you take out the determinant of that covariance matrix and then you and then and 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 then go further into solving the particular problem okay so not exactly covariance yeah so you take out the term and then you go further into uh, into other other stuffs like uh, uh, the eigenvectors and eigenvalues and they are extensively used the determinant are extensively used in the eigenvectors and eigenvalues in principal component analysis okay so i hope that this is clear why we use determinant and 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 what's the determinant is now now we need to care about how do we take out the scalar value because we give a function because we just give a a, a, a square matrix into that determinant and then we will, we are going we are we are just getting a scalar as an output so how do we even do that uh, so for for doing that assume that you have a matrix a you have a matrix a which is nothing but two by two so i'm just going to write uh, a b c and d okay so you have the matrix a b c d which is a two by two matrix so when you take out the determinant of that matrix a which is nothing but which is nothing but so a d means you take out the product of the diagonals you take out the product of the diagonals a d minus b c a d minus b c so for example you have a matrix uh, two three four six and then you want to take out the matrix, the determinant of that matrix, two by two matrix, which is nothing but two times six, two times six minus three, three, three times four, three times four, which is nothing but six, six, two, 12 minus three, four, 12. That will be nothing but zero. Zero is the answer or determinant of this matrix. Okay, so the determinant of a matrix can be zero. We have we don't have any conditions, but yeah, the determinant of this matrix is zero. Okay, so this is how you take out the determinant of a matrix geometrically speaking. Okay, so one thing that I want to highlight over here. Let's say for a, for example, uh, what does it mean geometrically? What does it mean geometrically? So uh, so let's uh, let me make one more page so that I could explain you know, what does it mean geometrically speaking. What does it mean geometrically speaking? Either I could just go on some website to mean to mean what is actually trying to tell. So let's go on one website. Let's go on one website which I'm going to show you all is this one. Okay. So assume that over here, of, of, over here you have. Let me choose my black color. Okay. Here it is. So you have um, a matrix, a matrix A, B, C, D. Okay. You have to take a determinant of this. So this this is this is what you take out. So for taking out the determinant, you just write either in this A B C D, giving a pipelines like this. Okay, or do you or you write determinant of this uh, A A matrix, and this A matrix is either uh, A B C D like this. Okay, so this is the notation for showing that you want to take out the determinant of this matrix. Okay, that pipeline, that big big pipeline. Okay, pipe uh, line. Okay. Now over here, your A is one, your B is zero, your C is zero, and your D is one. Okay, you want to take out the de determinant of this. You want to take out the term determinant of this. You want to take out the de determinant of this. So how do you take out? So what does it mean geometrically speaking? So geometrically, what it's trying to tell is when you plot this matrix over here. First of all, you take this, and then you go over here. So this is nothing but the determinant of a two by two matrix is the area of a parallelogram with the column vectors A C and B D. Okay. So this is the 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 determinant is nothing but the area of this parallelogram. Of this parallelogram where the column vectors are AC and BD okay so when you when you plot the two by two matrix which is which looks like this and 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 this the, 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 the determinant which means geometrically speaking is nothing but area of that parallelogram which formed by joining everything and then and that area of the parallelogram is nothing but determinant of that matrix okay this is what does it mean geometrically speaking uh, I would ask you to watch one video on three blue one brown to see how how is shown geometrically. But yeah, uh, the the determinant is nothing but the area of that parallelogram whatever form. So for example, your parallel. So let me reduce the a a bit and then let me do something with this. 
I don't know what, how it is working. Yeah, so let me do something like this. And let me increase the area. Okay, let me increase the B. Okay, here it is. So when you have the column vector, when you have a column vector at 0 0.86 and 0, okay, and then you have another column vector which is 0 0.52 and there the parallelogram is formed is nothing but your favorite the determinant okay so this is what the determinant means and you can play with it by just going to demonstration wolfram and this with this website so let's go on the 3d view so how does it look 3d so 3d is nothing but area a area of that parallelizoid okay so if you just see over here the area of the parallelizoid is, is nothing but a determinant we'll see how to solve how how to solve this determ this determinant one okay we'll see how to solve um, three for the how to take out the determinant of a three by three matrix and we'll also see how to take out the determinant of a n by n matrix okay so it's a it's, it's a bit hectic task but we will try to do it so this is this is what the geometrically means and for 2D, the area of a parallelogram, and for 3D, area of a parallelizoid. Okay, which you can see from the diagrams, which are shown over here. So if you just, if if, if I could zoom in, I, I can't zoom in, but yeah, I can just show you. This is this this is what you have your uh, three by three matrix, and then you this is the parallelizoid which is formed, and then when you try to take out the determinant of this, is nothing but the area of this parallelizoid okay so this is what it means and the determinant geometrically is nothing but the area of a parallelogram or parallelizoid in 3d dimension okay so this is this is what you need in in a geometric intuition just 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 to make sure that what the geometrical it, it means okay so now let's see now one of one of the important thing which i want to show you up is is, is we have seen we have seen how do we take out the determinant of a two by two matrix so the determinant so here's your a Here's is your here's is your A and you have and then you want to take out the determinant of this A B C D and I'm just writing pipe to denote okay this is a determinant so when you take when you try to take out the determinant of this so it's nothing but equals to uh, uh, A D A D minus oh my gosh it's A D minus B C that's uh, then when when you take out this is a uh, simple scalar which is E not exactly that not a three plus three point seven one one it's E okay so let's uh, let's keep it any scalar which is E okay so this is this is what it means uh, in two by two matrix I'm talking specifically two by two matrix now now let's talk about how do we take out the determinant of a uh, three by three matrix so determinant 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 of three by three matrix three by three matrix so how do we mean approach we're taking out so you have you know take out the determinant of a b c d e f g h i okay so g h i is uh, this is your matrix this is the determinant of this matrix Okay, so how do you take out how do how do you take out the determinant of this matrix? And of course, your it should be a one scalar. Okay, it should, it should be one scalar or a number, or a number. Okay, so how do we take out the determinant? So can't we do a times a times e times i and then it will not work. This is this is not you can you you can just guess how do we do it? Just try, try and comment. Maybe I can just see and be a bit funny in joke. So please be sure to write it and I will try to see what you write it. Okay. So so let's start approaching how do we even approach this problem? So what we do, we simply so so what we do, just just make sure that first of all we go to the A11. Okay. So means first element in that matrix. And then what we do, we simply leave this uh, column and this row and write a minor matrix or a sub matrix of that of the, of that uh, big matrix. Or you can say that we take out the minor of this matrix. How do we take out the minor of this matrix? You simply when for a, for an example, you choose this number. Okay, so what do you do? You you leave this column and you leave this row and then you write uh, you, and then what you do? You take out the minor and then you take out the determinant the determinant of that by multiplying by a. Okay, so the first element is this and then you have e f h i. We left this column and this row and then we write e f h i. 
okay we want to take out the determinant of ef hr okay now what you do now what you do yeah here is your plus sign now it will be a minus sign over here okay you go to the b you leave this column and you leave this row okay which is nothing but b and d f g i d f g i because we left this column this row and this column just d f g i okay and then here is your minus then here will be plus plus uh, you write c now we left this column this 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 column and the first row which is which will be left the determinant of d e g h okay and then we have convert now these are called the minor or a sub matrix sub matrix or the minor of our matrix a these these are called the minor these are called nothing but the minor these are nothing but called the minor minor of our matrix of our matrix a okay so when you try to draw now it is very easy a times a times uh ei now you can just apply your 2 by 2 a ei and fh ei minus fh okay minus b di fh di minus fh okay plus c and then you have dh eg okay dh minus eg okay and then you'll be left with some scalar and then you can simply do do this thing and then you simply multiply with this and then you do do some calculation and then you'll be getting your output as maybe some some scalar some scalar value okay so let's see one of one of the one of the one of the problem or or the stuff to to see how how it looks like okay so let's let's assume that you have a, a matrix or a three by three matrix so here is a question for you okay maybe you can try try to approach it uh, the, the you want to take out the determinant of I'm writing this pipe that denotes that you want to take out the determinant of that uh, for example 0 1 2 uh, 1 2 0 uh, let's just write 1 1 0 okay it's just a random random I'll be walking you through it so take out the determinant of this this is a 3 by 3 matrix try to take out the determinant of this so how do you take out so first of all we go to the first element and then what we do we take out the minor of this matrix so the minor so we leave this column and this row so we'll be left with zero uh, and then we and then we write out minor and then we take out the determinant of our sum matrix okay plus now no 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 it will be not plus over here it will be minus because here is our plus minus okay one you leave this column and this row which is one zero one zero okay so one one zero one zero okay and then you write plus two and then you have uh, you leave one two one one okay you leave this column and this row okay you leave this column and this row you'll be left with one two one one okay and then you do the sum and then you do the sum so and then you take and then what you do you try to take out zero two times zero which is zero minus zero okay minus uh, one times one times zero uh, of course zero and one times zero zero okay plus two uh two okay one times one one two times one two okay then you'll be left with of course zero then it will be done then it will be done it will be also one times zero which is nothing but zero okay we'll be left with two times minus two two times minus two that that will be minus four okay which will be which is your determinant of this matrix so minus four is your determinant of this matrix which you are seeing over here so sorry here is one minus two it's not it's it's simply minus one so two times minus two is the determinant of this matrix so i'll be so here you got the determinant of this matrix which is nothing but minus two okay so this is this is how you take out the determinant of a three by three matrix as well so there are there are some problem for you to work on. So I'm just just going to write it out. So there is one problem which you, which you can approach. Okay. So you have to take out the determinant of uh, three seven one minus four. Please answer the HW. Please answer in the comment box. It's just a quiz which you will see in your attendance as well. Okay. So this is what the determinant of that matrix of the two by two matrix or the three by three matrix. We'll try to solve the determinant of a 3x3 three three matrix using Leibniz formula or the rule of Sarus.
okay so it's this very good formula to work on so we'll see that but before that i want to highlight some of the properties some of the properties of that uh, properties properties of determinant matrix of determinant of a matrix determinant of a matrix so the first first one is the first one is the first one is for example you want to take out the determinant of this matrix for example you want to take out the determinant of 1 0 uh, 0 1 okay so try 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 to take out the ter determinant of this 1 times 1 which is 1 uh, and then and then minus 0 okay what what it will it will 1 and can you identify this is an identity matrix even if you have uh, 3 by 3 identity matrix then that will be nothing but that will be nothing but 1 so whenever you have a identity matrix whenever you have if 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 it is if it is identity matrix if it is identity matrix identity matrix then 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 the then the then the determinant of that identity matrix will be one okay this is this is one of the property second property if the if the rows are the same okay so for example if the rows are the same are the same for for example a a b b okay a a b b then a b minus b a will be nothing but zero okay so this is a, another property third property is you have a scalar multiplied with some uh, a and you have another scalar c and b d okay so what it will be it, it just makes sense r a d minus r c d or r r c b okay you can write write it down like this and then it's it's nothing it's nothing you just you just take that out of out of okay you just uh, take take that as a common r a d minus b c okay so we can write this as a we can write this we can write this as a r times a b c d either we can write it now so we proved it so it is just equivalent you can write this so far it will be easily for us to solve okay so it is so it is r times as either it is same as over here so we get a d minus b c so it's just equivalent to that so this is an, an, another property which you see a lot in by taking out the determinant of a matrix okay so this is these are the some of some of the properties which i want to highlight in front of you so now let's go on to the another stuff is how do we take out the determinant how do we even bother taking out the deter determinant 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 of 3 by 3 matrix so you can just say okay i'm just going to just going to take out the minor of the sub matrix of the matrix and then i will do that so here's another another trick which is called the rule of sarus i think it's it's just not a <laughs> i would say uh, okay it's just a good technique but um, okay you can try it out but eventually i like that my approach but yeah it is very very straightforward approach which i'm going to tell over here okay so assume that you have a matrix m and uh, that you have a matrix m okay so a11 a12 a13 okay a21 a22 a23 a two three, a three one, a three two, a three three. Okay, so we have this three by three matrix. Now, when you want to take out the determinant, determinant of this matrix M, so how do we even bother doing that? So for 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 you no, know, so you can use the rule of Sarus. Rule of Sarus. I think the funny name he has, but yeah, again, again, I no no want to comment on on his name. He's a, again a great people okay so not i'm uh, not even a one one percent of these people so these are amazing people who give a lot to the world so i think about i'm no one to say about but yeah amazing name so what you do you take out the determinant so you have to take out the determinant of a11 a12 a13 okay so this matrix i'm just write, writing this matrix a21 a22 a23 okay a31 a32 a33 okay and then what you do, you take out the first two columns and write it in another format like this. A11, A12, A21. This is a trick for solving a 3 by 3 matrix. A22 and A31. Okay, so A31 and A32. So this is A22. Okay, it says A21. Okay, so this is what you, now you write this. Now what you do? Now what you do? 
so what you do you you simply take out the product you simply take out the product like this the first diagonal okay so this is the diagonal so what you do a11 a22 a33 okay a11 a22 a33 plus plus a12 a22 a23 okay a23 and a31 so what you do you take out the product of these three you take out the product of these three so a12 a uh, uh, 23 okay a23 uh, and a31 okay now what do you do you simply uh, do this simply multiply the next uh, di next uh, diagonally okay so plus plus a13 a21 okay i'm 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 not doing a bit messy so let me do a31 uh if i'm not wrong a13 na a a a13 a21 and a32 okay a a a13 a21 a32 now you are done with this now what you do now what you do you now go from bottom to top here you are going from top to bottom now you will go from bottom to top by changing the sign now okay now you go from bottom to top so here's how you do here's how you go further okay so so the way you go is you have a31 so from here so from here a31 okay and then a22 and then you go to a a13 so now you start going at this side like like this okay so a31 i'm just going to write a31 a22 a22 and then a13 a13 okay and then what do you do and then plus no uh, you, you you minus because you change you go from bottom to top so here you minus it now you now you go at this one now you do this and then a32 okay he this one this one and this one a32 times a23 yeah if i'm it's eight uh, it's a a a23 if i'm not wrong yeah a23 and a a11 a11 okay now minus now this is done now you go at last one which is this one a33 a21 a12 okay and here's how you take out the determinant of a matrix using sarus rule okay or a rule of sarus okay so and then you'll be getting after after doing this all those stuff so you can just cancel it out something if it is so you just you just come do do the computation then here's your matrix and this is just a scalar number or other stuff so here's the rule of saru so here's how you do you do simply you do you do write the first two column uh, at 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 the side so that it could be easily so uh, so what you do you simply take out the product from top to bottom for the first three and then you take out the bottom to top for the second three starting from the last okay so here's 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 what the full the rule of sarus means here's here's how you take out the determinant of that matrix like this okay so now i'm going to talk about is uh, you can see the wikipedia pages for a leibniz rule because they write a very very kind of leibniz stuff so you can just go there and see more see more about this rule okay so the next thing which i'm going to talk about is Uh, the next thing which i'm going to talk about is how do we take out the determinant how do we take out even bother taking out the determinant of n by n matrix the determinant of n by n matrix so how do we even take out that and how do we even bother taking out that okay so here's so i'm just going to write the n by n matrix as i'm just going to write the n by n matrix or let's start with a particular example Let's start with a particular example, so it would to totally make sense. Okay, so let's let's start with a particular example, and then at at last we'll just write a definition, and then we'll end this video. Okay, the example is bit long, so I'm just going to maintain my handwriting. So the example is, you want to take out the determinant, <laughs> you want to take out the determinant of a four by four matrix. One, two, three. Oh my gosh, three, four. Okay. Six six nine two one, and then you have a four nine two one, and then you have a zero one one one. Okay, so here's here's your determinant of this matrix. So we need to take out the determinant of this matrix. So how do we even approach taking out the determinant of this matrix? So how do we take out the determinant of this? So for taking out the determinant of this, so for taking out the determinant of this, for for taking out the determinant of this. 
you take out you take out you first of all take out the minor or a sub matrix of this okay so you you go to the first column first element and then you leave this column and this row and then write the sub matrix so you just one and then you take out the determinant of 9 2 1 9 2 1 1 1 1 okay this is plus sign so it will be minus sign now you go at this uh, take take out the sum matrix leaving this row this column and this row so it would be 2 first of all you take product here so you multiply with that 2 2 times uh, the determinant of 6 2 1 6 2 1 4 2 1 and 0 1 1 okay and then you uh, change the sign plus and then go through with 3 and then you leave this column and this row so it will be nothing but uh, 3 and then you have 621 I also just write okay 6669 well, I, I, I just leave it so I'm 3 is 691 691 uh, 491 491 and 011 okay 011 now the last one is there 4 okay so there is 4 and then you take a determinant of uh, leaving all the all the uh, column 1 and then row 692 692 four nine two and uh, okay i think it's wrong four nine two and zero one one okay so these are the sum matrix of that matrix let's name it as a m okay so this is a matrix m and then you have to take a determinant of that matrix m so here's the four four by four now you do this now you have this now what you do now here you convert it to three by three determinant now what you do you convert that to a two by two here's how you do so you you don't want to use the service rule because I, I eventually don't like that rule it's a very hectic rule sometimes it maybe cause you error but no problem in that so here's how you do it so first of all what you do so first of all what you do you simply uh, multiply uh, one okay you simply go ahead and take take your uh, one as a so if you can see I just want to take that one as an uh, uh, this one and then what I and then I go and approaching this so here is your 9 so first first of all go at this element and take out 9 you want to take out the sub matrix of this matrix so 9 and then you want to take out the term of 2 1 1 1 so what how this came 2 1 uh, so you leave this this row and this column 2 1 1 1 okay now you simply change the sign minus okay you make sure that that you're doing only doing for this you're only doing for this we will come to this later on but we are only doing to for, for this a21 okay minus now now we go to this 2 now we go this 2 we leave this column and this row which is 9111 okay so which is array what happened yeah so which is nothing but uh, what do you say uh, 2 because here is our 2 leaving this row this 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 column and this row 9111 okay uh, the, the determinant of 91 one one okay and then what you do plus now you change the sign and then you go at last one leaving this nine two one one okay so the one and the nine two one one okay so you take out that okay now this was plus now you make it minus okay now here is your two so i will take that outside i will take take that outside okay and then i will just go ahead into solving this so you take this take this as a now you take out the minor of this matrix or the sub matrix of this matrix. So here's how you do it. So you simply add it minus. So here is minus six, uh, two, one, one, one. So here, here's how you go with this. You ignore this column and this row two, one, one, one. Now you go to this, you ignore this four, one, zero, four, one, zero, one. And then you go to over here, ignore this four, two, zero, one. Okay. So this is how I'm, 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 I'm going to write minus two okay because you go over here two over minus two to change changing the sign take out the determinant of four one zero one four one zero one okay and then you simply plus uh, now you change the sign you go one go to go to one four two zero one four two zero one uh, plus one uh, four two zero one okay and then what do you do and oh my gosh yeah so then what do you do now you now you convert that uh, three by three matrix for this one and for this one now you go to this one okay by changing the sign plus plus and then you go and then you write separate three now you write separate three and then you take out the first one six okay so you leave this go to column and this row which is nothing but a six and then nine one 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 which is the sum matrix of that matrix 
minus 9 because it's plus 9 and how, how, how 9 came you go with this uh, column leaving this column and leaving this row 4101 which is nothing but 4101 okay plus changing the sign 14901 how this 4901 came is uh, you have this you leave this and this you leave this column and this row which is 4901 okay so this is how you came it and then and then you're done okay now what do you do you you do for the last one you do the for the last one this because you, you're done for this you're done for this you're done for this now you converted that to a two by two matrix which is easily determined which is which you can easily take out the determinant now you go to this okay so here's how you do it so minus four okay and then what do you do and then what do you do you leave this column and this row taking out the first element so six take the determinant of i was i think it's it where it was nine nine two one one nine two one one nine two one one minus minus nine okay so over here it was leaving this the sec going to this and leaving this column and this row which is four two zero one i i, I think about it yeah that's four two zero one four two zero one and then you change the sign plus two four nine i think it's 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 more about you leave you go over here four nine zero one okay that is four nine zero one okay now you are done now this is what you have written so you converted the first matrix the first matrix this one this one and this one as well uh into a minor matrix which is two by two determinant so you can easily take out and then do the product and then you take out okay so let's do over here if, if if i have a chance to do over here but no problem i will do over here okay so here's how you do it here's how you do it so for doing it first of all you have the one available which is over here we have the one available which is over here what do you do you simply 9 minus 16 plus 7 how 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 we came so you have the particularly 9 times because of course you want to always want to uh, multiply it out okay so I think about this is you have, uh, if, if you go over here, two times one, okay? And one times one. So two, two, two times one, how much? Two times one, how much? It would be uh, one minus one, I would say. Uh, two minus one, which is one. So it will be nine, okay? Minus, minus over here. Uh, nine, nine times one, which is nine. Mi um, minus one, which is eight, 16, minus 16, hua done and then you have a uh, nine times one and then minus two times one so nine minus two which is seven okay so here's how it came okay and then you then this is the left minus two now you go on second one two over here so when you when you take a two times one how much two times one how much two times one two minus one okay so that is six over here so we write uh, six minus eight plus four okay so here's how you do so it is six minus Four times one, of course. Four times two, it's zero times one, of course, as uh, zero. So four times one, four times minus two, which is minus eight, which you, which you have written over here. Okay, then you go over here. Four times one, how much? Four times one, four, and then you have four. So here, here is a plus four. Now, now you go in the next plus three because you go over here. Now nine times one, how much? Nine times one, how much? Uh, nine times one, nine, of course, minus one. Uh, which is nothing but 8 8 times 6 48 so you have 48 pl minus 36 plus 4 okay so here's our 48 minus a 9 uh, so 4 times 1 4 so 4 9 4 9 th th 36 because this 2 times 0 is 0 then you go over here then you have this 9 ta 9 9 times 0 is of course 0 4 times 1 so 4 2 ja 8 so over here uh, i think i'm wrong over here uh, you have this four times one four nine one zero zero so four uh, uh it's, it's 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 four okay so it's four it's it 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 should be eight okay it should be eight which is nothing but what you do you four times one four and then you simply multiply with two which is nothing but eight okay now you simply minus minus four minus four uh 28 minus 36 plus eight so how you take out nine times one how much nine minus two seven 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 six seven seven six ja? how much uh, op oops it's it's uh, it should be nine times one minus two nine eight seven seven six forty two okay so which is be nothing but forty two what the hell I've, I've, I've written over here so i have to just uh, couple it out so i have to just return it 
it will be nothing but 42 okay minus 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 uh, minus 4 times 1 of course 4 9 36 plus 2 4 4 1 ja, 4 4 2 ja, 8 okay so here's how you do it now you simply multiply with this and then first of all do the calculation do the calculation then you'll be getting one a scalar as a output so please feel free to put your answer in the description or what's below i know the answer but yeah i want to leave it to you to do the rest of the cal calculation because i have done a lot so here's how you take the determinant of n by n matrix and how you do it and how you do it, it's very very easy we you just uh, keep converting that to a lower or a sub matrix and then you and then after that you are done okay so here's how you do it so you you define one you define one sub matrix aij you define one sub matrix aij which is nothing but uh, the matrix the n by n by minus 1 times n minus 1 matrix n minus 1 n minus 1 matrix if you ignore the ith row and ith column if you ignore if you ignore the ith row which you which you are doing ith row and jth column which which we were doing okay that is your new matrix which we which we were forming that is a recursive this is a recursive you can write a python program for write write, write a recursive solution for this okay so you were writing a one one and then you were adding the determinant of that some matrix and then you are doing so and so on so on that is a recursive solution so you are writing the recursive recursive stuff so we, we we already written a lot so i hope that you understood for formal definition which you can see yeah we have gone through one of one of the example which is very very much uh, important for us to know okay so i hope that you will uh, get a lot from this video and determine it i hope that concept is clear with my examples and i also hope that you enjoyed this video i think i have to wrap up with wrap up with this video i'll be catching up in the next video till then bye bye have a great day meet you in the next lecture Okay, everyone let's get started with another lecture i know it's a bit la late lecture but i apologize for that i'll be I'll, I'll be making making sure that i'll be providing you around three to four videos this week so i already provided two videos now i think about two of three videos will be pro provided more this week till your next uh, assignment or a homework assignment and please make sure that your homework assignment is released if we find any student who are not active we will remove them from our LMS because this is an opportunity which are given for free for others to learn because if the people do not take this opportunity we are gonna to drop that student so uh, we, we, we highly recommend to, uh, to, to, to be active on LMS please do your assignments please attend your attendance and every stuff okay so please please go there and uh, mark your attendance and as well as uh, complete your assignments even if you complete around out of 25 questions you can you have to complete around 20 questions you can complete 20 questions write write in notebook and then give it to us okay so you your programming assignment sorry the homework assignment will be will be evaluated and then that will be uh, till the end end of the course and if we do not find you active in the course we will drop you out okay so this is one of those announcements that our team has told me to give me to give it uh, to give it to you all through me okay cool so so what's the mode of this lecture the mode of this lecture to talk about the cofactor the minor and educate or the adjoint and inverse of a matrix so these are very very correlated these are very very correlated uh, for for taking out the cofactor you need minor and for taking out the minor you need determinant and for taking out the educate you need cofactor and taking out the inverse you need educate okay so uh, again i'm explaining for 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 taking out the cofactor of a matrix for taking out the cofactor of a matrix you need minor and for taking out the minor you need determinant and 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 after after you take out and for taking out the adjugate 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 you need cofactor and then for taking out the inverse of a matrix you need adjugate okay so these are very very correlated and they are heavily used for meaning this inverse of a matrix because they are so correlated so i thought okay let's uh, let's start with this video so that everyone knows about cofactor how the inverse of a matrix is calculated because it is extensively used in the industry okay 
uh, mainly in linear algebra it is not too much used in machine learning some sometimes use machine learning but it's very very good to know about these stuffs okay so first of all how do you be uh, now let's 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 go ahead and talking about the first two stuff which is uh, which is a minor of a matrix or the cofactor of a matrix so let's start with a minor let's start with a minor minor of a matrix so 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 a minor of a matrix a as as if if you remember the minor the a, a, a minor of a of of a matrix a a minor of a matrix a matrix a is the determinant of the small same some some smaller um, square matrix uh, um, a, a minor of a matrix a is the determinant is the determinant is the determinant of some of some smaller of some smaller square matrix as you remember that what we do what we do if we were removing the column and the row for that uh, for that point or the element and then we were we were obtaining a sum matrix in the determinant and that's actually when you when you take out the determinant of, of that sum is uh, sub sum may matrix that's actually the minor which we will see we'll see one example just just in a second for example for example let's take an example that you have the following that you have the following uh, matrix okay you want to take out the determinant of this matrix or the minor of this matrix you want to take out the minor of this matrix so for example you told okay you want to take the minor of matrix m for ith row and j column okay that so you take out so you for example you choose okay you want to remove the second row uh, and the third column okay so you are saying two three so you want to you want to take out the minor of a matrix given i equals to two and j equals to three so what what it will do it will it will leave second row and it will leave the third column okay so the minor of this matrix a will be left with the 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 sub matrix will be left with one four minus one nine as you all are knowing okay so now when you take out the determinant of this matrix so one minus uh, this is first of all for take, taking on the determinant of a two by two matrix what we do we simply what we do we simply uh, multiply the diagon diagonals and then sub subtract it so one at uh, my times uh, nine okay minus uh, of course uh, sorry this minus and minus four okay so that will be left with 9 plus 4 which is nothing but 13 so 13 is a minor of a matrix given i equals to 2 and j equals to 3 so what does it mean we leave the second row and third column or we delete the second row and third column to obtain the sub matrix so that is the minor of that matrix okay so again uh, explaining what we do we simply remove just one row and one column and we take what row you want to remove and what column you want to remove by the user i and j you you remove one row and one column from the square matrix and make sure that is a square matrix what is the square matrix the square matrix is the one where the number of rows the number of rows matches with the number number of columns Okay, so the number of a rows matches with the number of a columns and over here when you take out the minor of this matrix A given you remove one row and one column so you remove the, remove the second row and the third column. For example, if you want to take one one so the minor of this will be you have you want to remove the first row and first column the minor will be determinant of that uh, three zero so sorry it will be it will be uh, I think zero five and nine eleven so Take out the determinant of this so 0, 0 times 11 0 minus 9 times 5 45 what it will be it will be 45 or minus 45 okay so that will 45 around uh, according to this okay so that that will be nine minus 45 so that's how what this minor tells you minor tells you okay you want to take out uh, you want to remove that column i you want to remove that ith row and j -th column and then write write down the matrix and then take out the determinant of that sub matrix and whatever the determinant will be that will be your minor of that matrix 
okay so this is this is what it's trying to tell you so over here oh my god what is this where is where is my pen so this is what it's trying to tell you over here okay so what does minor means minor of a the a minor a is the determinant of some smaller matrix some smaller matrix okay so a minor a matrix a is the determinant of some smaller matrix for for example which you're seeing over here and then you uh, so how do you take out you remove one row and one column and write the rest of the matrix element into a new matrix and then you take out the determinant of that matrix and the, whatever the determinant a scalar value that scalar value will be uh, the minor of that matrix okay so this is how you cal calculate the minor of the matrix so 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 using minor of a matrix you can calculate the co cofactor of a matrix using minor of a matrix you want to calculate the cofactor of a matrix so why do we use, why do we need to cal calculate the minor of a matrix to calculate the cofactor you need, we need uh, we need to calculate the minor so what does it mean so why do we even care about cofactor why do we need cofactor so co cofactor is required for cofactor is required for computing determinants computing computing high level determinant or larger determinants okay computing deta larger determinants or determinants and taking out and in taking out in taking out the inverse of a matrix indirectly inverse of matrix indirectly as it is not used directly over there you want to take out the adjugate of that for taking out the inverse but adjugate uses the ad adjugate uses co cofactor and cofactor is being indirectly contributing to taking out the inverse of a matrix we'll see through the inverse of matrix just uh, we will visit after some slides okay so this is this is what it means to be minor so let's talk about the cofactor of a matrix let's talk about the cofactor of a matrix so what is a cofactor cofactor is calculated first of all we need to calculate the 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 minor so for example you have the following uh, matrix you have the following matrix you have the following matrix 147305 minus 1911 okay so this is this is your this is your um, this is this is your 3 by 3 square matrix you take out the minor of this matrix you take out the minor of this matrix given i to be 2 and j to be 3 okay so you want to take out the determinant of the sub matrix of the sub matrix the, of the sub matrix so for example i'm just taking for example given i equals to 2 and j equals to 3 so what you do you leave the second row and third column the second row and third column so left with 1 4 minus 1 1 9 so this is and then when when you take out the determinant determinant of m23 that will be what 9 minus 9 times 1 9 minus um minus 4 that will be nothing but 13 and as we shown the 9 first of all the product of the diagonals and sub subtract it minus minus 4 so that will be what 13 okay so that is the minor of that matrix now when you take out the minor of the matrix how to cal calculate the cofactor of a matrix so for calculating the cofactor of a matrix i and j i and j and make sure that i i i matches with the minor or minor of that and j matches with the minor of uh, or uh, whatever the uh, j over here so these these two should match equals to minus 1 to the power of i plus j times the minor i and j okay so this is how you calculate so for example for this example let's calculate the cofactor so how do how do, how do we calculate the cofactor so the here i is 2 3 to j is 3 is which which is nothing but equals to minus 1 minus 1 2 plus 3 times 13 okay so whatever the value will be over over here we don't care of that it will be minus 1 because it's 5 means one, minus 1 to the power 5 what it will be minus 1 of course because if it is if it is 6 then it will be 1 so it is minus 1 times 13 so the output will be the the answer will be minus 13 will be the cofactor of this matrix given i to be 2 and j to be 3 okay of that minor okay of that to of the 2 3 and 3 okay so what how you write the cofactor the cofactor of 2 3 and 3 where 2 is the row and j is the uh, 2 is the row and 3 is a column and 3 is 
minus 13 okay so this is how you cal calculate the the cofactor of a particular matrix okay so let's see one more example to make intuitive sense to you so that it would not left in sense oh my god what is happening with with some example so let's take an example that you have two four six two one two one 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 so this is your matrix so you select okay you are selecting the third row you're selecting the third row you want to take out first of all minor so you want to take out the third row and the first column okay so third row and the first column okay so you want to take out the minor of that so first of all you leave the third row and the first column so the minor will be the minor will be the return the, the sum matrix will be i uh, what uh four six one two and when you try to take out the determinant of this what it will be four times two minus six times one which is nothing but eight minus six which is nothing but two okay so the minor of three comma one entry is nothing but equals to two okay so after you after you calculate the minor after you calculate the minor you want to calculate the data, the cofactor because you want to calculate the cofactor so for calculating the cofactor you need a minor so you've taken out the minor now when you calculate the cofactor of two by three entry of the two two sorry it's three by one now it's three by one three by one entry which will be what uh which will be what so c i j so formula is c i j the cofactor of three i and j entry is nothing but minus one to the power of i plus j i plus j times the minor matrix i and j so in this example 2 3 equals to minus 1 2 plus 3 times 2 times 2 so what it will be it will minus 1 to the power of 5 times 2 okay so that will minus 1 times 2 which will be nothing but minus 2 is your cofactor of that matrix okay so the cofactor of that matrix for that entry 3 3 3 comma 1 is minus so this is how you calculate the cofactor of a matrix. So I'm just, just going to write the steps for you to calculate the cofactor of a matrix. So first of all, you take out, you take out, you take out the minor, you take out the minor, take out the minor M I J. How you take out the minor? So first of all, you take out the sum matrix. So you remove the one row, I throw, I'll just remove, I'm just going to write, remove, i row remove i row and j column okay and then whatever the sum matrix will be left and then sum matrix sum matrix and whatever the sum matrix take take out the determinant of that sum matrix okay that will be a minor after you take out now you can simply calculate the cofactor which will be nothing but cij which is nothing but minus one to the power of y plus j times mij okay so this is how you calculate the cofactor of a matrix c i j for that i j entry okay so i hope that you understood what's the cofactor and what's the minor of that so some some of the application so some of the application so you are here over here what you're trying to actually do is to uh, so we can write it's basically this co cofactors are basically used in prominently in Laplace formulas for for the expansion of the larger determinants okay as as we have already seen so the formula of determinant of a which is nothing but i equals to one all the way around to the end a i j a i j minus one i plus j m i j okay so this is for taking on the determinant as as i told you to one of the most best application of uh, of the cofactors it is used in is a laplace formula for taking out the determinant of larger determinant so this is the formula for taking out the determinant of a by using the cofactors so i equals to one all the way around to the m a i j times uh, number uh, times of course minus one this is the cofactor of your matrix and this is a minor of that okay for that two i i and j entry now so we had seen the co cofactor we have seen the cofactor and we have also seen the minor and we have talked a lot about determinant and we talked a lot about determinant now let's talk about now let's talk about uh, the adjugate of a matrix so the adjugate of a matrix or some sometimes call it as a adjoint of a matrix so 
adjugate matrix okay so we have to take out the adjugate of a matrix so let's write it out so when you how we take out the adjugate uh, for, for matrix so first of all what is the adjugate of a matrix so the adjugate of a matrix or the or sometimes there's lots of names sometimes we call it as the adjugate sometimes we call it as a classical adjoint classical adjoint and a lot more okay so this is a classical adjoint we also call it as that so how do we take out the ad adjugate of a matrix is nothing but the transpose of its co transpose transpose of its cofactor matrix cofactor matrix so adjugate of a matrix is nothing but the transpose of its cofactor matrix okay so here's how you define it so the adjugate adjugate of a matrix a is nothing but transpose of that cofactor matrix okay so this is a cofactor cofactor matrix which you take in out for every for every i and j in your matrix okay so adjugate what is the transpose of that cofactor matrix so here are some properties so over here the adjugate adjugate of a is nothing but c transpose and it is nothing but uh, minus 1 of course I'm writing the formula i plus j i plus j times m i j this is this is the formula for calcul calculating okay and an i and j should go from for all the elements so i and j okay so this is the i and j and this is how you take out the uh, adjugate for matrix this is the definition of the adjugate of a matrix okay so another property is a times the inverse of the matrix matlab it it means you have a matrix a and you have a matrix uh, inverse of that so the output will be of course always the identity matrix when you multiply the uh, a matrix and the inverse of that matrix so what is in inverse of a matrix so here's how we deal with it so inverse of matrix uh, of inverse of a matrix is nothing but the ai how you cal cal calculate it if you know about 1 over a this is this this is what we write but here's how we do that so 1 over the determinant of a 1 over the determinant of a times the adjugate of a times the adjugate of a and how do we calculate the adjugate of a we calculate the adjugate of a by taking the transpose of our cofactor matrix and you all know the for taking out the cofactor matrix we have this equation uh, minus 1 to the power i plus j times m sub subscript i and j okay so this is how you cal cal calculate the uh, inverse of a matrix how you calculate the one over the determinant of a times the adjugate of that a adjugate of that matrix a this is how you calculate the inverse of a matrix it's not a big deal it's just a small stuff that you are seeing over here okay so so, so we have talked so we have we have a talk about inverse of matrix so i'm just going to write it out in one detail about what we had a talk on this now and one one more thing over here if your the determinant of a the determinant of a is equals to 0 then your matrix the, the matrix is not invertible if your determinant of that a is 0 then your matrix then your matrix a is not invertible then it will be non defined okay so let's uh, let me write it out what we had studied we have our cofactor we have our cofactor of a matrix cofactor of a matrix is nothing but uh, minus 1 i plus j to the power of times m i j okay and then you take out the the uh, the adjugate of a matrix the adjugate of a matrix a is nothing but what the the cofactor the transpose of our cofactor matrix and for taking out the inverse of that for that uh, matrix for a for, for, for matrix a we have one over the determinant of a times times your uh, adjugate adjugate of a and if your if your uh, in uh, uh, the determinant of a is zero if the determinant is zero then then your your matrix is not invertible your matrix is not invertible is not invertible okay so this is this is this is what the whatever we have studied in this video and i hope that you are able to understand so in the next session we started started talking about uh, the systems of equations 
and 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 we, and we also talk about um, and then we will talk about eigenvectors and eigenvalues. We'll also talk about rank and rank of a matrix and a trace of a matrix. So I think we should end this video. I'll be catching up in the next video. Till then, bye bye. Have a great day. Hey everyone, welcome to this next next lecture on trace of a matrix. So in this video, I'm going to talk about trace of a matrix. Okay, a uh, trace will 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 I, I, I will talk about how do we calculate the trace of a matrix and this video is not only about trace. We'll, we'll talk about something called as Hadamard product, which is one of the most important stuff. We'll talk about its properties. We'll talk about a cyclic property of a trace as well. We'll talk about some more properties of a trace. trace. And then we'll talk about uh, what are some exceptions in trace. And then we'll talk about uh, uh, Norker product. I don't know how to pronounce it. I think a K is uh, silent over here. So I think Ron Ronaker product. So we'll talk about that and how with one, with one example. Okay, so this is the agenda for this video. And the notes for this video is in description box. So I hope that you will be able to go in the description box and see there uh, the, the the notes of this video. And maybe if you and if if you're wondering whom to whom I'm writing on, it's the updated Microsoft Whiteboard. And I and I and I simply think that's the, that's this is amazing. This is going to beat every whiteboard available in the market. Uh, so this is just an information from my side uh, of the stuff. So let's get started talking about a trace of a matrix. But before that, I want to I want to give you some uh, some class announcement. The first announcement is we are removing around five students from the course by personally emailing them first of all, understanding their what they are facing. And if we think okay, we can remove. If we don't get a response from that student, we are gonna to just remove them from the LMS. Okay, so new seats are being available, so you can go ahead and enroll uh, for the LMS for absolutely free. It's absolutely free, so you can go ahead. And assignments are also being released. Okay, so if you're not able to do the assignments, you are most likely uh, not going to get. Uh, you are not getting the grades and you'll not most likely not able to pass the course okay so so let's talk about trace of a matrix so 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 these are some of the class announcements so let's get get ahead and talking about a trace of a matrix so so for for taking out the trace of a matrix it should be a square matrix so for example let's say you're going to calculate the trace you're going to cal calculate the trace trace of a square matrix so you want to calculate the square of your you want your to calculate the trace of a square matrix a okay and usually write that and and usually write that tr and so this is the this is the formal notation for then den denoting that we are taking out the trace of the matrix a so this is read as a uh, uh, taking out the trace this 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 one is nothing but your trace there's nothing but your trace okay so you're, so you're actually taking out the trace of a matrix a cool so i think that this is this is good to go so the trace of a matrix a is de is defined by t tr and then in bracket you write a okay so so how do what's the so how do we calculate the trace of a matrix so how do we even bother calculating the trace how do we even bother calculating the trace of a matrix? For calculating the trace of a matrix, we do sum of elements, sum of elements, sum of elements, sum of elements, sum of elements on the main diagonal of the matrix A. On the main diagonal of the matrix A. Of the matrix A, or you can say of A okay and uh, a is a matrix or a square matrix so so the, tra the how do we calculate the trace of a matrix the trace of a matrix is calculated by the sum of elements on the main di diagonal of the a and b say for example say for example you have a matrix a you have a matrix a you have a matrix a so let's assume that the matrix is 3 by 3 matrix so let's assume the matrix is 3 by 3 matrix so just i'm going to take the maybe this color, this thrust shoots. Okay, so you have 
Uh, so let's write it out a11 a12 a13 so let me just draw it over here as well okay so we have that and then let's draw a21 a22 a23 and let's pick this green color a maybe 31 a32 and a33 so you have this matrix so you have this matrix a so you have this matrix a and you wanted to calculate the trace of this matrix so for calculating for calculating the trace of a matrix a what you will do you will just um, sum the elements of the main diagonal so a11 plus a22 plus a33 okay so the main diagonal is this this one then this one then this one okay so and then you'll be getting your uh, scalar as an output it can be c uh, whatever the number is okay so this is how you calculate the trace of a particular matrix and and formally i can define this i can define this i, I can define this as uh, i can define this as a oh my god i think summation is not written correctly i equals to one all the way down to the three means in this case we are we want uh, for a three by three matrix so i equals to one all the way around to the three all the way around to the three a i i okay so if we go on first of all a i equals to one then that will be a one one plus a two two plus a three three okay so so this is how this is what the formal notation for uh, uh for summation notation or the for loop for a uh, particular for taking of the trace of a matrix okay so so let's take one example to perform the uh, to perform the necessary accents accents so let's say let's say for particularly you have a data you have the particular matrix you have particular matrix a so just drawing the same matrix and let's draw uh, let's take one zero three and let's take this yellow and let's write eleven five two let's take uh, uh, green and let's write six twelve minus five and then let's draw a matrix. So you have this matrix. Now you want to calculate the trace of this matrix. The trace of a matrix is nothing but you want to calculate the trace of the matrix A. The trace of a matrix A is nothing but uh, it's nothing but it will go from i equals to one all the way around to three. A i times A i. I think it's A i times i. Okay. Uh, this is what you and then summation sum will 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 this is the summation so it will it will add it up so one plus five plus minus five which will be nothing but one and one is the trace of a particular matrix okay so this is the the one is a trace of the particular matrix and i hope that you are able to make sense out of it and why do we even bother studying trace because because when you when you, when you go further when solving some some linear equations or 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 systems of equations and and this is this is this is mostly used and in other formulas uh, mainly uh, not in specifically in linear algebra mainly some other formulas they are these straight trace of a matrix helps the computation to be easier or help the too much, too much notations as well as it has some cool properties okay so this is very very helpful not in only the con not in only the context of deep learning or machine learning it is most in the concept of uh, context of maths and, and and mathematics and 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 you you get in linear algebra and you get in uh, other maths field or discrete math applications okay so this is what the trace of a matrix so we have to show you one example so i hope that you are able to make sense out of it cool so let's see some some of the properties some of the properties some of the properties of the trace of a matrix so so some of some of the properties of a trace of a matrix i'm just going to write in black so the properties properties so the first property which i want to highlight the first property which i want to highlight is the trace of the matrix a plus b can be written as the trace of the individual matrix A plus trace of a matrix B. So, so I can write in this particular format. It now the second. So you can you can just think 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 about it a bit. Means let's let me just show you if if I can. I will just ask you to do experiment with it. But I will just take an example to prove it. Example. Okay. So let's say let's assume that that you are given a matrix A. You are given a matrix A, which is two 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 two. And you're given a matrix B, and you're and, and you're given a matrix B, three, 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 okay, 
and you wanted to calculate the trace trace of a matrix a plus b okay a plus b so what you can do first of all you can cal calculate the trace of a matrix a you can cal calculate the trace of matrix a so the trace of a matrix a is nothing but 2 plus 2 okay which is 4 okay and the trace of a matrix b which is nothing but 3 plus 3 6 and then and then trace of a plus trace of b which is nothing but 4 plus 6 nothing but 10 okay so so this is this is how what you you can take it out or in other words now if you first of all now this is the 10 we have proved we have taken out the uh, this side rhs side let's see the lh side so in lhs so let's say let's say for a particular example for a particularly for for, for example let's say let's say, let's take these one matrix and then try to add it first so first of all we'll add it so let's add this matrix a and b so 2 2 plus 3 which is 5 then 2 plus 3 which is 5 5 5 so we got 2 by 2 matrix when adding these two matrix two element wise addition so you get a matrix a plus b a plus b which is this one now if you calculate the 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 the, the trace of this particular matrix a plus b so the trace is the sum of the elements of, in in the main diagonal so 5 plus 5 is what 10 and we had proved therefore LHS is equals to RHS and hence proved okay so this property is proved like this okay so this is how you can prove the properties if you want and this is very very useful if you if you, if you want to get the clarity in your particular matrix okay so another property which I want to show show showcase to you all is another property which is the trace of a matrix when it's up when it is multiplied with some scalar C with some scalar C okay so so what is the trace of this matrix so it's a is a matrix and c is some scalar c is some scalar so that is equi equivalent equals to c trace of a okay so first of all you take out the trace of a and then multiply with that c okay and that actually see what it does it just stretches it, it, it simply means it stretches your matrix okay and if you if talk about a geometric view okay so it's exactly what it's trying to do it's we, you, can, you can hence prove it as well say for example you want to you have a let's say for for a for a particular example let's say you have a matrix a which is two 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 okay and you have the scalar c which is two okay which is two so this is and then you want to take out the trace of c a so first of all you can take out the trace so the trace of a is so it is first of all let's take out the trace of a the trace of a is 4 the trace of a is 4 2 plus 2 4 and then when you when you multiply the trace of with 2 times the trace of a which is nothing but 4 times 2 which is nothing but 8 is a particular answer of that question okay so 8 is the particular answer for that question and it makes sense you can this is this is the this is the this is the your uh, rhs proved and sorry yeah rhs proved you can prove it the same so when you take out the trace of the matrix which is the matrix is 8 sorry so sorry it's 4 plus oh my god 4 4 4 4 and then we'll take out the trace of this matrix which is 4 plus 4 8 so and hence proved so rhs and r equals to lhs okay so these are the properties which are not going to prove all of the properties i've just showed you how i'm how i how i proceed prove proving this stuff okay so another another property another property another property is a trace of a matrix a is equals to the trace of a transpose of that matrix it gives you a clarity whether we transpose it that the main diagonal will be the same and the trace will be also the same okay so I, I i need to prove it to showcase to you all to see the interesting property of this the interesting property of this let's say for for, for example you have a two 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 my favorite matrix so so it is a square matrix because for putting your trace you need to have a square matrix and yeah, it 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 it, it would work well. Okay, so you you have a square matrix two by two. Okay, so when you do the transpose of this matrix, when you do, not exactly you don't need a square matrix to be done transpose. You just need to dump some some of the elements of the main di diagonal. You don't need to do the. Uh, you need you need not to have only the square matrix. I'm just taking an example to make it convenient for you. So so first of all, you take out the trace of this. So let's first of all take out the trace of this matrix the first uh, which is 4 trace of this will be 
4 because the main diagonal 2 plus 2 is 4. Okay, when you transpose it, when you transpose it, 2, 2, 2, 2. Okay, 2, 2. Okay, so this is this this is how it looks. And and when you when you when you when you go ahead and then uh, add it, it is also 4. Okay, the transpose does not matter. And of course, I have taken very very easy easy examples and exactly and hence proved. Okay, so whether you do the transpose, the diagonals will remain same. Now next next property is uh, the, the trace of a product. So 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 let's 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 talk about an, another great stuff, which is a trace of a product. Trace of a product, and the trace of product is. A trace of a transpose b okay is equal to a, a, a trace of a b transpose which is also equal to trace of b transpose a which is also equals to trace of b a transpose okay so these are equivalent equal whatever we have written these all are equivalent equal whatever i have written over here and is nothing but uh, I, this is we are we are we are multiplying the to uh, matrices the trace of the product okay so i hope that you are able to make sense out of it it's not a big deal for you okay so this is this is this is just a basic properties which i'm highlighting okay so we have seen some, some of the properties and and i want to talk about some more properties which are which are more useful means means we are also going to gather some information about uh, a big uh, other kind of products okay that we are going to deal with okay so let's 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 talk about the the, the hardamart product okay and hardamart product is is, is is one of the most important product which you will see so let's talk about hardamart product and it's very very important as well because if anybody go on wikipedia and see some properties what is hardamart product and what is uh ronnecker product we shall see that but before that i want to highlight one more property of a trace one more property of a trace the the trace uh, the cyclic property which i don't which 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 i can't forget means I, I i can't forget it if i forget it no one is gonna relieve me so the 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 i'm just highlight the cyclic cyclic property cyclic property of trace okay and then and then we'll talk about two two kind of product which is hardamat product and ronecker product okay so we'll talk about that two kind of product in detail okay so the cyclic property says that let's say let's say for example you want to calculate the trace of a matrix a b c d okay a b c d is just a multi, multi, multi multiplication of a four matrix so u to z nothing but equals to you can just you can just take the you can just b a c d which is nothing but equals a trace of c b uh, i think it's c d a b c d a b which is nothing but trace of d a b c okay so first of all b gone to the um, b b gone first then c gone first then d gone first okay that's a cyclic property it's it's it's, it's, it's it goes in cycle okay but 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 arbitrary permutations are not allowed but arbitrary per uh, these are not allowed i i, I think i done wrong over here it should be something like uh, first of all it was b and then it should be uh, c b a d i think so like this yeah i hope so it should be like this and then when you go ahead um, yeah so it should be something like this and then you keep on rotating i have to recheck the thing but it but it keeps on rotating rot so the trace of the cyclic property says over here so b c d a then you have a c d a b so first of all b gone first and then we have C D and A, A gone last. Okay. And then this is a cyclic permutations. That trace is an invariant under the cyclic permutations. And the permutations you all know. You can check this out. This is the property. This this property is known as cyclic permutation. And one more thing I want to highlight over here that no arbitrary permutations are allowed. You cannot do something like this. Okay. So you have to have the symmetric matrices are considered. Is it means if the product of three matrices, symmetric matrices are considered, then any permutation is allowed. So for example, if it is symmetric matrix and for being a symmetric matrix, it should be equal to its transpose. The, 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 the matrix product should, should, should be equal to transpose. 
and the trace of a matrix should be equal to the transpose of that matrix trace of the transpose of that matrix then it's called the symmetric matrix and and then any permutations is allowed okay any perm permutations is allowed except this this is the only case where the any permutation is allowed otherwise we don't allow any permutations are allowed in cyclic property okay so this is this is cy cyclic property which you have to remember okay i may have written it wrong but i hope that you will correct it out uh, by the wikipedia page so this is this 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 was a cyclic property which i want to highlight and i hope that you are able to uh, understand it in a much better way so let's talk about uh, let's let's talk about hardamart product so let's talk about Hardamart product, which are big, big because we haven't, we hadn't have a chance to talk on this Hardamart, Hardamart product as 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 it seems to be a bit useful for me because it is also used in various quantum computing as well as machine learning as well as deep learning. So let's assume, let's assume that you want to take out the dot. Sorry, I'm, I'm saying dot product. It should be Hardamart product. Hardamart product when it multiplies with the two matrices, it just do the element wise product okay and the and the matrix and just just to the element wise product and gives the another matrix of this of, of of the same dimension okay so so let's say for for example to give a matrix a multiply the matrix b okay and this is the sign for the Hartmann product is just a small o okay so 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 let's say you have a matrix a we have a matrix a a11 a12 a13 a21 a22 a two three, a three one, um, a three two, a three three. So so you have this matrix A, you have this matrix A, and you have another matrix B, and you have an, an, another matrix B, and another matrix B is maybe B one one, B one two, B one three, B B two one, B two two, B two three, B three one, B three two, B three three. Okay, you have the two matrices, and when you take out the dot, pro, sorry, Hadamard product, Hadamard product, Hadamard product between these two matrices, which will be nothing but the product wise multiplication. So A11, B11, A12, B12, A13, B13, then A21, B21, A22, B22, A23, B23, okay, A31, B2, B31. Um, uh, it's, it should be a three two b three two, and then a three three b three three. Okay, so this is your matrix, uh, the hard part product, which is element wise product. Okay, so I hope that you are able to get a means element wise product. It's not a big deal. It's very very easy to understand. Okay, so some 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 of the properties of this, some of the properties which I want to highlight, properties, properties which I want to highlight, some of the properties of this particular uh, product is. Is you can write it out in this format, which is uh, which is equals to this. Sorry, b times a, b b b b dot b circle a, and then a, and then b c, which is nothing but equals to a b dot c. I hope that you all remember the properties name. Okay, another is a uh, b plus c, which is nothing but equals to a b plus a c okay so these are some some of the properties which are high, high, highlighting over here a c is nothing but equals to uh okay you can write it out something like this a zero which is not nothing but equals to uh, zero time with zero a which is nothing but equals to zero okay so this is these are some of the properties of a hard product which you which i want you to think about it and and solve it on your own and prove it and and then prove these properties if you want okay and just like i've taken taken some examples and proved it so let's talk about another another so one so uh, so let's so i'm just just going to show you one of the property of the trace of a, a trace of a, a trace of a hard product the trace of the Hadamard product. Where is the? Where is that? Trace of a Hadamard product. I, I'm not seeing where that. But yeah, it's it's very it's one of the important stuff. But yeah, let's go ahead and talking about a um, uh, Andronicker product. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm pr 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 pronouncing it good or bad way. But I want you to think about this. It means uh, you have, you wanted to uh, the something called as Andronicker product. Uh, Ronicker, Ronicker product. So 
I think we have to talk on this. So Ronecker product, let's, let's talk, let's talk about this, Ron, Ronecker product. So you have a matrix A, you want to calculate, you want to do the Ronecker product A and B between A and B. Okay, so let's say, and we, we, this is the Ronecker product sign for showcasing, okay, this is a Ron, Ronecker product. And this is how it looks. One, two, three, four, and then uh, like this, zero, five, six, seven. Okay, and when you, and this is how the raw nickel product works. So what you do, you make a big matrix, means a big matrix like this, and you take this first element and multiply with all means as a scalar and multiply with the matrix on, 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 on the matrix B. So something like this, zero, five, six, seven, okay? And then you and then you go on say, as a two as a scalar in the sec, sec, second element. You have zero five six seven. Okay, third element you have three zero five six seven. Okay, uh, four zero five six seven. Okay, this is how it should work. And 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 then then what you do? And then what you do? You simply uh, and and then you follow your you know, whole procedure. The whole procedure is. Uh, which is nothing but one times zero, then uh, then one times five, one times five, then we have one times six, one times six, one times seven. For 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 this one, I'm I'm, I'm doing like this, okay? And then you keep on doing this three times zero, three times five, three times six, three times seven. I'm doing doing for this, and then let's do it for the same two times zero. Then two times five, two times six, two times seven, four times zero, four times five, four times six, four times seven. Okay, and then when you when you do this stuff, you'll be left with, you'll be left with, zero, five, zero, ten, uh, six, seven, twelve, fourteen, zero, five, fifteen actually, zero, twenty and 18 21 24 28 and this is what you get as a four by four matrix this is this is nothing but called the ronecker product and one of the property and trace this is the, the trace of uh, the trace of this ronecker product is can be written like this can be written like this can be written like this uh trace of trace of a and then times the trace of B. Okay, so you can write it something like this. But 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 one thing which I want to highlight over here, key you cannot you cannot uh, do something like this in a regular case in your in 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 your if I could show it to you if if I could have a chance to so show, show it to you. So let me just show it on a Wikipedia page. I think that is exactly not equals to hmm. So the trace, if, if, if you see the trace, trace of a matrix product, okay, the trace of matrix product, it cannot be written like A times B as a matrix product, a usual matrix product, which is trace of A, which is, which is, which is completely wrong. It, it cannot be written, but there is a case which is the Ronecker product, which we can write it something like this, but in matrix product, we are not allowed to do that, okay? So, so this was the bit about this uh, Ronecker product and I hope that you understood the Hardamat product and the trace of a matrix. So I hope that, that we are done with the core concepts of linear algebra. From the next session, we'll be starting talking about systems of equations, solving systems of equations, LU decomposition, Gaussian mixtures, and then we are done with this uh, chapter and I hope and and I and I really appreciate your patience throughout this course and then and I'm, 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 I, I guarantee that you will learn calculus in the easiest way that I can and, and I also hope that I will providing so much values to you all uh, even I'm I, I, I think I uh, it, it, it motivates me like if, if you, I see the watch hours and it's a bit increasing and it motivates me a lot okay uh, people are watching these videos so please keep watching please share this course is very very important for me so that it could reach to lots of viewers and i know this course will be boom in upcoming future and many people are going to take benefit from this and some of the comments are say said that your that please don't stop uploading the videos this course will be boom on future if i just complete the course 
and then I show it to the viewers. Hey, see, the course is completed. Complete this. You are. It is more than any premium course. You are. You're getting for absolutely free. You're getting the assignments. You're getting everything for free. So I think that it is so so much of. Uh, the features which are available for free uh, the, the people do not give when they when you when you pay for that Okay, so I hope that's uh, that's it for this video. I'll be catching up in the next video till then. Bye. Bye. Have a great day So let's get started talking about systems of equations as this is the last video on linear algebra series And I hope that you are able to understand everything in linear algebra as well as some of some of the videos of linear algebra is already released before around nine nine videos and i hope that you are able to make sense out of it uh, so we had a talk on everything which is required for deep learning for further deep learning is we have already already talked about that and one concept which i haven't talked is uh, eigenvectors and eigenvalues i'll i'm going to talk about i have already talked about this in my pca videos so as I haven't seen much of use in deep learning, but yeah, surely you can go to my PCAB video or principal component analysis video in ML001 and you can see there about uh, eigenvectors and eigenvalues if you're interested in learning that. So this is the last video on systems of linear equations. So I'm just going to write linear as it does not make sense. So linear equations. So we'll try to solve, we'll first of all see what the systems of linear equation means and we will see also how to solve the sys um, this linear equations and every stuff okay so what are linear equations so as the as first of all let's let's start with the what is a linear equation a linear equation is it's an equation for a line so so as we have seen in linear regression so your this is the this is this will this will be your linear equation whatever the hypothesis is maybe the hypothesis h of x equals to theta 0 plus theta 1 times x x1 okay so this 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 uh, this equation is your linear is your linear equation the reason why I'm saying it's a linear equation because over here it does not have any powers. It it has a power of a one and and it is a straight line, or or or, or a line. Okay. So so some of the examples of linear equations. Some of the examples of linear linear equation. So I'm just going to give some some examples. So maybe y equals to three point five minus zero point five x. Okay, uh, another, another example may be y equals 0 0.57 minus x. Okay, but they, they both mean the same. They both is actually equivalent, whatever you write with in that form or you write in that form. And you can also write this out in y plus 0 0.5 x equals to 3.5. You have written that into another mode. You can also write y plus 0 0.5 x minus 3.5 equals to 0. You have written that into a new mode or you have written this uh, this into new mode so they are equivalently the same linear equation equivalently they are same linear equations same linear equation they are not different linear equation as you can see over here uh, so let's let me just show you so first of all let's see this one okay y equals to 3.5 minus 0 0.5 times x and if, if, if you compare y equals to 0 0.5 and when, when you do the manipulation of algebraic manipulation, you will get this and you can check that it's exactly equivalent to that. Okay. Uh, which you can see 0 0.5 times 7 minus 0 0.5 times 6, exactly what, 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 what that second equation is telling. And then you're just, you're, you, you have just converted this 0 plus 0 0.5x on the, on, on, on the left, on the left hand side. Okay and making that equal to 3.5 you just manipulated this is algebraic manipulation and they mean the same okay so this is these are the linear equations which i have to show it to you so so we had a talk on linear equation that is an equation for a line okay so it's an equation it's an equation of a line or a for a line whatever okay so what is systems of linear equation so systems of linear equation is when we have two or more linear regression, sorry, so sorry, it's linear equation, they are working together, 
Okay, so so as as from 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 history, we have seen a particular statement is called something, and a group of particular st st statements are called something. Okay, so in the same way, for example, if if you have seen my linear combination videos, so we have we had told the set of all the linear combination. I think yeah, the linear combination is called span, and only one there is. This is called a span. Okay, so the set of they are working together. So in the same way, um, we have the systems of equations are the set of or when we have two or more linear equations working together. Okay, so system of equation, the definition of a systems of equation is when we have two or more, two plus. 2 plus linear equation, 2 plus linear equation, 2 plus linear equation. When we have 2 plus lin linear equation, uh, when we have 2 plus linear equation, uh, they are working together, they are, they are working together, then that's called system of equation. Working together, together, they are nothing but called, they are called system of linear equation okay so so systems of equal linear equation means there are two or more linear equations working together and that's nothing but the systems of equations so for an example so let's say for it for, for example uh, 2x plus y equals to 5 minus x plus y equals to 2 that is, you have the set system of linear equation and you need to find the value, the value of x and y by solving this system of equation. We'll see how to solve system of equation using substitution, elimination, and, and, and al 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 algebraic manipulation. We'll try to see how to solve, how to find x and y. So they both are working together. They, 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 they both are, they both are, the, this is a, a system of linear equation. These both equations are linear equation, and and and, and using the system of linear, or you need to solve this uh, system of equation by finding the value of x and y. Okay, so 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 let's so let's see how do we proceed further in solving the systems of linear equation. So I'm just going to see the recordings is being recorded. Yeah, correct. It is being recorded. Let's let's go ahead and solving the linear or so sorry, it's systems. Why I'm saying the linear and uh, linear regression? Uh, just want to share one incident. I was giving giving a speech, and there was a kind of stuff deep meaning. Okay, so the I was having a quote, and then I was telling the the beautiful line is the, is the title of this, and and the deep meaning. So I was so I was in a state and 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 told uh, the deep learning of this uh, quote. So I was like, so seriously, I told the deep learning, but no problem. Again, I corrected it. But yeah, it was a funny. No one was knowing about deep learning in my school that uh, at that point. Okay, so solving. So 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 we need to solve. Let's let's take one example. Let's take one example to solve one linear equation. To 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 solve one linear equation. So let's go ahead. Let's let's go ahead uh, to 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 solve the linear equation. So let's say solving. You need to solve. Is x plus y equals to six, three uh, x plus y, which is in what not, nothing but equals to what, uh, two. Okay, so you need to find the value. You need to find the value of x and y. So how you are going to proceed further? What we can do is simply merge them together. Merge them into one question, into one uh, one one of equation by making the LHS to the LHS side and RHS to RHS side. Okay, so x plus y minus 3x plus y. Okay, so what I'm going to do is have over here we subtract it. So let's sub sub subtract it out. Okay, 6 minus 2. So we are subtracting the linear, the, the, the equations. Okay, so the, from the, the second equation from the first equation, sub subtracting the second equation from the first equation, and then we are done. So we are sub subtracting it this. Now we, if we x plus y plus 3x minus y equals to 4 and then you proceed further which is 4x and then it is card okay 4x equals to 4 and x equals to 1 okay so when you when you say that you 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 got 1 what you can do so we now know the value of x you now know the value of x 
So after knowing the value of x, you can put them together. 1 plus y equals to 6. When you put x equals to 1, x, x equals to 1. 1 plus y equals to 6. And minus 3 times 1 plus y equals to 2. And y equals to, uh, I think, 5. And maybe y equals to 5. Okay. So, uh, so y equals to five. Of course, you you can you 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 check with both the equations, and both the equations yields the same y. When 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 you put x uh, x's, okay. So so you can solve any of these uh, equation, and maybe the first equation or the second equation, and then take y. I've just done to to to, to show you the the check that okay, the second equation means the same what exactly the first equation means, okay. So the value of of the x and y will be x equals to 1 and y equals to 5 is the solution to the system of equation okay so when you when you so you find the value so the question was to find the value of x and y and you are done with finding the x and y values and and it is nothing but a beauty of algebra and and i seriously like algebra in these cases and and we'll see some of the some of these geometric examples that how it is working and and and, and geometry the geometrical interface of the systems of equations okay so 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 I, th I think that we are able to make sense out of it and i also hope that you are able to understand it now we have seen the numerical understanding now let's try to simply understand the geometrical aspect of this okay the geometrical aspect of this let's see let's say you have an x so sorry you have an x and y axis so sorry this is x and this is y axis okay so let net net me do not write this out, okay? But it make more sense in 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 context of linear algebra. So let's write two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, okay? So let's go ahead with solving the same thing. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Okay, now let's plot both of these equations. Let's plot both of these x plus y equals to 6 and 3x plus y equals to 2. And graphing these is not a big deal. If you graph, if you graph the equations, the equations, graphing the equations, I would like you, we'll, we'll cover that in the pre-calculus, but I would like you to have some context understanding of how we graph the equation. And the way we graph, the way I used to just, just, just in this example, let's assume that you want to grab the function, you want to grab the function maybe f of x equals to x squared. How, how, how you are going to graph it? So you can just put the values of different different x's and point and keep keep mark on the point, and and then and then at, and then after certain certain x's value, just um, just join that points. Or in or in the other words. Let's say for for example, you do the same. You you try with different different values of x. You try with different different values of y, and keep pointing over there. So you then you are able to graph the equations. And if if you if you still not if still confused, I would like you to send to one video, which will the link in description, like graphing the equations, which is not a big deal. They just form a table, and they just try different different x values, and then they get the y values, and then they try the y value, and then they get the x value. Okay, and they keep on doing it. It until unless they, they found some pattern in it and and it's not a big deal to found a pattern or to 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 have maybe three to four uh input values of x's and y's then you'll be getting your the the graph of the equation okay so i think uh, let's plot this x and y so the plot of it, this x and y table will be nothing but uh will be nothing but what uh six and eight i'm just going to have a good underst uh so sorry i'm not able to plot clearly let me just touch this. So starting at it is touching actually eight. Okay, but it's looking very bad actually. So let me try. Okay, so let's assume that it touches eight. Okay, so this is eight. Okay, and this is six. And this is an equation for your x plus y equals to eight. Let's try to plot uh, maybe this one. Uh, this this particular term stuff. It's three minus three x plus y equals to two. Okay, so how you are going to plot it? So the so the plot of this would look something like this. So it looks something like this. So when you go ahead and touch this, so this is your uh, the the graph of three x plus y equals to two. This this is a graph of that e equation. And when you see over here, so if now you have these two equations. Now if you if you if you if you, if you go closer and closer to this. 
uh, if, if you go a little bit closer to this, you'll be, you'll be noticing that, okay, I think I have done a little bit wrong over here. I have done a little, little bit wrong over here, of course. And I have done a little bit wrong over here. I should give two over here rather than giving two over there and one over here. Okay, just to maybe just, uh, but in, if, if, you, if you draw a graph formally on the graph paper, you'll be getting exact stuff, but I'm just assuming, okay, some something like this. Now, the, the intersection, the intersection which you're seeing over here, the intersection, the intersection which you're seeing over here is actually your solution of x or, or or the values okay or the values or the values of x and y or the or, or you find the solution to both of these so you, you already solved using graph of the value of x and y how where, where the points intersect so i'm just going to write it out let's remove it first of all so with the point it intersect so it is nothing but five okay at y and there's nothing but one at x so x equals to 1 and y equals to 5. So you get the answer from here as well by geometry purpose. So the point of intersection, the point of intersection is where, 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 where the lines intersect is actually the solution to that linear, to that system of equation. Okay. So when you, when you can plot it, uh, maybe three linear equation and it will be in, in, in if, if you, if you three linear, linear equation with, with the two variables, Okay, so maybe it may be on a, uh, on a, a three-dimensional plane and where the plane intersect exactly that's the solution of x, y, and z. If, if there are three values, x, y, and z, that's not a problem of a two-dimensional two variable. That is for of a problem with three-dimensional variable. Where you have, where you, you plot the plane, you, you have a plane, something like this, of x value, y value, and z value. And then you have a, this is this is one of the linear equation. Maybe you have another linear, linear equation. And maybe you have another linear equation. The point of intersection, maybe this one, is actually your solution to that uh, x, and y, and z. Okay? So we'll see one geometric purpose later on. Uh, but uh, this is how the, the 2D, 2, 2D geometry in 2D plane, this is if you have to find the value of x and y. The point of intersection of the, 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 the linear equations is actually the solution to the values of you are able to find. We, are, we want to find it, okay? So I, I hope that you're able to make sense out of it and it's not a big deal to understand it, okay? So I would like to go further. I would like to go further into, we had a talk on this is the two variables, which is two 2D plane stuff. So now let's go ahead, now let's go ahead, now, now let's go ahead and talking about what that linear equation, when we call a particular equation as a linear equation, and when we call the particular equation as a non-linear equation. So who can tell me that 2x plus y minus z equals to 4, is it a linear equation? Yes or no? I think this is a linear equation. But is this a linear equation? But is this a linear equation? So sorry, I think uh, I have done a wrong example, but no problem. 2x plus y squared minus z equals to 4. Is this a linear equation? Yes or no? It's no, because here the power is true as a quadratic equation. Okay. So this is not a linear equation over here, but this is a linear equation. Okay. So I'm just going to get started with, with talking about variables which we are dealing with. Okay, so variables which you're dealing it up. So if, if you see this example, if you see this example of this, x plus y equals to 6 and 3x plus y equals to 2 and then you add minus over here. So over here, here we, the, 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 the system equation is a two dimension. System equation is a two dimension, two dimension uh, variables. Okay, why? Because you have only two variables. Okay, x and y. But what if, if I add x plus y equals to, or plus maybe z equals to six, and three x plus y plus z equals to two. So you are able to find x, y, and what about z? So this is a three-dimensional problem. Three, three, the, the system of equations is a three-dimensional. The system of equation is a three-dimensional stuff and uh, uh, Okay, so so this is how we are able to make sense out of it is of a two dimension and three dimension variables. 
Okay, so let's get started solving up our problem. So we have this two dimension and three dimension. Okay, so I hope that you're able to understand what I'm trying to convey over here. But in let's let me show you some other stuff. So here we are seeing only two two system or two uh, two line, linear equation in the system equation. Your this just identify minus three x plus y equals two two and maybe two x plus 2y equals to uh, 16 okay so just let me know what uh, is this a two, two, two dimension or three dimension it is a two dimension because there are only two unique variables which you need to find okay but what if I change 2z and maybe 2z I just change it and 2z plus 2y it's a three dimensional problem then okay so it's just totally based upon the unique variables you have in your problem statement so here we have more variables you you you, you in a system of fiction you have more variables and etc okay so i hope that you're able to make sense out of it and i also hope that you are you are able to understand it okay so let's go so so i hope that uh, it's just not a big deal for you at least and uh, uh, please recapitulate if if, if 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 you're not even com uh, comfortable please rewatch the video again i would ask you okay so we had seen that maybe your the, the line of intersection is called the solution to the system equation but there are three types of possible solution cases so the first type is no solution second type is one solution third type is infinitely many solutions so for the system of equation you can have either you can have either no solution you can have either no solution you can have either one solution and you can have either infinitely infinitely many solution many solution okay so you are have you can have one solution no solution exactly no solution for that system equation you can have one solution for that equation and then you can have infinitely many equation many solutions for that okay so if there if when there is a no solution for that equations that's called inconsistent or if there is a one or infinitely many solutions that's called consistent that's called consistent okay so let's i will just go and go through the note again but let's see what that a geometric mean no solution one solution infinitely many solutions okay so so let's here is our graph here is our graph that is graph so over here let's say for a for a simple example this is your one so this is a this is a maybe two uh, two two variable stuff and two dimension stuff so you have a two linear linear equation in that system of equation and you have the first equation and you have the second equation and which you can see over here they do not intersect they do not intersect they are parallel to each other so that's why they have the no solution they have the no solution okay so if if there's a point so this is an example of no solution another example is if you have this one and uh, and you have the another equation something like this the point of intersection the point of intersection which is uh, see over here is this in this in this this graph an example of one solution because there is one intersection at that point okay the infinitely many solution graph will, would look like something like this if you have if you have something like x and y graph x and y graph and you have the on the you have the first equation and the second equation is, is, is on the same line of that first equation uh, then that's called then they, that's where we'll, we will be having the infinitely many solution to that linear equation okay cool so I hope that you are able to make sense out of it and it's not a big deal to understand it okay so so these are three types of solutions and 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 then we call this when there is a no solution we call that as an inconsistent we, we call this as an inconsistent and these two are called the consistent these two are called the consistent okay so I hope this is a two these are diagrams of two equations in a variable and in, in two variables uh, not a big deal to understand it cool so yeah, the whole, this now now we are done with it and <laughs> I think I spoke Hindi just just before no problem again. So solving system of equation. So now let's 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 start solving system of equation. We had solved one system of equation using reg, regular algebra, but basically in real world you not get a system of equation in very very easy mode. You have to make you have to understand it. And I, I 
and it will ask you to want to solve this system equation just to make sure that you're able to understand everything so let's start with solving a system of equations so uh, uh, solving system of equ equations so let's go ahead uh, 3x plus 2y equals 19 so let's take one let's take one example we'll solve this algebraically we'll solve this al algebraically okay uh, man man manipulation will do a lot of manipulation in this so let's take one example and the example states 3x plus 2y 3x plus 2y equals to 19 and x plus y equals to 8 okay so over here you have this and and what we specifically do we make that to um, I, I would say make that y or whatever the variable we should find into one side and other 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 stuff in the and the left uh, opposite side of that which is in uh, RHS so what I'm going to do is 3x plus 2y equals to 19 the y equals to 8 minus x so I uh, so y equals to 8 minus x so now my trick will be I will replace the y over here with 8 minus x okay replace y with 8 minus x with 8 minus x so 3x plus 2 8 minus x plus equals to 19 and you have y equals to of course 8 minus x okay 8 minus x now what i will do i will expand this i will expand this okay so after you expand this 3x plus let's try to expand okay 3x plus 16 minus 16 minus 2x equals to 19 okay so now you have this y equals to 8 minus x okay so you have expanded it now what you will do you will try to solve this okay you will try to um try to solve this this one so 3x minus 2 which is of course x and we have us left with um, a 16 so which is nothing but x plus 16 equals to 19 and y equals to 8 minus x so x equals to 19 minus 6 and y equals to 8x and this will be yield yielding to your favorite uh uh, 16 minus okay it's 16 no? yeah it's 16 which is with 3 and then we, we got the value of 3 we, we got the value of 3 now you put the value of 3 over here so so over here 8 minus 3 which is nothing but 5 so you found x equals to 3 and y equals to 5 as a solution to this linear equation of the system of equation and you hope that this is very very easy not very hard to understand this we are sub this is the method called substitution solving by substitution okay so we sub substitute the values so the so what i did my technique was first of all make x on the uh, one side with all the all the variables on the one side and other all the things on the left opposite side of that variable which is the rhs in this case um, and then try try to take out and try to do the algebraic manipulation and then you are done you just find one variable and other variable is in front of you okay so now we are seeing these two variables. Now let's try to solve the solving the system equation of three equations in three variables. So we'll be having the three equations in three variables. Okay. So now let's see that how we are, how we are going to proceed solve, further solving that. Okay. So let's let me just make that this 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 point and let's see let's let's go further. So let's say x plus z equals to six. Okay. X plus z equals to six z minus 3y okay z minus 3y equals to 7 and 2x plus y plus 3z equals to 15. i will try to be as much neat as possible to make sure that everything is going very very fine okay so what i will do what in my hand is to do is to i'm seeing this x i can make this x equals to 6 minus z okay i can i can do something like that okay so what i'm going to do is i can i can just make that x equals to x equals to 6 minus z so let's go further x equals to 6 minus z okay x equals to 6 minus z now we have minus 3y minus 3y plus z okay minus 3y plus z because i'm i i or in further so let's let's assume let's try it for for or what i'm going to do is to give you a give you a good idea about how to be clean so what what i will do i'll i'll i'll, I'll make a separate space for for all of them so this is for x y plus z because we, we don't have y in this case so we just leave the space for it which is six okay z which is z okay so what i'm going to write z plus three y okay minus three y 
equals to 7 and we have 2x plus 1 which is for this plus 3z equals to 15 this is called the neat and then you what you go further you go further you, uh, then what you do you, you first of all you first of all x equals to oh so sorry i don't have to first of all you have to go further okay x then then you leave all the space for y and z okay equals to 6 minus z okay 6 minus z okay so that the equation left alone the the, the variable left alone and the end are let our lhs side okay you now you write the same thing again minus 3y plus z equals to 7 and 2x plus y plus 3z equals to 15 okay now what i'm going to do is to substitute the values of x over here now i'm going to do is to substitute the values of x over here so after substituting the so let's substitute substitute the values of x over here which will be nothing but uh, x then we leave this space equals to 6 minus z minus 3y minus 3y plus z equals to 7 and 2 6 minus z plus y plus 3z which is nothing but 15 okay now you sub substitute the values of x and if you try to solve it if you if you, if you try to solve it uh, if, if you go ahead and try to solve this we will getting this um, if you go ahead and try to solve this uh, let's go ahead and solving this uh, so uh, over here if, if if I just solve it which is nothing but y plus z equals to 3 okay just I'm solving this the last one which is the last equation and I'll be getting the y plus z which you can check it out okay so if we are solving this 2x minus plus y plus 3z equals to 15 we are getting 6 minus z okay now now we are left with so now we are left with x equals to 6 minus z okay minus 3y plus z equals to uh, uh, as usual now we write y plus z equals to 3 okay now because this is the which we have solved okay now we repeat the process again now over here i can just make z equals to y minus y minus 3 yes or no yes or no minus 3y plus z equals 7 and z equals to y, 3 minus y I can do something like this to make the variable alone so that we can sub substitute it. Now, if you go ahead and substitute it, so if you go ahead and put put, put the values of y, so x equals to 6 minus z, uh, maybe maybe 3y plus, sorry, z values. So z what, what we're having, 3 minus y, isn't it? Maybe we're having or not. Exactly we're having the y cut, I think uh, 3 minus y, okay, equals to 7, equals to 7. When you go ahead, which is nothing but z equals to 3 minus, uh, uh, what do you say? You go further. Okay, so you are left with minus 4y, minus 4y plus 3. Okay, so you'll be, uh, uh, and, and z equals to 3 minus y, which, which, which you are seeing over here. Okay, now we have this, now we have, now we have substituted the values. Now we'll try to solve it. So when we solve it, when we solving, when solving minus 3y plus 3 minus y equals to 7, when you simplify to minus 4y equals to 4, okay, or y equals to minus 1, okay, when you, when you try to solve this linear equation, and it's not, not a big deal to solve, what you can do, you can just add, you can just say, okay, uh, this is uh, minus 4y plus 3 which is minus 4y equals to 7 minus 3 and it will left with 4 and when you try to and 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 and, and when you will be left with minus 1 okay so so this is this is what you get y equals to minus 1 okay now you, you got the value of one value which is x equals to 6 minus z y equals to minus 1 and z equals to 3y 3 minus y okay 3 minus y which you're having now we go to the values of y, we can substitute the values in z, so x equals to 6 minus z, y equals to minus 1, and z equals to 3 minus minus 1, okay, nothing but 4, now we go to the values of z, so x equals to 6 minus 4, which is 2, okay, so we are done with x equals to 2, y equals to minus 1, and z equals to 4, which is our solution, solution to our system of equation in a higher dimension.
or in three variables okay so this is the process called sub solving that by substitution and it works nicely okay it works very very nice to every most of the cases but what it is a very long process okay it's a very very long process but i would recommend you to have a hands-on on this if you're not able to solve uh the system equation using a regular algebra okay so we have solving so this kind of stuff now let's try to solve the system equation by elimination so i'm just going to write solving by elimination elimination okay so how do you even bother solving it example 3x plus 2y equals to 19 and x plus y equals to 8 okay so this is your this is the going we are going to solve it okay so what does elimination means we are going to either multiply add or subtract the, the, the equations from each other so we'll see how to do that so let's say so over here what you so we need we are going to multiply the equation so we are going to multiply so you can see that over 2y is over here so here is also y so we are going to multiply the second equation with the 2 the second 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 equation with the 2 so we are going to multiply the second equation by 2 3x plus 2y equals to 19 and 2x plus 2y equals to 8 okay so when you will go further you, you you have this and what do you do and what you do you simply uh, have the particular now you subtract the second equation from the first equation you subtract this equation from the first equation okay now now you do the sub subtraction over here subtraction over here so you actually you are eliminating the variables from the first one so 3 x 3 x plus 2y minus 2x plus 2y it's nothing but 3 x plus 2y minus 2x minus 2y so it get cut down so we'll be left with x equals to what three okay x equals to because when you when you do this uh, 19 minus uh what are you saying uh uh it's i think it's 19 or it's 16 yeah so so this 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 will be also it uh, i don't know why i haven't multiplied the both both side by two now we have to multiply both side by two so six 19 minus 16 will be three okay so 9 19 minus 6 6 16 will be three so now we got the values of x so x equals to x equals to 3 and when you do this 2x plus 2y equals to 16 put the values of 3 2 times 3 plus 2y equals 16 the y value would be 5 and you found x equals to 3 and y equals to 5 this is called the solving by elimination you first of all you multiply the number by 2 for the second equation and then you subtracted the second equation from the first equation and you're done with solving your linear equation or system of linear equation okay so so this elimination is a little bit faster but it needs a neatness it needs you to have good logic and it needs to have a good strategy but um, you, you can solve whatever you like uh, in the system equation you can you can you can make use of any any of them if it's a system equation using uh, elimination algebra manipulation may or maybe substitution it totally makes sense to you okay so thanks for seeing this video i hope that you're able to make sense out of it this 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 was the last lecture on linear algebra well i'm very very excited to to start with uh, a, a calculus okay i'm going to teach the first time cal calculus and whatever i know about calculus i'm just going to put put that in front of you so that it would recapitulate whatever i had studied as well okay so and it makes sense okay i am able to teach then i'm able to understand that as well cool so i'll be catching up in the next video till then bye, -bye. have a great day Hey everyone so let's get started with a new lecture on lecture number seven which is on determinant and this is one of the one of the again i would say important concept to study because in principal common analysis or whether you uh, it, it 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 comes a lot in your machine learning journey as well as well as in deep learning journey because it tells you how to solve or solving the linear equations or or or, or if, I, if i talk about in terms of linear transformation it just tells you how the how the how the change in area or a volume occurs okay and and determinant is nothing when you it's nothing but you just try you just give some matrix and then you get one number so we'll be talking about that in detail in this session uh, I, I think you'll you'll get a lot from this session and and you, you, you can make your own notes or the notes is in description box below 
either it would be updated soon but yeah uh, I it is it is already being made It's just sent for processing and then it will be in your description if you like this video please be sure to subscribe this channel as well as like this video and comment because YouTube algorithm knows okay this is a good video to recommend because many many other people say uh, your channel is underrated so I want you I want this channel to be a rated channel because I work a lot on this channel okay cool so let's get started with solving uh, what is determinant. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get onto the geometric meaning soon, but uh, in, in, in the determinant, what you do, if you know about a square matrix, if you know about a square matrix, which, which we talked about, and, and I have told that is very important, a square matrix is very important, is used extensively in linear algebra to use this term, terminology. So a square matrix is nothing where your, where your number of a rows is equals to the number of a columns. For example, uh, your matrix A is, is maybe it can be two, 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 okay? So this is a two by two where N equals to two and M equals to two. So N times N matrix, where your square matrix is equals to, where your number of a rows is equals to the number of a columns. Okay, so that is the, so this is, so what you do, you take your square matrix and determinant takes one square matrix where the number of rows is equal to the number of columns, you write determinant of uh, an A and a, a should be the square matrix, A should be the square matrix and then you get one scalar uh, or, 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 or a number as an output when you apply the determinant function or, or, or when you take out the determinant of that matrix okay so now how this is useful uh, we'll see how do we take out the scalar a just in a second numerically but but uh, but when you um, how how the de determinant is useful this is this is one of the most important concept to know so the determinant is useful in in solving in solving linear equation in linear equation it's used very very extensively solving linear equation or maybe it can be useful and in, 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 in knowing, okay, in knowing how linear transformation, in knowing how linear, how linear transformation, transformation change their area or the volume, okay, change their area, transformation, change their area, change their area over volume or volume okay not over it's or volume and it is also and it is also useful uh, in other stops like uh, when solving some uh, some computationally it it, it 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 does reduces some computer not exactly means uh, doing efficiently not exactly i would say efficiently i would say very precisely so solving the particular linear quick equ equ equation and is used a lot in that so that's why we take out the determinant of a matrix and that when you take out the determinant of a matrix you simply give a square matrix to, to that determinant and that the after a, when you take out the determinant you will get one scalar okay so this is what the this is this is this is what we use and and if you, if you talk about um, in machine machine learning use case so in machine learning if you, if you know about machine learning in machine learning you have something called as dimensionality reduction method and in and in that you take out the determinant of that covariance matrix so covariance matrix okay so when you take out the determinant of that covariance matrix and then you and then and and and, and then go further into solving the particular problem okay so not exactly covariance yeah so you take out the determinant and then you go further into uh, into other other stuffs like uh, uh, the eigenvectors and eigenvalues and they are extensively used the determinant are extensively used in the eigenvectors and eigenvalues in principal component analysis. Okay, so I hope that this is clear why we use determinant and, and, and what the determinant is. Now, now we need to care about how do we take out the scalar value because we give a function, because we just give a, 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 a square matrix into the determinant and then we, will, we, are going, we, are, we are just getting a scalar as an output. So how do we even do that? Uh, so for, for doing that, assume that you have a matrix A, you have a matrix A, which is nothing but two by two. So I'm just going to write uh, A, B, C, and D, okay? So you have a matrix A, B, C, D, which is a two by two matrix. So when you take out the determinant of that matrix A, which is nothing but, which is nothing but, so A, D means you take out the product of their diagonals, you take out the product of their diagonals, a D minus B C 
AD minus BC. So for example, you have a matrix uh, two, three, four, six, and then you want to take out the matrix, the determinant of that matrix, two by two matrix, which is nothing but two times six, two times six minus three, three, three times four, three times four, which is nothing but six, six, two, 12 minus three, four, 12, that will be nothing but zero. Zero is the answer or determinant of this matrix. Okay, so the determinant of a matrix can be zero. We have we don't have any conditions, but yeah, the determinant of this matrix is zero. Okay, so this is how you take out the determinant of a matrix geometrically speaking. Okay, so one thing that I want to highlight over here, let's say for a for example, uh, what does it mean geometrically? What does it mean geometrically? So uh, so let's uh, let me make one more page so that I could explain you know, what does it mean geometrically speaking. What does it mean geometrically speaking either i could just go on some website to mean to mean what is actually trying to tell so let's go on one website let's go on one website which i want to show you all is this one okay so assume that over here of, of over here you have let me choose my black color okay here it is so you have um a matrix a matrix a b c d okay you want to take a determinant of this so this this is this is what you take out so for taking out the determinant you just write either in this a b c d giving a uh, pipelines like this okay or do you or you write determinant of this uh, a a matrix and this a matrix is either uh, a b c d like this okay so this is the notation for showing that you want to take out the determinant of this matrix okay that pipeline that big big pipeline okay pipe uh, line okay now over here your a is one your b is zero your c is zero and your d is one okay you want to take out the de determinant of this you want to take out the term determinant of this you want to take out the determinant of this so how do you take out so what does it mean geometrically speaking so geometrically what it's trying to tell is when you plot this matrix over here first of all you take this and then you go over here so this is nothing but the determinant of a two by two matrix is the area of a parallelogram with the column vectors ac and bd okay so this is the the, the determinant is nothing but the area of this parallelogram of this parallelogram where the column vectors are AC and BD okay so when you when you plot the two by two matrix which is which looks like this and 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 this the, 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 the determinant which means geometrically speaking is nothing but area of that parallelogram which formed by joining everything and then and that area of the parallelogram is nothing but determinant of that matrix okay this is what does it mean geometrically speaking uh, I would ask you to watch one video on three blue one brown to see how how is shown geometrically but yeah uh, the the determinant is nothing but the area of that parallelogram whatever form so for example your pair so let me reduce the a a bit and then let me do something with this I don't know what how it is working yeah so let me do something like this and let me increase the area okay let me increase the b okay here it is so when you have the column vector when you have a column vector at 0 0.86 and 0 okay and then you have another column vector which is 0 0.52 and there the parallelogram is formed is nothing but your favorite the determinant okay so this is what the determinant means and you can play with it by just going to demonstration wall frame and this with this website so let's go on the 3d view so how does it look 3d so 3d is nothing but area a, a area of that parallelizoid okay so if you just see over here the area of the parallelizoid is, is nothing but a determinant we'll see how to solve how how to solve this determ this determinant one okay we'll see how to solve um, three for the how to take out the determinant of a three by three matrix and we will also see how to take out the determinant of a n by n matrix okay so it's a it's a bit hectic task but we will try to do it so this is this is what the geometrically means and for 2d the area of a parallelogram and for 3d area of a parallelizoid okay which you can see from the diagrams which are shown over here so if you just if if, if i could zoom in i, I can't zoom in but yeah, I can just show you this is this this is what you have your uh, 
three by three matrix and then you this is the parallelizoid which is formed and then when you try to take out the determinant of this is nothing but the area of this parallelizoid okay so this is what it means and the determinant geometrically is nothing but the area of a parallelogram or parallelizoid in three dimension okay so this is this is what you need in in a geometric intuition just 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 to make sure that what the geometrical it, it means okay so now let's see now one of one of the important thing which i want to show you up is 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 we have seen we have seen how do we take out the determinant of a two by two matrix so the determinant so here's your a here's is your here's is your a and you have and then you want to take out the determinant of this a b c d and i'm just writing pipe to denote okay this is a determinant so when you take when you try to take out the determinant of this so it's nothing but equals to uh, uh, AD, AD minus, oh my gosh, it's AD minus BC. That's uh, then when, when you take out, this is a uh, simple scalar, which is E, not exactly that, not E, 3 plus 3.711, it's E, okay? So let's, uh, let's give it any scalar, which is E, okay? So this is, this is what it means uh, in two by two meters. I'm talking specifically two by two meters. Now, now let's talk about how do we take out the determinant of a three by three matrix. So determinant, determinant, determinant of three by three matrix. Three by three matrix. So how do we mean approach we're taking out? So you have you want to take out the determinant of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Okay. So G, H. I is uh, this is your matrix. This is the determinant of this matrix. Okay, so how do you take out? How do how do you take out the determinant of this matrix? And of course, your it should be a one scalar. Okay, it should, it should be one scalar or a number, or a number. Okay, so how do we take out the determinant? So can't we do a times a times e times i and then? it will not work this is this is not you can you, you can just guess how do we do it just try, try and comment maybe i can just see and be a bit funny in joke so please be sure to write it and i'll try to see what you write it okay so so let's start approaching how do we even approach this problem so what we do we simply so so what we do just just make sure that first of all we go to the a11 okay so means first element in that matrix and then what we do, we simply leave this uh, column and this row and write a minor matrix or a sub matrix of that, of, the, of that uh, big matrix. Or you can say that we take out the minor of this matrix. How do we take out the minor of this matrix? You simply when, for, a, for example, you choose this number. Okay, so what do you do? You, you leave this column and you leave this row and then you write uh, and then what you do you take out the minor and then you take out the determinant the determinant of that by multiplying by a okay so the first element is this and then you have e f h i we left this column and this row and then we write e f h i okay we want to take out the determinant of e f h i okay now what you do now what you do yeah here is your plus sign now it will be a minus sign over here okay you go to the b you leave this column and you leave this row okay which is nothing but b and d f g i d f g i because we left this column this row and this column just d f g i okay and then here is your minus then here will be plus plus uh, you write c now we left this column this 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 column and the first row which is which will be left the determinant of d e g h okay and then we have convert now these are called the minor or a sub matrix sub matrix or the minor of our matrix a these these are called the minor these are called nothing but the minor these are nothing but called the minor minor of our matrix of our matrix a okay so when you try to now it is very easy a times a times uh E I now you can just apply your two by two A E I and F H E I minus F H okay minus B D I F H D I minus F H okay plus C and then you have D H E G okay D H minus E G 
okay and then you'll be left with some scalar and then you can simply do do this thing and then you simply multiply with this and then you do do some calculation and then you'll be getting your output as maybe some some scalar some scalar value okay so let's see one of one of the one of the one of the problem or or the stuff to to see how how it looks like okay so let's let's assume that you have a, a matrix or a three by three matrix so here's a question for you okay maybe you can try try to approach it uh, the, the you want to take out the determinant of I'm writing this pipe that denotes that you want to take out the determinant of that uh, for example 0 1 2 uh, 1 2 0 uh, let's let's write 1 1 0 okay it's just a random random I'll be walking you through it so take out the determinant of this this is a 3 by 3 matrix try to take out the determinant of this so how do you take out so first of all, we go to the first element and then what we do, we take out the minor of this matrix. So the minor, so we leave this column and this row. So we'll be left with zero. Uh, and then we and then we write out minor and then we take out the determinant of our sum matrix. Okay, plus. Now, no, 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 it will be not plus over here, it will be minus because here is our plus. Minus, okay, one, you leave this column and this row, which is one, zero, one, zero. Okay, so one, one zero one zero okay and then you write plus two and then you have uh, you leave one two one one okay you leave this column and this row okay you leave this column and this row you'll be left with one two one one okay and then you do the sum and then you do the sum so and then you take and then what you do you try to take out zero two times zero which is zero minus zero okay minus uh, one times one times zero uh, of course zero and one times zero zero okay plus two uh two okay one times one one two times one two okay then you'll be left with of course zero then it will be done then it will be done it will be also one times zero which is nothing but zero okay we'll be left with two times minus two two times minus two that that will be minus four okay which will be which is your determinant of this matrix so minus 4 is your determinant of this matrix which you are seeing over here so sorry here is 1 minus 2 it's not it's it's simply minus 1 so 2 times minus 2 is the determinant of this matrix so I'll be so here you got the determinant of this matrix which is nothing but minus 2 okay so this is this is how you take out the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix as well so there are there are some problem for you to work on. So I'm just just going to write it out. So there is one problem which you, which you can approach. Okay. So you want to take out the determinant of uh, three seven one minus four. Please answer the HW. Please answer in the comment box. It's just a quiz which you will see in your attendance as well. Okay. So this is what the determinant of that matrix of the two by two matrix or the three by three matrix. We'll try to solve the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix using Leibniz formula or the rule of Saru's. Okay, so it's this very good formula to work on. So we'll see that. But before that, I want to highlight some of the properties, some of the properties of that uh, properties, properties of determinant matrix of determinant of a matrix, determinant of a matrix. So the first first one is the first one is the first one is for example, you want to take out the determinant of this matrix. For example, you want to take out the determinant of one zero uh, zero one. Okay. So try 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 to take out the determinant of this one times one, which is one, uh, and then and then minus zero. Okay. What what it will it will one. And can you identify this is an identity matrix? Even if you have uh, three by three identity matrix, then that will be nothing but that will be nothing but one. So whenever you have a identity matrix, whenever you have if 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 it is if it is identity matrix, if it is identity matrix, identity matrix, then 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 the then the then the determinant of that identity matrix will be one. Okay, this is this is one of the property. Second property, if the if the rows are the same okay so for example if the rows are the same are the same for a for example a a b b okay a a b b then a b minus b a will be nothing but zero okay so this is a, another property 
third property is you have a scalar multiplied with some uh, a and you have another scalar c and b d okay so what it will be it, it just makes sense r a d minus r c d or r r c b okay you can write write it down like this and then it's it's nothing it's nothing you just you just take that out of out of okay you just uh, take take that as a common r a d minus b c okay so we can write this as a we can write this we can write this as a r times a b c d either we can write it now so we proved it so it is just equivalent you can write this so far it will be easily for us to solve okay so it is so it is r times as either it is same as over here so we get a d minus b c so it's just equivalent to that so this is an, an, another property which you see a lot in by taking out the determinant of a matrix okay so this is these are the some of some of the properties which i want to highlight in front of you so now let's go on to the another stuff is how do we take out the determinant how do we even bother taking out the det determinant 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 of 3 by 3 matrix so you can just say okay i'm just going to just going to take out the minor of the sub matrix of the matrix and then i will do that so here's another another trick which is called the rule of sarus i think it's it's just not a, I would say, uh, okay, it's just a good technique, but um, okay, you can try it out. But eventually I like that, my approach, but yeah, it is very, very straightforward approach, which I'm going to tell over here. Okay. So assume that you have a matrix M and uh, that you have a matrix M. Okay. So A11, A12, A13. Okay. A21, A22, A23. A two three, A three one, A three two, A three three. Okay, so we have this three by three matrix. Now, when you wanted to take out the determinant, determinant of this matrix M, so how do we even bother doing that? So for 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 you no, know, so you can use the rule of Sarus. Rule of Sarus. I think the funny name he has, but yeah, again, again, I no no want to comment on on his name. He's a, again a great people. Okay, so not I'm not even a one one percent of these people. So these are amazing people who give a lot to the world. So I think about I'm no one to say about, but yeah, amazing name. So what you do, you take out the determinant. So you want to take out the determinant of a one one, a one two, a one three. Okay, so this matrix I'm just write, writing this matrix, a two one, a two two, a two three. Okay, a three one, a three two, a three three. Okay. And then what you do, you take out the first two column and write it in another format like this. A11, A12, A21. This is a trick for solving a 3 by 3 matrix. A22 and A31. Okay, so A31 and A32. So this is A22. Okay, it's this A21. Okay, so this is what you, now you write this. Now what you do? Now what you do? So what you do, you, you simply take out the product, you simply take out the product like this, the first diagonal. Okay. So this is the diagonal. So what you do a one, one, a two, two, a three, three. Okay. A one, one, a two, two, a three, three plus plus a one, two, a two, two, a two, three. Okay. A two, three and a three, one. So what do you do? You take out the product of these three, you take out the product of these three. So a one, two, a uh, uh, a two three okay a two three uh, and a three one okay now what do you do you simply uh, do this simply multiply the next the uh, di next uh, diagonally okay so plus plus a one three a two one okay I'm, I'm 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 doing a bit messy so let me do a three one uh if i'm not wrong a one three na if a a a one three a two one and uh, a three two, okay. A a a one three, a two one, a three two. Now you are done with this. Now what you do? Now what you do? You now s go from bottom to top. Here you are going from top to bottom. Now you will go from bottom to top by changing the sign now. Okay. Now you go from bottom to top. So here's how you do. Here's how you go further. Okay. So so the way you go is you have a three one. So from here. So from here a three one okay and then a two two and then you go to a a one three 
so now you start going at this side like like this okay so a31 i'm just going to write a31 a22 a22 and then a13 a13 okay and then what do you do and then plus no uh, you, you you minus because you change you go from bottom to top so here you minus it now you, now you go at this one now you do this and then a32 okay this one this one and this one a32 times a23 yeah if i'm it's eight uh, it's a a a two three if i'm not wrong yeah a two three and a a one one a one one okay now minus now this is done now you go at last one which is this one a three three a two one a one two okay and here's how you take out the determinant of a matrix using sarus rule okay or a rule of sarus okay so and then you'll be getting after after doing this all those stuffs you can just cancel it out something if it is so you just you just come do do the computation then here's your matrix and this is just a scalar number or other stuffs so here's the rule of saru so here's how you do you do simply you do you do write the first two column uh at, at, at the side so that it could be easily so uh so what you do you simply take out the product from top to bottom for the first three and then you take out the bottom to top for the second three starting from the last okay so here's 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 what the full the rule of sarus means here's here's how you take out the determinant of that matrix like this okay so now i'm going to talk about is uh, you can see the wikipedia pages for a leibniz rule because they write a very very kind of leibniz stuff so you can just go there and see more see more about this rule okay so the next thing which i'm going to talk about is uh, the next thing which i'm going to talk about is how do we take out the determinant how do we take out even bother taking out the determinant of n by n matrix the determinant of n by n matrix so how do we even take out that and how do we even bother taking out that okay so here's so i'm just going to write the n by n matrix as i'm just going to write the n by n matrix or let's start with a particular example let's start with a particular example so it would to totally make sense okay so let's let's start with a particular example and then at, at last we'll just write a definition and then we'll end this video okay and the example is bit long so i'm just going to maintain my handwriting so the example is and you want to take out the determinant <laughs> you want to take out the determinant of a four by four matrix one two three oh my gosh three four okay six six nine two one and then you have a four nine two one and then you have a zero one 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 okay so here's here's your determinant of this matrix so to take out the determinant of this matrix so how do we even approach taking out the determinant of this matrix so how do we take out the determinant of this so for taking out the determinant of this so for taking out the determinant of this for for taking out the determinant of this you take out you take out you first of all take out the minor or a sub matrix of this okay so you you go to the first column first element and then you leave this column and this row and then write the sub matrix so you just one and then you take out the determinant of 9 2 1 9 2 1 1 1 1 okay this is plus sign so it will be minus sign now you go at this uh, take take out the sub matrix leaving this row this column and this row so it would be 2 first of all you take a product it so you multiply with that 2 2 times uh, the determinant of 6 2 1 6 2 1 4 2 1 and 0 1 1 okay and then you uh, change the sign plus and then go to a 3 and then you leave this column and this row so it will be nothing but uh, 3 and then you have six two one. I also just write okay six 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 nine one. I just, I just leave it. So I'm three six nine one six nine one uh, four nine one four nine one and zero one one. Okay zero one one. Now the last one is there four. Okay so that is four. And then you take a determinant of uh, leaving all the all the uh, column one and then row six nine two six nine two four nine two and uh okay i think it's wrong four nine two and zero one one okay so these are the sub matrix of that matrix let's name it as a m okay so this is a matrix m and then you have to take a determinant of that matrix m 
So here's the four, four by four. Now you do this. Now you have this. Now what you do? Now here you convert it to three by three determinant. Now what you do? You convert that to a two by two. Here's how you do. So you, you don't want to use the Sarus rule because I, I eventually don't like that rule. It's a very hectic rule. Sometimes it maybe cause you error, but no problem in that. So here's how you do it. So first of all, what you do? So first of all, what you do? You simply uh, multiply uh, one, okay? You simply go ahead and take, take your uh, one as a, so if you can see, I just want to t take that one as an, uh, uh, this one and then what I and then I go and approaching this so here is your nine so first first of all go at this element and take out nine you want to take out the sub matrix of this matrix so nine and then you want to take out the determinant of two one 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 so the, what how this came two one uh, so you leave this this row and this column two one 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 okay now you simply change the sign minus okay you make sure that that you're doing only doing for this you're only doing for this we'll come to this later on but we are only doing to for, for this a21 okay minus now now we go to this two now we go this two we leave this column and this row which is 9111 okay so which is array what happened yeah so which is nothing but uh what do you say uh two because here is our two leaving this row this 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 column and this row 9111 okay uh the, the determinant of 91 one one okay and then what you do plus now you change the sign and then you go at last one leaving this nine two one one okay so the one and the nine two one one okay so you take out that okay now this was plus now you make it minus okay now here is your two so i will take that outside i will take take that outside okay and then i will just go ahead into solving this so you take this take this as a now you take out the minor of this matrix or the sub matrix of this matrix. So here's how you do it. So you simply add it minus. So here is minus six, uh, two, one, one, one. So here, here's how you go with this. You ignore this column and this row two, one, one, one. Now you go to this, you ignore this four, one, zero, four, one, zero, one. And then you go to over here, ignore this four, two, zero, one. Okay. So this is how I'm going I'm, 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 I'm going to write minus two okay because you go over here two over minus two to change changing the sign take out the determinant of four one zero one four one zero one okay and then you simply plus uh, now you change the sign you go one go to go to one four two zero one four two zero one uh, plus one uh, four two zero one okay and then what do you do and oh my gosh yeah so then what do you do now you now you converted that uh, three by three matrix for this one and for this one now you go to this one okay by changing the sign plus plus and then you go and then you write separate three now you write separate three and then you take out the first one six okay so you leave this go to column and this row which is nothing but a six and then nine one 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 which is the sub matrix of that matrix minus nine because it's was plus nine and how 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 nine came you go at this uh, column leaving this column and leaving this row a four one zero one which is nothing but four one zero one okay plus changing the sign one four nine zero one how this four nine zero one came is uh, you have this you leave this and this you leave this column and this row which is four nine zero one okay so this is how you came it and then and then you're done okay now what do you do you you do for the last one you do the for the last one this because you you done for this you done for this you done for this now you converted that to a two by two matrix which is easily determined which is which we can easily take out the determinant now you go to this okay so here's how you do it so minus four okay and then what do you do and then what do you do you leave this column and this row taking out the first element so six take the determinant of i was i think it's it, it was nine nine two one one nine two one one nine two one one minus minus nine okay so over here it was leaving this the sec going to this and leaving this column and this row which is four two zero one i i, I think about it yeah that's four two zero one four two zero one and then you change the sign plus two four nine i think it's 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 more about you leave you go over here four nine zero one okay that is four nine zero one okay now you are done now this is what you have written so you converted the first matrix the first matrix this one this one and this one as well 
uh, into a minor matrix, which is two by two determinant. So you can easily take out and then do the product and then you take out. Okay, so let's do over here if, if, if I have a chance to do over here, but no work problem, I will do over here. Okay, so here's how you do it. Here's how you do it. So for doing it, first of all, you have the one available, which is over here. You have the one available, which is over here. What do you do? You simply nine minus 16 plus seven. How, how, how we came? So you have the particularly nine times because of course you want to always want to uh, multiply it out. Okay. So I think about this is you have, uh, if, if you go over here, two times one, okay? And one times one. So two, two, two times one, how much? Two times one, how much? It would be uh, one minus one, I would say. Uh, two minus one, which is one. So it will be nine, okay? Minus, minus over here. Uh, nine, nine times one, which is nine. Mi uh, minus one, which is eight, 16, minus 16, hua done and then you have a uh, nine times one and then minus two times one so nine minus two which is seven okay so here's how it came okay and then you then this is the left minus two now you go on second one two over here so when you when you take a two times one how much two times one how much two times one two minus one okay so that is six over here so we write uh, six minus eight plus four okay so here's how you do so it is six minus Four times one, of course. Four times two, it's zero times one, of course, uh, zero. So four times one, four times minus two, which is minus eight, which you, which you have written, written over here. Okay, then you go over here. Four times one, how much? Four times one, four, and then you have four. So here's here's use a plus four. Now you, now you go on the next plus three because you go over here. Now nine times one, how much? Nine times one, how much? Uh, nine times one, nine, of course, minus one. Uh, which is nothing but 8, 8 times 6, 48. So you have 48 pl minus 36 plus 4. Okay, so here's our 48 minus a 9. Uh, so 4 times 1, 4. So 4, 9, 4, 9, th th 36 because this 2 times 0 is 0. Then you go over here, then you have this 9, ta 9, 9 times 0 is of course 0. 4 times 1, so 4, 2, ja, 8. So over here, uh, I think I'm wrong over here. Uh, you have this four times one four nine one zero zero so four uh, uh it's, it's 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 four okay so it's four it's it 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 should be eight okay it should be eight which is nothing but what you do you four times one four and then you simply multiply with two which is nothing but eight okay now you simply minus minus four minus four uh twenty eight minus thirty six plus eight so how you take out the nine times one, how much? Nine minus two, seven, 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 six, seven, seven, six, ja? how much? Uh, op oops, it's, it's, uh, it should be nine times one minus two, nine, eight, seven, seven, six, 42. Okay. So which is be nothing but 42. What the hell I've, I've, I've written over here. So I have to just uh, couple it out. So I have to just return it. It will be nothing but 42. Okay. Minus, minus, minus uh minus four times one of course four nine thirty six plus two four four one four four two eight okay so here's how you do it now you simply multiply with this and then first of all do the calculation do the calculation then you'll be getting one a scalar as a drop so please feel free to put your answer in the description box below i know the answer but yeah i want to leave it to you to do the rest of the cal calculation because i have done a lot so here's how you take the determinant of an n by n matrix and how you do it and how you do it, it's very very easy we you just uh, keep converting that to a lower or a sub matrix and then you and then after that you are done okay so here's how you do it so you you define one you define one sub matrix aij you define one sub matrix aij which is nothing but uh, the matrix the n bar n bar minus 1 times n minus 1 matrix n minus 1 n minus 1 matrix if you ignore the i row and i column if you ignore if you ignore the i row which you which you are doing i row and j column which which we were doing okay that is your new matrix which we which we were forming that is a recursive this is a recursive you can write a python program for write write, write a recursive solution for this okay so you were writing a one one and then you were adding the determinant of that sub matrix 
and then you are doing so and so on so on that is a recursive solution so you are writing the recursive recursive stuff so we we, we already written a lot so i hope that you understood for formal definition which you can see yeah we have gone through one of one of the example which is very very much uh, important for us to know okay so i hope that you will uh, get a lot from this video and determine it i hope that concept is clear with my examples and i also hope that you enjoyed this video i think i have to wrap up with wrap up with this video i'll be catching up in the next video till then bye bye have a great day meet you in the next lecture Hey everyone, welcome to this first lecture on single variable calculus. From this video, I know it's been six days till the video is not being uploaded. It's because uh, I was I was having some examination that I will that I was preparing for, and I was preparing for the content for single variable calculus. So in this series of lecture, we'll be talking about single variable cal calculus. It's uh, I would say we'll we'll come to calculus, but uh, we had a talk on. Uh, linear algebra and some of the videos like eigenvector and eigenvalues to be added okay so that is to be added and that is sent into that is we are making some good examples so that everyone could be could could get some uh, formula familiarity with the eigenvectors and eigenvalues so we always want to deliver you the quality content not the in a fast way or whatever the corner so that everyone could understand eigenvectors and eigenvalues that is left and soon it will be added so over here now we'll be starting off with single variable calculus I don't know what happened just in front of my screen but that's a my SQL update no problem just 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 for those who wants to know so we'll be starting with the lecture number one uh, which is a single variable calculus in this video I'll be talking about uh, I'll giving you uh, an introduction to calculus and uh, what are the content which you're going to cover okay and what is the next series of videos in this ML002 okay and from now on the video lectures will be around three to four videos per week now my everything has got over I'll be focusing on the completing this series as soon as possible cool so uh, so in this video we'll be talking about that uh, friendly introduction to calculus I have prepared my own lecture notes so that I could not miss any topics the first thing we can talk about is giving you what is calculus many people think there is a, some misconceptions about that I will I will say you uh, I will, I will just I will just give you some examples a geometric examples of what calculus is and what calculus is not okay uh, what are the problems that can be solved using calculus what are the problems that cannot be solved using calculus that that does not require calculus okay we'll talk about two big ideas in calculus such as differentiation and integration now you may think yeah hey, you should you're going to start with differentiation integration don't worry my friend it's very 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 i will say i will just give you an uh i i will say a tail a trailer m means a 0.1 percent what is going to come in differentiation and what is going to come in integration okay the geometric view only okay so then then we'll end this lecture talking talking about this lecture now what will be the content which will be in this lecture uh, single variable calculus course so first of all, I don't want anyone to be missed. For example, many uh, high school students watch, watch this video. So we are going to start with a pre-calculus. We are going to start with a pre-calculus. So I hope that everyone will be comfortable with the pre-calculus. I'll be not covering logarithms. I'll be not covering basic algebra because I require you to have a knowledge till class 10th math. And uh, I hope so you'll be having that like logarithms like uh, I'll be talking about trigonometry as well and don't worry about that so I want logarithms and basic algebra like factoring GCF and a lot more so these are the algebra 1 and algebra 2 which I require like exponential functions as well so uh, in pre-calculus we'll be talking about the two two main concepts which will be not two main concepts I'm talking about functions talking about functions mainly the functions functions and we'll talking about uh, the second one is uh, we'll be to after after talk, talking about functions we'll be talking about trigonometry trigono 
metric okay so just review these two topics uh, from a scratch so that everyone could be familiar it with uh, what's going on in the uh, and and in the further lecture so we'll be covering pre calculus in two videos okay so we'll be talking about calculus then we'll going then then we'll talk about limits okay and after talking about limits we'll talk about uh, uh, dif differentiation solve uh, taking out the derivative some of the power rule uh, power rule then then there are lot or lot lot of the rules which are which we which are going to learn for taking out the derivative we'll talk about integration solving uh, uh, taking in taking on integral for a function and then n n for n finite series okay so these are the things which will be taught uh, in this single variable calculus series so let's get started with this video so basically in this video we'll define what is calculus anyone could define me what is calculus just go and this description box and tell me what what is calculus what is calculus so anyone could give it a try so calculus is 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 is, is, is you, you may think it's a different subject it's not a different subject it's not a something oh my god what is this a rocket science it's a, it's a very advanced version for your algebra and geometric problem okay so calculus i, I think is a zack newton and other the great great physicists mathematicians invented it for solving the some of the great problems so calculus is nothing but a, ad, ad advanced version of your regular algebra advanced version advanced version of your regular algebra which you see regular regular algebra and geometry and geometry which you see in real world okay so we'll we'll see some examples so what do you mean with this will give i will give you a formal definition of calculus when we go further in the course the reason why i don't want to give you the formal definition to so that you cannot confuse you could not confuse with a definition because i want to be very very clear in the first lecture so i'm going to i want to take some example of it okay so let's take a let's take an example let's take one one example let's take one example so example can be ex example can be let's say that you want to find that you want to find the slope of this line slope of this line so slope of this line can be fine over uh, like, like this so you run so this is called a run and this is called rise okay rise okay the so slope can be found using a regu regular math of the straight line by the slope can be can be regarded as a so rise over run rise over run rise over run okay or y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 okay so it tells uh it, it just tells how much the y changes when x changes okay that's how it is uh this is this is telling which will come to that we'll talk about slope briefly in our future videos but over here you can calculate the slope of this line by simply your regular math problem your regular regular math problem isn't it you using a regular uh, regular mathematics okay mathematics but you told but you are told to find maybe you, you you select this point and want to find the slope at this point and ev at every point in this for example over here the slope will be same for this line so over here you can find the slope at this point yeah, you can take another point and then take out the slope for example it goes one uh, one at the rise and goes up at the top so that will be slope for every point the slope will be of same okay so so this is a this is this is you can calculate so for every point in that line the slope will be the same now coming to the another this is this is your first figure this is your first figure number 1 okay so this you can calculate the slope of this line using your regular math which you can see over here now i if i if i just tell you if i just give you a a line so let me just uh, oh my god what is this okay so this is your this is your thing and and you have we just draw a little bit big line uh 
something like this you want to calculate you want to calculate the slope of this curved line you want to calculate the slope of this curved line you cannot use you cannot use slope over here slope over here will be not use your regular math your regular math is can cannot be used because every time the slope is changing every time the slope is changing every time the slope will is changing so so you cannot use your regular mathematics over here okay you may think ki i will they'll just take out the slope and then take out the average but what if i tell you take out the exact slope okay so that it could be same at every point how do we do that how do we even do that so for example if i try to do it over here okay i try to i try to take take out the slope at this point you may think okay i'm going that side but is but is that is changing if i go over here this the 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 slope is changing the slope is changing so what if i say you to calculate the slope of this line you'll be not able to using regular you'll be not able to calculate using a regular algebra okay so it is solved so mathematicians has comes up comes up came up with calculus they have came with calculus so calculus using calculus you can take out that slope on 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 any particular point in that curve okay so using calculus you can calculate the slope of uh what slope of uh maybe curve okay so using calculus there's topic called differentiation which i'll come to that so using cal you can calculate the slope of a curve okay so that's that's what the one of the calculus problem is okay so uh, you can see that i differentiated the regular math problem with a calculus problem this is a calculus problem this is a regular math problem now let's see you have a one you have a one tower okay so assume i'm taking another example i'm taking another example okay i'm taking another example over here let's let's say let's for a for a for, for a sake of an example let's say that you have a tower over here so assume this is a tower of yours okay so this is a tower i'm measuring t1 which is tower number 1 and this is your tower number 2 okay tower number 2 now you need to calculate now this is your straight line okay this is your straight line cool so you can calculate the length of this using your regular math okay using your regular mathematics problem the length of this can be calculated using your regular math problem but what if i give you there is one tower there is one tower and there is another tower and the wire is something like this the wire is something like this and then and you're given given this stuff you cal calculate the length you're given the specific stuff and you calculate the length how are you going to calculate it you cannot calculate using regular mathematics whatever you have in your toolbox so there the calculus comes there the calculus comes for calculating the the, the slope of a curvy line okay so this is uh, there is the calculus plays an important role so let's say example you want to calculate the slope of of, of course over here the slope will be zero but you are told to calculate the slope of, of this it will be you'll be not able to calculate using your regular problem here you need calculus okay so these are some of the instances where the calculus are being used extensively in real world examples okay so there are two big ideas in calculus which i want to highlight there are two big ideas in calculus which i want to highlight the first the, the ideas in calculus let, let me write what are the ideas in calculus the ideas in calculus the first is a differentiation different differentiation second is integration integration okay so there are two two big problem which are differentiation and integration so so i will just go go over it very quick way to make you understand about this what does it these term means so let's talk about a differentiation let's talk about what does it mean differentiation and of course there will be long long le lectures coming on this uh, briefly talking about this a lot with lot more examples okay so 
differentiation is a process for finding the derivative of a curve derivative of a curve so it's the process it's the process for finding for finding the derivative the the derivative of a curve of a curve okay so differentiation is the process of finding the derivative of curve but what is a derivative what is a derivative derivative in calculus derivative in calculus is just a fancier version for saying slope derivative is nothing but is just a fancier version is just a fancier version fancier version for slope okay so in calculus we we, we call derivative we, we call slope as a derivative okay derivative for the curve okay so you find the derivative of a curve and derivative is nothing but the slope of a curve okay so derivative in in a nutshell a derivative is nothing but derivative is nothing but i is equals to slope and is as well as it is a rate it is a rate of instantaneous uh, instantaneous change okay so we'll talk about that but you can think of it as a derivative as a rate so what is the rate over here so let's take an example you want to calculate miles per hour miles per hour okay how much this miles changes when hour means it means what it if we go one hour then the miles is bigger like like that miles per hour taken or profit per item these are the rates okay profit per item so these are the derivative is that okay so derivative is just a fancier version for a slope because in slope we take out we can we, we can't take out the slope of a curved line but using the derivative you can calculate the slope of a curved line okay so uh, this is this this is what i want to tell is over here you have uh, this problem and you have this problem this problem so this is the ra uh, this is a run you run x x uh, x and in x direction and you go uh, and then the new rise okay so the slope is nothing but rise over run so it just tells how much the how much the y changes when x changes okay so this is what the slope is and the derivative is nothing but the slope of a curve okay so what's the slope of a curve what's the slope of a curve what's the slope of a curve what is the slope of that the slope of a curve is the uh, let's 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 take one example let's take one example i'm just i just believe in taking an example okay so uh, we have an example something like this you have a x and y plane and you have a x and y plane something like this okay so you have something like this oh my god what is this okay so this is this is your curvy line you take out the slope okay so you select any two point a and b okay you select any two point a and b and join as made a secant line over here so we'll talk about this later on so you joined it okay now what you do now over here the slope or the steepness of this curve the slope the slope or the steepness steepness of the particular curve is changing is changing is constantly changing between your point a and b okay so if you go over here the slope and steepness is constantly it is very steep over here but it is uh, so over here is the slope or the steepness is constantly changing for this curve between your two points which is a and b okay so let's take an example that you want to calculate the slope at the at at the at the exact point exact slope at the point c so how you are going to calculate so the geometric view which i which i want to tell what you do in basic differentiation you zoom in as infinitely you zoom in infinitely far you zoom in infinitely far in that at at that point 
So for for example, you you zoom in infinitely far. I'm t- telling you the geometric view, telling you the geometric view. So what do you, what do you do? You zoom in. So when you zoom in infinitely far, this curvy line becomes your formal straight line. Okay. So when you zoom at this region, you zoom in extremely far, infinitely far. Although you cannot get too much infinite, but just assume as a geometric view, zoom in a lot. There is something called the limit property, which to which we'll talk about. But when you zoom in too much, what it so it with this curve line will become a straight line. Okay. So when you, when you zoom it, so this curve line will become a straight line. So let's take an example that we zoomed in too much. too much and and now over here this curvy line becomes a straight line now here's your point c now this is a regular calculus problem so sorry regular math problem you can just uh, go over rise okay rise over run okay now you'll be calculating the slope at that exact point okay so what are you exactly doing is zooming zooming infinitely far infinitely far Okay, zoom infinitely far, that cur- that that curve. Okay, uh, at the f or at that point, at that point, see. So the curve becomes curve becomes straight. Curve becomes straight at that point. Okay, and then you can solve using a regular math problem, which is rise over run. Okay, so it's not a big deal to understand it. Just geometric view, but we will again revisit differentiation these topics again in in our later videos. Okay, so that is differentiation, which is finding the derivative or the slope of a curve at any point C. Okay, so now, so we have seen differentiation. Now, now let's see integration. The definition of integration. So we'll talk. We'll talk about integration. Means it is not. If you are getting confused, bear with me. These concepts are too too much. Uh, I'll explain in too much easy way, so you don't need. to uh to to worry about these but if you're being worried don't worry i'm just giving you a geometry view we'll again revisit these concept times and times so let's say for an example that you are it's is the area under the curve is the area under the curve actually okay so i'll just give you what is happening in integration uh so this is your favorite uh x and y plane and this is your oh my god So this is your thing, and then you have a line, something like this, and you are told to calculate the area of the shaded region. Area of the shaded region. So this is a rectangle. This is this is a rectangle. You can just calculate the area of this shaded line. So sorry, what you can do actually do. So let's say say for example, this is your y five, and you want to calculate the area of this shaded line. Okay, length is the breadth. Okay, not a big deal to to talk, but because maybe the, this is this very easy to understand it, isn't it? So so over here we are we can this is regular regular math problem. This is a regular math problem. Regular math problem. Regular math problem. But what if 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 you get something like this? Say what if 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 you, if you get something like this? So you have this, and you have this. and let's say for example that you have the curve like this and you are told to calculate the area of the shaded portion over here it's it does not make any sense that how you are going to calculate the area of this shaded line because now not anything we cannot use our regular math over here so here's what we calculate the integration is nothing but area under the curve area under the curve Okay, area under the curve and differentiation nothing but the derivative or the slope of the curve, slope of the curve. Okay, so different in integration helps you to find the area under the curve. Okay, by adding the will we do it is it is nothing but addition. Okay, it's not a big deal. We'll understand it much better way. So you write a differentiation for a function. We'll we'll talk talk about. I'm not not going to introduce it as of now. So this is your integration, which is the area under the curve, and that is your differentiation. The first topic will be differentiation. We're talking about, and then we'll go on integration. Okay. So I hope that's not a big deal, and I also hope that you understood this. Now this is this was the first lecture. If you have understood a little bit about calculus, and I hope that you understood a little bit about this. 
So please give a thumbs up to this video and I hope that you liked this video. I'll be catching up your next video in talking about pre-calculus, about functions and then trigonometry and then talking about differentiation. And I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll be catching up in the next video. Till then, bye-bye. Have a great day. Hey everyone, welcome to this second lecture on single variable calculus. Uh, so in this video, we'll be talking about pre-calculus. Basically, we'll be completing our pre-calculus uh, in, in two videos as I think that I should review functions and I should review trigonometry so that everyone who has lost touch in this, uh, they can review it. And the one who is who has at, at least seen these functions and trigonometry before, they can uh, just refresh up. It is not a full full videos on functions and trig trigonometry. I will recommend watching some other lectures on trigonometry and functions if you want to learn actually trigonometry and functions and solving it. But basically it will pro provide you everything you need for calculus, mainly the what you need for functions and you will uh, whatever the trigonometry you need for for, for take, taking of the trig values about uh, we'll, we'll talk about Sakatoa. We'll talk about one one more thing, which is uh, uh, the special right triangles. We'll see some of the tricks for solving the um, for 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 solving it. Uh, we'll also see the unit circle, where we'll be seeing the radians, degrees, and every stuff. We'll give you the graph of cosine and uh, 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 cosine and sine. We'll try to give you the graph of that. So I hope that you will enjoy these these two set of videos on pre-calculus. If you're completely new to math in your class, I think class 10, then I think that you're good to go. You just review the lecture of this. If you are a little bit go ahead, that means you can, if, if you're in college or, or other uh, set of classes, I would say uh, it, these, these video will be good refresher for you. Cool. So I uh, will be reviewing, we'll be reviewing our function. So what is the function? If you, if you, if you can go ahead and write in the description box, uh, basically the functions as uh, tells you the relationship. It's a relationship between your two things in which one depends on other for the, for, 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 for doing some processing. Okay. So basically I think about the functions. It's, it's a relationship. It's a relationship relation. It's a relationship. Just let me write relation, relationship between two things, between two things in which, in between two things in which one depends on other, in which one depends on other, in which one depends on other. It may, it, it may happen that you're, that, that you're not able to get this, what the definition is. So let me write a function which takes any value x and returns the square of that x. If you are into programming, and I hope that you are in, so uh, it, 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 it's okay that, that you are not in. So you may have seen functions before, and, and I really hope that uh, in, in, in your programming you just define the function. So what the function does, it takes some arguments. Okay. So over here, it takes some input values. Okay. And the function do something and returns the output. Okay. So what is trying to do, what is doing is taking the value in input value, input value and returning the, and doing the square of this. So what is doing in the box? So we are given the, giving X to the function, which is F. It is doing the square of this. It is doing the square of this and giving your output y. Okay. So, for example, the function f. Let's say we give two to this function. It will return. It will. It will take out the four, and then it will give y as a four. Okay. So basically, it is the function f is doing some processing and giving some output. Okay. The same way you think about the functions. It's. It's. Um. It's. It's. It's kind of a processing what it is doing. For example, in this f of x equals to x squared. So it is taking the input value and then squaring them up. The functions can be, let's take an example. It takes uh, maybe a set, okay? A set, I would say giant x, and giant x is nothing but x equals to the x1, x2, and x3. 
okay and 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 it doing what it, what it does this function tries to multiply with some theta okay for example it multiply with some constant to 2 times x1 plus 2 times x2 plus 2 times x3 so it can take the set of input values okay so i hope that to do, that function is making sense what the function actually is so it takes one input value and the do do the square of it and give the output value so y is considered over your out, out, output value and x is considered as input value okay cool so 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 let's so let's let's go ahead um, basically uh, input value is the one which we input anything for example in this case we input 2 into that and then it does some processing as i said and returns the square of that or gives the output value cool so i hope that that you that you're making that you made sense out of it so now let's talk about some of the terminology which i want to introduce to you first of all domain of a function the, the, the domain of a function so set of all the inputs the set of all the inputs of a function set of all the inputs of a function f let's take f function f is called the domain and what is the range what is the range the range is set of all the outputs set of all the outputs set of all the outputs of a function is the range of a function okay so so say for a say for an example that that we have a function that we have a function f that takes the value first of all that do the square of that the do square of that so you give one and you give minus two over here to return one and four okay so the domain is one comma minus two and uh, range is one comma four okay it may happen that you may enter the third two and it will give four so it may it 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 cannot be it it can be the same thing four four it can be the same thing okay so these are the certain terminology which you will see a lot in the uh, up, upcoming videos okay so i'm i wanted to introduce you two things which is independent and dependent variables so all the input values are independent variable or values okay so basically so basically all your input values input values input values are the independent independent variables independent variables okay all the input values are the independent variables and all the and, and the output values are called the dependent variable output values output values it, it makes sense are the I, ju I just want to include this one this one this one this one you can just write it out okay are the dependent variables so so it, it makes sense that for example we give the function f maybe x okay and x is not dependent on anything to be rely because x we have to give it is independent it is not dependent on anyone but this y is dependent on these x on the input value so that's why we say the output value is dependent variable and input values are independent variables okay these are two things so let's take an example i'll take i'll take one small example let's say let's say you have a function you have a function uh, f of x okay x squared and you have another function g of x okay which is 5x minus 8 okay so you have two functions f of x g of x minus 8 now now there is a chain of functions so let's say f of g of 3 if someone asks you to evaluate this function so how will you do so this is these functions are called as composite function composite functions these type of functions are called the composite functions okay so what we do first of all as as you already might have been guessed okay i'm going to just eva evaluate g of 3 and whatever the output g of 3 will give i will give the input to the f of x 
Okay, so what how this work workflow will do? First of all, we'll evaluate the g of 3. Okay, so 5x minus 8, we give 3 to the input and we get output as a 7. Now we give this 7 as an input to the to our f x square. Now that is a uh, uh, f and then we get the output 49 49 okay and 49 is our uh, output value okay so 49 is the answer or, or, or the result when we apply the g of 3 with the output uh, uh, f f on the output of the g of 3 okay so these they, these functions are called composite function Okay, and I hope that you that you will see a lot when 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 we study chain rule of differentiation, and it's very very used there. You will you will make use of composite function. You make use of the terminology of composite function. Cool. So uh, so maybe if you just if you can you can just go ahead. We have a line. So let's 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 talk about a uh, slope. Okay, this is it's always better to talk talk about slope. Okay, so. Uh, Let's go ahead talk about the slope. Uh, say for example, you have the line. You have the line. Okay, so I'm I, I just draw a very bad line. So let me just pick up this and let me just. I don't know how to do it. Leave it. So you let's let's take an example that you have a line. Okay, that you have something like this, and you have. Uh, line and you are told to find the slope of this straight line and you can do with regular math it is nothing but the slope of this line will be rise over one okay so, so you can take any two values any two values you know y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 so how much y changes when x changes okay so it is just telling how much y changes when x changes okay so this is nothing but the slope okay slope is not a big deal to understand it so i hope that it's that it makes sense out of it now let's try to do one thing let's try to do one thing is let's uh let's let's plot one line so graphing of a function how we do the graphing of a function let's 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 talk about that a little bit so graph of a function graph of a function so let's take a list let, let's say you want to, you have a function y and you write a function y equals to 3x plus 5 you can also write the function as something like this let's take an example you want to make a graph of this function so how are you how are you going to do that so basically what i'm going to do let me just remove these straight line i'm just going to draw every everything over here so let's let's take let's take an example two four six eight ten twelve fourteen uh, let's let's do fourteen fourteen uh sixteen eighteen and eighteen and twenty okay you have you have two four six six oh my god this is eight ten twelve 14, 16, 18, 18, and 20. Okay, so so how do we even plot our function y equals to 3x plus 5? So we make a table. We make a table. So let's make a table. Let's make a table. Some some something like this. Let's make a table. Okay. Something something like this. And you give x and y. Okay. So you give you put the values of x. So may, for example, you choose to x equals to 0. So when you evaluate 3 times 0, means the output will be 5. Okay, so the, so the first point you got 0, 5. So you put the point on that. Okay, so on y value, we have some over here. Okay, now you put 1 and when you evaluate 3 times 1, 3 plus 5, which is 8. Okay, so 1, 8 is another, another, another point. So 1 and 8. Okay. 1 and 8 so maybe you go ahead my diagram is not good so you you will you will keep doing that and and just uh, uh, just to draw a straight line over there okay it's just just draw a straight line over there uh, just joining the points and you'll be getting your graph of a function I know it's I think 
because of my x and y plane it is failing to draw but you can just take a graph paper and work on that okay so this so we had a talk on slope and we'll revisit the slope in times and times when we talk about differentiation so don't worry if if, if you don't understand it but i but i can just hope that you understand a little, little bit so a straight line is if if you know about slope intercept form slope intercept form okay so over here you have y equals to mx plus b is an equation for a straight line okay uh, a straight straight line okay where m is the slope m is the slope m is the slope if you all have already been seen and b is the y intercept b is the y intercept okay so what is the inter 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 y intercept and x intercept if your line crosses some from here so the y intercept of this will be 4 because it intercepts the the, the y axis at the point 4 okay so that's the that's that's called y intercept and slope is nothing but rise over run okay which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 cool so these these are some of the talk on functions and i hope that that you are able to get the sense out of it now let's do one thing. Let's try. Let's 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 try to talk about these the, the two two kind of functions which you will see a lot in your different in your calculus journey is parabolic function and absolute value function. Okay, so let's let's talk about that. The maybe mainly the graph. So uh, so let's take f of x equals to x squared. This is an equation for your parabola. Okay, so maybe let me let me take my black pen. I think that that works okay 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 so now when you when you try to plot it when just 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 make a table x and y1 and try to put put the values and get the values so you put the values of x you get the value of y put the random value of x put the random get the get the value of y and keep keep putting on the over here so you will get the parabola something like this let me touch it i think it's, it's not a it's, it's, it's not a good good parabola but yeah okay so this these this is the diagram of your f of x equals to or a graph of f of x equals to x squared okay so you you may you'll think that this function is a continuous function we'll talk about that I, I, ju I just don't want to introduce you over here okay so uh, this function is a continuous function we will see we'll see how to uh, it's this it is also differentiable so we'll, we'll talk about this so, so that's why i am into, into introducing you the graph of these plots so that it would be easy to understand there at, the, at that point so this is your don't worry if, if you don't understand what is continuous and what is differentiable just i've tell, told you we'll talk about in detail in our later videos Okay, so this is a function for your f of x equal. This is this is a graph of your f of x equals to x squared. Okay, so I just want to draw another, uh, make a graph of another function f of x equals to absolute value of x. So absolute value of x. So the 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 so the the graph of the function will look like straight line. Let me join it over here. Join it over here. Okay. So this is your graph of the function, okay? This is your graph of the function f of x. This is this this is a graph of function at g of x. Let's name a g of x because it will become con confusing. G of x, okay? G of x, where this this is your graph of function, okay? You can put the values, you will get the exact graph of this, okay? But one thing which I want to tell you that this is a continuous function. This is but this is non-differentiable. You may think, hey, why are you telling this now? You, you can tell me later on. So just for your information, I'm just telling so that why we are introducing these kind of graphs and in front of you. So first of all, I told you one property that the which is continuous and which is differentiable. If you don't understand, ignore it. The second, the second conclusion which you can make out of it, the second insight which you can get of this is both are symmetric. Both both functions are symmetric both functions are symmetric with respect to with respect to y axis 
okay so if you know symmetrical okay this makes them even function these are uh, is being symmetric this these are the these these functions are called the even functions okay another thing is the the poly polynomial function like this or less function like this f of f of f of, f of x okay equals to 9x the total power 4 minus 4x squared plus 3 so this function is also the even function can you guess why because the power the powers all the powers all powers are even okay all the powers are even okay so so that's why it is a even function so so so, so that's why it is an even function if the powers are odd okay then that will be a odd function okay so i hope that you that that you understood either it's not important to know what is even function what is odd function but just for a general purpose i, I told you cool so we had a talk on functions now let me see how much the time is being there i think 20 minutes we, we can go ahead talk about trigonometry now so we had a we had a brief talk on functions and i hope that you had got a very good sense on that so now what I will do, I will just start off with uh, with the basics of trigonometry. Uh, either we can get started in the next video, I think. Yeah. So let's. So I think it. The I will just pre pre prefer the next video for trigonometry because because there there's a lot to talk. I can't continue with this video. So I'll be catching up your next video in trigonometry because this is a two pagers. So I need to and I, I need to make around your forty minutes to talk on trigonometry because trigonometry is a big topic to understand. So we'll, after after trig trigonometry, we'll talk about limits. We'll, we'll talk about there are the two three videos coming on limits. First of all, what is limits? The evaluating limits, squeeze theorem. So we'll talk about that. I mean the Sandwich theorem. So we'll talk about that. So I hope that you had understood this very properly. I'll be catching up your next video. Till then, bye bye. Have a great day. Now we'll start with the trigonometry. I think uh, we'll just review trigonometry in such a way so that you could be uh, from, uh, comfortable with upcoming calculus videos. And this is not a math channel. I don't know why I'm feeling like I'm teaching mathematics. It's, it is a part of our machine learning course, sorry, deep learning course, which I'm teaching. So that's why I want everyone to go from very scratch to such an advanced level because deep learning is an advanced field. So, so that's why you have to first of all uh, uh, make your fundamentals strong. Okay. So we'll 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 be getting started with the trigonometry. Okay. You will just review uh, some of the trig functions. We'll also review the unit circle. Maybe some of you have forgotten it, or I don't know about that. I uh, will also review how to graph sine and cosine. Okay. So basically, what is trigonometry? First of all, maybe you can just uh, it's, it's it's a study of triangles or maybe the right triangles which you see so mainly the trigonometry is the study of right triangle and uh, there are a total of three main trigonometric functions so there are a total of three main trig 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 functions i'm just going to write trig functions so there are a total of three main trig functions the first one is the first the, the first one is sine okay sine second one is cosine the third one is tangent okay so these are the three uh, main trigonometric functions and there there are what there, there there are some more which which are called cosecant secant and cotangent so these three the another uh, and the reciprocals their their reciprocals their reciprocals are also then some some important trig functions so their reciprocals their reciprocals are also the very important trig function such as uh, cosecant co cosecant secant second one is secant and third one is cotangent okay so we'll we'll talk about these in detail in in our whole session we'll talk about these six trig, trig functions as these three are the reciprocal of this so we'll, we'll study everything today uh these three six functions our our whole lecture will go around these trig functions 
okay so i want to introduce to you something called a sum sum a sum uh, i would say uh, 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 i i it's, i i would say a good weapon for you okay a weapon that helps you that helps you to solve uh, trick 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 functions very easily and very 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 important uh, the the sign to remember the what is the sign of the particular angle so that is nothing but sakatoa so katoa so maybe some of you some of you have seen this and some of you have not so this so sokatoa is very very important in your trigonometry journey it's a very ventral again i'm saying very very important many many people has diff different different stuff but it's very very easy to understand and very very easy to uh it it, it helps you to remember the definition of your sine cosine and tangent so using sakatoa you can remember the, the the definition of what that sine means what the cosine means and what the tangent means and it is very very useful and very very important about this okay many people say different different rhymes to start to to identify the definition of sine cosine and tangent but i think this is the best and only thing which is easily rememberable rememberable to anyone okay so what i'm going to do is to i'm going to make a, a right triangle okay so but before i want to i'll just introduce you in that right right triangle what does it mean so first of all let me make the pen a little bit lower yeah so so let's take let's let's say let's say for an example that you have this one and you have this one okay i, I just don't know how to draw a good line and this one is and this is your right triangle let me okay so basically this this is called the hypotenuse so let me just give a name so this this is called the hypotenuse hypotenuse which is given h okay and hypotenuse is the largest side in your triangle okay this is uh this 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 is your angle let's say x and uh, and this is this is called the adjacent adjacent side adjacent side to that angle x okay adjacent side to that angle x as the right triangle and this is called opposite side to that angle opposite side opposite side to that angle okay so basically what i'm saying that this is a hypotenuse h okay um and we have an angle x where this uh let's let's give some name a b c okay and b c is the adjacent side to this angle x and a c is an opposite to the angle x okay so which is opposite to the angle this which is which is a side which is opposite to angle x so now what i'm going to do is to take out is just to give you the definition of sine of x sine of x cosine of x and tangent of x okay so what i'm going to do is to using the definition of sakatoa so what i'm going to do so ka toa toa so so sine of theta and theta is an angle theta is an angle over here it will be x we'll, we'll so we'll solve it but before that over, over, over here which you can see sine of theta okay cosine of theta and tangent of theta tangent of theta so let's go with the definition of so 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 let's try to define sine of theta so when you define the sine of theta so so opposite over hypotenuse so sine is sine of theta is equals to the opposite side over the hypotenuse so opposite 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 over hypotenuse so that's a definition for your sine of an angle the sine of an angle is nothing but the opposite over hypotenuse what's what is the cosine what is the cosine of an angle cosine of an angle is adjacent over hypotenuse adjacent adjacent over hypotenuse okay or in other words a over h as we given the name a and h okay so uh this is a sine this is a cosine and these the the, the for, for taking of the sine of an angle the definition for sine of an angle is nothing but the adjacent over hypotenuse if you want to calculate the tangent tangent of an angle which is nothing but uh which is which is nothing but 
opposite over adjacent opposite opposite over adjacent opposite over adjacent which is o and h okay so with the with the definition opposite over adjacent so we're using this rhyme so katoa you're able to uh to, to to define these three trig functions okay so now let's use this uh, katoa to take out the trig values okay so but before that let's give let's say that adjacent side over here the adjacent side uh let's let's assume adjacent side is four whatever the centimeters or meters let's let's assume centimeters the hypo the, the 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 ac which is uh, which is opposite side to that angle or the height so it will be three and may you can take out the hypotenuse how you can take out the hypotenuse this is very very easy using pythagorean theorem yeah pythagorean theorem tells a square plus b square equals to c square a square is your bc b square will be your ac equals to c square so when you, when you go ahead when you go ahead three square so sorry four square plus three square equals to what c square okay 4 square plus 4 square 16 plus 9 equals to what c square 6 16 25 equals to c square and when you when you when you just remove this so it will be root 25 equals to c which will be c equals to 5 so the hypotenuse will be 5 okay so you are given the sides of an uh, of, of a right triangle now what you need to do you need to take out the sine of the x sine of x sine of x so how are you going to do, take out the sine of x for taking out the sine of x it, the sine the sine definition is so katoa so sine is opposite over hypotenuse so opposite over here is 3 and hypotenuse over here is 5 is your sine of that a sine of sine of the x sine of x is nothing but the 3 over Five. So what is cosine of x? So what is cosine of x? So what is cosine of x? Cosine of x is kato. So ka. So c a h. So adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent side over here is I think b c, and this is four divided by h, which is five. So cosine of x is four by five. What about tangent of x? So tangent of x is nothing but opposite over adjacent and opposite to that angle x is 3 and adjacent to that angle is 4 okay so which is which is nothing but 3 over 4 is the tangent of x okay so these three sine cosine and tangent we are taking out and this gives you definition what is a sine what is a cosine and what is a tangent sine is nothing but the opposite over hypotenuse Cosine is nothing but adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is nothing but opposite over adjacent. How you remember it? Using the Sokatoa definition. I think this is this is pretty much easy. Okay. So we had used this Sokatoa. We had used this Sokatoa to identify this sine of the particular x, cosine of the x, and tangent of x. Okay, so we have seen this uh, sine, cosine, and tangent. So we have seen the definition of these three. Now, what about the reciprocals of it? Now, what about the reciprocals of this? So the same way, the other three functions are the reciprocal of sine, cosine, and tangent. So let's 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 talk about that. So other trig functions, other trig functions, other trig functions are the reciprocals are the reciprocals of these existing these sine of x cosine of theta and tangent of theta so let's give the theta name theta angle okay so uh, so uh, let's 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 talk about the first one which is the cosecant okay cosecant 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 so what is this Cosecant is a reciprocal. Cosecant is the reciprocal. Cosecant is the reciprocal. Reciprocal of sine. Cosecant is a reciprocal of sine. We'll see what the reciprocal means just in a second. Second one we have 
which is secant and we denote this as a SC, SEC okay say so secant is nothing but is the reciprocal 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 of your cosine of your cosine and the the, the, the last one which is the over here is cotangent cotangent which which we didn't, didn't denote is a cot okay is the reciprocal of your tangent is the reciprocal of tangent and how do you define cosecant cosecant is SCC C S C okay secant S E C and what about cotangent C O T okay so in sine we write S I N cosine C O S tangent T A N okay so these, these are short form given to them so now what do you mean by reciprocal so let's take out this let's let's take a definition of cosecant cosecant of theta for for, for 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 any angle okay which is nothing but the reciprocal of sine sine theta so one over sine theta so reciprocal of the sine of that angle sine theta okay so it will be one over sakata well let's let's remember our favorite definition from one and only so so katoa so ka toa so sine is opposite over hypotenuse sine is opposite over hypotenuse sine is nothing but opposite over hypotenuse it goes above it will be h over o h over o which is nothing but your cosecant so the definition of a cosecant of a theta uh, is nothing but a hypotenuse over uh, over opposite of that angle okay uh, the next one is the next one is secant of theta secant of theta is the reciprocal of cosine which will be one over cosine of theta so it will be nothing but so what is the cosine adjacent over hypotenuse one over adjacent over hypotenuse it goes above so it will be nothing but h of a h over a which is the hypotenuse over adjacent okay so the definition of secant of the theta is nothing but the hypotenuse over adjacent the last one over here is cotangent so what's the time so the last over the last one is over here is cotangent cotangent which is cot of theta is not is the reciprocal of a tangent one over tan of theta the so tan of theta is something with opposite over adjacent so one over uh, opposite is over over here o by a okay so that is so it goes above one over so sorry a over o which adjacent over opposite angle okay so opposite to that angle theta so cotangent the definition of a cotangent is adjacent over opposite of that theta okay so we have a give, give, given you definition of sakatawa sine cosine and tangent and we have also given you the the definition of cosecant secant and cotangent of theta okay so we have also we have given you everything about this now i hope that you had uh, got a good idea about what is these angles tells you but before that what i'm going to do what i'm going to do is to solve for the triangle take out we have to have taken out the sign of that tri triangle which we have built up sign of this was 12, 3 over 5 cosine 4 over 5 tangent 3 over 4 so what will be the cosecant of these uh, of, of, of this uh, triangle okay so let's let's take out the cosecant the cosecant of x of the angle x which will be 1 over the sine of theta okay so which will be nothing but again when you when you go ahead so, so let's let's not write it again let's let's use our formal definition so cosine cosecant of theta is hypotenuse over adjacent hypotenuse was 5 and adjacent was 4 so 5 over 4 is the answer of this so sorry it's 5 over 3 okay because adjacent because uh, over over here your uh, adjacent opposite angle so this is this this is a uh, opposite okay I don't know where it is oh, yeah so it is opposite so 5 over 3 okay which is the reciprocal of your sign if, if you are told to take out the cotangent or the secant, first of all, it's the secant of x, 
which will be nothing but secant of x which will be nothing but let's 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 say for a for a for a sake of an example secant of x is hypotenuse over adjacent hypotenuse was 5 adjacent was 4 okay so that is thus the reciprocal of your cosine what is the tangent of x what is the tangent of x so tangent of x is adjacent over uh, opposite okay so adjacent so adjacent will be uh, 4 and uh, opposite is 3 4 and 3 okay so we have taken out for for for, for this triangle we taken out the cosecant secant and who told tangent it's cotangent okay so mainly we will like got okay so um so these are the things which i which i want to remember and i hope that you remember it as well okay now i hope that that you have got a better idea about what is this so katoa means and the form form formal definition of this uh Sakatawa and these six definitions. I want to introduce you to, to, to two special right triangles. It is very, very important to know. Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to introduce to you about two important, uh, two special that helps you to remember these trig values because these will be very handy in your uh, calculus journey. So I'm just going to introduce to that. So there are, I'm just going to write two special right triangles. Two special right triangles, right triangles. So the first one is the first one is forty-five degree, forty-five degree, ninety degree triangle. Ninety degree triangle. This is a huge angle. Okay. So over here, when you when you when you try to make a make a that. So let's make a right. There is one angle which is of 90 degree and other two angle are 45 degree okay so i'm just going to write 45 degrees and 45 degrees okay so this is the following and uh, you have let's say for you you'll, you'll you'll be getting these base so base will be one it will be also one and the hypotenuse will be 1.41 which is root two okay and the hypotenuse will be root two because when you take out the hypotenuse how you'll do one plus one one squared plus one squared equals to c squared when you when you do this two equals to c squared when you root two okay that is your hypotenuse now now let's apply sakatoa and their reciprocals to take out the sine of the 45 degrees okay so let's apply the sakatoa over here to take out the sine of 45 degree okay of this angle Let's let's apply that. Uh, let's 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 go ahead. Uh, yeah. So sine of forty five degrees will be uh, first of all so katoa. Let's let's remember our definition. So katoa. So opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite one over hypotenuse root two. Okay. So which will which will be nothing but when you ra rationalize it. When you rationalize it. It will be nothing but root two by two. I hope that you how you you know how to rationalize. You simply multiply something with this. I think that's how you do not know about it. So root two times root two, root two it will be root two by two. That's what you get. Okay. So that so you you get this, and when when you when you go ahead, it is approximately equals to zero point seven one. You can calculate using your calculator. Okay. So that is your sine of your 45 degrees. What is the cosine of 45 degree? Cosine, cosine of 45 degrees. Cosine of 45 degrees, so katoa, adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent is one and hypotenuse puts two, okay? So adjacent is one and a root two, one over root two, which will be again, root two over two by rationalizing approximately equals to 0 0.71 that is a cosine of 45 degrees now what is the in, in, in this in the for, for this triangle what is the tangent of 45 degrees 1 over 1 how do you say opposite over adjacent which will be around 1 so 1 is the tangent of your 45 degrees for this triangle so what about the reciprocals of it so what about the reciprocals of it so the recipro recipro reciprocals of it will be 
first of all secant first of all let's 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 talk about uh co co cosecant cosecant of 45 degrees which will be uh the 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 reciprocal of it so at hypotenuse over uh, a, a opposite angle so hypotenuse is root 2 root 2 by 1 which is nothing but approximately equals to 1.41 okay what is the secant of 45 degrees so secant will be h over a h over a hypotenuse hypotenuse is root 2 over 1 which will be also approximately 1.41 what is a cotangent what is cotangent so what is a cotangent is will be 1 over 1 because adjacent over hypotenuse which will be 1 okay so these are the reciprocal the trig values so you so we got the trig values of you can see over here that using this special these these special right triangle will be so so much in your journey so that's why i'm introducing to you this one okay now let's go ahead let's let's talk about another now you got to know these trig values let's talk about another uh special right triangle which we, which is nothing but uh, 30 60 90 degree triangle 90 degree right triangle and of course this is a acute angle okay so when you when you have this uh, let's 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 print it out yeah so over here you have this and let's say let's say for for sake of an example your uh, uh, your uh, 30 degrees 60 degrees 90 degrees okay a third a, a, a adjacent side of 30 degree is root 3 which is approximately equals to 1.73 and it is 1 the 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 the, the height or ac is sorry the height will be 1 and the hypotenuse is two because this is all because mainly people what they do they put that into the base and that is wrong because the hypotenuse is also always the longest side okay now let's do one thing let's apply this circle toa so ka toa on 30 degree okay for the 30 degree angle for the 30 degree angle okay so go ahead apply the circle toa for the 30 degree angle then go ahead and apply the circle toa and the reciprocals as well and the reciprocals are well for the 60 degree angle and you are good to go and you are and you'll be getting your trig values and that then that, that will be yielding to around so much of trig values in no time which you got it okay so i want you to do these two things taking out and write the answer in description box uh sorry i'm saying in comment box about the the, the 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 all this all the trig value and the reciprocals for the 30 degree and all the all this all the trig function with the reciprocals for 60 degree okay cool so we have done a lots of practice okay but you may think yeah you can't we do for a greater angle because all these are acute angle can't we go ahead talk about the uh the the, the large angles like maybe 270 degrees okay so maybe maybe a bit more than that something like cosine of pi over 3 cosine of maybe 3 pi or sine of 3 pi over 3 um, sine of 7 pi over 6 uh, maybe anything anything can be happen okay so how you go ahead and do that how you go ahead and do that so you can just uh, maybe what is the sine of two, 210 degrees what is this cosine of 120 degrees there are a lot more things so for that for that we have something called as unit circle you have you, we have something called as unit circle which is very 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 important and it may happen uh, some of you may think yeah you i cannot remember a unit circle because many many of you has an enemy with a unit circle in your i think class 9th and in class 10th i think more, most most in class 10th uh, so uh, so don't worry about it very very trick is available online about remembering it and it's very it's you don't need to remember it it makes sense as well sometimes okay if, if you think about geometrically don't think about remembering everything you can just make sense out of it because it's 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 kind of uh, 
very very important in your calculus journey because these are the very very frequent radians which you get or degrees which you get in your whole calculus journey okay so what i'm going to do is to introduce to you a unit circle i'm not going to give you a trick for remembering the unit circle but i will leave a link in the video description about the trick for remembering this but as always google is up for you you don't have to worry about it okay cool so uh, let's go ahead let's let me show you uh, let me show you the unit circle let me show you the unit circle where is my unit circle here here we go so just going to check in between make it a big okay so this is your unit circle this is your unit circle i'm just going to make it a little bit big yeah so this is this this is your unit circle and very very uh uh, a scary or disastrous unit circle and, and it's very very important as well so uh, I'll just introduce you so that every everyone is familiar here you have three things the first thing is coordinates second thing is you have the uh, the radians okay of the coordinates and then you have the degrees angles angles in radians and angles in degrees okay so you have the coordinates which we talk 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 about that coordinates you have angles in radians in radians and you have angles in degrees in degrees okay so first of all let's let's talk let's, let's talk about this one uh, let's let's talk about this one so this these go first of all over here you have y axis and x axis so uh, the 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 radius with this origin to this point the the radius of this circle is r equals to one r equals to one. So the coordinate at this point will be one comma zero will be one comma zero. Why one comma zero? One on x axis and this is zero axis zero. Okay, so one comma zero. It is the same zero zero comma one on x axis is zero. So the uh, radius is r equals to one so everywhere. So it will be zero comma one. So this is y axis. This is minus one. This is x axis. This is zero comma minus one. So these are coordinates. The same way, these are also coordinates. This for x axis and this is for y axis. This this is for x axis. This is for y axis. Okay. And you may think how you have come up with these kind of uh, coordinates. How you come up with this? It's it's basically. Uh, more about geometric understanding you can go ahead see if you if you can go in much more detail as a bit out of the bound of this video because we are just reviewing it so over here which you're seeing over here x and y coordinates so these these are all the things which you're seeing outside the circle are the coordinates inside which you are seeing this pi whatever whatever the fraction which you're seeing uh, is the radians is the radian okay so over here you have 2 pi, you have 2 pi, and then pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3 for, for that coordinate. So there are 3 over here, and pi over 2, then go ahead. We have these, all the things are the, are the, for the, for, for where the radian is 4 pi over 3, the coordinates are this, 5, 5 pi over 4, the coordinates are this, okay? So these are the things. The next thing is, you have the degrees, we have the degrees, you have the radian, you have the degrees, 120 degree. 135 degree, 90 degrees, 60, 60 degrees. Maybe you, you all remember using a pro, pro, protector. Okay, it was very, very uh, uh, familiar to you. So I hope that's not a big deal now. But there's the one thing which I want to tell you is how do you remember these things? So first of all, what do you do? You have the three core, three points over here. You give two, 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 two. Uh, so all the denominator will be given two. Okay, and now uh, one. 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, okay, you, you do the square root of every numerator, if you put it, it does not require it, root 3, root 2, root 2, root 2, and of course it does not require, so you get this, so these, these can sound kind of tricks for remembering it, it's very very useful in this, okay, so it's, it's very very useful as well, okay, uh, so you you remember these coordinates these pi is the one third pi over six is one third of pi over two So you need to only remember some of the coordinates and some of the radians only that and using that you are getting uh, Using that you can get more radians or whatever. Okay, 
so these are there are some tricks which you which you need to remember uh, maybe you can search online otherwise the link is in the description box about the trick for remembering this these things okay so you have the radians you have the degrees okay now what so every coordinate x and so every coordinate is a pair of x and y okay x coordinate and y coordinate but it is indicating this is this cosine of theta and sine of theta so x indicates the cosine of that maybe the radian or 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 an angle and sine maybe this theta can be the radian or that uh, or that angle okay so let's let's say for for the sake of sake of an example let's take an example you told you want to find out the cosine of pi over 3 of pi over 3 how are you going to find it so if you search pi over 3 over, over here what is the x coordinate is what is the x coordinate it's because x coordinate indicates the cosine of theta which is 1 over 2 what is the sine of pi over 3 so y coordinate is root root 3 over 2 okay so these are things these are trig values okay which is which is very very useful maybe in your examination or in calculus you can take out anything with this say for an example you are told to find cosine of pi over 6 maybe cosine of pi over 6 so over pi over 6 is will be the the, the x value is root 3 root 3 over 2 let's take an example you told sine of 3 pi over 6 uh, 3 3 pi over 4 so what it will be it will be nothing but minus sorry root 2 over 2 because that indicates the y coordinate so coordinates indicate the pair of the cosine and the sine of that angle or the radian okay so some of the interesting thing which i want to show you to you is what is the tangent of 3 pi over 4 what is the tangent of this 3 pi over 4 so tangent you all know tangent is equals to sine of that 3 pi over 4 divided by the cosine of 3 pi over 4 okay so sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta so it will be the sine of theta 4 will be root 2 over 2 okay minus root 2 over 2 because that's cosine is with which is minus 2 which is which you can see over here so the the root the the, the, the denominator cancel which will be minus 1 uh, the tangent of the 3 pi over 4 will be minus 1 so this is all about manipulations more uh, all all about other things which you need to which you need to just uh, apply some logic and you will getting getting your trig value so this gives you lots of trig values okay now what i'm going to do what well, now what i'm going to do now what i'm going to do, do is uh, is to do one thing uh, first of all uh, what is what is the cosine what is the cosine what is the cosine of 3 pi over here we want we only till have 2 pi okay but what is 3 pi so it, it here the radian is 2 2 2 pi so what is the cosine of 3 pi so how how it is constructed 1 pi okay then 2 pi then 3 pi over here it, it will come over here so 3 pi the cosine is always referred to as minus 1 so the answer will be minus 1 how first of all here is your pi okay you rotate there is Two, first of all you go over here you rotate half circle with pi then 2 pi then 3 pi over here so 3 pi will be coming minus so what is the sine of 3 pi which is 0 because the y coordinate is 0 so it is not matter ki whatever you, 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 you can have it does not matter okay now there is one last thing which I want to tell which I want to tell is there is one last thing which i want to tell is what is the sine of minus pi over 4 or is the sine of minus pi over 4 which will be nothing so over pi over 4 but this is pi over we but there is minus so you here it is in second one so you what you do you start going you start going into the negative direction okay so leaving one you, you go to two okay because here is here the second coordinate so you go over here to one and that is that is so sine of my minus pi over five will be sine of seven pi over five four okay so that is nothing but two okay so uh, root so sorry it's minus two over two okay 
So this is how you go in the negative direction. If it's over here, then you go from here. So this is how everything is working using the unit circle. And I hope that you understood uh, very, very intuitively. And I hope that's very not a, not a big deal to understand these things. So this is the whole thing and, 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 and basically you will see whole calculus and re revolving around this. Okay, most of the cal calculus problems, trick, trick calculus problems. Cool. So uh, I just want to talk about the last thing, which is very, very useful over here, is how do you graph sine, cosine, and tangent? Maybe you can search online because, but I'll, I'll just show you the graph of sine of y equals to sine of x looks like. So here is your thing. So it, it, will, it, it, it will look something like this. It will look something like this. It will look a si in cyclic form, okay? In cyclic form, it will it will look in cyclic form something like this, okay? So it it, it will looks in cyclic form, but the same way your 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 cosine will be will be different will be different because over here it it, it is some some something y goes sine of x is something like this, but what is the cosine? Cosine will be diff let 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 little bit different a little bit different. It will be. Okay, it will be okay. So it will be cosine y equals to cosine of x will be something like this, and 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 this these are the graphs which you will see later a, a lot when I, when I, when I, when I will teach I will take these kind of graphs about the, when when I will go in different differentiations very very important. Okay, so I hope that you understood the trick no matter whatever I taught and. Uh, it's just a review. There is there a lot to learn in trigonometry. There are a lot to practice in trigonometry, like inverse trig functions and asymptotes. We have a lot more things which you can explore. Please, please, please go ahead, see some tutorials if you're gonna go ahead deeply in trigonometry. These are things which I need to revise before going to the calculus. Now we are ready. Now we are ready to go in calculus. From the next video, we'll be talking about limits and we're completing, I think, limits in three to four videos. I think only three videos will be required for limits, short, short videos. We'll completing limits and then we are good to go. And then we start with differentiation. Okay. So, and then we will go ahead talking about solving different for take, take, taking out the derivative, like quotient rule, chain rule, and a lot more. And then we'll go ahead. Uh, there's also power rule, which I can't forget about that. So there is um, so about diff after differentiation, I think we'll go ahead with integration. Okay, so I hope that you understood. I'll be catching up in the next video. Till then, bye bye. Have a great day. Hey everyone, welcome to this lecture. From this lecture, we'll be actually starting off with uh, limits and, and limits is one of the most important topic which I cannot leave. We will not too much talk about limits, we will not do that much kind of examples. But yeah, I will give you a, a brief about limits and what the limits are and there, there are a lot more, lot of the things which we'll talk about as well as we'll talk about uh, uh, how to evaluate the limits using various, various techniques, which we'll study in the next video. Basically in this video, I'll just give you what exactly the limits is. Okay. So we'll, 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 we'll see a lot, lot of examples to understand uh, why this is called the microscope of maths. So it's this very, very nice, uh, nice things which have invented so far uh, in the history of uh, math. And I think that differentiation, the definition, the formal definition of differentiation will define using the limits property. Okay. So now let's get started with one of one of the example, which is in front of you, which is that maybe you are familiar with this plot. It is the parabola plot. If you know, because we had a talk on this and how you plot, you just plug in the X value, just put the point on the X, X coordinate and the Y coordinate, and then you join that the points. So this is what you get. And this is not a best parabola diagram in the history of math. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is the basic, uh, basic stuff which you're seeing over here. Now, what I'm going to, what I'm going to do is, uh, 
uh, make a piecewise function. But before that, what I'm going to do is to just just uh, talk about with this function, and then we'll make a piecewise function. But before that, what I want, what I want is to find the value. I do, I, I I want to find f of two, f of two, f of two. So what it will be? So we give to the x and this will be nothing but 4. Assume that this is a 4. Okay. So just want to make it some over here. So it is a 4. Okay. So this is nothing but 4. But what do I say? We have a function g of x. We have a function g of x. We have a function g of x. We have a function g of x where you uh, first of all uh, what is x squared for every values except x equals to 2 except x equals to 2 there is x square okay and another is when 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 uh, the input value is 2 then the output will be 1 when x equals to 2 then the y value will be 1 uh, in the first is telling x square in every input values except 2 and 1 for for the input value equals to 2 so that is these functions are not, nothing but called the piecewise function piecewise function uh, which you, you which you might have observed already and I hope that you had already so now if I want to plot it over here this plot g of x if I try to plot it the g of x so what it the what the oh my god yeah so uh, what if I if I want to plot it so for plotting it let me just remove this one because I, oh my god I don't want to do this uh, I don't know how to select the good uh, the eraser let's use very simple eraser let's first of all remove this and there is a discontinuity okay so if x, f equals to 2 if x, f equals to 2 then if input value equals to 2 we just saying that it is it should be it should be 1 okay so this is your function of your g of x this is your function of your g of x where we are saying it, it this is a function this is a graph of x, x square this is a graph for x square but we are told there is one discontinuity which we'll talk about today about discontinuity but there is one discontinuity in this function and we're saying if it x equals to 2 make that to 2 and this x square does not work for x is, x is equals to 2 okay so this is a function this is a graph of your function g of x Okay, uh, this this piecewise function. This is how it looks like. Now, coming to the next part is what is? I'm just asking one thing. What is the limit? What is the limit? What is the limit of your function g of x? Of your function g of x when when x approaches to when x approaches to not exactly to when x approaches to from the right hand side and the left hand side. Okay, so it may, it may be confusing to you what exactly I'm saying. What exactly I'm saying? What is the limit of g of x when x approaches to from the right hand side and from the left hand side? So let's start with the from the from the left hand side. So let's say the let's say the input values the input. So let's start from the from this value. So it gets closer and closer to two. Okay, so it approaches closer and closer. To, so we simply write limit of g of x when x approaches to so this is this is your uh, limit uh, notation to write it out so basically we are telling uh, we, here we are telling what is the limit of when x approaches to from the left side okay so when x approaches to from the left side it seems to be approaching 4 it seems to be approaching 4 we are not taking exactly f of 2 because that is undefined at that point the function x square is undefined but basically there is discontinuity and we are we are getting close and closer to 2 from the left side for for, for example we are taking the value 1.9 1.999 1.999 1.9999 1 we are not getting exactly to 2 but we are taking these values and taking the square of it okay so it seems to be approaching 4 how i am perceiving that so let's do one thing let's try to give the let's try to do from the left hand side first of all so we have an x value and, and we have a g of x okay we have a g of x so you give 1.9 to x x when you square it up you get 3.61 okay and because it is defined else everywhere except x x exactly equals to 2 
So at 1.99, it will be 3.9601. That is the square of it. Okay. So we give 1.999. So that is 3.99601. Okay. We are not taking exactly. It's technically do not can get exactly two four. But it if you use the calculator 1.99999, it will just take out the square. It will just round off that. But actually, this technical not true. Okay. So over here. You are you are getting you are, when when you are approaching two when you are approaching two when you are approaching x equals to two from the left hand side it seems to be approaching four your function g of x seems to be approaching four let's take an example of this so when you are approaching two from the this side when you are approaching two from the left side it seems to be approaching four okay it's not exactly taking as a two as an input. We are saying if the 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 limit of a g of x tells you when x approaches two from the left hand side, and when uh, from from the left hand side, so over here when the limit uh, of g of x when x approaches two is approaching, okay, limit of of g of x when x x approaches two is approaching four. The fun is approaching four, so it is approaching four. It is approaching four. It is approaching four. So when you when you get close and closer to two from the from 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 the left hand side, it seems the function g of x is approaching close and closer. It is 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 approaching four. It's not exactly four, but it's approaching four. Okay. Now let's see the same way going from the right hand side. So let's go with our right hand side. So when we try x and g of x, we give two point one, four point four one. Two point o one, ah, four point o o four o o one. So from the right hand side as well, from this side as well, from this side as well, from this side as well, it seems from this side as well. We are approaching two from this side. It seems like it is approaching. So it seems like it is also approaching four. It is also approaching four. So the limit from the right hand side limit of f of x. F of f of x equals to two of g of x from the right hand side is equals to four, and the limit limit of x approaches two from the left hand side is also four. So the limit of g of x when x approaches four two is exactly equals to four, and this is how you take out the limits of a function. Okay, and this is damn easy. We had we had the made made to use a table or form using calculator, and the, so sorry, and then we are done. Okay, this is what limits are. Limits are nothing. Uh, it's 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 a function. L limit of a function. Limit of a function. If it exists, because limit cannot exist as well. I will tell you the reason very later later on. So limit cannot exist as well for some x value c, and we denote. So I'm just going to write the formula. Let's write. Let's make a new page. Ah, uh, yeah. So I'm just going to write the form formal definition. The formal definition says that. Limit not a no it 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 is not a formal definition but uh, this is an informal definition but just now for the definition okay the limit of a function limit of a function limit of a function if it exists of course if it exists if it exists limit of function if it exists for some x value for some x value c. For some x value c, okay. For some x value c, to the height of a function, to the height of a function, to the height of a function, the height of a function gets closer and closer, gets closer and closer. As we saw, that is gets closer and closer, closer and closer to uh, as x gets closer and closer, gets closer and closer uh, to. To the to C gets closer and closer to C from the left side, from the left and the right side, from the left and the right side. Okay. So for example, this is your function. This is this is your function. Assume that this is your function, and this is there is a discontinuity over here, and you're telling that okay, what is the what is the value of x? So for example, is something like this. Okay, and you're telling that's two. So what is g of x? When the what is the limit of what is the limit? What is the limit of x approaches two of your function g of x? 
okay so when x approaches 2 from the negative side sorry the left side and the positive side from the from the from the right side it seems to be approaching from the first of all from here and then it seems to be approaching 4 so exactly it is 4 okay so it's check the gets the x value gets closer and closer from the left and the right side and then you decide and then if the both are equal then you say okay that's the limit which exactly equals to 4 okay so now we had seen the one example and I hope you had got a very good idea uh, about limits and we'll, yeah, I will just give you the formal definition of a limit because it's very important for you as well to understand what exactly a limit is. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is to take another example so that you could get a more, uh, more, de more good definition for you at least. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see that. Okay, so we'll just give you the good, good definition of the limits and it's very very important as well uh, mainly if you uh, for, 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 for getting more about what exactly the limits is okay cool so uh, what I'm going to do is take another another function take another function and the function is uh, the function is the function is uh, f of x equals to 3x plus 1 so what I'm going to do is to take a uh, y, I will just do me take a function 3 of y equals to 3x plus 1. y equals to 3x plus 1. So this is your function uh, f of x. This is your function f of x. Okay. And you will identify the need of the limits from this function. And you will get to know the need. What's exactly the need of limits from this function? So let's get started. So let's what what do I ask you to do? Take your graph paper, try to plot this function by putting the x values and try to put the coordinates on the, your graph paper and then you are done. Okay. So what I'm going to do is to make the make a quick, quick uh, diagram of this function. I don't know, it, will, it, is, it, is, it is a bit hard to make but no problem. I'll try to make it as much as I can. So just what I'm going to do is, it is, uh, just wait for a second, I'm just checking the diagram, yeah. So what I'm going to do is to make an x and y plane. So I'll just put this, make, let's make in blue because it works. Okay. So this is your x, sorry, y coordinate, y plane, y axis, and this is your x axis. Okay. What I'm going to do now is to just plot it. Now, is two, it's approach to seven. So one, two, oh my God, what is this? Oh, I, 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 I got to know about this now. One, two. Uh, let's 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 make in a little bit more weight. Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So this is your. Uh, let's uh, let's make it in formal way. Now. Uh, when I'm going to try to put the value of 1, so let's put the value of 1 over here. So that is 4, when it is, so that is 4, okay. Put the value of 2, that is, that is nothing but uh, 7, I think so. Yeah, that is 7, okay. So when I, when I try to just join the points, when I try to just join the points, I'm just trying to fully join the points, okay. So that is, this is what I get. When joining it okay so it is not a best function in the history of uh, maths but yeah that's what I can draw in just now with quick graph so this 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 is the function y equals to 3x plus 1 so this is this this is a function y equals to 3x plus 1 coming to that now this is a function now what I want to know is limit 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 of your function let's say f of x let's give the name of this function f of x Limit of function f lim, limit of a function f of x when x approaches when x approaches two. What is what what it will be? You can simply it it is not it is continuous. It is we have, we have this this is not a piecewise function. It is continuous and over here we don't have any discontinuity. We don't have any hole over here. Okay, it is just a point just just for draw, drawing the diagrams. But, but over here, your uh, this function is continuous, and if you go when 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 we approach from the negative side as on the positive side, and even when we get when we get x equals to two, even when we get x equals to two, so you'll be getting 
uh, y equals to 7 and that is the fully valid according to your function that is defined that is defined so the limit of your f of x when x approaches to from the both the side is 7 when x approaches to from the both the side from the from from this side and from that side even if it gets 2 it will be defined because your function is not set it that okay your y is 3x plus 1 is not equal to 2 so it is not something like this it's not something like this it is defined at, at x equals to 2 so the limit of the function you can simply put the value of x and you'll be getting your limit value over here so you can simply put the value over here and then you'll be getting your uh, the limits even when you, when you see it it goes from the left side and the right side and it seems to be approaching 7 Okay, coming to that now we have seen this now What I'm going to do is a little bit twist it so that if so that you could get uh, at least the idea of why limits are too much useful in this era so what I'm going to do what I'm going to do is um, is uh, say say for if say for an example say for say for an example uh, uh, I'm just going to take a take a take this and then I'm just going to make a hole over here okay so just make a hole over here oh my god this is what I made the hole okay so now now the function is defined this function y is defined everywhere except x equals to 2 and when it's x equals to 2 it is 1 it is 1 okay so 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 what is so what is the limit of f of x when x approaches 2 it's 7 it's 7 of course it's 7 but you will see the but you'll see the main idea that if your function has discontinuity it will tell you that if we get closer and closer to 2 from both the side from the left side and the right side say, say, say for say, say for an example you have x so you put 1.5 so you put a you go from the left side that is you have uh, y function so that is 1 when you put 1 you'll get 4 when you put 1.5 you get 5.5 5 .5. when when you put 1.9 you get 6.7 you get 1.99 you get 6.97 you get 1.999 you get 6.9997 so this is this is getting closer and closer to 7 if you get closer and closer to from the from the left hand side it is getting closer and closer to 7 coming to that from the negative side coming to that from the sorry from the right 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 hand side so that is that is that is nothing but 2.01 so that is 7.003 2.01 that is 7.03 2.1 7.3 so this is also it seems to be approaching 7 from the from from the right hand side so the limit is 7 okay so this is how you 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 take out the limits and i hope that it's completely making sense at least to, to you okay coming to that later on now now what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is, uh, is to just go ahead, uh, give you the, the 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 topic which is one-sided limits. Okay, so you all have seen the one-sided limits, but I uh, this is it's, it's my job to make you familiar with these stuff. Okay, so I'm just going to take this only this diagram. I'm just going to take only this diagram. I'm just going to take only this diagram. Okay, now. Uh, just let me just make it in a new page so that I could make you understand a better way Okay, so when x approaches to from this side and then that side. Okay, let's make a new function. Let's make a new function Let's make a new function. Don't ask me. What's the name of the function? Just just let's draw a random function so that just just we can understand visually. Let's call that function p of x Okay, let's call that function p of x. Of course. This is a piecewise function. This is a piecewise function um it will be like this x square for and i will just tell you later on okay coming coming to that so let's make a let's let's make a function this one uh let's make a function let me draw a dot line okay, at least a line uh something like this and then something like this i want to do a little bit big so that everyone could be able to see it now uh just going to take this now what i'm going to do one uh, it's it will be something like this okay so I just let's do it and this is from this side
okay so this assume that this is your function uh, this is your function it's just not a big 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 function which you have ever seen in your era okay let me make a little bit so that everything is yeah okay so you have the okay so you want to you have a piecewise function you have piecewise function so assume that this is a p of x this is a p of x which is a which is a piecewise function which you ever see in your life uh, again just uh, just just assume that that is a function at and, and over here and and over here uh, over here uh, you have limit what is the limit of x approaches uh, 2 okay so what is the limit of x approaches 2 from the negative side of your function f of p of x so when you when you get closer and closer to 2 from the negative side what the means uh, from the left side it gets closer and closer to 5 that gets closer and closer to 5 it gets closer and closer to 5 that is nothing but 5 okay so when you get closer and closer to 2 from the negative side that's get closer and closer to 5 And when you get closer and closer to 7, when you, when you get closer limit of P of X from the right hand side, from the right hand side, okay, it is getting closer and closer to 2. That is nothing but 2. So over here, you had, you are, you're taking the limit from the, from the left hand side and taking the limit from the right hand side. And these both uh, right, right hand limit and left handed limit are not equal, are not equal, are not equal okay are not equal and so so that's why uh, this limit does not exist this limit does not exist why because the limit because the limit from x approaches to from the negative side of a function p of x is a not equals to the limit of your p of x when x approaches to from the positive side it's not equals to you, which which you can clearly see over here, which you can clearly see over here that this the x approaches to from the left hand side and x approaches to from the right hand side is not equal. But in previous cases which you have seen, they both were equal. So there the limit exists, but here the limit does not exist. Okay, so this is what the whole idea of the one-sided limit. When someone asks you to evaluate something like this, gets to get the limit from the negative side, you're just going to go go uh, get closer and closer, make a tabular format, make a tabular format, and then go ahead. But we'll see how to evaluate the limits in our next section of a, of, of, of a function. So don't worry about that, okay? I hope that everything is clear. And now what I'm going to do is uh, have, a, have a small understanding of, uh, of, of, of a function, uh, again, a piecewise function. This is a piecewise function. So let's 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 take another another, another piecewise function. So what I'm going to do, uh, it's the it will tell you the idea of infinity, which we'll talk about. We will talk about this in our next video a little bit more way. I'm just going to going to give you the intuition about this. Okay. So this is your this is your something like this. Okay. Assume that this is one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, uh, this is also one, two, three, four, five, and this is also one, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. Okay, now what I'm going to do is to just make uh, is to just make us for here. Okay, to make something like this, make something with this, and when we say when we say that when x approaches when the limit when the limit of when the when when when, when the limit of f of x let's say the function f of x when x approaches negative uh, from the from, from the right right hand side from the right hand side even from the left let's say from the left hand side from the left hand side when the limit gets close and close to the left hand side so it says that it's it's getting to infinity it's getting to infinity okay because you have a vertical asymptotes over here vertical asymptotes okay so it's getting to infinity so we say that, that that is a infinity that is the infinity okay so this is a general idea when a limit can be infinite okay so don't worry about this we will talk about vertical asymptotes 
because this is a vertical asymptote so we say that when 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 when, when the x approach is 3 it gets the limit of the function gets gets to the infinity okay cool so what i'm going to do now is talk about the last things of the topic which which which, which we are left on is about continuity i think so yeah we'll talk about continuity but before that i want to give you a formal definition of a limit so that you could be under you could just write somewhere so that everyone is familiar with it so the formal definition of a limit the formal definition of a limit the formal definition of a limit let f be the function let f be the function okay so the let let f be a function let f be a function let f be a function and c be any real number and c be any real number any real number okay limit limit of x approaches c of your function c is in c is the arrow number mainly we call it an arrow number which is we have which we have to approach exists this limit exists exist if and only if if and only if three conditions are met. First condition: limit of f of x when x approaches c from the negative side exists. Exists. Second, limit from x approaches c from the positive side exists. And and third one is limit of x approaches c from the negative side of f of x equals the limit of x approaches c. Of function f uh, from the positive side so they should be both equal okay so this is so these are the three conditions where you all have seen in a real life examples which i just showed you about uh, this example or maybe or this example maybe okay cool so now let's talk about the last thing which is nothing but continuity which is nothing but continuity so what i'm going to do is just is uh, just spend some minutes talking on this uh, talking on this, uh, so we'll talk about continuity. So let me just give a definition. Continuity, okay. Continuity. A, a continuous function. Basically, the re definition states a continuous function. A continuous function is simply is simply a function with no gaps, with no gaps or holes in between okay so a function which you can draw uh, without without take for example i can draw something with this so with which has no gaps okay or uh, and holes in between okay so this is a this this is a this is a continuous function okay so we'll see some of the examples where the, where the functions are continuous and where the functions are not continuous so let's see some of the examples where the functions are continuous where the functions are continuous so just going to make it something like this Oh my god, it's not correct. So let's assume. Oh my god, what is this? What is this? I think that I'm losing my mind. I think so. Yeah. So over here, this is this 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 is your function. This, this is function where I let's list a p of x. Let's say p of x. And this is continuous because you are drawing without taking out your hand. And since one of one of the main thing about continuous function, if you are making it making it draw without taking your pencil off the paper. Then it's continuous. That's a, that's a, that's another another cool definition which is provided in some of the book. Okay, so this this is some of that. This is what you. This is a continuous function. Let's draw. Let's draw uh, something like this. Something like this. It is also the continuous function. So this is also the continuous function of the absolute absolute value of x. Okay, so this is also a continuous function. But what are not continuous functions? So let's take an example. Let's take an example of this function of this function. The, the function states you have uh, maybe something like this. You have something. Like, oh my God! You have something. You have something like this. And let's do one thing. Let's just make a hole in between. Okay. Let's just make a hole. And this is. And this is not a continuous function. Okay. And another stuff is. I will tell you the 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 good definition. Another another can be another another can be. Uh, let's take an example of this. Okay, so this is, uh, I'm going to make a piecewise function. I'm going to just make a piecewise function. And this function is also not continuous function. 
Okay, this 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 function is also not a continuous function. Let's draw vertical asymptotes. So this is also not a uh, the 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 function which is continuous. Okay, uh, because we are you are taking off your hand. Ana another stuff which I'm going to talk about is another piecewise function. Ana an another piecewise function which is this one. Okay, make a hole over there, and let's make. There's a hole over here. So this is also not a continuous function. Okay. So uh, so when whenever there you there is some kind of piece for the, the constraints, it's 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 difficult. So uh, basically, you should seeing the two functions. So let me draw an, another function, another another same same function which you all had already already seen. So that I could take one example of this, uh, something like this one and something like this one. Okay, so this, these are the two functions which are not continuous. So these two functions with the gaps are not continuous everywhere. These functions are not are not continuous. I'll not say, but the more precisely, I would say the these two functions with the gaps are not continuous everywhere. These two functions are continuous everywhere, but these two functions are not continuous everywhere. But sometimes a function is continuous everywhere it's defined. Okay, such a function is described as being continuous over its entire domain. So if the function is continuous, that that means that the function is continuous over its entire domain. Okay, which means that it it's 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 gaps or gaps occur at x values where the function is undefined. Okay, so which is seeing the function p of x is continuous over the entire domain. Is continuous over the entire domain, which you're seeing over here. It's continuous over over the entire domain. It it has it don't have gap in between. But over here, g of x, on the other hand, it's not continuous over its entire domain, over its entire domain. Okay, so g of x is not continuous over its entire domain. Maybe for let's say for say for example, you have this diagram. So this this diagram. So this function y is continuous over its in, 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 entire domain except at value except at x equals to two because at x equals to two it has a hole. So this function y is not continuous everywhere except x equals to two. Okay, so this is how you say if if, if the function is a continuous or not. Maybe you say the function is continuous. Uh, it's you. You say that the function is continuous over its entire domain. But basically, as a more precise, you say that okay, the function is continuous everywhere except at this this point. Okay. So this was all about this uh, con continuity, and I hope that you got to know what limits. It's 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 a good definition to uh, to 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 just take in your mind and. And I hope that you will consider uh, this uh, in your own. And I also hope that this limits got in your mind. In the next section, we'll talk about the evaluating limits, and then we'll get on differentiation, my favorite topic. And then we'll talk about integration, calculus over. Okay, and then we'll go to probability theory because its probability theory is also very very important uh, in this era. And let me know that I'm that I was reading a book. uh no what do you want gift in a christmas because i'm thinking that i should make a very 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 comprehensive data science one year plan master plan or road map to complete and in in that to get in fang what do you say i'm not in fang but i think many many of my students got into fang uh, so i think i'll be i'll be eligible i'll be help, help taking help from a lot of people to make that road map available okay So I think that if if you want that, please comment it down below. I'll be very happy to give you as a Christmas gift to make a full data science plan. Data scientist plan, which goes from very scratch maths and just go go step by step with book recommendations with every stuff. Let me know in the comment box below. I'll be catching up your next video. Till then, bye. Have a great day. Hey everyone, welcome to this video. Um, basically, in this video, we'll talk about how do we evaluate the limits because in the previous video, I've just given you an introduction to limits. We haven't solved as I've just shown you the numerically how, uh, sorry, geograph, uh, gram, uh, maybe graphically, how do we even uh, go ahead and take out the limits with only few examples. In this video, through what I what I will do is I will try to show you some of the methods. For how we evaluate the limits, so we'll talk about substitution, mainly the plugging one, and then we'll talk about how do we evaluate limits using calculator. And even if it does not work, there is algebra, which is always there for you. In maybe factoring evaluation, eva evaluation of a limits using factoring, and rationalizing and conjugate. And Sarah will talk about that today. 
Okay, and I will just give you a, 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 a brief about squeeze theorem so that you could be you could be from familiar with what a squeeze theorem is. Okay, just a sandwich theorem. Cool. And uh, the frequency of the video will be a bit low these days. The reason why um, uh, CS001 is preparation is going on and a lot of work is on my head. So it's a bit slow, but yeah, I it's just like three videos per week is coming as mentioned as promised but previously there was five videos six videos were coming but i think it's my apology that the, i'm not going to upload uh, more than three videos per week okay and and the homework sets is updated on <coughs> sorry the homework set will be updated on your lms uh, please go there and try to solve it i'll just uh, have our tas to 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 to, to grade your uh, assignments Okay, cool. So, uh, plugging and using the calculator. So let's talk about plugging. Let's 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 talk about plugging. So limit of x approaches three. Okay, and of a function of a, of a function x squared minus ten. Okay. So what is telling? This is your function f of x. So function f of x is nothing but x squared minus ten. Okay. So what is the limit when x approaches three? Okay, so maybe just uh, when, when 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 you plot this function and when when you when you go when you approach x from the left hand side and when you approach x from the right hand side, it seems to be approaching minus one. Okay, but but it's not possible for every time for you to draw a graph and then go ahead. So what you do, you first of all try the substitution. You first of all try the substitution. So over here. It seems to be approaching three, and it is a. It seems like a continuous function, okay? And it is a continuous function. So over here, when you what you do, you put three into that x. You put the three uh, input to the f of x. So what do you do? You simply put three over here, okay? So three square minus ten, which is equals to minus one. So the limit of x approaches three for of of this function is equals to minus one. It says that it's the, the the function when x approaches three from the left hand side and the right hand side seems to be approaching minus one, okay, or is approaching minus one. So what you do first of all is to try direct substitution. You just give give the value of x to the function which is over three over here, and then you take out the answer of it, okay. So this is called substitution method or plugging and it only works with a function which is continuous. It only works with a function, only works when your function is continuous, otherwise it, it works very well in most of the cases. Okay? But but don't you think that these pro this is just like a function? No, this is this, this is not a, like a function, it is just a method which we use everywhere. I will tell you how it is being used everywhere, but every time it is not possible that this case happen. Let's take an, another example. Let's say an example that they, you want to take out the limit of the function, which is 10 over x minus 5 when x approaches 5. When you try this plugging method over here, when you try this plugging method over here, what, what will happen? What will happen? It, it will simply this is this this is a function to so 10 minus 5 minus 5 so you put x 5 so that will be 10 over 0 that is indeterminate form we say that is indeterminate form and this is undefined and the limit does not exist but the limit do exist in this case okay we will we, we, may, may, maybe in some time we will we'll see the tools that will say the limit that 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 will help us to evaluate these kind of limits but over here, the, this is undefined. So that's why the substitution does not work everywhere. It does not work everywhere because it is giving you the indeterminate form if it is even a continuous. Okay? Cool. So now what we now this is our first method which you have seen. Let's see the second method, which is of using the calculator. So using calculator, let's let's say for us for the sake of example, I will take an, another example. Limit of x approaches the limit of x approaches 5 of the function x minus x square minus 25 over x minus 5 equals to what okay so this is this this is a thing so what i will do i'll make use of calculator i'll make use of cal calculator what you can do first of all is to put the values of 5 over here put the values of 5 so maybe 5 square minus 25 
5 minus 5 so 5 square 25 minus 25 over 5 minus 5 that will be 0 over 0 and when you divide something by 0 that is undefined that is undefined so the plugging method is not working over here so what method would work, work over here so what do you do you, you take your calculator okay you start approaching you start putting the values of x from the left hand side and start putting the values on the right hand side and see and make a table of it and see to whom it is approaching okay so say for an example this this is this this is your x this is your x this is your x and this is your y this is your x and this is your y so x maybe let's say 4.9998 uh, okay so 4.998 8 that the when you when you put this 4.998 when you when you go from the left hand side when you put this in function 4.998 that will be 9.998 okay now you put 4.999 okay so that will be 9.999 okay and when you when you put 5 it gives it is undefined okay now you have seen from the left hand side it seems to be approaching what why is approaching what it seems to be approaching 10 so the limit of x approaches 5 from the negative from the left hand side of this function x minus 5 is equals to what 10 it seems to be approaching 10 from the left hand side okay but the but the definition of the limit what we have seen the limit i'll just draw it the limit the limit of x approaches a from the negative side of the function f of x should it should be equal to limit of x approaches a from the positive side to be the limit called as so that the limit x approaches a is equals to whatever okay so if this is 10 this should be also 10 10 so that it could be called as a so that the limit from the both both sided limit should be same okay so over here when we put 5 when you when you put 5.01 5.001 okay so when you when we go from the right hand side when we go from the right hand side it should it is seems to be approaching also 10 to 10.001 so when we put 5.002 from the right hand side i'm telling 10.002 so 5.002 it seems to be approaching 10.002 okay so basically the limit of x approaches 5 from the positive side of this function f of x let's let's assume this function f of x is also 10 is also 10 so at as as per well, the definition of a limit the limit of a function f of x when x approaches 5 from both the sides it seems to be approaching of the function f of x it seems to be approaching 10 so the using the plugging our limit was undefined but using the calculator, the limit, we define the limit, okay, the limit do exist, okay? So this is, this, this is the second method using calculator. But every time calculator does not work, okay? Maybe uh, the, the advanced calculator may, may work, but basically your computer calculator or mobile calculator does not work, maybe, maybe some of the cases. So that is using the calculator. Now let's see another thing, another... Uh, a method for solving of it is using algebra but i i do want to see the timing of it so what's the timing is nine minutes okay i just want to complete it very fast way so that i could not take more of your time cool so what i'm going to do is to solve limit i just to solve limit solve limit using your basic algebra okay uh, first of all what we'll do we'll try factoring we'll try factoring Okay, and then we'll do the rationalizing or conjugation. Okay, so what's the limit? What's the limit when x approaches 5? When x approaches 5 of the function x squared 25 of x minus 5. That's the same function. You know that the it should be 10. 10. It, sh it should be 10. x minus 5. We have, we have seen that. Now, we'll, we'll make use of uh, factoring to uh, evaluate this limit. So... So what? So basically, the limit what it tells when x approaches five, um, when when in this function when x approaches five from the both the side, what it is approaching? Okay, okay. So that's what it is. The limit the, the the limit tells what happens when x approaches five from the right hand side and the left hand side, and what will be the y value of it? Okay. So the first thing we shall try is plugging. The first thing always you have to try is plugging. Okay, if now the plugging will be the indeterminate form or undefined okay so plugging is undefined plugging is undefined over here so first of all every time you have to try the plugging first 
second what you have to do is to factor x square minus 25 x square minus 25 so it is basically x square minus 5 square so a square minus b square so what it will be so a square minus b square will be uh, a minus b plus a a minus b and then a plus b okay so that's the that's that you have already studied so what i'm what i'm going to do the limit of a function x approaches 5 x square minus 25 over x minus 5 will be what the limit of x approaches 5 and that we have factored it out okay that is x minus 5 and x plus 5 and in the denominator we have x minus 5 isn't it isn't it so what so what we will do we'll cancel out these two so what will what we have left with x limit of x plus 5 now what you do now you put your x value over here now you use sub substitution limit of x approaches 5 of if function 5 plus 5 so that will be 10 so limit of x approaches 5 is nothing but 10 so what you have done you factored it you do some algebra man manipulation and then you at last you plug in the van now you are left with something now you plug in and then you and now you plug in or use the substitution method and then you are done with the, the, the limit of this function will be 10 that exactly what you have seen before okay i hope that this is this is pretty much clear to you what i'm going to do just uh, recap re, 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 recapture re, recapitulate once you again is basically what we have done is to first try the plugging method first try the tried the plugging method second what we have done is to factor x square minus 25 and 25 is perfect square of 5 okay so x square minus 5 is square okay and then using the a a minus b and a plus b okay we, we can write something like this so that it could be cut in like this okay so the just and then we'll be left with this and then we can plug in the values of x and then you are done with this okay that's 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 pretty much easy this way uh, for evaluation of the limits is what i'm going to do now is to take another example to showcase you the rationalization stuff and uh, so that it would be very easier for you at least so an another example is what is the limit when x approaches 4 of this function root x minus 2 by x minus 4 okay so this is your basically the the the, the you have to eva evaluate the limit it's just simply telling when x approaches 4 from the both the side what it is approaching on the y axis okay so first of all what, what i have told to you what i've told to you is to try out is to try out uh, a plugging method plugging so let's try out so it will be nothing but 4 root minus 2 okay 4 minus 4 whatever above comes 4 minus 2 that is undefined that is undefined okay so plugging does not working at a first second thing what i have told to do the second thing what i have told to do is to multi uh, now we have to think of something like this so limit of x approaches 4 x minus 2 x minus 4 what we can do so that uh, this x minus 4 cuts off okay because this is what is causing the problem at the den denominator so if, if you know about the conjugate if the if, please see the definition of conjugate it simply changes the sign of it okay please see the conjugate over the internet it's, it's very one one minute definition you multiply with the conjugate of x max x minus 2 you multiply the conjugate of x minus 2 so times x plus 2 the conjugate of x minus 2 x plus 2 x plus 2 okay now what now what you will do so you are left with uh, x minus uh, root x minus 2 root x plus 2 so a minus b and a plus b that will be what a square minus b square so root x square minus b square okay and this will be left with x minus 4 and this root x plus 2 root x plus 2 now when you when you do this x minus 4 above will be x minus 4 x minus 4 root x plus 2 root x plus 2 okay i think i'm um, correct so this is cutting out so the, the left will be root x plus 2 root x plus 2 now this is your now what you do you put the value of uh, 
4 over here okay so 1 over root 4 plus 2 so that will be nothing but 1 over 2 plus 2 that will be 1 by 4 is the limit the limit when x approaches 4 of this function of this function x minus 2 x minus 4 is nothing but equals to 1 1 by 4 that is your answer okay so you have tried plugging mainly the substitution the second thing which you have done is to uh, the, the second thing which you have done is simply uh, uh, factoring mean no, not exactly factoring multiply the conjugate so that the so that what is causing the problem will will be el eliminated and then you put to put in the value or then again you use substitution to take out 1 by 4 is the answer of this eval limit okay I hope it's pretty much clear to you at least now what I'm going to do is to talk about a nothing but a squeeze theorem I think that I'm very bad at this means a drawing squeeze theorems but I'll fully fully try to just help you understand what this squeeze theorem tell you I'm just going to not spend so much time on it but yeah it's a good theorem so basically this this is also called the sandwich theorem sandwich theorem okay so say you have a function f g and h so let's draw a function f g and h so let's draw a function f g oh my god this is this is not f and g okay so this is your function so let's draw some something like this oh what the hell this is just want to take simply this this one okay so this is your thing and what I'm going to do is to add, wait for a second okay and this is your another function okay so this is your I think I think that this is your F and this is your G and this is your H okay so I hope that this is a squeeze theorem something like this so I can, I can just explain you this so you start search online for the exact picture so that the so that it would be better for you at least so you have a function you have three functions f g and h where g is sandwiched below your function f and h okay so basically this g is sandwiched below between your function f and h and you can see and you can see the when this let's 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 assume this is one this is two okay and this is also one two and this is three okay so what is the limit of x x approaches to of a function f of x of a function f of x okay what is the when 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 it goes from this side and this side it seems to be approaching three it seems to be approaching three okay okay so this seems to be approaching three but it seems to be approaching three what is the limit of h, h of x when x, x x approaches two it, it is also three because when you because h is lower than the your f okay but when when we see see when 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 we go from right hand side and left left hand side it seems to be also approaching 3 so the limit of x approaches 2 of a function f of x is equal to the limit of x approaches 2 of your h of x is equal to the limit and if, if they both are equal then the, that is also the limit when x approaches 2 of your g of x is also equal to 3 so these three will be equal to 3 okay so this is what the skews theorem tells you the rigorous proof of this theorem can be seen on the internet if you, if you want to dive in okay so that basically what it's telling the limits of these three theorems will be the same okay don't don't worry about this it's 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 it's, it's kind of uh, not a big deal just a basic example to help you understand when x approaches to from the left hand side and both and uh, right right hand side and all the three functions cool so we had if you haven't understood st st uh, understood squeeze theorem don't try to understand it's not even on your deep deep learning syllabus okay so we have seen this uh, very precisely and i also hope that you understood it as well uh, in the next video we'll start off with the differentiation i will try to complete differentiation as much as i can i will try to uh, there is three to four videos on differentiation i just want to talk and in a very cool way so that everyone could understand what the dif differentiation is and it's, no, it's nothing but the change uh, mathematics of change when one changes just a fancy slope
we'll, tr we'll talk about that in detail. I hope you will understand it. I'll be catching up in your next video. Till then, bye bye. Have a good day. Hey everyone, welcome to this lecture. Uh, in this lecture, we'll talk about differentiation. We'll, I think we'll just uh, get, 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 get some idea. We'll reach till the formal definition of uh, derivative. We'll, we'll try to define derivative with. Uh, which is uh, using the different coefficient uh, definition. So we'll try to define derivative. We'll try to take out the derivative of a function, which you, which you can think of something like one over four x squared. We, are, we will derive these kind of function, f of x equals to, or we'll derive the function like f of x equals to x squared. You will get the tools after this video where you will be able to derive these kind of uh, the, the functions which are not too much uh, funky functions something like this okay so we we'll, so it is important as per the AI and ML AI and ML uh, if you are just want to get an idea about how differentiation works and uh, how do we take on the derivative or you want to do your back propagation because in deep learning we are going to do everything from scratch maybe deriving the back propagation uh, um, using uh, derivatives and we'll, we'll try to derive the f uh, we'll try to take out the derivative of the function when doing the back propagation then, and then we'll do the lot more stuff from very scratch okay so so that's why I want you all of you to just take a very good attention at this in the next couple of uh, videos as well as because in this video I'll give you a geometric intuition as well as the intuition of the definition of differentiation in the next video we'll see the differentiation rules the like quotient rule power rule chain rule and a lot more we'll also see the vector cal calculus after we complete differentiation and integration because uh, I'm just going to cover up integration as well. It's the only reason because in probability and theory, you probably theory and statistics, you in prob probability density functions, CDFs, they require you to have a knowledge of integration. And as well as some, some of the deep learning research papers, it is not too much found integration in deep learning, but yeah, it is uh, in behind of the, the cons concepts of PDF, CDF, which you us usually do. Okay, so we had a lot more talk. Now let's get started with uh, with, with the de defining, with journey or defining differentiation. And I hope that you will be able to understand. But before that, what I want you to do is just recall the slope. And then using the slope, I just, if you, if you, if you have seen my previous videos, I told you differentiation uh, is, is, is the process of taking on the derivatives. And derivatives are nothing but the slope of a curve, okay, or slope of a function. So let me just take one example. Let me take one example. Example states, oh my God, yeah. Example states, example states that you have, a, for example, you have this line. Okay, so let me just draw the line. You have this straight linear uh, straight line. Okay, uh, this, is, this, this is on your graph paper where it, where it goes on x axis one unit and it goes above one and a half unit okay and it does it is the linear so it is same at everywhere so one one over two and etc etc so you pick any two point you pick any two point and you see okay it is running towards uh, it, it it is running one unit and is going above rising to one one and a half units okay so it is uh, running one unit and it rising one and a half unit so slope formula is nothing but a rise over run rise over run okay or y2 minus y1 and x2 minus x1 we are seeing that is running one unit and is going rising it is running one unit and it's rising one and a half unit okay so it is rising one and a half unit over one okay so the final slope the final slope which you will get which will be one over half okay that is the slope of this function let's give this function name as g of x okay so the, the slope of this function is g uh, 1 over 2 and simply means how much y changes how much y changes when x changes you can think something like this as x is changing one unit x is going a uh, one unit and y is move uh, rising up one and half unit okay when x changes Okay, so that's, that's that that you can think of slope or the steepness of your line. That's also the that's that's also you can understand by the slope. Okay, the steepness of your line. Okay, 
so uh, this is your uh, slope now coming to the calculus term what is the derivative what is the derivative of this function g of x what is the derivative of this function g of x with respect to x with respect to x that will be nothing but 1 over 2 that that will be nothing but 1 over 2 why it is 1 1 over 2 is over you are because the derivative as 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 i told derivative is nothing but the slope nothing but the slope and how much how much this g of x or y changes how much this y changes when x changes how much this y changes when x changes okay so that is nothing but a slope but the fancy term in calculus we, 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 we give which is derivative of course there's a lot more difference between the, your regular slope and the derivative which we'll see later on but as of now what you can see that the derivative of this function g of x is nothing but 1 over 2 is nothing but 1 over 2 and how this 1 over 2 came is we are seeing that okay it is uh, it is a linear line so derivative is nothing but a slope but the slope is the rise of run and we are going one one at the this side at run towards one and rising one and half okay so the derivative of this function g of x with respect to x how much x change or how much y changes or it is just equivalent to y 2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 you can think of like that because this, this is a slow formula okay so that is uh, that is the derivative of this function is nothing but 1 over 2 and this derivative is nothing but telling exactly the same how much this function or g of y changes how much this y changes when x changes a little bit okay so you can think of like that okay so now i will i'll take an, another example so you are more comfortable with okay so you have a line you have a line let me let, let me just draw a straight line something like this okay you are you're moving towards you are running one one unit let's assume you're running one unit okay and you're running one unit and you're rising three units you're rising three units okay so you're running to one one unit you're running one unit and you're rising and you're rising three units you're rising three units so what is the slope of this for what is the slope of this uh, function? So the slope of this graph or the function is uh, maybe three over one, three over one, which will be nothing but three. Okay. What is the slope? Slope is three. Okay. What is the derivative? What is the derivative? And derivative of this linear, uh, we, we don't require derivative over here, but what is the derivative? So derivative dy by dx, dy by dx, which is which just tells how much y changing when x is changing x is changing one it is going rise it is going one and it it it, it, it is rising one then y is rising three okay so that is uh, how much y changes when x changes okay so that that will be nothing but uh uh three over one okay three over one y changes three when when x goes one then y goes up three when x goes x x run one then y run rises 3 okay so that the derivative is will be also 3 so we write the, this is this is a formal that for this this is a formal way we write dy by dx dy by dx okay so derivative of this function y with respect to x derivative of y with respect to that point x okay with respect to x so for example if you wanted to take out derivative of this point derivative at this point so you'll get the same thing you're going one at this side and you're moving up okay so i'm, I'm not taking the ex exact stuff but the but in the the function you will be going so this is uh I, this is a point okay so that will be three okay so the slope of the uh, slope of the linear lines will be always constant so any point you go on x for example if i go any point on this the slope will be same it goes the slope will be same of course the slope will be same the derivative at this point for say x1 the derivative of y with respect to x1 will be also maybe it goes one unit and one one that will be one okay so it, it, it is it is writing dy by dx which is the derivative 
of this function y we we we, we can we can name the function but you know the function we, we for example we can remove this f of x we can just write y okay so the derivative of this function with respect to x okay and x can be point okay over here okay so this is so this is a formal way of representing dy by dx another way to represent a uh, derivative uh, it, it is read as dy by dy dx okay dy dx which is nothing but uh, 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 derivative of the function with respect to that x okay another way we, uh, we, we can write in various ways we can write the derivative of function in various ways let me make you familiar with the ways as well okay so uh, so we can write let's let's assume we have some function f of x okay which is let's assume uh, any function okay any function let's let's assume f of x so when you want to take out the derivative derivative of the function f of x with respect to x you you can just write derivative dy dx dy dx so sorry dy dx okay the derivative of function it is equivalently equals to this it is we, we can also write f prime x or f dash x that exactly that tells you the derivative of this function derivative of the function f with respect to x it is also we can also write this as a y dash because y is a function and we say what is the der derivative of the function y with respect to x or we can write f like like this or we can write y this there are a lot more techniques we can write d x f something like this so they all are equivalent but we'll follow the formal not notation which is this one okay dy by dx which is nothing but how much y changes when x changes and that is nothing but a slope that is nothing but a slope but don't worry i will give you the formal definition of a limit in in just in a second when we try to define differentiation with the help of a rate okay so we'll we'll try we'll come on that don't worry okay so i'll just give you the formal definition of a limit so that you could uh, you could just define limit what it is but as of now how much y changes when x changes okay so this so it, there are tons of not exactly tons of ways there are so many of ways for writing the derivative notation okay as you know the people are very smart on the earth they 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 just invent these kind of stuff i don't know why they have a stir stick with that dy by dx because i like that notation i don't know what the researcher have thought of maybe isaac newton has thought of this one and then a lot of researchers have thought this one and they all fight it together to get the work done but i don't know what they have done i have to go at the past and then ask them okay cool so we have seen the derivative of a line and i hope that you understood it as well so uh one thing which i let's uh, do we want to go ahead yeah let's go ahead let's let's, let's talk about one similar example so that everything uh, i i don't think we should go ahead and uh, see one more simple example because we have already seen it now we have seen the derivative of a line now we have seen the de derivative of a line which is nothing but a slope of the line <laughs> okay so you may think hey i use derivative is that simple no it's not that simple we'll we'll see uh, we'll see but yeah it, it 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 is not it is doable if you uh, give your good mind concentrated over here okay cool so one of the example which i want to highlight is from calculus for dummies book okay example is from calculus for dummies book you can check out this book it's amazing book which i ever seen on calculus for beginners is is what i use for teaching as a reference uh there there there's an example where there there are two students there are two students let's assume my name ayush let's assume uh let's assume there are two students ayush and let's assume there are second student which is rishya okay which is rishya uh maybe rishya Rish is my best friend over the school but these are the two uh students so these are two friends okay which is around i think uh, they are they are they are um uh, I, i don't know the name the name of this seesaw yeah that is seesaw when when one goes down then up for example this one okay when um one is sitting above on the bench one goes down and when uh this goes down this goes up okay let's see so i, I don't know how what, what the name of the game is 
but that is the game okay so here it is telling that the ayush this ayush ayush is the the weight of ayush is twice as as much as a laurel okay as sorry as much as rishya okay so ayush weight is a twice as much as rishya okay so the rishya page is 20 sorry weight is 20 then ayush weight is 40 okay so if the rishya page is x then ayush weight is 2x okay that is twice of rishya now they are they are on a spray they are on seesaw they are on seesaw and this is something like, like this this is a ground this is a ground and uh, uh rishab is sitting here and ayush is sitting here okay and ayush, ayush is sitting here and rishab this is rishab and this is ayush and of course i just changed the name so that uh uh, it, it 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 is not uh, too much uh, so so that so that it will be understandable uh, to to you all because I find those names very hard to pronounce and you can more connect with Indian names if you're an Indian okay so there are two students Rishim and Laurel where Ayush weights is twice as much as uh, Rishab now Rishab has to has to sit twice as much closer so they have to sit as much closer to uh rishab okay for them to balance up okay because it is so much heavy is very hard to balance okay uh, and for every inch for every inch ayush goes down for every inch ayush goes down rishab goes up by <laughs> rishab goes up by two inches okay so when uh when the ayush goes down by one inch okay then rishab goes up by two inches okay so if the ayush goes down by 10 inches the risha will go over by 20 inches okay so ayush weights of course higher so that's so so just listen my thing is when ayush goes down by 10 inches then risha goes up by 20 inches when ayush goes down by one inches then our risha goes up by two inches down up down up something like this okay so when ayush when ayush goes down by down by one inch then the rishab goes of over by two inches so it is so rishab moves twice as much as ayush so rishab moves twice as much as ayush okay so then you got this is this that's a derivative you got the derivative so so we'll see it you you got the derivative and you may recall this is nothing but your favorite rate okay we'll see it so uh rishab moves twice as much as hardy uh twice as much as ayush i'm just taking the book books example because i have written my notes over there uh that the, the name of the hardy over there but uh basically uh Risha moves twice as much as Ayush. Reserve moves twice as much as Ayush. So, uh, dr, okay, so I didn't denote Risha with r, is equals to the d, 2 dA, okay. So, the Risha goes, so Risha tw moves twice up as uh, uh, Ayush, okay. So, with the calculus symbol, you can write it something like this. And when you uh, when you, when you divide both sides by dA or you move it over here, dR by dA is equal to two, and that's nothing but your favorite derivative which you got. That's nothing but the favorite derivative which you got. And over here, this derivative, this this your 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 basically this what 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 you're seeing is the derivative of r okay so the de derivative of your risha okay derivative of risha risha with respect to ayush derivative of risha risha with respect to ayush so dr can be thought of as a change in uh, risha position as dh da can be thought of as a change in ayush position okay so if hardy goes down if ayush goes down by one inch then Arisha goes up by two inches. So 
the dr can be thought as change in reshape position and da can be thought of as a change in ayush position okay so that this is this is what you got when you do calculation this is what you got as uh, this is what you got as a derivative and this that d dl by dh so it's just telling derivative of r with respect to a okay derivative of reshape with respect to ayush so what does it mean that reshape is moving two times as much as ayush reshape Rishabh moves two times as much as Ayush. Okay, that's the that's exactly what you're telling. That this is uh, this is dy by dx, which is derivative of r with respect to a, is nothing but telling the Rishabh moves two times as much as Hardy uh, Ayush. Okay, so that's that's how you got the derivative. You can take a look. This is this is the derivative which we take in now from the uh, from the uh, Rishya point of view, okay? Because Rishya was moving up, but over here, but over here, uh, you 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 can take out the derivative from the Ayush point of view, from the Ayush point of view, okay? So so the so the d a the derivative d a can be thought of as a change in a Ayush position is equals to one over two d h. When I use, it is just telling. It is just telling. Uh, I use moves half as much as uh, this guy, uh, Rishya. Okay, so I use moves half as much as uh, Rishya. Okay, so d a equals to d r, d r. So when we do the calculation, d a by d r is equals to one half, and that's your derivative which you got, which 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 you got. and that is nothing but the derivative of ayush with respect to rishab and it simply means that ayush moves 1 and 1/2 inch for every inch laurel uh, uh, that rishab moves okay so 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 basically what is doing is uh, it is the derivative saying that uh, ayush is moving 1 and 1/2 when i i i ayush is moving moves 1 and 1/2 inch for every inch rishya okay so how much as as i told how the change in position so how much a changes when r changes okay so a uh, when a a a is changing 1 and 1/2 when uh, r is changing so when ayush moves 1 and 1/2 inch when uh, rishya moves 1 inch okay that's that's pretty much clear i i i hope so uh, it is if if, if you are getting confused please recall the video again so that you could be easily understandable it is very very easy to understand again i'm recalling that uh, this is d a by dr d a by dr is is the derivative from the ayush point of view so it is just telling how much ayush changes when r changes when rishab changes and is how much rishab changes when ayush changes Okay, so this these are two from two point of views. So it is just in this one. How much? How much? I use changes. How much I use changes? How much I use changes? How much I use changes when? How much I use changes? Oh my God! How much Rishab changes when I use changes? And how much I use changes? How much I use changes when Rishab changes? Okay, so this is from different point of view, and we taken out the derivative from the same. Okay. so i hope that everything is clear i'm not going to talk about too much on that because we have already taken a lot of time on it and i hope that is very very understandable to you as well coming to different thing i'll i th i think that i'll just do i'll just give you a proper definition of uh, not i'll not able to give you the proper definition because it is already let me the timing that this one helps up so just see the timing it's 24 okay i can continue it i think i can continue it yeah So uh, let's talk about. Let, let me give you the formal definition. Let me give you the formal definition of uh, just 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 a English definition. The English definition, which you which the example you saw, which example you saw, is the derivative. So I, as I already told you thousand times, a derivative, a derivative is simply. 
is simply a measure a measure of how much how much one thing changes compared to another compared to another okay so d a by dr saying how much a use changes compared to russia okay that's exactly called the derivative cool so another we can another we, we can think of let's uh, 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 another another example can be uh, when when a person driving at a constant speed of 60 miles per hour uh, for for example that there there is a car i don't know how to draw a car oh i i got to know about the car okay so this is a car this this is a car and this is going with a constant speed of 60 miles per hour 60 miles per hour okay six six sixty miles per hour and is driving at a 60 miles per hour so uh what is the derivative derivative of p with the d dp by dt so just telling how much how much uh, how much position changes when time changes if there's two hour then where's the car is okay so that we, we, we can think of it as a, a derivative as well okay so uh, we had said it we had talked a lot about linear only and i hope that you understood that that understood it as well okay so we have only talked about linear over here it is going to the constant speed it is just going at a constant speed and we have, we have talked about only the straight lines we are, we are not talking about the the, the 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 derivative of a curve okay so the derivative of a curve where the slopes are constantly changing at every point where the slopes are constantly where the slopes are constantly changing so this is a parabola where the slope are constantly changing at each and every point so let's say you to take out the slope at this point c how you're going to take out let's say you're going to take out a point f how, how you're going to take out let's say you're at h how you're going to take out so there are so we so we'll see today about this okay so uh what i'm going to do what i'm going to do is just just tell you the what's the derivative okay so just going to tell you what's the de derivative but how i take doubt how i take doubt i will talk about in the next video or in the in, in the next video where we'll learn about the difference coefficient or i'll try to cover the different coefficient in this video only oh, okay let's 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 try to cover the different coefficient in the next in this video only say you have a function f of x equals to 1 4 x squared so the diagram for this will be like uh, will be like uh, something like this. I'm, not sure, I'm, not, I'm just going to make it something like this. So that's a, um, a graph of this function. That's a graph of this function. That's a graph of the function. I hope so. That's a graph of function. So you have an x, you have an y, and uh, the derivative of d by dx. So derivative. So say for a say say for an example. Say for an example, you want to take out the derivative of this point and this x is two and y is what y is what uh let's assume uh or x is one so let's assume x is one and y is zero 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 point two five okay so that is derivative zero point two five d d one okay so what it will be what it will be it will be i'll just take uh what is what is the slope at this point uh that is we, we, we can use the derivative to take out the slope at at at, at that point, uh, you you I already explain you how to, we'll 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 see how it how 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 it does, but later on. But over here, the derivative of this function is nothing but one over two x. You can plug in the values of x. You can plug in the values of x. Say for an example that I plugged in, uh, I plugged in one over two, one over two times or x over two times. Uh, I, pl I plug in two okay so it will be one and the derivative and the derivative at this point one at this point one it will be one it will be what it will be one the slope at this point the slope at this point the slope at this point d the slope at this point will be one 
okay you have the derivative and you can put any point you can put in any x value you will get the slope at that point okay because we make use of derivative to take over the slope at, at exactly that point okay so you can make use of um, you, you can make use of 1 by 2x we will come to that how we, we evaluated 1 by 2x in the later videos but in differentiation rules or i will cover in this video only uh, so you can this is how you take out the de derivative we, we, we have here so using the derivative you can put in any value of x after take, taking out the derivative of a function which is how much y changes when x changes okay so which is 1 1 over 1 over 2x and x which is the value which you have to input in to get the slope at that point or to get the derivative at that point or to get the rate at that point okay or uh, you you all know okay so we had this we will we'll see how do we how do we got 1 over 2x but before that let's talk about the difference coefficient let's let's talk about the difference coefficient because it is the most important concept which one need to know okay because uh, most of the most of the things in calculus is based on it's just because it, it is it, it is needed because uh, i have think uh, i i i think uh, if it it just tells you how it gets infinitely closer to make the line from curve to a straight line okay so we we'll, so we'll see today only okay let me find uh, the copy which i want so that i can at least go ahead and help have Thank you out okay because I usually make notes before teaching in a video because I can just hope that I don't make any uh, mistakes in the videos say for if say for an example you have a graph something like this okay you have a graph something like this okay let me just uh, draw this one graph at this point yeah it's good okay and you pick two points and you pick two points let's say this one x and this one okay so you pick the two points and you assume that this is a point x there on the x coordinate is x and there's a dist h distance between this point so this is x plus h so this is h so for example this was 2 and the distance from this to this is uh, h equals to 2 then over here it will be 4 okay so you can assume like this so h so h depends on h okay so uh, the distance is h okay the, the, the distance is h so this is a point this the x coordinate is x and y coordinate so and another on, on another point so this is x y at uh, one coordinate and this is the second coordinate x coordinate okay so what is the coordinates of this point it will be x which is on x and this is your f of x function okay so this is f of x f of x okay and what is the coordinate of this point the coordinate of this point will be x plus h is your x x is the point is x axis and that will be nothing but f of x plus h f of x plus h because we want this is also the distance of h okay so f of x plus h uh, which you're seeing over here okay now we, we got the we got the coordinate of this we got the coordinate of this so the coordinate of x comma f of x and there's h distance where this there on x x plus h okay and this one is x the the coordinate of the x axis and this is of y axis okay so for, uh, i hope so it is making sense try right? if if it is it, if it is getting confused try to think on yourself is if you if, if you move this x plus h and if you if you try to put put in that function f of x and we can add some value h so that's it that's 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 pretty much the common sense um, this this is a very common sense to understand x plus h okay now coming to this now coming to this what we can do we can draw a secant line we can draw the secant line so let me draw a secant line something like this let me draw a secant line something like this a secant line the definition of a secant line is a line which intersects two points two points on a which which intersect two points on a graph which intersects two points on a graph that's a secant line or a more formal definition of a secant line let me just have you the more formal definition of a secant line a secant line is a line with that intersects a curve at two points okay and to intersect a curve at two points 
uh, this way we draw the secant line and the secant line is something like this now now what you can do if you take if you take this point if you take this point if you, if you take this point oh my god i think uh, i have to choose the pen yeah if you take this point okay you make it closer to this point okay so when you slide this point with your secant line you slide this point to over here with your secant line okay so let's do do, do the thing now you'll you'll be getting just make sure that you're following me just make sure you will be having something like oh my god the secant line does, does not work correctly over here let me make something touching over there okay now what do you do you you now this this point has come to over here now what do you do you you take this point to slide a little bit with the secant line you slide a little bit omg uh, you slide this a little bit okay now let me just draw it okay you you slide it with the secant point as well you slide with the secant line as well okay you you now what you do you take this point again you slide it again you slide it again you slide it okay now let's slide it again uh, it will be make sure that it's intersects with both the point okay now you again take this red one again take this red one slide a little, little bit over here and let's continue doing that okay that will be intersecting at the two points okay at some point at some point it will be so let's let's draw the graph again so what you're actually doing you are making this you are making this h you are making this h to be to to approach to to approach zero okay you are making this h we can make use of limit you can make it as you as we want to go uh, close and closer to not exactly x but we but what we can do we can make this h approaches zero when x when h approaches zero when h approaches zero it will be f of x so oh my god uh, when f of x okay f of x and this f of x plus h when this h becomes h approaches zero then then that will be so let me just uh, make you familiar let me complete that thing okay so we will we'll come to this the will will come to this okay so this was yours and this was your two points this was a two points now when you do this when you do this you will be left with something like this a secant line from us from sorry a tangent line a tangent or over here from the secant when you when when when, when you take your h approach is zero when you when you just make your h up when you may just make your pin um make use of limit make use of limit when h approaches zero when h approaches zero okay so this point will go over here the here 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 so at some point it will become a tangent it will become a tangent and the derivative of any function of a function is the is 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 the slope okay of so a tangent the slope of the secant would be the slope if, if 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 i draw a secant line the slope would be we go at this point so we go to something like this so rise of a run so it is very easy so the secant line becomes the tangent line becomes the tangent line and the tangent the slope of the tangent line is nothing but the slope or uh, the derivative the derivative the slope of this tangent line is nothing but the derivative so what do you do so the so the slope of the secant line so let's let's start writing the formal definition let's start writing the form, formal definition i think uh, it would be very easy for me at least to draw it again okay so everyone is on same piece omg let me make a little bit up yeah so this, this is your one point and this is your second point okay let's draw a secant line over here okay and uh, so what is what what will be the slope what will be the slope of this of this of the secant line so we have a, we were having our x coordinate okay and then we were having x plus h and this was the distance of h okay and this was uh, x comma f of x and this was nothing but x comma f of x plus h okay so this is what you have so what so what would be the slope the slope of this would be 
y2 minus y1 x2 minus x1 okay so f of x plus h minus f of x divided by x plus h minus x okay so this plus minus this cuts down okay so you will be left with f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h okay so uh, now uh, now you got the you, you got the slope of the secant line that is nothing but called the difference coefficient difference coefficient okay question okay why i'm pronouncing it wrong so that is the slope this is the slope of your secant line so when you when you make your h approaches zero when you make your h approaches zero so this will become a tangent line so it will go slide over here which you slide it over here you slide over here so it will be something with this and then it will be something with this and it will some it will, it, it will somewhat become like this it will it will only touch a okay it, it will become something like this this is the tangent line this is a tangent line so what how, how you can do this you can make use of limits to make your h approaches zero because if the h gets if the f of x so it make a in in other words you can you're make is sliding this point to at this point and that will be equivalent the coordinate will be equivalent so you just want h to h to be zero so h approaches zero not not exactly zero Te technically you can you can't get exactly zero f of x plus h f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h okay and that's the derivative of your function with respect to x that's the derivative that's the definition of a derivative with respect to x okay so the second line becomes the tangent line when you approach h to the zero so i hope that this 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 makes a complete complete sense okay so it just tells how much the function is changing when x is changing it is what it does so what it does again i'm again i'm telling it slides you can see the slides over here it started become the tangent line so it started making it h, h approaching zero okay you made use of limit to define uh, this uh, this 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 uh, derivative and the formal definition of a derivative let me just define it for you let me just define it for you let me just define it for you uh, okay uh, i think i have to find a good definition of it yeah so the definition so the definition the definition is derivative of f of x with respect to x is equals to limit when h approaches zero f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h okay that's a formal definition and what it does what it does this slope or this uh, simply the shrinking we are shrinking rise over run we are shrinking the rise over run okay we are we are making shrinking we are making use of limit property a shrinking over here sliding this uh this 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 coordinate this coordinate okay so we had a talk a, a, a lot and i hope that you are uh, enjoying it as well even i am enjoying it okay but one thing the just one question which i want to solve is take out the derivative of the function f of x which is 1 over 4x square which is 1 over 4x square we are going to take out the derivative now okay which you have seen we have taken the derivative okay 1 1 1 over 2x i will just show you how i taken out so this this is your function now let's go ahead now let's put in let's we have a definition now we can limit of h approaches 0 limit of h approaches 0 we can put this uh, x this x is the coordinate which which he wants so we are just going to give x and we can take this 1 over 4 as a coefficient okay because that that only wants 1 over 4 okay x plus h and we don't have to leave a square because this is the one x we want okay minus your whole function 1/4 x square okay 1/4 x square cool divided by h divided by h okay so this is your now we are going to evaluate this limit so the limit 
एच अप्रो एच अप्रोच इज जीरो वन ओवर फोर एक्स स्क्वेर प्लस टू एक्स एच ओवर फोर प्लस एच स्क्वेर ए प्लस बी का होल स्क्वेर यू नो वन ओवर फोर एक्स स्क्वेर वन ओवर फोर एक्स स्क्वेर सो दिस वन कट्स आउट दिस वन दिस वन कट्स आउट दिस वन सो यू आर लेफ्ट विथ यू आर लेफ्ट विथ लिमिट ऑफ एच अप्रोच इज जीरो टू एक्स प्लस एच ओवर फोर plus uh maybe uh i i yeah like i can write it something h square okay you can you can write the 4 over here as well you can write this 4 over here as well okay because when you when you when you multiply this oh my god why i have left this when you when you multiply 1 over 4 with every uh, member of this so that will be nothing but uh let me be a little bit transparent let me be a little bit transparent let me be a little bit transparent then i think that i've done wrong a little bit I don't have to do wrong over here. Yeah, let me be a little bit transparent. So, oh my God, sorry for the lace. But one over four, just expand in x square plus two x h plus h square minus one over four x square. Now you simply limit of h approaches zero. One over four x square plus two x h by four. Plus h square by four minus one over four x square. This cuts out with this limit of h pro h approaches zero one. And now it cuts down. So two x h four plus h square four. Okay, let's uh, let's let's keep 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 on working on it. So that let's write the same thing again. H approaches zero. Two x h by four plus h square by four by h. I think I forgot in everything. H, we don't have to forget H. Okay, by H, so H is there. Don't forget. Okay, now what I will do? I will try to add it when H approaches zero four. Okay, so that will be nothing but two x H plus H square. Okay, so the limit of H approach H approaches zero. We take common H two x plus H. Uh, by four, by h, and this cuts out. This and this cuts out. Okay, so the limit. Now it's very easy. Two x plus h by four. Now you can do the substitution. You can do the substitution. Limit. Uh, now we don't have right limit. Two x plus zero by four, and that will be nothing but two x by four, and that will be nothing but. X by two or one over two x. Okay, this was that much easy to calculate the derivative of a function. Okay, using our formal definition of a limit, and we showed you the geometric interpretation of the differentiation. I and I hope you really enjoyed it. Try to take out the derivative of x square. So just 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 for your convenience, the limit the it it will be x plus h square. Minus x square divided by h, okay? Divided by h. So let me see if it is exactly equal to same. Yeah, it is divided by h. Okay. So this now try to take out now this take out the derivative of a function f of x which is x square and using the limit form and definition. Okay. So I hope that this is pretty much clear to you at least. Uh, I hope so. It it is very much clear. Although you get a very very Complex function, complex function. It is not a, a we 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 can't use our uh, we have a different dif differentiation rules which will help us to do take out the derivative very quickly. Which we'll talk about in the next video. Till then, bye bye. Have a great day. You have done a great job today. Meet you in the next video. To this uh, video, uh, in this lecture, basically we'll talk about differentiation rules. And our previous video we talked about uh, differentiation, which is approximately forty minutes of video. So sorry for that much long. The only reason is uh, I just completed the whole differentiation definition because in the previous video we given you the, the geometric intuition of differentiation, and in this video we'll try uh, we'll we'll see some of the rules for taking out the derivative of a function of a, even a complex functions. We'll try to take out in the in the in this video and the next couple of videos. So we'll try to see that, and then we'll see a uh, local minima and maxima. We'll try to see that. Uh, 
and then future videos and then we'll go on integration we'll complete the integration the same way as we completed differentiation however we'll not focus on that much on integration because it is not being used too much but we but we'll surely take a look because sometimes it comes integration comes over the research paper then we'll go to the probab probability theory and statistics and then we'll start with deep deep learning and you may be thinking hey Ayush why we are learning these much things and just I let let me tell you what happens if the beginners get very confused oh my god what is happening behind them behind the algorithms when they study deep learning so when we are going to start with deep learning then we are going to go very fast way okay um, it's the, because you'll be understanding each and everything each and everything whatever I'm going to write it out and if you don't see these videos if you don't know what is calculus is if you don't know what is uh, uh, what is differentiation integration you will un not getting the actual point of view of deep learning and you'll be not understanding deep learning so that's why we are doing all those things and it's very very useful to learn these as well for your professional career because it will maybe if you want to go in research it will very uh, you'll be able to understand hardest research papers in this era okay so let's get started with the uh, differentiation rules i'm not going to re recap the previous video but i want you to see the previous video uh, which, which, which we have already had a talk on that, but we have, we had formulated a definition. We have for, formulated a definition of differentiation. So let me just give you what, what definition we have formulated. If you want to take out the derivative, if you want to take out the derivative dy by dx and y is a function. Okay. So we have, we are solving for y. So we are, if you want to take out the derivative dy by dx, we were have we were having a limit definition okay this is a, using the difference coefficient when h approaches zero limit sorry f of x plus h minus f of x by h okay and this is this is the this is and you by solving this uh, by using the this we are we are able to get it but when you have a too much complex functions it would be very tedious and almost impossible for you to achieve using this okay so that's why we have differentiation rules which will help us to uh, take out the derivative of the functions okay so let's get started so let's get at least get started with uh, today's video uh, the, the first rule which I'm going to talk about is the first rule which I'm going to talk about is uh, the, the, the constant rule okay so every everyone should should have to should should be familiar with it it's a constant rule the first rule which i'm going to talk about is the constant the constant rule so what this rule tells if you have a function let's say f of x equals to 5 okay f of x equals to 5 and and this and the derivative will be 0 the derivative will be zero and the slope will be also zero because derivative is nothing but a slope and over here it, the it the the derivative the change that it is nothing is changing so derivative will be zero so the derivative the derivative of this function so basically we'll, we'll write y equals to five so derivative of f of x with respect to x so we write f of x is equals to zero Okay, for this function, the derivative for this function f of x is with respect to x is equal to zero. Nothing is changing. Okay, nothing is changing. Uh, just I want to introduce to you the notations. Just I want to introduce to, to, to the notations. We can write this in a short form as well. f prime x equals to zero. So this is this this, this note notation, this notation d uh, f of x uh, by dx d of f uh, dy by dx is equivalently equals to this Equi equivalently equals to this okay so it is just telling f prime x just a short form which we'll use interchangeably we will we'll, we'll use this uh, consistently both the format so that everything is crystal clear so we'll use both the things uh, very frequently at the same time okay so that it saves the time and I like this notation much better but for the definitions of the const of the rules we'll use this notation so that everything is clear okay so we'll use that these two notations very frequently over this video 
So let's take some more examples. So this was the one of one of the example. The another another example which I want to talk about is g of x equals to seven. G of x equals to seven. So what is the derivative? What is the derivative of this function g of x of this function g of x with respect to x, which is also equals to zero, or f g prime x is equals to zero. Okay. So this is the constant rule which we had a talk on. Okay, now let's go ahead. Now let's go ahead. Now let's go ahead. Let me just uh, finish this uh, this uh, stylus. Now let's go ahead. Let's talk about the functions. Like, let's take an example. Uh, you, you want to you want to uh, take out the derivative f of x equals to x to the power five. X to the power five. You can use this limit definition to to do this, but. But there is a very quick way to take out the derivative of this function. Okay, how much how much x is changing when uh, y is changing? Okay, so uh, you see the definition in, in my previous video because you will be getting more broader broader view what this derivative is trying to do. Okay, so uh, we 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 can use a rule called power rule. Okay, there, there is this is a very very extensively used in other rules as well. So please make sure that that you understand each and everything. So f of x equals to x to the power five. Okay, so so let's take an example. You want to take out the derivative of this function f of x of this function f of x with respect to x. So how you, how will you do it? So derivative of this function f of x with respect to x, which will be nothing but what you do. You take this power, you take this power, and bring in front of the bring as a coefficient of x. So you will take you will take this power, okay, bring that in the front of the x, okay, and reduce that power uh, by one, okay. So five minus one, so it will be nothing but five x to the power four, okay, five x to x to the power four. So there are two things which you have done. There are two things which you have done. The first thing which you have done is to brought the power, brought the power, brought the power to the to the just uh, as a coefficient of that x, okay, and reduced the 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 power at that x value at that x value by one by one, okay. Let's see some some more examples of it. So that it would more make sense at least to you, okay? So let's take an example that you have a function again. Let's use the function name of f of x, which is equals to x square, which is equals to x square, okay? So how you are going to take out the derivative of this function? The derivative of the function, derivative of the function. So how you will take out? So what we do? We take this two, bring in front of x. 2x, 2 minus 1, so it will be left with 2x, and this is 1, so we 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 can neglect it. But this is your actual derivative. This this is your derivative of your uh, x squared. Okay, so uh, this is the der derivative of this function f of x. Okay, if if you use this uh, limit definition, it would take around two to three minutes, or maybe five minutes for you at least to take out. To to reach till two x, but in two steps or two seconds or even one seconds we 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 completed it. Okay, so 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 that's why these uh, rules are very very important as well. Let's talk about one more example. You have another another example x to the power minus two x to the power minus two. So what will be the derivative of this function? So the derivative of the function, the derivative of this function, which is d dy by dx. Which is nothing but equals to you bring this minus two in front of it. You bring this minus two in front of it. Okay. Uh, now what do you do? Uh, x to the power two minus two minus one. So it will be nothing but minus two x minus three. And this is the derivative of this function. This is the derivative of this function. Okay. Bringing the power in the front of the x and then uh, reducing that power by one. Okay. So that is called the 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 power rule. Okay, the an another uh, rule which one which is which is re re related to power rule, which is nothing but the constant multiple rule. The constant 
the constant multiple multiple rule okay the constant multiple rule so let's take an example that you have f of x okay you have you have a function you have a function you have a function let's name it a y because i i have to write f of x times and times so let's use y equals to 4x to the power q okay the x sorry 4x cube and you wanted to take out the derivative you want to take out the derivative of y prime or dy by dx the derivative of the function with respect to x okay so what you do what you do you simply take this scalar okay that multiple 4 times the d uh, uh, maybe uh, the derivative of x cube okay derivative of x cube okay so what you will do dy by dx of uh, this x cube or wait for a second let me just make it more transparent at least so that it will be very very useful for you at least dy dx x cube okay so four times the derivative of x cube will be the derivative of x cube will be what you can use the power rule bring the three in front of it and reduce the power by two 3x squared 3x squared it will be nothing but 12x squared is the derivative is the derivative of the function y okay so dy by dx which will be nothing but 12x squared let's take an, another in let's take another example let's take an, another example y is equals to uh, 2x squared okay what you what you do you take out the derivative of this and after you take out derivative and then multiply by 2 okay so the derivative is equals to uh, 2 times the derivative x square will be what bring 2 in the front sub subtract which is 2x which is 4x is the derivative of this function okay so that's called the constant multiple rule are, are you getting what i'm trying to say yeah so uh, this is the two example let's see one last example so that it's, it may completely sense to you uh, 4x to the power 3 okay 4x to the power oh my, my god i've already taken it uh, 5x to the power maybe 4 okay so so how do you take out the derivative of this so what do you do 5 times the derivative of x4 will be bring 3 in the front sorry bring 4 in the front then subtract x subtract 4 minus 1 which is 3 which is 20x cube okay so this is the derivative of this function the derivative of the function will be 20x cube okay so this, this is this this is called the constant multiple rule another rule which are which are which which we are going to see which is called the sum rule okay which is which is again the useful rule uh, this is very fairly simple rule okay so let's see the sum rule so the sum rule states the sum rule states uh, let's say you have a function you have a function f of x which is equals to x to the power 6 plus x to the power 5 plus x to the power 3 plus x to the power 2 plus x plus 10 what is the derivative what is the derivative of this function or what is the derivative of this function what is the derivative of the function so the derivative of the function will be so what is the de derivative function so what do you do you take out the derivative of every terms okay take out the derivative of every terms okay so what is the derivative of x cube sorry x to the power 6 so we, we can use the power rule so what is the derivative with which will be bring 6 in the front okay 6x to the power 5 plus bring 5 up in the front 5x 4 plus being 3 in the front 3x square plus bring 2 in the front 2x 1 plus it will be what it will be 1 okay so because um, this is 1 minus 1 which will be what uh, 0 okay so x x to the power is 0 which will be equals to 1 so 1 and the, this is called this this was the 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 constant rule okay so so this the this this what is the de derivative of 10 which will be 0 because 
the dead the, the there is nothing is changing over there in that uh, for that function okay now this is your actual derivative so we can simplify it 5x to the power 4 plus 3x squared plus 2x and this is the derivative of this function okay so this is called the sum rule okay uh, the same with diff uh, uh, the difference rule works okay so instead of plus there will be minuses okay instead of plus there there will be minuses the one example which i want you to work on is uh, g of x which is equals to 2x to the power 5 plus 6x to the power 8 plus 10x to the power minus 1 okay try to work in it and take out the derivative if the function is differentiable take out the derivative of it okay maybe it, it, it is differentiable maybe make it plus okay so you want to take out the der derivative of this function g of x okay cool so uh, try try to do this just pause this video and try to do this if you can go ahead otherwise let me try to do this for you so <coughs> so um so let's do this so two times uh it, it is four uh x so, so sorry i just uh, mind it. it's it's my habit i don't know why five x to the power four plus six times uh eight x to the power seven plus uh may over here it would be 10 times one okay 10 times one and over here the left will be the left will be uh 10 x 4 plus 6 8 48 x 7 plus 10 okay so this is the derivative of this function okay so try to work on several examples the problem set which will be released through your lms Okay, you, you can see from there, uh, the, the, soon the, the LMS will be updated with the prior information, the certificates of the, the chapter number one and the chapter number two will be given to you. Okay, please see the LMS for the same and the email if you have enrolled in LMS because there are, there are only around 100 students which have enrolled. I want more of the people to enroll at least 400. Okay, another uh, now we have seen this the constant rule power rule multiple sum rule and difference rule now what i want you to do is to remember some uh, the how do we differentiate trig values and it would very tedious start for me to at least showcase so what what i want i have i have seen a lot of people to mem memorize this because this is very very handy okay so we are going to talk about differentiating differentiating just just don't memorize it you don't have to see how it came and how we derived it okay this is um, most of the people just rem rem remember this means who, who whoever is uh, good at this okay uh, just you can uh, what is the derivative of sine of x with respect to x which is nothing but cosine of x okay the derivative of sine of x with respect to x is cosine of x derivative of tangent of x with respect to x which is nothing but secant sec, sec square x okay uh, another is uh, de uh, derivative of sec x with respect to x which is nothing but sec x tan x okay another is derivative of cosine of x with respect to x minus sine of x minus sine of x another another is derivative of cotangent of x with respect to x which is nothing but equals to minus uh, cosecant uh, square x okay and the last one is derivative of cosecant of x with respect to derivative with respect to x which is nothing but minus the s the uh, cosecant x times the cotangent of x okay so the these are the six trig values which i want you to remember okay uh, because it will be very very useful when we talk when when we talk about further rules and very very handy as well okay you can always review means if you do the lot of practices you will it will be automatically memorized in your mind because i haven't seen the lecture notes for writing these even whatever whatever i'm teaching i'm not seeing my lecture notes because i practice a lot of it i remember everything 
okay so uh try to just to practice it out it will be very easy for you to at least understand it. these are six trig values which is very very handful in your calculus journey till now okay and this is taken from one of the most famous book on calculus our uh, calculus for dummies okay so now what i'm going to do what well, now what i'm going to do is uh, we have seen the some of the uh, how do it uh, some of the different uh, some of the de derivatives of the some of the trig values which is six trig values uh, there you can search for online if you want to see the steps how they have come up with and if you want me to do just feel free to comment it below maybe i can make a next video on it but again this is a totally optional one okay okay so now what i'm going to do is uh, talk about the last thing uh, differentiating exponential and logarithmic functions okay at least uh, this is very very important as well how do we differentiate a logarithmic function and how do you differentiate exp uh, how to differentiate exponential functions and logarithmic functions and then we'll see uh, in the next video we'll try to see uh, the product rule and the quotient rule and in the next uh, and, and and then in the next video we'll try to see in the next to next video we'll try to see the chain rule of differentiation we'll try to see how to use different different like products rule and chain rule how it is very very useful in that then we'll see the diff implicit differentiation we'll see the logarithmic differentiation which is very which is very very useful in in your calculus journey at least okay let's get started with uh, exponential functions okay exponential functions let's get started with that uh, exp differentiating exponential exponential uh, functions exponential functions let's start with it uh, so what is the derivative what is the derivative of e to the power x by sorry with respect to with respect to x which is itself okay so that the derivative of this e to the power x is itself the derivative is is its own function okay so e to, e to the power x okay if you want to see how it came i would just link some video some resources which i really really like to because if i again go ahead and teach you it will very very uh, boring uh, and also it is out to out of the bound so what i did suggest you to see the link in the video description okay so the the derivative of any exponential function means the e, e to the power x is equal to the itself okay but what if we have a function f of x which is equals to 5 e to the power x 5 e to the power x so what is the derivative what is the derivative of the function what is the derivative of this function what is the derivative of this function what is the de derivative of this function so the derivative of this function will be what you can do what you can do you can simply you can use the constant multiple rule over here okay you can use the constant multi multiple rule so here's how here's how i'm going to do it so dy d by dx of 5 ex so what i'm going to do is to take that 5 outside to it 5 times d by dx e to the power x okay so which will be nothing but 5 times uh which would be uh which will be nothing but five times and it the, the derivative of the e to the power x is itself e to the power x so that will be nothing but five e x and which yields the same thing okay so the derivative of any exponential function most of them which i have ever seen is itself a function okay so i hope that is pretty much everything is clear and here we use the constant uh constant multiple rule multiple rule okay uh, to 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 take that five outside the de derivative and then multiply with the derivative of e to the power x. Cool. So we have seen some exponential functions. You can try out six e x, ten e x, whatever you you want to try, try it, man. Okay. So we have seen exponential function. Now let's see. Uh, now let's see uh, an, another thing which is a uh, logarithmic function which is a game changer over here and uh, if you don't know what logarithms i link a video uh, i link a i link a simple uh, uh, nancy pie video which i really like her videos because uh, she 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 is an M M M I T graduate 
and uh, she teaches very well these things which she teaches very well and uh, now she stopped making the videos but uh, the, the his her, her her videos on cal calculus i know the it is it, it is bit a uh, half or incomplete but she she taught these things very well like logarithms some of the rules like chain rule i even uh, watched her video amazing videos by her so you can check out the channel i'll just give you a link in the description okay so uh, another another thing which i'm going to talk about is log logarithmic functions how do you differentiate the logarithmic functions okay so let's take an example you to differentiate the function uh, which is f of x which is nothing but natural logarithm of x okay so how do you take out the derivative of this function which is natural logarithm of x okay so which is nothing but log base ex isn't it log base ex so which will be nothing but um which which which, which will be nothing but 1 over x so the derivative of the natural logarithm of x which will be nothing but 1 over x Okay, uh, we will see when the when your base is not when when any, when your base is something because what we do we tend to mem memorize some of the different uh, derivatives. Okay, and then we'll solve for the things using that whatever we had memorized and it's not a big deal to remember four to five derivatives. Okay, so this is your derivative of Nash logarithm f divided uh, with respect to x, which will be nothing but one over x, one over x so if your if if the log base if the log base b is a number is a number other than e other than e if it is other than e you can tweak this derivative a little bit okay so let's take let's take let's say for 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 a sake of an example you have you have a function f of x make it f of x equals to uh, oh my god my hand is painting now so f of x which is nothing but equals to uh, what say uh, what say uh, log base 2x okay now uh, log base 2x and uh, how we do it so what we do what we do we simply if you take the derivative of this of this function which is nothing but 1 over x okay which is your natural logarithm by okay ln 2 natural logarithm of 2 okay so natural logarithm of 2 okay so when you do this 1 over x natural logarithm of 2 this is how you do it for if the log base is different let's take another let's take another example if you want to take out the derivative of a function which is log base 10x you, you you also write is log x which is by default that the, the base is 10 okay so we'll take out the derivative of this d by by dx of this function log base 10x which will be nothing but equals to first of all 1 over x you all agree 1 over 1 over x divided by natural logarithm of 10 and uh when you do this 1 over x ln 10 okay and that is the derivative of this function so this is how you take out the, the 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 derivative of the logarithmic functions and i hope this is pretty 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 much clear to you okay what if we try to cover this in this video our product rule and quotient rule just wait for a second i have to see uh the timing which you have covered we can do yeah uh, yeah let's cover the product rule let's cover the quotient rule okay so uh, now no no let's let's get on to the next video to cover these two the product rule and the question rule uh, it it would be better for us at least so that the video duration should be short okay so we have seen a lot in this video i'll be catching up in the next video uh, so now let's get started with a uh, product rule because in the previous video we had a talk on this uh, various basic differentiation rules which is far more very very easy to understand and uh, from this video the things will get started a little bit difficult but as a sum rule as the as the difference rule the same will be the product rule but the product rule is a bit important and quotient rule is also a bit important for solving the derivatives questions and as well as uh in a when we, and the the reason why i'm teaching these because this is uh, this product rule and quotient rule is important in your chain rule and implicit differentiation and chain rule is the, the far most important thing which you have to cover 
uh, for deep learning and then so 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 that's why i don't want to leave this product rule and the quotient rule otherwise i would have definitely skip but these two important rules which i can't forget the reason why you all know is uh these are my favorites uh because it is easy, easy to teach <laughs> okay so assume that's what i can say to you <laughs> that's what i can say to you assume that you have two functions oh my god my hand is painting again i don't know what happened to my hand and what do you think i should uh, take some break or what no let's not take break let's continue working on otherwise tomorrow i will die and uh, no one knows what will happen uh, so you have a two function f of x and g of x which are differentiable okay which are differentiable means it is we can take on the derivative of this we'll see when the function is differentiable and when the function is not in our later videos or you can search online for the same but say you have a function which is differentiable and and now if you take it now if the function are in this format so you have a h of x which is f of x times g of x okay so you have to, uh, like a product of kind of thing for example you have a function y x cube times sine of x sine of x so how 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 you are going to take out so this is your f of x this is your f of x and this is your g of x okay so how do you take out the derivative of this so derivative the derivative of these kind of function dy by dx of a function f of x g of x which will be nothing which will be equals to f of x times okay the derivative the derivative of g of x of g of x okay of g of x plus g of x times the derivative of f of x of f of x okay so so this this is how you do it first of all um you 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 leave the first thing and then you multiply with the derivative of the second function then you plus it and the you leave the second thing you multiply the first one okay it get you can write in this way because just to make sure that you will be not be confused i can write in different different ways i can write in different different ways first of all i can take this derivative and then this one okay so for example d by d by dx f of x okay uh times g of x leaving the second function alone plus then leaving the first function alone times taking over the second function changing the position which does not matter at all okay because you will see it uh, that i will do it <laughs> because it's my way of doing this everything interchangeably coming to the next notation we can write this out let's assume let's assume if let assume let assume u b f of x and uh, v i think v yeah let's assume v b g of x let's let's assume v b g of x so you can also do this but you you will just replace u b u uh, f f of x with u and g of x with v okay another notation which 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 i'm going to write it out which is very very uh, important f of x times g prime x the so this we can write the derivative in this way so this this can be written this way plus g of x times f prime x okay so this is the quotient rule uh, which we which is the definition of a quotient rule now let's see some of the examples so that is pretty 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 much clear to every 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 one of you so y equals to x cube times sin of x sin of x okay so what is dy by dx it will be nothing but so you take this x cube so so x cube times d by dx sin of x okay plus uh you leave the you to now you now what do you do you leave the second one as it is times you take out the derivative of the first function first okay first for f, f of x which is x the derivative of x cube which will be something like this 
coming to now now uh, x cube times the derivative of sine of x remember remember the derivative of sine of x which is what equals to cosine of x cosine of x plus now you leave the sine of x as it is times the derivative of x cube so you bring 3 in the front of it x square okay now it will pretty much everything is clear every, every, everything will be clear which will be anything but x cube cosine x plus sine of x ah okay so you can do something like this maybe a bit more cleaner 3x squared sine of x okay so this is the derivative this is the derivative of your function okay so let me just make it a little bit more transparent so that everyone is able to see this so this is a de derivative and this is the product rule from which we have achieved let's take on a, another simple example so that uh, it would be very 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 much clear to everyone uh, 6x squared plus 7x cube so what is the derivative of this function dy by dx so first of all you take out the first one and leave the second one so 6x squared prime okay so this prime i'm saying this is the derivative of this function 6x squared plus 7 okay let's let's multiply we have to multiply 7x cube plus now you take out the second second one prime uh times you leave out the first one and then when you when you do this uh you just simp six times 2x squared which is nothing but uh, 2x which is 12x uh, times 7x3 7x3 okay it's times 7x3 uh, now you simply uh, you can simplify further it and then you can do it and uh, now you take out the derivative derivative of this and then you can simplify it further on which is very very easy for you at least okay uh, try to do it then answer answer me in the comment box coming to the this this was a product rule now let's talk about an, another rule which is the quotient rule which is the quotient rule uh, where you may you may have already already been guessed your functions are being divided okay so let's do this let's 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 do this so let's say you have uh, you have to take out the derivative of a function like y equals to sine of x divided by x to the power 4 so how you how you're going to take up so we have something called as the uh, quotient rule the quotient uh, rule which which you can use to take out the derivative of these kind of function uh, d by dx uh, let me write the formal definition first because i do believe in formal definition so let's write the formal definition and then we'll come up with and then we'll solve, solve this example okay so what you will do uh, so the derivative of this the quotient rule states some, something like this g of x times f prime x f prime x minus you leave the now you leave the f of x now you simply multiply with uh, g prime x okay and then divide it with gx squared gx squared okay leave g of x multiply with the derivative of f of x minus f of x leave f of x and then multiply the derivative of g of x and then multiply with g of x square okay sorry divide by g of x square okay and this is the your uh, quotient rule we can write it in this way format as well g of x times the derivative of um, f of x okay minus f of x times dy by d uh, g x okay so you and then divided by g x square okay now you now you now using this you can take out the 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 the, 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 the derivative okay uh, of these kind of functions so now now let's do one of one of the example now let's do one of one of the example let's do one of one of the example uh which is d by dx okay you have to take out of sine of x over x to the power four okay so how you will do it how will you do it so uh first of all this is your f of x and this is your g of x which is first of all you take out f of x sine of x derivative of this 
times leave that to the power of 4 minus uh, sine of x leave that times take out the derivative of this okay divided by x to the power of 4 squared okay uh, now what do you do the co the, 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 the derivative that you all remember cosine of x times uh, x to the power of 4 minus sine of x so times the it is nothing but uh, 4x to the power 3 okay and divided by x to the power 8 you keep doing this now let's sim simplify it a bit a little, little bit x to the power 4 cosine of x minus uh, 4x cube sine of x divided by x to the power 8 okay now you just keep on doing this uh, keep take as a factor x to the power 3 okay and then x cosine of x for this minus uh, 4 sine of x okay and take that as x to the power 8 now you can simply use the expo exponents you can simply uh, use uh, you can simply minus it out okay you can simply minus it out so it will be left with x cosine of x minus 4 sine of x okay uh, when you x which will be which will be in x to the power 5 okay this is x and this is your final derivative after you after you simplify everything this is your derivative either you can go with this but i suggest the, some simplify as much as you can so at least it is doable just to, just you can put in the values of x and then you are done okay so we are we are done with this quotient rule as well as we are we are done with this periodic rule okay i hope that this is pre pretty much clear to everyone if you have any problem any doubt you can ask in our discord server uh, or you can see the student manual if you, if you don't know how to enroll in lms just to update uh, let me write in uh, enroll in lms so just I'll enroll enroll in lms everything is free your ta support is free everything is free so you can go there enroll there and i hope that you will take this opportunity to uh, learn deep learning from scratch and learn as as compre as uh, as comprehensive as you can okay so thanks for seeing this video i'll be catching up your next video talking about the chain rule and implicit differentiation till then bye bye have a great day Hey everyone, in this lecture, we are going to talk about chain rule of differentiation. We'll try to know about more about it and it is very, 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 very used in deep learning or whether we learn back propagation. We'll, we'll be, we'll be using this, uh, this rule, which is a chain rule to take out the derivative when we back propagate. Okay. So I ask you to pay a special attention at this rule. So basically, so this rule tells if you have if you want to take the derivative of a function okay so let's assume dy by dx it's nothing but the derivative the derivative derivative of inner function leaving the outside function and the derivative of the inside function okay so derivative of the outside function leaving the inside function time times the derivative of inside function but it but it i know it does not make any sense to you so let's talk about uh, uh wait wait for a second let me just delete it out so let's 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 take one example and then we'll formulate this definition then we'll formulate this definition of chain rule so the example states the example states let's say you have uh y equals to 3x plus 1 to the power 7 okay so this is your function this is your function which you want to take out the derivative so you can actually use a power rule and then you can use a lot of rules available but uh, it, it will be very uh, hectic for you to do it so we have a chain rule of differentiation which will help you to do this so what is the derivative of this function so dy by dx or dy by dx 
so using the chain rule what what we do first of all let's use the power rule okay so let's use the uh, let's use the power rule to just make that 7 into the front of 7 so what we are doing is taking out the derivative of the outside of function so the derivative of outside of a function okay we are we are not touching inner one this is our inner one so we are taking out the derivative of the outer one okay so outer one is some value okay 7 so what we will do is derivative of this will be we bring 7 into the front of it so whatever will be and this will be 6 7 minus 1 using the power rule okay so leaving the inside function as it is leaving the inside function as it is and then using the power rule we have bring the 7 over here and subtract 1 from there and this is the derivative of the outside function derivative derivative of outside function okay derivative of outside function okay and the out, outside function was uh, we have some value and just uh, to the power 7 okay that's the derivative now the times the derivative of inside function times the derivative of inside functions so what is the derivative of over here 3x the derivative of 3x will be what will be 3 plus we use we will use a sum rule and derivative of constant is simply zero so that will be three okay so the derivative will be uh, seven times three twenty one three x plus one to the power six and this is the derivative of your function which is this three x plus one to the power seven again i'm re recapitulating so that it would make more sense to you okay uh, let's take an example another example let's say you have g of x which is nothing but uh, let's say 2x plus maybe 4 okay and we are squaring this up we are squaring this up so uh, so now let's try to solve it so first of all what we do, what we will do we'll take out the derivative of the outside of function the derivative of outside of function which will be you bring 2 in the front of it 2 leave this as it is subtract 1 from there that will be 1 that's fair enough times we have taken our derivative now will times 2x plus 4 constant this is this is a constant so we this is a 0 the derivative of this will be 0 and this will be 2 okay times 2 so it will be 4 2x plus 4 is the derivative of this function g of x okay so this is what the chain rule says now let's take another let, now let's take another example so that it could make more and more sense to you otherwise it would be very uh, hectic for you at least so let me take let me just remove it out let me take another example uh, so another another example is uh, let's say you have f of x okay which is equals to sine 3 okay uh, 5x squared minus 4x so what is the derivative of this function so the derivative of this function we can write in this way so the derivative of the function will be sine 5x squared minus 4x so we, we can write in this way as well okay so we can write in this way okay because you all know that trigonometry is not just on this uh, so it will be 3 over here now we can go ahead and taking out the outer derivative we can take out we, we can go ahead and take out the uh, out uh, outside of this function so outside of the function will be so outside of a function will be uh, this will be 3 we bring 3 in the front of it we bring 3 in the front of it sine f of x square minus 4x the so same inside we leave inside one okay subtract 3 from 2 as a power rule states times the derivative of inside of a function derivative of inside inside of a function so the derivative of f of inside of a function sine 5x square minus 4x okay take out the derivative of inside of a function okay so i hope that this is pretty much clear as of now now you can go ahead and take out the derivative of this inside of a function and you will be good to go okay and you will be good to go you just take out the derivative and this is your homework 
you all know how to take out so just try to take out and please give me in the comment box okay now another example you can just take out the deri at that derivative as sine um, is cosine you can actually use the product rule which you all know so go ahead and try it out coming to coming to the next example is let's say you have a let's say you have a, let's let me take another example you have a k of x or g of x let's say you have a function g of x where you have a function sine x square minus 3x so what you will do first for first thing is take out the derivative of outside of a function so the outside of function so the that is nothing but there is a sign of something okay so you when 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 we take out the derivative outside of function so what is the de derivative of a sign we have studied the cosine okay and leaving the inside as it is times the derivative of inside of a function okay so the de x square the derivative of x square is 2x minus 3 okay so the derivative so the derivative will be what the derivative will be cosine of x square minus 3x times 2x minus 3 is the derivative uh, g of uh, derivative of a function g of x okay so i hope the chain rule is giving you some of the definition or some of the uh, some of the way to think about it how this and this works as you as you see these are composite functions okay so so that's why the chain, this chain rule works you can see online why this chain rule chain rule works because it is important to know about that another example which i want to put in front of you is here i i want you to work uh, in this in this example you have h of x which is equals to x squared plus 5x 5x minus 6 to the power 9 so what do you do you bring 9 into so first of all you take out the derivative outer of a function that will be 8 x squared plus 5x minus 6 to the power uh sorry this is 9 this is 8 okay uh, now times the derivative of inside of a function so the derivative of inside of a function with 2x plus 5 okay so that is 2x and 5 and this constant is 0 okay so 9 x squared plus 5x minus 6 to the power 8 and 2x plus 5 is the derivative of h of x okay so now i hope that is pretty much clear so let's write the formal definition let's write the formal definition let's write the formal definition of chain rule so let's say you have a function if you have a function okay which is f g of x which is just like a composite function okay and it is a com 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 compos composite function then then the derivative of y of, of a function will be uh, the derivative of will will be first of all we take out the derivative out outer side okay okay i'm denoting this is f prime times the derivative times the derivative of the inside of a function g prime x okay so we are taking out the derivative of outside of a function leaving the inside as it is multiplied by the derivative of inside of a function okay so over here this is a derivative derivative of outside leaving the inside and this is the derivative of inside of a function okay inside of a function so we can we can we, we can write down different notation so let's let's write it out in different notation so the different notation will be let's say if if uh, y is equals to the f of u okay and u is equals to g of x so basically it is just saying f of, of g of x okay so u is equals to this now we can write that out into the other formal notation which you mostly see uh, which is not nothing but just like, wait 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 for a second let me just drag it over here the derivative of function this dy by dx will be dy by du okay so so first of all take taking out the, the derivative of a function okay times du by dx okay so first of all taking out the 
outsider then taking out the insider okay so this is what the formal definition states so i hope that it, that this is pretty pretty much clear with a lot of examples which you did now coming to the uh, chain rule can be used with different different rules okay chain rule with product rule quotient rule so that's a ch chain rule makes it easy for you, for you, for you, for you to work on so let's let's go let's go ahead okay let's go ahead and and do one uh, example which is example uh, 4x squared okay sine of x cube so in this example we'll make use of product rule product rule and chain rule to take out the derivative to chain rule take out the derivative so just have to remind about the product rule if you have to take out the derivative of the two functions which is being multiplied this one and this one okay when when, when two functions being multiplied okay so which is f of x f of x times g of x so that will be the derivative will be first of all we take we we leave the first function as it is times the derivative of the second function which is g of x plus the derivative of the first function the derivative of the first function times the leaving the second function as it is so this is the product rule which we have studied now coming to this what if we let's let's frame this function as a f of x now we want to take out the derivative of it so the derivative of it will be 5 prime x which will be nothing but uh, first of all we'll uh, by by going we can we can have this as a first and we can have this as a second so it does not it matter order does not matter first of all let's take out the derivative of the f of x so let's assume that this is of g of x and this is your f of x okay so let's 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 take out the 4x squared okay so the derivative uh, 4x squared okay take out times leaving the leaving the other function as it is leaving the other function as it is okay plus taking on the derivative taking on the derivative so multiplying f of x first of all 4x squared times uh, the derivative sine of x cube okay derivative of the second second function okay uh, second function now we now let's let's take out the derivative so after we take out the derivative which will be nothing but 8x sin x cube so when we multiply so that derivative will be 8x and when we multiply with this so 8x sin x cube plus now over here which which, which will get as uh, the derivative of sine of something is cosine of something but before that over here which you're seeing there is some chance of chain rule there is a some chance of chain rule which in this case which you're seeing we'll use the chain rule in this case because we have out outer function and we have an inner function and we are a bit confused because we are not seeing any power rule we, we, we can't do easily with the power rule on anything okay so we we'll leave 4x square, square times what is the derivative of outside of function so we have a sign of something we have a sign of something so this is outside of function so what is the der derivative of outside of function which will be cosine leaving the inside of function times the ins the the derivative of inside function the x cube is 3x okay and we and using the chain rule we got the derivative now we are good to go now the derivative which which with of this function 8x let me just use a different color so which will be 8x sine x cube okay plus 12x to the power 4 cosine of x when you simplify it you will be getting this x to the power 3 okay and this is your derivative of a function so use product rule and then in one of one of the functions or one of the part we use the chain rule to differentiate nice so we are we are we are good to go with a chain rule of different dif differentiation and i hope that you uh, that you got what to know about it much better and uh, i hope you will be uh, remembering these stuffs now come let's talk about logarithmic differentiation the last thing which i'm talk about is logarithmic differentiation using logarithms you will be easily able to take out the 
to differentiate okay and it's, and these are used to quickly take out the derivatives okay so the last thing which we we'll talk about is logarithmic 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 different Differentiation. Okay, so we want to take out the logarithmic differentiation. Now coming to this, you have a function f of x, which will be equals to. Uh, let's this this is an ex, this is the question we have to take out. So x cube minus five, three x to the power four plus ten, four x squared minus one, two x to the power five minus five x squared. Minus ten. We want to take out the derivative of this function. And you may be thinking, here you show my God, what the hell this is? And you will be also in, oh, uh, like, oh my God, how how I'm going to approach this problem? So let me tell you, this is very very easy problem. But uh, we will use something called the logarithms to solve this. So what we are going to do now is to take out the logarithm. We'll just take out the logarithm on both the side. Okay, so take out the log logarithm logarithm of f of x equals to logarithm. Just the same thing. Okay, so let me just um, snap it out. How I'm gonna do? Snap it out. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Let me just do it for me at least, so that I could not add to the current page. Over here. Okay, so you take out the logarithm so you take out the logarithm of both sides so oh my god i think it's and i have done wrong yeah so now you take out the logarithm of both the side now coming to this now coming to this uh, now what do you do you know the property of a logarithm if, if you have a lot of fun um, in this you, you you know all the property of logarithm uh, which will be logarithm of x cube uh, to the individual uh, terms inside it and to individual uh, these things okay so times uh, times logarithm 3x to the power 4 plus 10 times logarithm 4x squared minus 1 times logarithm 2x 5 minus 5x minus 10 okay now now, when we, uh, when you you all know the when how when we take out the uh, the the when we take out the derivative of a logarithm, and you all have studied because I've already talked about this. It it is nothing but when when you take out it is it will be nothing but uh, one by f of x times f prime x. Okay, so we we can write it out f prime x over f of x at this side and all the, and in this side what do you do you simply 1 over 1 over x to the power 3 minus 5 times times the derivative x to the x3 minus 5 derivative so it will be nothing but 3x squared 3x squared by x3 minus 5 x3 minus 5 okay now times do the same thing with this when then we'll get 12 x cube 12 x cube by 3 x 4 3, 3 x to the power 4 plus 10 times uh, 8 x so it will be 8 x by 4 x squared minus 1 so you can recheck how how we got it it's simply 1 over 4x square minus 1 times 4x square minus 1 derivative. So, it, it, that will be 8x and this is 0. So, that is 8x by. So, times uh, the last one which will be 10x to the power 4 minus 10x and we can write it out below things 2x to the power 5 minus 5 plus uh, sorry minus 10. Okay. So this is what you got when you take out the when you just take out the de derivative of the Nash logarithm. Okay. Uh, basically, uh, you when you when you when you, when you, when you take out the derivative of a Nash logarithm, you will do something like this. Okay. And it should be plus when you when you go ahead 
uh, when you take out the Nash logarithm of uh, of the this this is a property, you it will be becoming plus. Okay, it will becoming plus. Now then you differentiate it and then you get it. Now at last, now at last, let me just go ahead or uh, let me just keep working on it. Now you will get f prime x, which is equals to the step number four, which is equals to what you will do. What you will do, uh, you will use something called as uh, you will we'll simply multiply with the logarithm and the actual thing. This one, okay, and this one, whatever the differentiate we got it. Okay, so that will be nothing but first of all we write whatever we got after taking with the diff der der derivative of our logarithm six. This one plus twelve x cube divided by three x to the power four plus ten plus eight x by fourteen x squared minus one plus ten x to the power four minus ten x. Divided by two x to the power five minus five x squared minus ten times big times the question x x to the power three minus five three x to the power four plus ten four x squared minus one two x to the power five minus f x squared minus ten and this is the your derivative of your large functions function which you saw over here and you may think here yeah, use this is this this is also a long process i agree this is a long process but if you go and solve with other process i assure you you will be getting you can use product rule to solve it but it will be very this is the very easy to solve this particular problem by logarithmic differentiation so we talked about chain rule and the most important thing was chain rule if you, if you haven't understood the logarithmic you can safely ignore this Okay, so I hope that you got the problem and I'll be catching up in the next video with the introduction to integration and then we'll start off with probability and statistics. Thanks for watching this video. I'll be catching up in the next video. Till then, bye-bye. Hey everyone, from this lecture, we are going to start off with deep learning. We'll talk about, we'll start off our journey with actual deep learning, which you all are uh, waiting from a lots of time. And I just want to make a disclaimer is I assume you that you have already covered the previous videos and some videos of probability uh, have, which is not yet uploaded, which will be uploaded in coming days. But I assure that whatever the videos is uploaded like mathematical prerequisite, please be sure that you complete those lectures first. You can watch, watch that in 2x lectures because all the things which you'll study, it will heavily depend on the previous one. Okay, so please make sure that you have a better understanding of mathematical intuitions, which I already taught. If you faced any problem, just join our Discord server. We'll get, or maybe we can get on a live with some TAs. You can just discuss that and make your doubt clear. And you can simply ask at our Discord server, which will be in the description box. Uh, the link will be in the description box. Okay, so uh, what is deep learning? So we'll try to answer in this lecture. Um, so first of all, I'll try to answer what is machine learning. Machine learning is an artificial intelligence domain where we extract patterns from the data and analyze the data and make intelligent predictions on the new data according to the pattern which we has already learned or our machine has already learned. Okay, so we have a function f that that takes some input values and that map that input values to an output variable y. Okay, so talking about in the context of supervised learning, so basically, so basically, you have a function f that that takes the input value x and that maps the, the input value to y. So you want to construct a function. So what? The, so you learn a function f that that ex, that extract patterns from the data, that extract patterns from the data, or learn learn from the data and analyze the data and make intelligent predictions. So we can give x to this input value. It will give us y variable. For 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 getting the desired y variable, we do need a very good function which actually does that specific job. So exactly what machine learning tries to do is to make a function f that maps the input value x to the output value y. If you haven't already familiar with machine learning, I'll ask you to take an introduction video or introduction intro, intro, introductory course of machine learning. Maybe you can go to ML01 or you can go to some other machine learning course, but I highly suggest 
MLO1 is the best course for you to consider at this point. Cool. So, um, so you, you got to know about the definition, but there are different machine learning algorithms. So you may ask that how you, how we are going to extract patterns from the data and how we analyze the data. So that is the first question, which may come in your mind, how we extract the patterns from the data and how we make intelligent predictions or how we do, how do we analyze the data? Okay. So, so for making intelligent predictions, first of all, you need to extract patterns from the data. So how are you gonna, gonna to extract patterns from the data, which we'll see uh, in a review of machine learning in the course, but there are a different set of algorithms which will help you to extract patterns from the data or analyze the data. Some of the examples are logistic regression, logistic regression, logistic regression. We have linear regression. We have linear regression and I'm preparing, I think a uh, four to five hours of lecture four to five hours of lecture on linear regression is the mainly video title as multivariate analysis. You can go on new era YouTube channel. You can go on new era YouTube channel to maybe it will be uploaded till the end. So maybe you can just go there. You will be seeing a title multivariate and regression analysis. I have taught linear regression in great detail there. Cool. So, uh, so back to our topic. So there are different set of algorithms, which will help you to extract patterns from the data. Say for example, logistic regression and logistic regression is a classification algorithm. Classification algorithm we can use for classification tasks, classification tasks and linear regression is a regression is a regression algorithm, which will help you to perform regression tasks. And many people just think about linear regression is very simple algorithm. Uh, it does not perform well, but, but, but you, but just go in statistics uh, term and then you will see the power of linear regression. Mainly people forget to write, to use linear regression in a right way. So you can watch the multivariate regression analysis, which will be uploaded soon. So, um, nine base, which is another yet powerful classification learning algorithm, which can be used to predict whether an email is a spam or ham. So using naive base, you can construct a function f that takes an email that takes an email and classify that as a spam or non spam or non spam. And let's denote spam with zero and let's denote non spam with one. Okay, so you have to learn a function f that takes the input value x and that maps either zero and one or or in other words we can say why be the member of zero and one okay so there is nine base cool so the performance of these simple algorithms heavily depends on the representation of the data which you have okay you should have a good data to support your machine learning algorithm to form pope to perform well if you have a bad data your machine learning algorithm will not perform well but this ex this extract or this 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 paragraph is taken from a book written by Deep Learning uh, by Ian Goodfellow. Uh, I I only know the one 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 author name and others are I think uh, um, I don't, I don't know exact name but but Yoshua Bengio. So so you can just go there and see the book by Ian Goodfellow. So this is an extract from that book and what is it indicates the performance of these simple algorithms depends heavily on the representation of the data which you have the representation of the data which you have or which you're given say for an example you're using linear regression to predict the house prices okay so so basically what exactly is trying to tell uh, you are you're using linear regression um, to predict the house of the prices so on time of prediction say uh, so you train an algorithm you train an algorithm which takes size and as an input okay and uh, and number of a fans of a house number of a fans of a house and then using these two features it predict your y variable y variable okay so this is how you train a function f that takes size and number of fans and then give you the price of the house so basically it is saying that you are using linear regression to predict the house prices so now you trained it using these two features now when the time of prediction came user have to provide only size and the number of a fans okay so in let's take a bedroom rather rather than fans so number of a bedrooms to make predictions okay but when you give number of a fans 
and then ask your model to predict the price your model will not be able to predict do you do you do you know the reason why it's very simple because you have trained your model on the size on two feature on based on two features and the number of a bedrooms and then you getting price what if if you give only the fans you'll be not able to predict it isn't it so that's the major problem of representation that 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 these performance of these machine learning algorithms depends heavily on the representation of the data which you have given and these are features so size is also a feature number of fans is also a feature number of bedrooms is also a feature so i hope that this is clear we'll we'll come to that we'll we are coming to definition of uh, uh, what uh, machine learning sorry deep learning cool so the problem of feature representation so as i have taken one example to start the to start with a problem of feature representation or feature uh, 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 learning so we'll we'll talk about that ai tasks can be solved if we have right set of features and make a mapping from feature to desired output so all the ai tasks which is available today okay so say 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 for an example that you wanted to predict the price of the house okay you want to predict the price of the house you want to predict the price of the house so 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 for for predicting this you should have the right set of features for this to get to particular uh, answer so you want to learn a function f okay that correctly maps from some feature x1 x2 all the way around to the xn given these n features it predicts a y variable and these n features should be right set of features should be right set of features if you have bad set of features where our ai model will not able to perform very well okay so we do want the right set of features so that uh, we can train our model on these rights of features and then get the desired output one of the example which i have to represent to the real world example say for example that you are learning some science concept where you have feature of the particular thing so uh, say for an example i'll take a simple example so that uh, it would be very easy um let's take a uh, example in in real world concept um car okay so a car and what are the features of it what are, what are what are the features of it so the features of it can be it should have four wheels it should have four wheels um it should be not too much big it didn't it uh, we have uh, we have steering we have a steering we have seat belts we have seat belts so these are some of the features we used to identify cars okay and they 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 come in different different color so there are a set of features we need a right set of features to uh, to understand that is a car and how do we learn it uh, how do we learn it say for an example that a uh, these uh, seats and then four wheels steering these are the right set of features that we that we use to identify whether that's a car or not okay so that's how a baby learns it identifies some set of features okay uh, my 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 father is telling that okay it is a steering so based on that i will identify okay that's a car because i have identified some of the features of that uh, because i have identified some of the features of that uh one of one of the main main thing which i want to highlight is identifying the the brand of a car okay brand of a car Id identifying the brand of car that's that's a very very that's that that i face in real world is for every car we have identified feature okay say if, uh, when i when i when i when i see a car i'll take a look at logo of that in in front of the car so in front of that there is a logo and if it is logo in something like this then it's audi okay then it's audi car then it's audi car because of this logo i'm able to identify what's the because of this feature mainly the logo we let's this because of this feature i'm able to identify okay that's audi car so this is the right or unique set of feature that this car have so so for example so when you can train your model okay so you need right set of features okay um, so so your model is able to identify that i hope that this this give you pretty much lot of sense to you at least okay 
Say for example, you want to detect the cat in, in an image. So you want to build a model that given an image I that will detect whether that is a cat or non-cat. Okay, so a cat can have can have different set of features. So you can hand design the right sort of features by yourself. Like you can design, you can just the, the values are in pixel format, the values are, are in pixel format. Okay, the, the picture. So you can take the only the pixel which are of ears. You can take only the pixel which are of ears. So you can design the right sort of features like ears, nose, and which are very consuming, time consuming task because for because you need to be very good at the 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 at the background of that domain or 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 or, or you should have a, a good domain background for identifying the right sort of features because in this example it's very easy a uh, cat in image but what if uh, in real world you don't have a problem like this you do have a problem like this but but like wave detection um, like in weather you you should have a great background inside that so you should right you should design right sort of features and that will be very time consuming task and getting the right set of features for your model is very very challenging in today's era for many tasks are around us okay say for example uh, um, like a uh, wave detection or or whatever where um, that we should we, we don't know uh, what are the right set of features we, we think okay every 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 feature is a right right set of feature but getting the right set of features in today's era for many tasks is also very challenging okay so so what so so to in using machine learning using machine learning what we are able to do what we are able to do we are hand designing the right set of features we are hand designing the right set of features so we get an input we get an input we get an input and then we hand design right set of features so this is a car so we we taken out the pixel of maybe wheels for that image and then we we taken our right sort of features like wheels, steering, logo. Okay, so there are some sort of features we hand designed by ourselves by programming and whatever. And then we train a machine learning algorithm on these pixels or whatever on this whatever our features which we've extracted. Let's x1, x2, all the way around to the xn. Okay, we train a, a model f. Let's let's put in a giant x. Okay, and then we give this set x. And then we train our F, maybe it can be uh, uh, classification algorithms like logic regression. It takes the value of X and then classify that either a car or a not car. Okay, so in machine learning, what you're doing is you're hand designing the right set of features by yourself. Because when you see your machine learning data, which you have, you're given the in several input values, several input values, one, two, three, four five okay and you are given the the target label and these these features are hand designed these features are hand designed okay so this is how uh, this is what today's uh, today's machine learning is able to do is it also require feature extraction it also required to extract features from the data by human 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 will do it human will design right sort of features so this is what uh, the problem which we have is that is hand designing the right sort of features which are very challenging and is very time consuming task for designing the right right sort of features so so what is the solution to the pro problem the one solution to this problem is making machine learning not only learn the mapping from features to target labels also learn the representation to y okay so basically we are asking our computers to not only learn this classification stuff not only make a model given the set of features given the set of features also learn features by itself okay so given a car given a car learn feature extra extract feature automatically and make a model on the feature which you extracted okay so say for example uh, in machine learning you are hand designing set of features and then you're giving giving to the model whoever the right set of features is but in deep learning what you what what exactly you were doing is given a car an image to your to you to your system what it does first of all it extract features that's called feature extraction or feature learning or representation learning it extract right set of features 
and extract the right set of features, let's say wheels, let's say anything, okay? And based on extracted features, it builds a classification model or whatever learning algorithm and then is able to classify. So, so there's a huge amount of time which is preserved and this is actually performed very well in today's era with state-of-the-art models which are doing very perfectly. So what I, again I'm going to repeat that one solution is to not only learn mapping from X to Y but also learn X's as well also learn the features of it as well okay of course you're going to going to give you give the input which is the car but 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 in but uh, for if we have to ad identify that problem that can be solved using deep learning or that problem that that can be solved using machine learning you have to identify that okay the model takes the raw data as an input which is the image and perform feature extraction by learning the feature representation so it extra automatically extract the features and learn the parameters to perform the necessary task or to build a model f that uh, maps from x features the learned features to output but one thing which you will ask question that how do we go on performing feature extraction so how it performs and what is what these uh, three three things means don't worry about it just just i will will briefly talk about it in this future detail don't worry about anything just understand what exactly deep learning trying to solve okay so i think it's very 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 much clear i just want to move forward cool so what is the definition of machine learning so this is a definition by the book again i'm saying this is by ian goodfellow yoshua benjue book and deep learning methods aim at learning feature hierarchies with features from higher level of features formed by composition of lower level features and automatically learning features at multiple levels of extraction allowing a system to learn complex function mappings from the input to the output directly from the data without depending completely on human crafted features and learning deep architectures for AI. And that, and, and I personally know that you are very confused with this statement. So let's get ahead and make you understand that what the exactly the definition trying to tell. Maybe you know about hierarchies, okay? The, the hierarchy means like we have this hierarchy of a feature. So you have different, different features, different, different levels. So basically, this is the, this is, in this level, you are extracting some level of features some level of features you are extracting so that is visible layer that is the input pixel so you give this pixel this pixel this pixel this pixel this pixel so these are input level pixels which is given to your model which is as a raw in raw raw input raw raw input and then the then it is passed don't worry about what is this what is this what this arrow just assume whatever just only understand what exactly i'm telling first the input which we give our which we give to our model or whatever algorithm is the pixel value is the pixel value is the pixel value okay um is the pixel value which which we given in which is visible to us now now the we we give to the second level we give to the second layer which you usually call as a hidden layer but don't worry about it just just don't just just don't worry worry about it then we give the next level which extract some patterns some feature like this some feature like this okay then we go then then we give to the next feature whatever the information contained whatever the information is give, given to the next feature and then we learn some set of features again then we extract extract from this image some set of features then again next next level we extract some set of features we extract some set of features and then based on these learned features you're getting whether that person is a car with a person or animal okay uh, so basically what exactly you are doing is extracting features till this level you're extracting features and at last you are making a model here and then making prediction whether better that is a car person or animal don't worry about it what exactly um, what what exactly is trying to what what exactly this arrow represent and how how are we making classification model just don't worry worry about that the only thing to worry about that you are understanding the right thing here the right thing is that you are learning features at different different levels and you are learning feature hierarchies 
which features from higher levels of the hierarchy so here you have we have some sort of features learned and then the second and the third so you have multiple levels where you are learning different different features and because of this you are able to make complex functions we'll talk complex mapping from the pixels to the car person or animal okay you're here no human loop is needed it is automatically creating it is automatically extracting his uh, her uh, glasses or whatever it is auto automatically no involvement no human crafted features at level one it extracted some set of features at level two extracted some some set of features at level one it extract edges okay mainly this edges edges level two extracted corners mainly this one and contours level 3 it extracted object parts like this okay level level, level 3 so it is learning complex features now your model is able to make complex function com complex function f that takes the input image and then then powerfully making or making a very good prediction comparable to human uh, score or accuracy so I hope that th that this is very clear on the definition of deep learning and and general idea what the word exactly deep learning trying to solve is learning feature hierarchies okay with features feature hierarchy from higher levels of the hierarchy formed by the composition of lower level of features so you're not involving any any human loop just you're learning feature learning exactly what the deep learning is trying to solve cool so uh, we'll, 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 we'll again precisely define, uh, you will learn when, when you will learn neural networks, then you will understand what exactly deep learning is. But I hope so that that, that, that give you a better sense over here. Coming to the different applications, there are thousands of applications which can be solved, which are, which are in production today, which are using deep learning to solve the real world problem. The first one is, um, of classification problem given an image classify that whether that image is a cat or a non-cat so how does it helpful and maybe and when you go to the company you just show your face and that allows gate opens and then you go inside that's face recognition where you identifies whether you are that person or not okay uh, classification plus localization to localize that where that object is for a for example it can be used in cell driving car which you're seeing in front of you it is, it is able to localize the stuff uh, so that it would make you their own decision to where to go further and then we have art generation using from text so given a, a beautiful woman it will generate the image of beautiful woman it can be possible I'll show you one demo today and then we have chatbots uh, 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 chatbots like AI coder, uh, AI QA system using GPT 3, and then uh, lots of things. Uh, search recommendation system like Google is using, San Francisco, whatever is there. Um, so, I think these are some of the examples. Another examples are speech recognition tasks. You can just make use of Alexa, how are you? And then it will give you the answer. Music generation using deep learning. You can actually generate the music using deep learning. And then brain tumor detection, it is used also used in medical industry. So these are some sort of applications which I highlighted for you at least to get to know much um, in, in, in much more detail. So I hope that this is very clear now. And now what I'm going to do now is to show you some of the cool application which I built as a project by myself. So I hope that that will give you more sense to you. So I'm just going to show it to you. Um, the first one which I want to show it to you is the chatbot which we had developed at Anton so let me just uh, let, me, let me just make it a little bit uh, wait for a second I'll just make it 1080p so that it will be more precise for you to at least see that so you can see over here uh, and chat which is which is able a uh, discord chatbot which is able to chat with me uh, like uh, which you can see no problem let's talk about something else and then I seriously haven't heard about this song. We did it, and this is an chat, which you can of course opt for it. You can just make you make that in your own Discord server if you have. Just email us. We'll, we'll, uh, my company has launched this product, which is an chat, which uses GPT-3. So this is one of one of the example of deep learning. The another example is I want to show you another another example. We have an coder, which actually given program for taking out the factorial. It gives a Python program for that which you're seeing in front of you. 
that it, it, it is able to solve any kind of programming question which you are presenting in front of your screen. And I, I hope this is Ancodo, which is again, you, know, you can email us to get the access of it. Now coming to the next part is an Q&A. Q&A is a system, you, which you can see over here that we have an Q&A. You can just ask what is a circle and whatever it is able to answer your question. And that is even answering uh, in machine learning tasks. And I hope that this, this is what the uh, Q&A system we have developed and it is available for uh, you, which you can email at Anton will be happily, will be happily giving you in your own Discord server to make your uh, server product productive. Coming to the next project is art generation using deep learning, which is generated under serial networks, which we will do in this course uh, using GANs and which you can see that how this is generating the image and this is its image which is generated by and this is on my own YouTube channel this is a uh, image which is generated by uh, peoples okay coming to this we have another another art which is generated which you can see over here uh, using text to image and I really hope that it made a lot of sense to you you can just go at my YouTube channel and uh, just sub sub subscribe this YouTube channel if you want and then uh, go to a playlist go to MLO2 and also what I, what I want to highlight is uh, you can just uh, have you can just enroll in LMS you can just go there and enroll in L LMS by going to this doc and uh, then going to uh, reading all the course and then assignments and a lot of lots of stuff you can go there and uh, enroll in your LMS which which I've written over there you can enroll in your neo LMS okay so you have I so I hope that this is pretty much clear and I also hope that uh, you have enjoyed this video if you haven't uh, please leave a comment that how I can improve this uh, these lectures uh, otherwise uh, I hope that this video give, give, give given a lot of intuition of behind deep learning. I'll be catching up in the next video. Till then, bye-bye. Have a great day. Hey everyone, welcome to this lecture. We'll be finally starting off with introduction to neural networks. Uh, so let's get started with this lecture. Um, so uh, first of all, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about biological neural network as it is very important uh, that how our neurons in our brain work. So I'll try to relate the biological neural network with our uh, neural network. Specifically, we'll talk about perceptron. So in, in this particular lecture, here's the outline of this lecture. We'll start off with the biological neural network. We'll, we'll, we'll get into the, 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 that how we can relate this to uh, something called as perceptron. And then we'll go ahead, talk about different things, kind of um, activation functions and whole outline can be found on a course website as we had detailed uh, sections and subsections provided there. Cool. So uh, let's start with the biological neural network. So here in front of you are seeing is a neuron in a human brain. So basically human nervous system contains, which is something called as cells and you know cells are the basic unit of a life you have already studied in class nine so 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 human now no, nervous system contains cells called neurons and the neurons are connected to one another with the use of exons and the dendrites and the connecting regions between exons and dendrites are referred as synapses so what exactly it is telling that you have a several neurons let's assume this as a specific neuron so you have a neuron and this is connected with another neuron another neuron okay with the help of exon and dendrites and dendrites and these are the the reasons which connects the exons and the dendrites are called synapses but you may be thinking hey uh, you are not in biology class then why why you all are teaching this so i'll try to relate this with the particular stuff like this the the, the keywords the dendrites are the input terminal which takes the some input from other neurons say, say for an example you have a neuron over here so this is your particular neuron and this gives some input to the another neuron so they are connected to each other so this is a neuron which gives which which 
which gives an output which is connected to another neuron and this the output is taken the output of another neuron for for for, for this particular neuron it it act as a input input terminal where it takes the output of the previous neuron okay and so that's why we have a dendrite which is nothing called the input terminal okay the next thing is the exon which is the output wire which is the output wire so exon terminal is an output wire so this so whatever it outputs the neurons whatever it outputs so what a dendrite receive from the neuro uh, dendrites is called the input terminal and whatever it is outputted is from the exon terminal because it's the it's the exon which is the output wire and which output something and exon terminal are the output terminals which output something let's say let's say output something let's say this and this is again transferred and taken input from the, using the dendrite so again i'll recapitulate this stuff as dendrites are the input terminals the exon is the output wire and the exon terminals are the output terminals and this is a particular structure of a neuron this is a particular structure of a neuron so i hope that this 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 gives you a better sense of uh, moment cool so we will we'll not um, only talk about this biological neuron we'll go ahead and talk about uh, we'll try to relate this with artificial neural networks okay so so let's take an example uh, you have a neuron which gets an input say for example you are getting x1 you are getting x2 x3 x4 which is an input received in dendrites so you have a dendrite which is a dendrite terminal which is the input terminal so let's say you get four um, inputs don't see this diagram as of now just only see this diagram and listen to what i'm saying so the information which dendrite receives is called x1 x2 x3 x4 okay so uh, for, for 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 this example you have x1 x2 x3 x4 which are the input which is received in dendrites and the information the information x1 x2 x3 and x4 are weighted by some weights and uh, w1 w2 w3 and w4 and it determines the effect of your input so uh, say for example x1 how much this effect of an input in this neuron okay so we will take a specific example say say for an example you saw something okay so you you have a human eye so I'll just and you saw something like uh, like a dog like a dog okay so you saw different different thing like its eyes its eyes let's let's assume this eyes is x1 its ears x2 its tail x3 and its legs x4 so all these in your mind all these contain some weights let's say example that you saw you that you are quite familiar with the mouth or the eyes of the dog to be similar so let's take a w1 x1 okay so this input how much weight it contains how much effect to uh, so big because you want to identify that dog so that's why you want to identify how your 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 maybe mind knows how much effect your eyes there okay so uh, eyes of a dog how much effect does that ear of a dog effects uh, on for, for 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 you so that you are able, successfully able to classify that as a dog okay so so most important thing say for example it's it's tail may be having the the biggest weight because by seeing the tail you are able to identify whether it is a doberman or any, anything so tail would be the um, containing the highest weight so the whole whole phenom or whole thing of weight is that that the w1 w2 w3 it contains the information is weighted we give some weights to every information whatever we get in the dendrite so that we will be able to identify the effect of each input in your dendrite okay so basically in in an in, in an overview it determines the effects of the input so w1 x1 so what we do we simply multiply with the input so all x x1 has kind has has its respective weight say for example x1 
x2 and x4 so the, we have four features we have four features and let's say that x1 is more important in in doing that task so x1 is weighted more w1 w3 w4 and w5 let's say x1 is important so its weight will be high because it is weighted and this x1 has the most important effect of the input okay so we'll come to that weight of oh, uh, a ton of time the whole deep deep learning is based on that getting good weight so we will talk about that okay just assume that you have any weights we don't we still don't know how do we get the actual weights we still don't know about the formal definition i'm just defining it informally so the weighted information now what do you do you multiply the weights with the inputs so you can determine the effect of the input uh, using that weights Okay, so the weighted information are aggregated in the nucleus. So basically, this is a nucleus, which is nothing but the powerhouse. Okay, so it's aggregated in the nucleus as a weighted sum, as a weighted sum, as a weighted, weighted sum, as a weighted sum. So what you specifically do, you simply um, multiply the weights with the respective inputs and add it up. Okay. Um, so w1 x1 plus w2 x2 plus w3 x3 plus w3 times x3 plus w4 x4 okay simply add it that's it that's for what 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 you do you simply aggregate in it in a sum variable or a nucleus let's call it as a z okay that's a nucleus that's a nucleus where you aggregate all the information at one point plus you add some bias term okay let's let's let, let's add some bias term let's add some bias term and don't do uh, we, that is a bias term will which we will have a detailed talk uh, in this uh, section please don't worry about that we'll have a detailed talk on that just you can ignore this or assume some constant like 0 0.1 okay don't worry about that what w1 how 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 we'll choose w1 we'll see in the whole uh, section it's then what if, then what do we do so here we came to a nucleus and nucleus perform one action to it so this now nucleus now this is done here you apply the 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 what do you say the non-linear function the non-linear function so on z so you so use on z you apply some kind of uh, some kind of function don't worry what that function do okay just 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 assume that we apply some kind of function may maybe you, you have already seen something called a sigmoid function i'm just taking an example of a sigmoid function there is a lot of functions which which we apply which we will formally define in this section don't worry about that the only thing which you need to worry is to understand the whole process of uh, neural networks and i'm just trying to for informally define the neural networks with the help of your neuron so so where we are we have set of inputs which we got from a dendrite then carrying these input carry carries the 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 weights or the or the or the information is carried by the weight okay uh, weighted by the weights which is w1 all the way around with w4 why w, all the way around w4 because we have four inputs which we got okay it determines the effect of each input by taking or, or the product between their respective um, inputs and then what we do and then we reach to the nucleus where the, all the information is aggregated by taking a sum where we add one bias term we'll talk about it let, later on what exactly that bias term do okay and then and then after after aggre aggregation now some processing uh, applies like non-linear function which is a sigmoid function in this case maybe if you know about it if, if, if you know about logistic regression then you might be knowing that and then it is further sent and then it is further uh, sent for further processing to exon uh, y okay so it is further sent to another now we got our output which is some non non on uh, some function on z and then we get our output y okay and then it is sent to as an input to another neuron as an input to another neuron or we get a final output or we reach to the destination what we wanted to reach so what does it mean it reaches to destination so let's take an example you saw something you saw a dog 
okay you saw a dog and uh, here the the information uh, let's say you want to identify whether whether that dog is a is a german shepherd or a doberman okay doberman pinscher sure. so specifically what you will do you all know that a german shepherd has a long long hair and kind of a wolfy um, nature kind of stuff and doberman is very uh, thin and uh, have a I, and don't 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 have a long tail as well as they are very uh, they very strength and kind of stuff you have a specific mind in your uh, your specific picture in your mind so when you see doberman or when you, when you see a dog you need to and that dog is either german shepherd or doberman pinscher okay so here is a dog that dog is either german shepherd so how where, how your mind will work and I'll, i'm just taking an example of it so what happens is you see his hair you see his tail so all the information get into your into your eyes and through eyes you get into into your mind through eyes you, it gets into your mind and all the things like hair doberman so these are your input these are your input hair tail ear eyes these are your input and over here the let's say hair is carried by some weights carried by some weights all the weights so that we can understand the effect of our inputs so say for example that uh, the your hair has the 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 weight of a hair because in your mind in in at least at least in my mind i i'll 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 be having more influence of hairs so and w1 here will be very large okay so i'll be able to identify that and then and then what happens after after we aggregate the information we simply aggregate this information in a nucleus so every feature is very important so you aggregate the information as a nucleus and then you apply a non linearity or some some kind of function don't worry about what is non non linear etc what what this function does just simply we apply some kind of function or some kind of processing and then we reach to the des des destination whether that dog is a doberman pinscher or german shepherd okay so or or maybe that output whatever whatever output we get after applying that function it it will be sent to another neuron so that will be uh, so maybe if required i don't know about much more about brain cool but is this exactly happens in our maybe um, um a specific neuron it's it's kind of a no absolutely no is just an inspiration from a neuron it's not like that he uh, how these kind of exact maths is being calculated it's not that it's just an inspiration so that uh, like his uh, scientists uh, previously just taken inspiration of it and made a mathematical model out of it okay so do not relate it to exactly how neuron works you can see other videos on how neuron and how brain works but but specifically this is taken for inspiration for this kind of uh, statements that i've described up okay cool so i hope that this gives you a better sense about how everything works let's go ahead um over here the pictorial representation of a workflow so exactly this is the artificial neural networks so this is in mathematical model this is whatever you're seeing is not a real um, neural network or 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 a brain it's just an artificial neural networks where we have we'll, we'll talk about what is neural what is networks later later on but this is a pictorial rep representation of what our workflow states so I'll just re recapitulate you you have a set of inputs you have a set of inputs x1 x2 x3 all the way around to the x4 okay and all these inputs are carried by or all the all the information is carried by the weights which we denote with w1 w3 w3 w4 and a bias term okay and um, and these weights determine the effect of your input and this is a nucleus this is a nucleus where all the information is aggregated by taking out the sum of and this is this is the summation notation uh, w1 x1 plus w2 x2 plus w3 x3 plus w4 x4 and then we add the bias term 
and then in that and then let's assume that this is the nucleus and then we apply and in nucleus we apply some kind of a function on it so let's say sigma on z okay and then we get some output y and then it it, it is either your destination it is either your destination which you want to achieve or or it is or it is sent to another another neuron the same neuron like this where it have where it again multiply without which which we'll see later on okay cool so i hope that this gives you a very specific sense about artificial neural networks and i hope that uh, you'll 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 you are able to understand how how exactly it is working so now what i will do i'll just just make a remark that neural networks whatever artificial neural network which you see is called exactly this is what artificial neural network is okay so neural network basic units is inspired from machine learning and machine learning is of obviously inspired from a brain and stuff so so here which you're seeing if if i know this the course prerequisite is machine learning fundamentals i either recommend uh, in my mlo one course or anything but you're exactly seeing that this logistic regression or 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 whatever we have studied it's exactly the just logistic regression if you see okay so basically uh this is the one unit so this is what you what you are seeing this is a logistic regression what do you do you simply multiply with the given weights and the inputs and then we aggregate it and then we and then we apply a non linearity or the sigma function which you usually know 1 over 1 plus e to the power minus g z and then you will get some output let's say a and then if a is greater than 0.5 you identify okay that that value uh, uh, let's uh, one or if it is or else if it is smaller than or equals to 0.5 then zero okay then zero so this is this is usually used for classification problems and why do we apply this sigma function we'll talk about in detail in this deep learning we'll talk about this so sigma function very detail but what this sigma function tells you uh, so what it does it you you get your output you get your output in a range in a continuous manner okay so it simply squeezes that output into bit between 0 to 1 between 0 to 1 now this was your basic unit which you already already seen in a uh, machine learning what do you do you put take that basic points and you put several units and stack them up okay and take that stack layer and make several layers okay so so you this is a particular unit which is exactly what exactly computation is doing is simply multiplying with different different weights and then applying processing etc and putting up different different basic units and then at last you're with that kind of stack or basic units are able to generate predictions so this is the deep neural so we'll, we'll talk about that later on but the basic idea that this slides want to give you that neural networks are inspired from basic units of machine learning or puts up puts up lots of basic unit together and then get your output but don't worry what this exactly diagram states forget about it about it if you don't understand okay Please rewatch the video if you don't understand. Otherwise, uh, you can simply ignore what what exactly each neuron is doing. We'll we'll cover that in detail in a multi neural network uh, or perceptron section. Cool. So the perceptron. Now what we will do is formally define a perceptron so that it will be very helpful for you at least. So let's take an example. So now we will formally define uh, the perceptron. So um, here you can see the simplest neural network is referred as the perceptron, as the perceptron where uh, where we have the basic, which is the simplest neural network which we which we refer as a perceptron. So what we are given, we are given the information from x1 to x dimensional. Okay, so I'll take an example. I'll take a simple example because I just want to may have a conversation with you so that at least you can understand everything. And please make sure that you watch in kind of a two x manner. It's okay for you. I do. I do. I don't care about that. So, 
let's take an example of a diabetes or maybe huh, yeah so diabetes prediction system diabetes prediction so just take a different pen so that uh, at least it gives me good a uh, feeling so uh, what's a favorite color i don't know uh, it's blue so diabetes prediction system diabetes prediction system so in machine learning you're given a set of features and you're told to take that set of features and map to or make a function f that takes a particular set of features and maps to an output variable y that's it that's that's exactly what in machine learning you're trying to do so these so let's say your x1 denote or uh, maybe some kind of a uh, let's say the bp okay and x2 denotes bmi okay x3 denotes your age x4 denotes your maybe uh, uh, symptoms which have a certain symptom or the height okay x4 denotes your heights so these are your information these are your information okay and these information are carried by the weights are are these information are weighted by weights that how much this how much this have effect or 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 how much uh, uh, how much uh, how 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 much our input affects okay so our how much our information carries information okay w3 and w4 so w1 w3 w4 okay so you have a respective weights which tells you how much it affects okay how much how much your information have weights or how much how much weightage or how much information it has okay cool so what i will do i'll just have my x and uh, this is x1 x2 all the way around to the xd okay and that is transpose so that it's become it's a column vector i think yeah it's a column vector it should when you, when you do the transpose it becomes the row vector that is a x which is the input value and output value output value y is either zero or one i'm taking an example of a classification case of a classification case so you are your output is either zero or one cool so specifically over here you have a weights you have a weights um, which is carried by the weights your information where what is learning so where learning occurs how you learn the particular system how you make a diabetes prediction system so how you learn it so learning occurs by changing the weights and the goal of changing the weights is to modify the computer function to make the predictions more correct in future iterations. So what is the learning tells you? How do we how do we learn it? OK, so the whole learning stuff is getting the right set of weights or identifying how much X1 contains or, or identifying the right set of weights so that we'll be able to identify which input have more effect okay which input have have a more effect if you don't understand from this point that how learning occurs don't worry about it we'll talk about in detail what exactly we call as a the the learning problem okay sure so um what exactly how what what is learning and in high level overview what we do the learning occurs by changing the weights w1 w2 w3 and w4 so we change the weights until and unless our prediction uh, be more uh, correct in our future iterations okay and then uh, this and then you you strive to find the the best weights the best weights by choosing algorithm like gradient descent algorithm or stochastic gradient descent and there are lots of optimization algorithms which are out there cool so now after now what you do you you simply multiply or 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 multiply the or take out the product of the inputs and the weights and then you aggregate the weighted information okay the whatever the information which you contain whatever the information which you contain you simply multiply with the inputs I just in order to next slide so uh, simply aggregate the information xi and wi so um, w1 x1 so we are identify so we are able to uh, say okay in the nucleus you will be having the weighted information or the aggregated information so that we are just adding it up and then we are adding the bias term and then we apply some kind of activation function 
which is some non-linearity, okay, which is some kind of function. Here, here it is a sigma function before sending it to the destination y. Okay, so now we are we are ignoring too much about bias term. We are ignoring bias term, and then we are ignoring non-linearity or activation function. Okay, let's talk about that, and then we'll end this video. Cool. So over here, the perceptron with the bias term. So what exactly do? What exactly bias term help you to do? Say for example, take a simple example y equals to mx plus b, y equals to mx plus b. So you all know about it very, very, very carefully. So you all know, know, know about this specific term called uh, y equals to mx plus b, where you have this. Uh, where Let me just erase it out so that it would be much better because I don't know why I'm not able to draw uh, very good kind of stuff. Oh my God, no problem. So you have this and then you have this okay cool so this is the, the, the equation for this straight line y equals to mx plus b okay and m here is the coefficient or yeah coefficient of x coefficient of x and b here is your y intercept you b is y intercept or we can say m is slope of this particular line okay so what if just I'll, I'll I'll not go into y, y equals to mx plus b because you all already know because its course expects you to go, go at algebra one and algebra two. So um, what this b tells you, if we b if we make that b to be equals to zero, what will happen? If we make that b equals to zero, what will happen? So over here, your y your y will be zero. Okay, your y will be zero and always pass through the origin, which is zero and zero, where o x is zero and y is zero. And depends, and your straight line or your or your or your or your line will depend only on one parameter. So y equals to mx. Where if you have b equals to zero, then it then we don't need to write it. So over here it only depends your slope. Okay, it only depends. You can either make this way or either make this way, but the only parameter which it which will which it will it will depend is m. Okay is m now over here you're only able to make a function you're only able to make a function you're only able to make a function which just maps which which is which is non-complex function which passes only through origin and just only depends on one parameter but when we add b there when we add b there y equals to mx plus let's say 2 so over here let's assume 2 so you you are able to make more complex you are able to make more complex function and shift the graph okay say for example it it's if we add b if we have 0 then it does not shift the graph when we add the bias term it shifts from here to here so what it does it shifts the graph and hence it is able to represent more complex situations which it was not able to um, make it before. So from this y equals to mx plus c example, it is simply saying it is able to represent the more complex example or shift the graph a little bit up. The same way it will work in your neural network. Bias allows you to shift the activation function by adding a constant to it that is the given bias to the input. You can think of it as a linear constant which we learn as a weight, okay? Which we need to find a good bias, okay? We, we, we of course, we don't just, 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 we do, do not only need us simply add a bias. We do need to find a very good bias, which we'll talk about late, later on, that how do we get W1, W2, or how do we get B1, and etc. So, and make sure that W1, W2, W3, uh, W1, W2, these are the weights, these are the weights, or we sometimes call the parameters, and you have I'll, I've all I have already discussed these weights uh, are are the weights for your inputs for your inputs, or every input has its certain weights. Okay, so specifically in this case, your bias term help you to shift the graph of your activation function. So if you have seen your logistic regression, if you have seen your logistic logistic regression, the graph of this, the graph of logistic regression is as shaped as shaped okay as shaped like like this so when bias is zero it the the origin is over here and bias is zero 
Now, when we say bias one, then it is able to shift the graph and hence it is able to represent more complex situation. And when we do plus one, then it is able to represent much more complex situation. So basically, bias term shifts the graph a little bit or a linear as a linearly, and then it is it is able to represent more complex situation. So that's why bias term is absolutely necessary in neural networks. It's not kind of it, it, it will not work without bias term, but it's very, very necessary part of neural networks. Cool. Cool. So uh, over here, which you're seeing is neural network, which is let's say you want to build a house price predictor because we have all we are we are we are only seeing out the examples of maybe kind of stuff like um, we are only seeing examples of maybe kind of a, a classification problem. But what if you if you get a regression problem where we want to predict the house prices? So let's say you are given the information x1, x2. So these information is carried by the w1, w2, w3 and for the bias term. And okay, so so then we apply a linear activation function. We don't apply any, any kind of non-linearity. We don't apply any non-linearity. We don't apply any non-linearity. We don't apply that. We simply apply the linear activation function, which is just the identity function. Okay, we just it's it's a function when you give your z, which z is uh, aggregated information a nucleus, which just gives z the input. Okay, which is a linear activation function. Okay, and then you get, and then you reach the output, and then we have your familiar m s e mean square error. Okay, and then you take all the partial der derivative of it, but don't worry about it. We'll we'll talk about talk about gradient descent in greater detail okay don't worry ignore it just i i have just written it out so that how training occurs you'll get to know but just ignore this cool so the last thing which i'll discuss in this video is intuition behind activation function why do we need this null non-linearity which you're seeing that why do we need this sigma function and why do we need activation function after after we aggregate the information why do we even need that next step which is non-linearity why do we even need to think about that so don't worry about what the picture tells don't worry about what the picture tells worry about some uh, uh, a story okay so if you smell something delicious delicious okay i'm pronouncing it correct so if we smell something delicious think of your favorite food my favorite is let's say an example of pizza okay uh, take an, an example your favorite food so if we smell something delicious which is your favorite food in your neurons your summer neurons which which learn to identify that favorite food will get activated and will help you to get sense or taste it. So your so you have several neurons, you have millions of neurons, and some neurons will get activated when you smell it. Okay, to uh, when 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 you smell some when you smell your delicious food, your some neurons will get uh, get activated, and then it will give the signals to your mind to um, to just get a sense of something or taste something. Okay. And if you smell something which is not good, the same neurons do not get activated. Okay. Now this is kind of a critical in this case. It's very, very kind of an inspiration from brain. Like, say for example, you have a neuron one, you have a neuron two, you have a neuron three, you have a neuron four, you have a neuron five, neuron six, neuron seven, neuron eight. Okay. So several neurons. You smell something delicious. You smell something delicious. So what will happen? So what will happen? Maybe the first neuron get activated. The first neuron get activated. This neuron get activated and this neuron get got activated. These three neurons got activated and then it helps you. And then it, 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 it tells your hand or tells your mind to just uh, taste something or kind of that. But, but, but now, now what will happen? I'll just uh, have this. Now the same neurons which we are having, the same neurons which we, which we are having, now when you say something which is not delicious, the same neurons will not get activated. Other neurons which will get activated, which is not the same which, which is used for, you know, for, um, so it will not get activated, the same just will, will, will not get activated, but other neurons will get activated, that will help you to leave that food. So in general, 
same happens with your neural network that can happen as one activated and zero non-activated okay so we can say if the value closer to the value to zero the lesser it is activated so in this example in this in this example in this example um say for an example you have x1 x2 x3 and x4 now these are your inputs now over here this this neuron got activated this this neuron got most and most activated because it for, for 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 this task these two got more activated these two got more activated as compared to this these two are completely zero these two are completely zero and these two are completely one these two are completely one and maybe this is kind of a maybe 0 0.75 okay more one okay so um this is how the intuition of activation function which activates you which activates a particular neuron so that it is able to do one task this is a this this is kind of a relation to your uh, brain kind of stuff uh, so uh, using linear activation function so why our why our um activation function should be linear why do we need non-linear so here your data is linearly separable so we do not need any non-linear activation function we are happy with because here your data is easily separable by a straight line so it is linearly separable but in real world your data is non-linearly separable so that's why you have your favorite non-linear activation functions one of the example of a non-linear activation function is sigmoid function okay which is 1 over 1 plus e to the power minus z and all non-linear activation functions are differentiable when you take out the derivative of this you take out the derivative with respect to z is nothing but times 1 minus okay but don't worry about it we'll see the de derivations later on so over here your data you cannot fit a straight line to this or fit a straight line like like this to to separate it out so 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 for that you need a this you need a or you need a line or a circle which separates it out so say so it separates this green and this blue one which is a non-linear which which exactly non-linear activation function achieves is is using to find a non-linear decision boundary okay so here your data is non-linear it helps you to achieve the non-linear activation function to help you to build a non-linear decision boundary okay so i hope that this gives you a better sense of it so i hope um, um so i'll just start off with the last stuff uh, i'm saying from a lot of them so so basically using non-linear activation function so you have a set of uh, inputs x1 and carried by the weights and then you aggregate in the nucleus and whatever you get net j and then what you do you apply to a non a non linear activation function because your data is non 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 -lin -lin linear okay so I, I provide that into a non linearity okay and then and then it gives your output and then using a threshold like zero if it is greater than 0 0.5 you'll just say okay this the, the person has a let's say the person has a diabetes so if if, if it's a class classification problem but what if it if it is a regression problem we'll use a linear activation function okay we'll just uh pass that uh, the output or, or 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 the net j rather than applying activation function okay and then and then we get an output but you may be thinking you may be having some questions around it hey 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 ayush you told in can we have a non-linear data in regression problem yes absolutely we can have but but you will soon realize in neural networks you don't have only one neuron you have a several neuron and at last you have one output layer and in that output layer uh, where you, there you do, don't apply any, any activation function but other neurons you do apply activation function but in rest but in output neuron you don't apply neural network uh, sorry activation function and then you simply apply your linear and then you get your output for regression problem but don't worry about it we'll discuss that in very detail so i hope that this is very clear on activation functions and i hope that you understood it very well now we'll talk about the training how do we how do we make it learn or how do we make it learn a real world neural network or how do, how do we make it how do we train this neural network so that it would be able to correct, correctly classify uh, the particular neuron and what exactly learning means and what is learning problem so let's talk about that in the next lecture